Ashley's POV. Do I have to go? I whine as my best friend Emma finishes putting the final touches on her own costume and comes to stand next to me. I love Emma with all my heart she isn't only my best friend but we are as close as sisters. We steal each other's clothes, binge watch movies and eat ice cream every Sunday night, and she even fills me in about every detail between her and her boyfriend Bradley, including their sex life which I don't like hearing about but listen anyways. Although she is a year younger than I am she moved into our dormitories two years ago and ended up bunked with me, since then we've been almost inseparable with the exception of school breaks. She goes back to be with her family while I go home to my grandma's. I envy her family. She goes on and on about her old brother and younger sister and how awesome her parents are. I barely remember my parents or much of my childhood to be honest anytime I try to focus on an early memory my mind becomes fuzzy. Yes, we rarely get to leave campus and it's Halloween. She replies making some minor adjustments as she checks herself out in the full-length mirror we are stood in front of. I promise it will be fun. We are both about the same height and weight, although I am jealous her muscles are so toned. I rarely ever see her go to the gym and when I ask she just claims it is good genes which makes me even more envious of her family. I have dirty blonde hair that reaches about halfway down my back and blue eyes, which I've been told look like ice in certain lighting, whereas Emma has black shoulder length hair and the most entrancing hazel eyes I've ever seen. She told me all her family members have the same color eyes and to make sure not to look too deeply into her brother Emerson's or I may fall in love. She always teases me about dating her brother. I'm not super popular which in all honesty I'm okay with because frankly I don't like a bunch of attention, I'm perfectly content with my small group of people that I trust. Did I really have to dress up as Daphne? I ask pulling at the bottom of the dress. I ask pulling at the bottom of the dress. I let her pick out of costumes since I was having trouble deciding and when I suggested a witch she said that was too boring. Of course she picked out the skimpy ones from the live action movies instead of the classic animated costumes which covered a lot more. I wasn't the hugest fan of showing of my body I thought it brought unwanted attention and could get me into trouble one day. Emma always went on and on about how rockin' my body is and I need to show it of more but I simply have always felt best in jeans and a worn out tee than anything else. This dress was tight and I turned around to see if my ass was hanging out the back. Emma notices this and smacks it playfully. She has always been very open about her sexuality with me since day one of moving in. She made it clear she is attracted to any and all kinds of people, very progressive of her I think. I don't judge but I did make it clear I was only into guys. She has never made me feel uncomfortable with small things like smacking my butt. It was just her being her super goofy friendly self. Watching her smack and grab Bradley's ass is always entertaining because he yelps and gives her a scowl. I guess they grew up together and just recently realized their feelings for each other. It's so sweet and they are absolutely adorable together. I will admit when I see them together all lovey-dovey it does make me yearn for a partner. Someone to share my days and nights with. A person that could give me those epic butterflies everyone is always raving about. Yes I'm Velma, Bradley is Shaggy, Emerson is Fred, and that leaves you Daphne. It's a group date we needed to match. Wait what? Did you tell your brother this is a date? Emma has been trying to set me up with her brother since she got here. She has begged me to come home with her countless times but I always refuse. She always talks about him probably hoping I fall in love just from hearing how amazing he is. Which he does sound like an awesome big brother. They always go on trips together and he sounds super protective of her. Bradley is Emerson's best friend which I thought would make it awkward for his little sister to be dating but apparently he was over the moon when he found out they were in love. I still can't believe after only a week of being together they were telling each other they love each other but I guess if it's your soulmate, which Emma is sure they are, then that makes things different. No, not like that Ash. I just thought it would be fun for us to all dress up as a group. She replies and I let out a sigh of relief that this isn't some set up. She replies and I let out a sigh of relief that this isn't some set up. I'm excited to meet your brother. I'm excited to meet your brother. 
I say as I take a seat on the edge of the bed and slip on the shoes Emma insisted I wear. I say as I take a seat on the edge of the bed and slip on the shoes Emma insisted I wear. In all honesty, I am excited to meet her brother. From the way she talks about him he seems like an easygoing chill guy so I don't see why we wouldn't get along. He and Bradley have to go to some special school starting next week so this is kind of their last hurrah before they leave. I know Emma is not looking forward to Bradley leaving her for a whole year which is why I agreed to go tonight to help distract her from that fact. Bradley is a really sweet guy and treats Emma like a queen. Since we go to an all-girls school they only get to hang out on weekends and holidays but she has brought him by the dorms a few times. He's thrilled to meet you as well. He claims I never shut about you. She says with a laugh. She says with a laugh. After slipping her shoes on as well, she grabs her keys, and we get in her car to drive to the party. It is about a 45-minute drive from campus. The house party we are going to is well hidden. I admire the beautiful scenery surrounding both sides of the secluded road we end up on leading to our destination. I could swear while we were driving I heard some wolves howling in the distance but I think it's just my nerves playing tricks on me. When we finally arrive I can't help that my mouth is hung wide open. I don't even know if it was technically a house more like a mansion. It is a three-story home at least the length and width of a basketball court with a wraparound porch. It is a thing of my wildest dreams and I wonder what on earth the owners do for a living to own such an amazing place out in the middle of nowhere, talk about privacy. I notice there aren't very many cars in the lot out front and wonder if maybe this party she has been going on and on about turned out to be a dud or maybe we are just super early. I see a few people outside chatting and drinking on the porch in their own little worlds. I am quickly proved wrong once we actually get inside and see the places packed from wall to wall. I am not looking forward to slipping through this crowd. I can't help sink in on myself a bit seeing as though I am not used to being so close to so many people at once, definitely not the hugest fan of large crowds. I wonder how all these people got here with so few cars outside, maybe a few party buses. As we step inside and Emma shuts the door behind us I swear I hear more wolves howling. I make a mental note not to go outside in case they are running around the property I would prefer to not get attacked by a wild animal tonight. Emma grabs my hand in hers tightly and starts pulling us through the crowd. She's definitely been here before because quite a few people yell her name and wave at her and she seems to be very familiar with the layout of the house. I feel a little uncomfortable being squeezed in between strangers especially when I felt two different guys grab my ass as I walked by. Men can be such animals sometimes treating women like a piece of meat. I don't respond it isn't worth my time and besides they are probably just drunk assholes. I just keep following swiftly behind Emma until we finally make it into the kitchen which thankfully isn't as packed even though it seemed to be where all the booze was. First she pours two shots and I gulp mine down wincing as the liquor burns going down my throat. She proceeds to grab two cups and mix a few different things inside then hand me one. I'm not a big drinker but we are here to have fun and I told her I would loosen up and enjoy myself for one night. I took a quick drink to calm my nerves. The drink tastes delicious and is slowly starting to kick in the more I drink and is helping push away any unease I feel being in a stranger's home partying. Hey baby. Bradley's voice comes from behind as he passes by me to scoop Emma up kissing her several times and hugging her tightly. Bradley's voice comes from behind as he passes by me to scoop Emma up kissing her several times and hugging her tightly. Hi, I missed you. She replies quickly before forgetting about the entire party going on around her and shoving her tongue down his throat. Suddenly I feel a little awkward just standing there watching. Well hi Daphne. A deep male's voice says snapping my attention for Emma and Bradley having a heavy makeout session in the middle of the crowded kitchen. A deep male's voice says snapping my attention for Emma and Bradley having a heavy makeout session in the middle of the crowded kitchen. Fred. I reply cheerily and can't help the huge smile across my face once I finally lay eyes on him. I reply cheerily and can't help the huge smile across my face once I finally lay eyes on him. He is unbelievably handsome, his body is built like Hercules, and his. Fuck me. 
eyes make my knees go weak. Emma was right, I can't help getting lost in his hazel eyes, and if I don't stop looking into them soon I will fall in love. They are truly mesmerizing and I can swear they changed colors once or twice. His voice is low and sexy yet soothing at the same time and I feel like I could listen to him talk for hours which is ridiculous considering he has only spoken one word to me. He leans back against the counter to watch his sister and boyfriend shamelessly kissing in front everyone as well and when his arm brushes and settles against mine I swear I felt a small spark, like a little prickle of electricity. I am so lost in admiring how hot he is I didn't realize he has said something else to me and feel like an idiot for zoning out and I fucking my best friend's brother. I'm sorry huh? I question as a small blush creeps across my face. I asked how school's going. He responds with a laugh probably realizing by the red tint on my cheeks I am embarrassed that he caught me checking him out. Oh it's good. I'm ready for high school to be over. I reply with a sigh. I reply with a sigh. Are you ready for your new school next week? I ask chugging the rest of my drink and placing it on the counter completely mortified by how much his presence is affecting me. Yes extremely. I ask chugging the rest of my drink and placing it on the counter completely mortified by how much his presence is affecting me. Yes extremely. I mean I've been training for it my whole life so. He trails of then changes subjects quickly. Let's dance. He says as he grabs my hand and pulls me into the living room just as the song switches. He says as he grabs my hand and pulls me into the living room just as the song switches. Emerson's POV. Bradley and I ran to the party, shifted, and got change in the guest house before heading inside. Liam's parents were loaded since they both got medical degrees and opted to live just of pack lands to open a private practice that catered to everyone including humans. He is a spoiled fucking prick but throws awesome parties. He is a year younger than Bradley and I, the same age as my sister, and has always had a huge crush on her. Thankfully a few months back when Brad turned 18 and realized Emma was his mate Liam backed of. I would have hated to have to release my wolf on him but when it comes to my baby sister I would do anything to protect her. That's why we sent her to an all-girls school to keep her away from boys and safe. I was ecstatic when I found out Bradley, who happens to be my future beta and best friend, was her mate. I knew he would always treat her right and take care of her. Emma insisted we all dress up as the Scooby-Doo gang since there were four of us and we were going to the party as a group. She told me she had finally convinced her best friend from school, Ashley, to leave the dorms and come to a party with her. She is always going on and on about how perfect and beautiful Ashley is. I have a feeling she is hoping we are mates, but considering she is human it isn't very likely to happen. We make our way into the house through the back entrance and stop by to say hi to Liam and thank him for inviting us. Even though I am his superior, being that I'm the future alpha of our pack, I still appreciate being invited and respect him enough to let him know that. Like I said he handled it well when he found my sister had a mate unlike some male wolves who feel that a crush entitles them to whatever she wolf they want. Unfortunately for some of our kind their beast is more in control and human decency is pushed aside for that basic animalistic to take and claim whatever we please. We're in the kitchen making drinks. My sister mind links both Bradley and I at the same time. As we start making our way to the kitchen I'm keeping a steady eye out for Rachel, our neighboring Pax Alpha's little sister. We all went to the same school growing up. Adam is three years older than me and Rachel is just a year older. I know she's always had the hugest crush on me but I never showed her interest. She always went on and on about us being mates and how it would bring our packs together then on her 18th birthday she realized I wasn't her mate and flipped her shit. She ran to her brother telling a tale of how I rejected her and even since then he's had a problem with me. She still comes to these parties whenever she hears about them hoping to see me, Liam makes sure to tell me every time she comes and asks about me. I follow behind Bradley hoping we don't bump into her. He has been going crazy the past few weeks without seeing his mate, my sister. We've been preparing to leave next week for formal leadership training. It's something all future Alpha and Betas go through before officially being handed the titles. 
Emma has been busy with some school project and a few tough exams before the upcoming holidays. So this was the one opportunity for us all to spend some time together before we're separated for a while. Although I hate loud and obnoxious parties like this very one she insisted we party one last time before Bradley and I have to take on our serious roles as leaders of the pack. As we enter the kitchen I can hear Bradley say something to my sister but it falls on deaf ears as I notice the other part of our Scooby gang, my beautiful Daphne, leaned against the counter taking a sip from her drink and looking a little uncomfortable with the way my sister and Beta are all over each other in the middle of the kitchen. She must not be a huge fan for public displays of affection which typically neither am I but when two mates find each other it's hard to keep their hands to themselves. I won't deny that after watching her lick her lips after a sip of her cocktail I would love to pull her close and get a taste of those luscious lips myself. Emma wasn't kidding when she told me Ashley was a stunning young woman. I make my way over to her and try to start a conversation anxious to hear her sweet voice. I've heard her speak in the background several times while on a cal with Em, but it's not the same. She only says one word to me and I'm lost in her angelic voice. I want to hear more and ask her how's school going but when she doesn't reply I realize she's too busy checking me out to even notice I'm talking to her and I find myself very flattered. Two can play that game. I take a quick glance over her body and it is to die for. Every single curve is accentuated in the purple dress she's wearing. I'll have to give my sister props for having her dress her up as Daphne because she is rocking the look. Her cleavage is on display, B cup would be my guess, the bottom of the dress settles around mid-thigh, riding up just a smidge as she shuffles against the counter uncomfortably. The thought of slipping my hands underneath and grabbing an ass cheek in each hand crosses my mind. She has a wig on right now so unfortunately, I can't see her natural hair color, but if I remember correctly Emma said she has dirty blonde hair and I have to stop myself from yanking the wig of to see her long locks. I catch a glimpse of her icy blue eyes before she looks away. I take the spot next to her as she goes back to watching my sister make out with her mate and when our arms touch I feel a small jolt of electricity. Could she be my mate, maybe Emma was right. I have always heard about the special spark or sort of tingling feeling that erupts when two mates touch but it was only for a split second and yet here we stand arms touching still and that small spark is gone. Is she our mate? I ask my wolf shadow. I can't telegraph, I can't telegraph, something is definitely different about her though just smell her. Smell her, great suggestion, how the hell am I supposed to naturally get a good whiff of her to find out what he means? After answering her question about my schooling I ask her to dance figuring it'd be a good chance to get her close and away from my best friend and sister who are seconds away from fucking on the dirty kitchen floor. With so many wolves present at this party the pheromones in the house are outrageous making it hard for me to concentrate on her sin alone so I need her extremely close to focus on it. Perhaps this way I can figure out what shadow means by she's different. I grab her hand and she doesn't fight me which I find thrilling since she barely knows me. I take it to mean she's already comfortable and trusting with me which is great because after having her hand in mine and feeling how perfectly it fits I don't know what I would do if she pulled away. I gracefully pull her onto the dance floor as most people part away making a path for us, since I am their future alpha it's natural for them to fear and respect me. At first we start moving with the beat of the music while facing each other and I can't help but smiling at the bewildering creature in front of me. She shut her eyes to focus on the music and let it take over her body movements which put me in a trance. I can't take my eyes off of her as she moves as though she is one with the song and it is enticing as hell. She is so lost in the song she doesn't notice the people trying to get by and almost gets knocked into but thanks to my quick reflexes I slip my arm around her waist and pull her flush against me. Her eyes shoot open in surprise but instantly soften once they met mine and she stares into them like she is trying to figure something out. I want to kiss her so bad in the moment but I'm not sure she wants the same thing so I choose not to, then the strangest thing happens. My brave girl runs her hands up my chest, around the back of my neck interlocking her fingers, and stands up on her toes slightly then leans up and kisses me. She is bold and I love it. I am taken aback for a moment by her bravery and the fact that she initiated our first kiss but only hold back for a second before returning the kiss with equal hunger. 
Her plump lips feel so soft against my own and I get lost in the sensation taking over my body. Every single hair on my body stands on end and my heart rate has sped up greatly. For the first time in my life I want someone, truly want someone, as is evident by my hard cock trying to break free from my genes. It isn't as if girls haven't tried before, I mean I am a future alpha after all, but not one has ever made me feel the way Ashley has managed to with just one kiss. How can a mere touch of our lips make me this hard, she must be my mate. Ugh why do I have to wait four more months to be sure? She stops kissing me and pulls back almost in a daze. She looks up at me slightly confused almost as if she, herself, really didn't expect to do that. She smiles only a moment later and I can't help the huge grin I flash back at her. I forgot alcohol affects humans differently than werewolves and since my sister made her drink and she had consumed the whole glass before we left the kitchen she was definitely a little tipsy. It was a good thing I think because I could sense a small amount of anxiety when we first entered the kitchen but she seemed to loosen up after a few more sips of her drink or perhaps it was me. Mates are said to have a calming effect on each other. She doesn't seem the type to throw herself at men and from what Emma explained she doesn't date so something about me is pulling her in, it has to be the bond working its magic. Why did I have to find her right before I am about to leave and not even truly know if it is fate or not? I feel at ease with her and from the way her body is moving against mine at the moment I know she feels at ease with me as well. I felt her body tense when her arms first touched in the kitchen but it must have been from the spark, maybe she felt it too because she relaxed quickly after and hasn't shown any signs of hesitancy towards me. I grab her hand and twirl her around facing away from me, settling my hands on her hips and pulling her back against myself. She gasps slightly as her round and juicy ass comes into contact with the bulge in my pants. She throws her head back into my shoulder and lets out the tiniest moan as she starts grinding her ass against my throbbing dick. God the things I want to do to her. She has to know what she is doing to me. Now is my opportunity to explore her body a bit more and also figure out what my wolf was talking about earlier. I move my hands up and down her hips slightly as she continues swaying her hips from left to right her ass remaining tight against me. Then ever so slowly I move my right hand up along her side resting it right under her perfect breast rubbing the side of it with my thumb, and again another tiny moan escapes her perfect lips. I want to touch her more intimately but we are in the middle of a crowded living room and I don't want to make her uncomfortable. I am waiting for her to resist or pull away to let me know I need to stop caressing the side of her breast but she remains in place arching her back slightly, approvingly it seems. She is enjoying this as much as I am and it is exhilarating. I move my hands back to her waist and she moves her own hands on top of mine still moving with the music. She starts moving my hands from the sides of her hips down her upper thighs stopping just under the bottom of her dress. Squeezing her hands together tighter she digs into her thighs slightly and pulls her dress up ever so slightly, teasing me. She is letting me know she wants me to keep touching her, daring me to take it a little farther. I start thinking about how many other men she has danced with like this and shadow forces a low growl out. Thankfully the music is loud and Ashley didn't hear it or she may have freaked out. Even a low growl emitted from Shadow can be scary if he throws a little bit of that alpha aura out along with it. Shadow would never purposefully scare her but sometimes it's hard not be territorial and act the animal that we are especially when she ignites something in both of us we haven't felt before. She must have felt my body tense as my mind went wild thinking about her dancing with anyone but me. Sensing my sudden change she releases my hands and turns around to face me. I have my eyes tightly closed as I try to rein in my wolf who is overreacting at the thought of any other male touching what he we both believe could quite possibly be our mate. He is already itching to claim and mark her without even fully knowing she is ours. She brings her right hand up to my cheek and caresses the side of my face instantly calming shadow and bringing my attention back to her. I could stare in those icy blue eyes all day every day for the rest of my life. Once our eyes meet my body relaxes yet again and upon noticing the chain she drops her right hand to my shoulder and snakes her left arm around my back keeping us close. Her body naturally reacting to me. It is as if she could sense I was distressed and like mates do she comforted me, 
she is so perfect to me it is unbelievable. Once again we start to lose ourselves in the music. I let my hands drift lower down her back from her midsection slowly hesitating only momentarily in case she is not okay with where I am going. Her ice blue eyes never waver from mine as my hands make their way down to their desired destination, each taking a handful of her round as in squeezing hard. She let out another little moan before hastily grabbing the back of my neck, pulling my head down slightly, crashing her voluptuous lips against mine again. Squeezing her beautiful ass harder I pull her tightly against me, causing her to gasp as she now feels my bulge against her front. Her mouth opens ever so slightly allowing my tongue access to explore and dominate her mouth. I stop kissing her abruptly and move my wet lips to her neck. As I kiss her neck I try to decipher her unknown scent. As soon as my lips touch her neck my wolf starts going crazy mark her mark her mark her now. We can't do that not until I am sure she is mine if I mark her and she is destined for someone else that would be wrong and selfish of me so I shut him out and focus on Ashley. What is she? I mind link my sister. I mind link my sister. What do you mean? She smells different. I state as I try to figure out if I know what creature belongs to such a scent. What do you mean she smells different? Wait, is she your mate? She asks excitedly. No, it's not that. She doesn't smell like a human or vampire or any other supernatural being we've come across. She isn't one of us or I would sense her wolf. What is she? I don't know, brother. I never got that close. Glad you are, though you need to loosen up. She quips. She quips. Shut it em you know I have a lot going on being future alpha I can't be carefree and reckless like you. I have responsibilities. That's not what I mean alpha, that's not what I mean alpha. She says sarcastically. She says sarcastically. Just because I choose not to sleep with every she-wolf that throws herself at me doesn't mean I don't know how to have fun. I just want to wait to be with my mate. It should be special. You should understand that better than anyone. I know, I know, I know, I know. She shuts me out as I catch a glimpse of her and Bradley hand in hand heading up the stairs to the second floor, most likely looking for an empty bedroom to celebrate their reunion. Emma decided since this was our last weekend before heading to our special training we would start with the Halloween party and then head to the cabin our family owns for the weekend. I know they are just going to spend the majority of the weekend hiding in a bedroom screwing each other into oblivion since they won't be seeing each other for a while but I also know she wants to try, keyword try, to spend some time with me her big brother before I leave as well. I'll be gone a little longer than Bradley since his position in the pack isn't as important as mine will be. I'm starting to dread agreeing to go away with them when an idea pops into my head. Hey! I say after pulling my face away from her neck and see her eyes open again, I wonder where her thoughts were. I say after pulling my face away from her neck and see her eyes open again, I wonder where her thoughts were. Come away with me this weekend? Bradley, Emma, and I are going to our cabin tomorrow and Sunday and I would really like it if you would join us. Ashley's POV Did he just ask me to come away with him for the weekend? Every cell in my body is screaming at me to say yes but the logical part of my brain is saying no. I don't really know him and the way he makes me lose control of my senses is frightening. I've only been with him less than an hour and I've already brazenly kissed him and rubbed myself all over him trying to satiate this intense need to give myself to him completely. He is Emma's older brother and she will be there so it's not like I wouldn't feel safe. What scares me is all the other things he's making me feel. I've never really been interested in dating or sex. Maybe it's from being in an all-girls school for the past five years or the fact that I'm just as shy and awkward to actually interest a guy but Emerson seems interested, very interested from the hard bulge poking me as I dance with him. The way I danced with him, I have never done that before, and it both scares and excites me. Emerson is making me feel things I have never imagined I could feel. Every nerve in my body is on fire with our close proximity. I want him to touch me all over and I mean AL over. Something about him makes me bold and that's why when I found myself kissing him I couldn't believe I was the one who initiated it. He is being such a gentleman not wanting to pressure me into anything I may not want but I want him as ridiculously as he does me. 
A few times my own mouth betrayed me when a few moans managed to escape. Everything about him is screaming for me to touch him and let him do whatever he pleases with me. At one point I thought I heard a low growl come from him which I found comical but I probably imagined it. Here I am staring at this irresistible man unable to break free of whatever spell he has cast on me. I am thinking things I have never imagined in my life. As his hands roam over my body I picture him doing the exact same thing without either of us wearing clothing and that thought gave me butterflies. When he dipped his head down to my neck and starting kissing up and down I envisioned his lips over every inch of my body. I always thought I would save myself for my husband but with the way Emerson is making me feel I may give up that hope and lose myself with him. If he is able to make me feel this amazing with my clothes still on I can only imagine what it would be like to be naked and at his mercy. I can use this weekend to get to know him better and see if we have a chance of being more than friends. I would love that. I reply gleaming. Yes. He said picking me up and hugging me tightly which I did not expect and it made me laugh. He said picking me up and hugging me tightly which I did not expect and it made me laugh. I need to use the restroom. I stayed after he places me back on the floor. He was squeezing so tightly my bladder was screaming at me for release. I stayed after he places me back on the floor. He was squeezing so tightly my bladder was screaming at me for release. I should probably get some water too. Why don't you go to the bathroom and I'll grab you some water? Why don't you go to the bathroom and I'll grab you some water? He replies placing a kiss on my cheek and grabbing my hand to lead me towards the bathroom. Watch it. Some buff guy says bumping into Emerson as we make our way through the crowd. No you watch it. He yells back pushing the guy away from us while simultaneously pushing me behind his back protectively and I could have swore I heard another growl. Sorry Elf Emerson. The guy stutters out dropping his head which I find odd but shake it of as I did the imaginary growling I was hearing. Whatever Emma put in that drink was strong and making me delusional. The guy stutters out dropping his head which I find odd but shake it of as I did the imaginary growling I was hearing. Whatever Emma put in that drink was strong and making me delusional. Emerson shows me to the bathroom and once I am safely inside he leaves to get me some water. I relieve myself then wash my hands thoroughly. I also decide to splash some cold water on my face since I am feeling a bit flustered from the hot and heavy dancing session with Emerson. After drying my face of with a hand towel I look at myself in the mirror. I no longer see myself as a shy bookworm who is constantly worried about her grades. Tonight I feel sexy and brave, unashamed by my body's natural reaction to Emerson's. He has opened Pandora's box and I want all of him. I close my eyes and grip the countertop surrounding the sink as I imagine Emerson behind me slipping his hand under and up the bottom of my dress, pulling my panties down, and then suddenly the door opens, Emerson slips in, shuts and locks it. I was so caught of guard I quickly turn to face him and brace myself against the countertop in the bathroom. He is leaning back against the door with a pained expression on his face and I can swear I see his eyes changing colors again. I look at him curiously trying to figure out what he is thinking about. Before I have the chance to ask what is bothering him he is in front of me in a flash. His hands find their way to the backs of my thighs lifting me up and onto the countertop right next to the sink with him settling in between my legs. His mouth hungrily devours mine, his left hand resting on the small of my back holding me tightly against him, and his right hand around the back of my neck to control the depth of our kiss. I could smell you from the stairway baby. He whispers in my ear after breaking away from my lips and although I had no idea what exactly that meant his words only made the ache between my thighs stronger. He whispers in my ear after breaking away from my lips and although I had no idea what exactly that meant his words only made the ache between my thighs stronger. I want you. I whisper back. I whisper back. Please. I am saving myself for my mat for marriage. He responds resting his forehead against mine with his eyes closed but then he opens them and I could see a sense of mischief within them. He responds resting his forehead against mine with his eyes closed but then he opens them and I could see a sense of mischief within them. It doesn't mean we can't do other things. He continues, emphasizing the word other. He continues, 
emphasizing the word other. Do you trust me? He asks and all I can manage is a nod. He asks and all I can manage is a nod. He kisses my lips once more before returning to my neck. After kissing and sucking along my neck for a few moments he pulls back gives me a wink before sinking down to his knees in front of me. Reaching behind me, never breaking eye contact, he pulls me right up to the edge and inches his fingers up my thighs starting at my knees until they find their way under the waistband of my panties. Shifting up from one side to the other so he can pull them down over my as he gets them all the way of, smells them which instantly cause more juices to flow from my aching core, and then he tucks them in his back pocket. Lean back and relax. Let me take care of you baby girl. He says with a sexy smirk. He says with a sexy smirk. I do as he says because at this moment all logic is out the door. It doesn't matter that we just met or we are in a packed house in a stranger's bathroom all that matter is the feeling overtaking my senses and begging me to let him do whatever he pleases. I feel him part my legs slightly wider for his access. He teases by placing soft kisses along my inner thighs building the anticipation until he finally hits his mark slipping his tongue between my wet folds, licking up to my clit that he gently sucks on causing a sensual shudder throughout my whole body. I moan aloud and drop my head back from the intense first wave of pleasure that his tongue is bringing me. As he begins to flick his tongue against my throbbing clit I feel a finger slip inside me both surprising and exciting me. He continues to work his magic with his tongue and fingers as I run my right hand through his hair while still holding myself up slightly with my left hand down on the counter. Oh God Emerson. I manage to breathe out between moans. I manage to breathe out between moans. Please don't stop Emerson, I'm so close don't stop. And with that he places another finger inside and picks up speed of all his torturous movements. And with that he places another finger inside and picks up speed of all his torturous movements. I can feel it the build up that Emma always goes on and on about. She had sex for the first times a few months ago when she started dating her soulmate, as she calls him and she told me all about her first orgasm. I knew what was happening but never imagined how intense and spectacular it would truly feel. My whole body feels like it is on fire, I start feeling lightheaded, and then the muscles deep down inside tighten around Emerson's fingers inside me and I feel myself explode as my first orgasm ever causes a ripple effect throughout my whole body. Emerson removes his fingers yet continues licking every last drop from my dripping pussy. I fall back against the wall completely drained from the intensity of my first sexual experience with a man and an amazing orgasm. Emerson stands up and pulls me against him. I lazily comply to wore out to do anything else. I feel his nose run along my neckline as though was nuzzling in the crook of my neck. I can't believe I just had my first orgasm with Emma's hot older brother who I only met a few hours ago. I am still on the high of my first climax that I barely register Emerson scoop me up in his arms and carry me out to Emma's car. Emerson's POV I laid my beautiful Ashley in the back seat of my sister's car and lift her head so I can scoot in and lay her head on my lap. I honestly don't know if it is the alcohol, the orgasm, or a mixture of both, but she is out like a light. Her gorgeous face is relaxed and happy. Shadow is prancing around inside my head happy to have gotten a taste of her, but he wants more so much more. I end up taking of that silly wig my sister had her wear about five minutes into the drive to the cabin just so I could run my hand through her soft hair. She looks at peace in every now and then a small smile forms across her stunning features and it brings me nothing but joy. I only hope whatever thoughts are rattling around in her sleepy brain are about me because I don't know that I'll be able to stop thinking about her anytime soon and I can't wait to spend a whole weekend getting to know her. She must be our mate, Shadow states as we both watch her sleep. Don't get your hopes up just yet buddy. I'll have Emma keep an eye on her while we're away and as soon as we get back if she is indeed our mate we will claim her. We could just mark her now, she is perfect, we can choose for her to be ours. No I won't do that if the moon goddess wills it she will be ours, but if not we will let her go. That angered him and he retreats to the back of my mind. 
Once we finally arrive at the cabin Bradley chases Emma all the way inside and I can hear their laughter going up the stairs then disappear after one of the bedroom doors shut. Thank the goddess for soundproof rooms. Werewolves mating can get intense and loud so all the rooms in the cabin are soundproof to give any visitors privacy although it's not like we don't know what's going on in there. I roll my eyes as I carry my angel in my arms to one on the main floor bedrooms. They can have the whole dam upstairs less chance of Ashley walking in on something that would scar her. Gently laying her on the bed I go out to the car and grab my weekend bag. After bringing it inside and returning to the bedroom I placed Ashley and I grab some boxers and a t-shirt then head to the bathroom. I want out of this costume and need a cold shower after going down on Ashley. I had to fight every fiber of my being not to bend her over the counter in the bathroom and fuck her into next week. Every moan was painful yet exhilarating to hear and when she said my name I almost lost any sanity I had and gave into my carnal need to be buried deep inside her. I was honestly surprised that I was able to keep Shadow at bay the entire time in the bathroom he was fighting me every second to come forward and make her ours in every way possible. I start the shower and strip out of my clothes. Stepping into the walk-in shower and feeling the cool water I lean forward resting my head on my left arm against the shower wall. I start replaying what happened an hour ago in my head. I think about how easily she was soaking wet and ready for me. Her body reacted so effortlessly to my touch and it was driving me crazy. That first taste of her almost made me combust, every part of her tasted so sweet. I could eat her for every meal for the rest of my life and die a very happy man. My dick was hard just thinking about getting to put my fingers inside her tight wet pussy again. I reach down with my right hand and slowly start stroking myself as I envision her sexy mouth wrapped around my heart member. Unexpectedly I feel a small hand gently remove mine from my cock and take over stroking me. What are you? I say turning to face a now naked Ashley in the shower with me. Well we are both saving ourselves for marriage but as you said earlier we can do other things. She replies emphasizing the word other just as I had earlier. You gave me the best first orgasm of my life earlier and I'd like to at least try to return the favor. I am at a loss for words at this exact moment. The first reason being because although I have been wondering exactly what she looked likely completely naked having her like that now in front of me is making the urge to fuck her senseless unbearable. Her body is beyond perfect and I am fighting with Shadow to mate and mark her this very instant. Secondly I am surprised she woke up and snuck in here without me sensing her. With our wolves our senses are heightened to an extent making it hard to be snuck up on but she managed to do it. She takes my silence as compliance and drops down to her knees before me. I can see a bit of fear in her eyes. After admitting I gave her her first orgasm I guess as I'm the first male she has seen naked and the fact that I am a werewolf, alpha to boot, and we tend to be more well endowed is probably intimidating to such an innocent girl like Ashley. I find her innocence alluring and intoxicating. She starts stroking me as she takes a huge gulp almost afraid of what she's about to do. She raises her icy blue eyes to meet my gaze and just as I'm about to tell her she really doesn't have to repay me for earlier she rapidly takes every inch of me inside her mouth. Fuck, go big or go home I guess. I instantly throw my head back in pure pleasure and my hand instinctively moves to the back of her head as she starts bobbing her head back and forth sucking and licking me as she does. She explores my hard dick in her mouth with her tongue swirling around every inch. After a few minutes she relinquishes control as my hand behind her head holds it still and I begin to thrust my cock in and out of her mouth at a speed that I know will get me to the climax I'm chasing quicker because I'm sure her jaw will start hurting soon. Her left hand rests on my thigh to keep herself steady and she moves her right hand around to grabs my ass and squeezes it every so slightly which only makes me pick up my pace as I pump myself into her wet mouth a few more times before releasing my load. Her eyes shoot open and look directly into mine as she swallows every last drop and I release her hair from my grasp. I pull myself away from her helping her stand up and place her under the water. That felt amazing Ashley. I whisper in her ear as I hug her from behind and nuzzle into the side of her neck where I'm hoping one day my mark will reside. I whisper in her ear as I hug her from behind and nuzzle into the side of her neck where I'm hoping one day my mark will reside. 
After both of us wash up and dry ourselves we end up splitting the clothes I grabbed from my bag. I slip on the boxers and Ashley puts my t-shirt on. I realize she doesn't have any clothes since we weren't planning on her coming so I need to see if I can have someone from the pack make a trip to their dorm to grab her some clothes. We both climb under the covers and she turns facing away from me leaving me sad for just a moment before she scoots her whole body back into mine and pulls my arm over her waist while the other one rests under the pillow her head ends up on. Her body fits with mine perfectly and I let out a small sigh as I hope and pray that our moon goddess grants me my one desire of having Ashley as my mate. Good night Emerson, thank you for everything tonight and inviting me to stay with you this weekend. She says sweetly. Sweet dreams baby. I'm glad you decided to join us and I can't wait to spend the next two days with you. I whisper next to her ear before placing another kiss right above her collarbone where I hope to leave my mark one day and she shudders slightly once my lips find that spot. I whisper next to her ear before placing another kiss right above her collarbone where I hope to leave my mark one day and she shudders slightly once my lips find that spot. Seshi reacts to us. She eyes our mate. Shadow chimes in cheerfully. We don't know for sure yet we have to be patient. But I want her I need her I love her I need a shadow, me too. But I want her I need her I love her I need a shadow, me too. Ashley's POV I slowly open my eyes wondering if the previous night had been a dream, a wondrous one, but not real. I go to move and the strong arm wrapped tightly around my midsection tells me last night was not a dream. Everything that happened last night was true and it brings a huge smile to my face. I am already head over heels for Emerson and we only met less than 24 hours ago. He makes me feel things I never thought possible. Something about him makes me feel open and free. I no longer want to be the shy, timid, and studious girl I have always been. I want to be bold, sexy, and open to possibilities with him. Can we sleep just a little bit longer babe please? He whispers in a sexy morning voice that sends an instant rush of heat down between my thighs. Ashley. He huskily says as he switches positions pinning beneath him as he settles in between my legs in no time at all. What? I question shocked by his quick movements and trying to figure out what I did or said to elicit such a reaction. You know what darling. He replies pressing his hard member against my aching core, gripping my hip and runs his eyes down my body allowing me to follow until he stops looking between us. You don't have anything on under this t-shirt and the scent of your arousal is making it hard to resist Matt making it hard to resist you my little temptress. Sorry. I say softly feeling a little bad that I am making it hard for him but I can't help the way he makes me feel and the thoughts that run through my mind. Come. He replies jumping of the bed and offers his hand to me. Let's go make some breakfast and get some coffee then we can spend the day relaxing and getting to know each other better. I would like that a lot. I reply taking his hand and allow him to pull me up flush against him. First and foremost. He says reaching down to the bag on the floor beside the bed and pulls out another pair of boxers then holds them up to me. No one is allowed to see that sexy as of yours except me. He says reaching around with his free hand and gives my as a tight squeeze and slap causing me to jump just a bit. Yes, sir. I say giving a fake salute and taking the boxers from his hand. The next 48 go by so quickly but by the end of it I am so overwhelmed with emotions I can't help crying a little on the car ride back to campus with Emma. Emerson and I ended up making a huge breakfast Saturday morning and discussed out favorite dishes as we cooked. Emma and Bradley made a brief appearance to steal some food before disappearing back into the bedroom upstairs. They couldn't keep their hands of each other and I could see the pure unadulterated love in each of their eyes when they looked at each other. I craved that and the only person I wanted looking at me like that was him, Emerson. After cleaning up the kitchen he and I played a few different card games while talking about our childhoods. Unfortunately, I don't remember much of mine and my parents died when I was little so I didn't have much to share. He told me all about his family. His mom and dad, and other little sister Elizabeth who was a year younger than Emma. They all sound so close and I envied that. 
He also got into some of the mischief he and Bradley got into when they were younger which brought tears to my eyes with how much trouble they would get into. We talked about our favorite books and movies after lunch then settled in for a binge session of a TV show everyone was raving about and Chinese food for dinner. I ended falling asleep during the third episode and woke up in bed next Emerson Sunday morning loving the thought that he carried me to bed. He was so sweet and caring. I knew there were more bedrooms in the cabin but was happy he decided to stay in the same one as me. I had never slept in the same bed as anyone else but sleeping next to him was unbelievable. We started Sunday morning with a bath where he brought me to my second orgasm and it surpassed the first one by a long shot. Then we made our way to an antique store, bookstore, and a few clothing stores all locally run before returning to the cabin and enjoying a candlelit dinner together. We laid in bed that night naked and he asked me to touch myself while he watched. Soon he was stroking himself and we both got of without touching each other, simply watching one another, and I had to admit it was very erotic. Then the morning after, Monday morning the day we were all leaving, we ate breakfast before sitting on the couch with me straddling him hugging and kissing each other for over an hour. He promised he would text and cal as much as he could and he would be returning home in two and half years then we could pick up where we were leaving of. I asked about coming to visit him on my break upcoming holiday break but he firmly stated it was strictly forbidden to have visitors where he and Bradley were headed. I held it together and kept a brave happy face on until I got in the car with Emma and Emerson disappeared from the sight of the rearview mirror. The tears flowed freely from my eyes as soon as he was gone from my sight. Emma tried to comfort me but nothing would help the sudden ache I was feeling in my heart. We were only together for around 56 hours but it felt like I had known Emerson an eternity. I never really believed in love at first sight or such nonsense as soulmates but after the weekend I spent with him both were real possibilities for me. My body craves his and my heart feels hollow knowing he is going to be away from me for so long. Little did I know that in just two and a half years my life was going to drastically change, for better or worse, only time would tell. Emerson's POV Ugh this flight home is taking too long. I just want to be back home where I can finally see the love of my life Ashley. Yes I said love of my life. She invaded my heart the very first weekend we spent together but then we spent the next two and a half years talking almost daily whether it be talking, texting, or even video chatting. Although over the last nine months our daily chats have dwindled down a bit but that didn't change how I felt. She had become my best friend and I hers. She was there to listen to my stresses and worries about my family and pack and always tried to offer solid advice. Obviously I left out certain thing keeping our secret for the time being but the more she helped me the quicker I realized what a wonderful Luna she would be. If she's our matron member Shadow Mox. Shadow Mox. That was my daily reminder to myself that there was a chance she was not our mate. Shadow insists after every chat with her that he can feel the bond but I think he is just desperate for her to ours. I am as well but I can't bear the thought of getting my hopes completely up for them to be shattered by finding out she is indeed not my mate. It could quite possibly kill me if she isn't because that would mean I have to let her go. I can't be madly in love with her and just pretend we are good friends any longer. I remember the first time I told her I loved her she was so shocked and when she said it back I thought my heart would beat out of my chest. We never really discussed what it meant, as in did we love each other as friends or more than that. I hoped she knew what I meant but if she didn't I ready to make it perfectly clear when I saw her. M. Bradley and I are almost there are you ready? I mind link my sister as we pull up to the pack house. Yay be right down. She replies cutting the link bursts through the front door a few minutes later, and hops in the back seat. Let's go, she says excitedly after giving Bradley a passionate kiss right in front of me making me gag. So she's meeting us there right? I ask not able to hide my excitement. Yeah Adam is bringing her, promised he'd escort her himself, she replies. She replies. Adam Archer. I growl. I growl. 
Don't be dramatic, Kiwi already had this discussion. She graduated a year before me, so I couldn't go with her, and she got accepted into a college in his territory. He's been looking after her and promised to keep her out of trouble. He's the alpha of that territory. If he gave his word to protect her, he will do it. I know there's bad blood between you two, but it was me who asked, not you. I know. I know doesn't mean I have to like it. I is back. I is back. Just focus on the positive bro we're about to get your mate. She says trying to distract me from the thought of Adam. Protecting. Ashley. We don't know she's my mate there's still a chance. We don't know she's my mate there's still a chance. Oh come on you two our mate stop trying to convince yourself otherwise. Oh come on you two our mate stop trying to convince yourself otherwise. She shouts cutting me of and getting her point across. She shouts cutting me of and getting her point across. The drive to the party welcoming all returning participants who completed training home seems like it is taking forever. It is at a hotel that happens to be between our territory and Adams. I thought about the day Ash told me she graduated with honors and had gotten a full scholarship to a college in Mountain View. I was so proud of her then instantly worried about her being away from Emma leaving her unprotected followed by furious once I heard where she was going Alpha Adam Archer's territory. His pack, the Dark Knight pack, was the third largest pack in the region right below ours, which made him furious. He is a few years older than I am and has yet to find his Luna as well. I know the fact that I'm younger than him and about to take over the second largest pack in the region probably pisses him off and the fact that I may possibly have my Luna finally by my side after tonight may just send him into a full mental rage. One hell of Luna she will be to I keep thinking tearing my thoughts away from the asshole Alpha and back to my stunning Ashley. She is strong, smart, and sexy. Soon if the moon goddess answers my nightly prayers she will be all mine. The closer we get to the hotel the more anxious I become about the small chance Ashley is not my mate where a shadow is eager and ready to mate and mark Ashley, he is sure she was ours. After parking, we drop our bags in our rooms and change quickly. We all make our way down to the large banquet hall on the first floor of the hotel where everyone was meeting. As we get closer and closer shadow is going on and on about our mate being here. I don't believe him until we reach just outside the door and the faint smell of lavender mixed with mint hits my nose. It is intoxicating and I realize he is right our mate is here and I silently pray one last time to the moon goddess that it is Ashley. We open the door to the banquet hall and I immediately start the search for my mate. I skin every inch of the room and I finally land my sights on her sexy silhouette leaning against the bar with alpha asshole to her left and his beta to her right talking away. They are just talking away like old friends. Mate, 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 see I told you she was our mate. Shadow chants smugly inside my head. Oh my god. I hear her scream snapping me from my wolf rubbing in the fact that he is right and notice my gorgeous mate now running towards me. I hear her scream snapping me from my wolf rubbing in the fact that he is right and notice my gorgeous mate now running towards me. Emerson. She shouts jumping into my arms, wrapping her arms around my neck, and squeezing me like she hasn't seen me in, well years, which she hasn't. Goddess I missed you. I whisper wrapping one arm tightly around her waist, the other up under her arm with my hand resting on the back of her neck, and bury my face in her hair inhaling her intoxicating scent that is just for me which brings a huge smile to my face. I whisper wrapping one arm tightly around her waist the other up under her arm with my hand resting on the back of her neck, and bury my face in her hair inhaling her intoxicating scent that is just for me which brings a huge smile to my face. Ashley I have something. Wait, 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 wait. She says cutting me of as I place her back on the ground gently. She says cutting me of as I place her back on the ground gently. I want you to meet someone. She continues excitedly. She continues excitedly. This is my boyfriend Adam. She states as I look over to him now standing right next to her as she slips her hand inside his like it is the most natural thing in the world. Mine is all I managed to say before Shadow takes over. Shadow takes control of my body ripping Ashley from Adam's side a little too harshly for my taste but justifiable since she is our mate and that bastard is touching her. What angers him more is the fact that Alpha Archer had the audacity to still be smirking after realizing Ashley was indeed our mate. 
Shadow pushes Ashley back towards Emma and Bradley who are right behind them watching the whole encounter. Take her up to my room now, Emma. Shadow orders before pouncing on Adam. He starts by punching Adam in the face while he just lays there smiling and laughing which only infuriates Shadow more. Shadow orders before pouncing on Adam. He starts by punching Adam in the face while he just lays there smiling and laughing which only infuriates Shadow more. A few other alphas have gathered around now trying to break up the situation. Once we see Ralph, Adam's wolf, try to come forward Shadow forces his claws out and grabs his neck roughly asserting every ounce of dominance he can muster over the elder alpha. This fight, the fight for our mate, he refuses to lose. We both waited so long to have her by our side as our mate and Luna no way would we allow a scumbag like Archer to swoop in last minute and steal her. I know why he was doing this. If we find our mate and Luna that would make us ten times stronger than him. Wolves with mates are much stronger than those who remain mateless. He is also still pissed we hurt his crazy little sister even though in all honesty we hadn't done anything wrong in that situation. We are both so focused on hurting Adam that we don't notice that Ashley hasn't left the hall. Please. She begs now on her knees crying. She begs now on her knees crying. Please stop fighting. She whimpers between sobs. Don't hurt him. Shadow instantly retracts his claws and gives me back control. He is scaring our mate and the moment he realizes what he is doing he stops he would never purposefully cause her harm or terror. I hop of Adam and rush over to our mate. Dropping on my knees I pull her into my embrace feeling the sparks fly every single place our skin touches, she truly is our mate. She starts struggling against my embrace and I back away slightly confused. She looks hurt and scared of me which is like a punch to the gut. I sit back on my feet and let her go to which she instantly scrambles over to Adam. Are you okay? She asks and the concern in her voice eats at me. Yes, my love, I'm fine. He says reaching up and cupping the side of her face. He says reaching up and cupping the side of her face. All I see is red and it takes everything in me not to attack him again. Bradley and Emma are both trying to hold me back. I keep thinking if I attack there's a chance I could hurt Ashley and I refuse to put her in any more danger. I just need her away from him so I can explain what we are to each other. I hate myself for wasting so much time with her. I should have explained everything the first weekend we met. I should have trusted my wolf's instincts that she was our mate and just marked her the first night we're together. Instead I put so much distance between us and that led her right into the arms of the asshole Alpha. Come on let go to the room and get you cleaned up. She says wrapping her arm around his waist after he manages to stand. She says wrapping her arm around his waist after he manages to stand. Ashley we need to talk. I plead pulling myself away from Bradley and Emma. I plead pulling myself away from Bradley and Emma. Not now Emerson you've done enough. Not now Emerson you've done enough. She spits out harshly. Please Ash. I beg. I beg. Emerson. She says as she tries to move around me but I won't let her. She says as she tries to move around me but I won't let her. Ashley, my beautiful mate and Luna. Please listen to me. I say desperately and do the only thing I feel would be right by dropping to my knees in front of her bowing my head slightly and bare my neck in submission to her. I say desperately and do the only thing I feel would be right by dropping to my knees in front of her bowing my head slightly and bare my neck in submission to her. Almost everyone in the hall gasps at the sight before them. Even Bradley seems extremely shocked at my last ditch effort to earn her forgiveness and stop her from leaving with him. Alphas are the leaders meant to be strong, feared, and unbreakable. They do not ask for forgiveness or submit to anyone and yet here I am submitting myself to the women I love, my mate, my Luna. She looks around at all the shocked faces trying to figure out what is going on and then down at me. What are you doing, Emerson? She asks, but I don't respond. She asks, but I don't respond. He's submitting to you, Ash. Emma speaks up softly behind me. I don't know what that means. Emma speaks up softly behind me. I don't know what that means. She replies. She replies. 
It means this filthy little mud is trying to whatever he can to get you to listen him, but we aren't going to do that. Adam says roughly grabbing her wrist and yanking her past me. I twist towards the direction they are heading and watched in horror as he drags my mate away from me. I can't simply take her from him or she may never forgive me and leave me. I just need things to cool down and then I will find some time when she isn't with him to explain everything. Just a few feet away from the door she stops and yanks her wrist free turning back to me. The moment her icy blue eyes met mine they tell me everything I need to know. She loves me but she is scared and confused. She is scared of me and I can't race over to her and rip her away from him chancing that fear may grow into something uncontrollable pushing her farther away. So I just sit there and watch as he grabs my mate's wrist yet again and pulls her out of the hall and away from me with shadow howling inside my head. Ashley's POV. Ow you're hurting me. Ow you're hurting me. I screech as Adam continues to pull me down hallway after hallway until we finally reach our room. I have no idea what is going on and my head is spinning from all the insanity that just unfolded in the last 20 minutes. Adam lets go of me, pushing me slightly farther into the room, and then locks the room from the inside. He goes into the bathroom and starts a shower so I take a seat on the edge of the bed waiting for him to get out so we can talk about what the fuck happened downstairs. Everything was fine I finally had my three best friends back and I was so excited to spend a whole weekend with them again but then as soon as Emerson saw Adam's hand in mine he lost it. I know we have an unconventional friendship. We tell each other we love each other, we've seen each other naked, and have given each other orgasms but I thought he'd be happy for me. I was happy with Adam he was such a gentleman. Emma told me he was a family friend and that he would be meeting me on campus my first day of class to show me around and make sure I had everything I needed. He was kind and sweet and after a few months of asking me out repeatedly I decided to say yes. I mean Emerson left me of his own free will and it's not like he ever tried to come back to me in the two and a half years we were apart so why shouldn't I have tried to find some piece of happiness? I missed him like crazy after our first weekend together. A part of me instantly fell in love with him and thought maybe he was my soulmate but with time I started losing faith in that idea. Could one soulmate really stand to be away from them so long I contemplated over and over. Adam paid attention to me and I know how pathetic that sounds but I was extremely lonely without Emerson and Emma. I was without my two favorite people for months and Adam was starting to fill the crater-sized hole Emerson left in my heart when we departed ways. Yes. We talked almost every day but over the last year it just wasn't enough. I started missing him and feeling this need for him that quite frankly scared me. I had never needed a man like I did Emerson so I let myself get distracted with Adam but as soon as I laid eyes on Emerson downstairs it felt like everything clicked into place. I ran into his arms without hesitation because he was my best friend and I truly loved him. As soon as I felt his insanely warm arms wrapped tightly around I felt safe and my skin was dancing with tingles everywhere our skin met. I wished I had just stayed in his arms and not let him let go of me. Then things wouldn't have escalated so quickly. He sudden rage startled me and when I saw him punching Adam's face repeatedly I dropped to my knees crying because for the first time in in my life I was truly scared of him, the man I was in love with. As soon as I spoke and he saw me crying he was in front of me in an instant and had pulled me into his arms. I was excited to be back in his warm embrace and feel the tiny sparks erupting everywhere he touched but then I remembered what just happened and tried to get away from him. I needed to check and see if Adam was okay. We had been dating several months now, he was my boyfriend and had been nothing but nice and helpful the past year and a half I had to at least make sure he was okay before dealing with my clearly unresolved issues with Emerson. As I was talking to him I could see Emma and Bradley holding him back and wondered when he became such a hot head. He was always so kind and gentle with me I could have never imagined him losing his temper like he did just now. Then after pleading with me to talk to him and let him explain everything, which I desperately wanted, he did the strangest thing he dropped to his knees and bowed his head towards me. I could hear a gasp come from every single person in the banquet hall and I don't think Bradley's mouth could have opened any wider. I was trying to figure out exactly what was going on when Emma said he was submitting to me. 
I wondered why on earth he would do that act as if I held any sort of power of him. Then just as I was about to go to him Adam's firm grip on my wrist snapped me back to reality and he hurriedly pulled me towards the exit I felt this strong pull back towards Emerson. Let's go to bed. Adam's voice snaps me from all the thoughts rattling around inside my head. We need to talk first. I state matter-of-factly because I am not just going to allow him to sweep whatever just happened downstairs under the rug. What was that downstairs? It was nothing, my love. That mutt downstairs thinks he has some sort of claim on you but you are mine. Emerson actually wants me to be his. I whisper more to myself really. I whisper more to myself really. He does, but that doesn't matter because you are with me now. Adam replies as he slips on a pair of boxers then shirt. Adam replies as he slips on a pair of boxers then shirt. I need to talk to him. I say realizing I made a mistake ever getting involved with Adam in the first place. You're not going anywhere. He replies taking a rather intimidating stance in front of the door. He replies taking a rather intimidating stance in front of the door. Adam, Emerson and I have a history I need to go check on him and make sure he's okay, as well. I say making my way over and reaching for the doorknob behind him. I say making my way over and reaching for the doorknob behind him. I said no. He speaks through gritted teeth and before I can comprehend what is happening he grabs me by the throat pushes me away from the door and against the nearest wall. He speaks through gritted teeth and before I can comprehend what is happening he grabs me by the throat pushes me away from the door and against the nearest wall. You are mine. He states dragging out each word. Adam. I manage to push out even though it hurts like hell considering I'm pretty sure he's crushing my windpipe. I manage to push out even though it hurts like hell considering I'm pretty sure he's crushing my windpipe. Please you're hurt. My words are cut short when both of us are caught of guard by the hotel room door being kicked of the hinges and a very angry Emerson standing there with both hands on the door frame. This time I hear the growl escape his lips but before I can reach out to him or for him to take even a step towards me I feel something sharp pierce through the skin at the base of my neck. I can't help the scream that escapes my lips as I try to understand what is happening to me and why Emerson is just standing there clutching his chest. Suddenly I feel the grip around my throat disappear and Emerson's eyes turn pure black as he tackles Adam to ground. I watch in horror as Adam manages to kick Emerson of him backwards and they both are quickly up and attacking each other again. I reach up to touch my neck to see what exactly Adam did to me but as soon as my fingers touch the affected area my hand burns. Slowly that burning sensation spreads throughout my whole body as I try to comprehend what is going on what happened and watch as the love of my life fight the asshole that just attacked me. The room starts to spin and I lean back against the wall to balance myself and try to get my bearings back. My head is pounding and heart is beating at an unhealthy rate. Emerson. I manage to whisper before slipping into an unconscious state and falling limply on the floor. I manage to whisper before slipping into an unconscious state and falling limply on the floor. Emerson's POV. After leaving the hall and going to my room to cool I figure taking a shower would be best. After leaving the hall and going to my room to cool I figure taking a shower would be best. Of course while in there I think about the second time we were intimate with each other in the shower at the cabin. I start thinking about how we never should have left that cabin or I should have listened to my damn wolf and marked her that weekend that way Adam would have known she was of limits. I hate myself for leaving her unmarked for so long but I figured she'd be safe with Emma and in all honesty I didn't think she would even be Adam's type which is why I didn't immediately leave training after hearing she was going to be staying in his territory. I should have never left her but it was my duty to my pack to attend the special training that all alphas and those with the highest ranks attend before officially becoming the leaders of their pack. I needed to complete everything before returning home and I knew no matter how much I wanted to leave and go be with her it would only delay my know our future because in all reality ever since she came into my life two and a half years ago I never imagined anybody but her by my side through everything for the rest of our lives. I held back my feelings for her over our many texts and calls because I didn't want to cause her pain or give her false hope on the of chance we weren't mates. I never planned to pull her into the supernatural life until I was damn sure she was mine. 
Now after just finding out she is indeed my mate she is being thrown in the deep end, as they say, and I pray to the moon goddess that she will be understanding and accepting of our kind. I can't lose her now not after waiting so long for her to be my one and only. I hate seeing her with him and the way he was manhandling her had my wolf in a frenzy but I had to let her go and come to me of her own free will. I will never force myself on her. After showering and putting some clothes on I can't help but pace back and forth in my hotel room, phone in hand, fighting the urge to Cal and at least make sure he hasn't hurt her. After pacing a little I place my phone on the charger and sit on the edge of the bed running my hands through my hair trying to figure out my next move. A wave of panic rushes over my body and I instinctively know it is the bond telling me something is wrong with my mate. I waste no time rushing out of my hotel room and following her sweet scent to that I asterisk asterisk Cole's room. I hear her shallow breathing and the words, please your hurt and kick the door from its frame onto the ground. First my eyes see his hand around her delicate throat, then my vision moves to my mate's icy blue eyes to find a mixture of fear and love, and then I settle my gaze on Adam's face which holds a devious smirk. Before I have even a second to access the situation and figure out how to get Ashley out of there safely Adam does the unthinkable. He elongates his canines and sinks them into my mate's neck forcing his mark on her. Her scream brings tears to my eyes and a sharp pain shoots right through my heart like a silver dagger is being plunged deep inside my chest. I feel her bond break almost completely hanging on by the tiny thread that would shatter it completely if he had the time to mate with her. I have to kill him before her bond with him is solidified making ours null and void forever. He removes his mouth from her neck not even bothering to seal it and I see red once again. Shadow pushes forward taking control and pummels him to the ground. He is quick and kicks us off but we are right back at it not a second later. Emerson. Her voice whispers breaking me out of attack mode, my claws that are against Adam's throat ready to rip him shreds pull back, and I watch in horror as her body drops to the ground with a thud. Her voice whispers breaking me out of attack mode, my claws that are against Adam's throat ready to rip him shreds pull back and I watch in horror as her body drops to the ground with a thud. Ashley! Both Shadow and I whimper rushing to her side giving Adam the chance to jump out of the hotel room window. Emma get in here now Bradley get outside immediately and find Adam. He jumped out of the window and is going to try to escape my wrath don't let him. I say opening a private link between the three of us. I say opening a private link between the three of us. Yes, Alpha. Bradley simply responds. What's going on, E? You're scaring me. Emma asks worriedly. Emma asks worriedly. It's Ashley, Emma. I don't know what to do, he he marked her. All I hear is a gasp from Emma and loud growl from Bradley before cutting the link to focus on my mate. All I hear is a gasp from Emma and loud growl from Bradley before cutting the link to focus on my mate. I pick her up in my arms and carry her over to the bed laying her down gently. Her skin is on fire it feels like what I image walking on hot coals would feel like. Her body is drenched in sweat yet she is shaking like she is cold. Between the shaking and the small sobs coming from her mouth I am losing my mind. I have no idea what to do to help her. We never had any sort of training when it comes to such a thing. It is an unwritten rule not to forcefully place your mark on another. Not only are you taking another person's mate, but there is always the possibility their body can reject the mark, killing them in the process. Even rogues have the common decency to not force their mark on anyone and they are the most vile of our kind. How the hell did this happen? Emma shouts pulling my attention from my mate and inner thoughts, I hadn't even heard her come and I was so focused on Ashley. Emma shouts pulling my attention from my mate and inner thoughts, I hadn't even heard her come and I was so focused on Ashley. She must have tried to leave. She must have tried to leave. I felt a sudden rush of panic and knew it was coming from her. I followed her scent and could hear her breathing difficultly through the door. As soon as I knocked it down and Adam saw it was me he snapped and forcefully marked her. I attacked him but when she collapsed I got distracted and he managed to escape. I recant the entire story and by the end I am crying, I know not very manly but I don't care. I don't know what to do. I sob taking Ashley's limp hand in my own. I sob taking Ashley's limp hand in my own. How do I fix this M?
I may have an idea. She says pulling her phone from her back pocket, unlocking it, and calling someone then puts it on speakerphone and places it on the bed between us. Emma, so nice to hear from you. How are you, my dear? Emma, so nice to hear from you. How are you, my dear? The soft voice rings dearly from the other end of the cow. Grandma. She replies and I look at her confused by the fact that did not sound like either one of our grandmothers. She replies and I look at her confused by the fact that did not sound like either one of our grandmothers. Grandma's Ashley, you told me to call if there was ever an emergency. Grandma's Ashley, you told me to call if there was ever an emergency. What happened? She says curtly. She says curtly. An alpha and alpha forcefully marked her, and now she unconscious. She's hot to the touch, drenched in sweat, and we can't get her to stop shaking. The only way to help her is for her true mate to mark her. It will negate the mark forced up on her. I don't know how we will find her mate in the state she's in. She states frantically. He's here. Emma responds rapidly. Her mate is there. She questions through the phone. She questions through the phone. Yes, I am. I reply. Emerson M.M. M. Emerson as in she's been in love with you since she was 16, Emerson. She's been in love with me this whole time. I say excitedly as I look up towards my beautiful mate's face which brings me sadness once again as I see her eyes rapidly moving from left to right underneath her eyelids. Focus son, you need to mark her now or that other wolf's mark will kill her. What? I say letting go of Ashley's hand, stand up, and back away from the bed. I can't mark her now not like this. Emerson listen to me if you don't mark her right now we will not only lose Ashley but we lose the last female lichen alive. What did you just say? Both Emma and I simultaneously say. I'll explain everything when I get there but you're wasting time mark you mate. She commands. She commands. No I won't force my mark on her like he did. If I mark her right now without her consent I'll be just like him. Listen to me my sweet boy. Ashley has been in love with since the very first night you met. She has wanted to be with you ever since your first weekend with you. She wants you just as much as you want her and the moon goddess has willed you two together. So stop thinking like that and save my granddaughter's life by marking her. Do it for her, for her future. She's right. Emma chimes in. Emma chimes in. That girl has been in love with you for the past two and a half years. She would never openly admit it for fear of being rejected by you, but I could see the love she has for you anytime we would talk about you, or she would even simply hear your name brought up in conversation between Bradley and I. She's yours, bro, so for the love of the moon goddess, please claim her and let's make this right. I stare down at Ashley wishing that things could be different. I never imagined that it would play out like this. I wanted to mate with her and mark her while I was buried deep inside her. I was going to make our first time together special and explain exactly what would happen after I marked her, but now everything was so messed up. What was her grandma talking about losing the last female leakin? Is that why I couldn't place her scent when we first met? There hasn't been a leakin spotted in over years, how could my mate be one? Emerson, you have to hurry. Emma yells, snapping me back to reality as Ashley's body begins to convulse on the bed. I speedily make my way back over to the bed, sit back against the headboard and pull her up across my lap, wrap one arm around her back to support her while also calming her body, and use my free hand to push the hair from her neck and hold a firm grasp against the back of her neck to keep her still. I look at her elegant facial features trying to mesmerize every detail of her face in case this doesn't go as planned. I will never stop regretting not listening to Shadow and marking her as ours at the cabin then we wouldn't even be in this predicament. I allow Shadow to come forward because I know I can't be the one to mark her in this moment. Our canines come forth and he swiftly sinks them deep into her neck right over Adam's disgusting mark, pulls away licks it clean, and then I have full control back. I love you Ashley and I'm sorry this happened to you. I whisper in her ear before I pull away and cradle her to my chest as I feel her temperature lower bringing me the peace of mind that she will indeed be okay. I can feel her, I can feel her. Shadow speaks. Shadow speaks. Me too I felt the bond snap back into place, she is ours now forever and always.
not just Ashley Immers and I can sense her lichen now, not just Ashley Immers and I can sense her lichen now, she says she says our mark. Ashley's POV. Loud bells ringing over and over wake me from my sleep hurting my ears. I bring my knees to my chest, dip my head down, and cover each ears with a hand trying to silence the loud sound. The door bursts open and none other than my brother stumbles and looking around the room erratically. What are you doing sister? He says running towards me and grabbing my hand pulling me from my bed. We are being attacked, we must get you out of here. He continues as he starts pulling me down and out of the house towards the forest where I see our grandmother pacing. He continues as he starts pulling me down and out of the house towards the forest where I see our grandmother pacing. Oh thank you moon goddess, she says before pulling me into a tight hug. I thought we were too late. Graham what's happening? I ask her. My sweet child we are being attacked, I don't know how they got here without us knowing but they have wiped out half the pack already, but don't worry I'm here to get you out of here safely. I can't leave. I say stepping away from her embrace. I say stepping away from her embrace. What about mama and papa? I continue looking back towards our home that now had flames shooting out from everywhere. I continue looking back towards our home that now had flames shooting out from everywhere. Princes. My brother states grabbing my face gently and directing my attention from the chaos surrounding our home back to him. My brother states grabbing my face gently and directing my attention from the chaos surrounding our home back to him. You must go with Gran now I will save as many as I can but you you are our future who has to leave right now. Come with us. I pleaded. I pleaded. You know I can't do that I'm the future alpha of our pack, and it is my duty and honor to fight until we end this. He replied. Please. I pleaded. I pleaded. Just come. I continued but was cut short by a sharp pain in my chest and I noticed my brother felt it too, one of our parents had died. I continued but was cut short by a sharp pain in my chest and I noticed my brother felt it too, one of our parents had died. Go, he said pushing me back towards Graham as we heard a large howl immediately followed by another pain which could only mean one thing our parents had both been killed. Mom, Dad. I gasped shooting up in bed and looking around frantically for my parents. I gasped shooting up in bed and looking around frantically for my parents. I wasn't in my childhood bedroom anymore so it must have been a dream. It took me a moment to look around and realize I was in the bedroom Emerson and I shared at the cabin when we went away for the weekend. The events of last night come crashing back like a tidal wave. I remember Emerson busting the door down and attacking Adam. The pain in my neck, I recall, reaching up and touching where I remember something sharp puncturing my skin but it doesn't hurt anymore instead as soon as I touch that specific area of my skin a pleasurable sensation takes over. I try to remember the rest of the night but nothing and I begin wondering how I got here and exactly what happened after I passed out. I look down and notice I am in a t-shirt and boxers again, most likely Emerson's but they smell different. I lift the shirt up tuck my nose inside, and inhale the earthy scent that makes my heart flutter. He smells heavenly I hear someone whisper but no one else is in the room with me. I go back to his intoxicating aroma. I don't remember Emerson smelling this amazing when we were together before and am surprised by the way my body is reacting to his intoxicating smell as my overwhelming desire for him begins leaking from my aching pussy. I want him now more than ever and then I wonder if he was the one who brought me here. I push the covers from my body and hop of the bed determined to go find the man I love and finally tell him how I really feel. Before I can even take a step in the direction of the door it opens to reveal the very man I was thinking about and lusting after for the past two and half years. I run over and jump on him wrapping my legs around his waist and arms around his neck and think about how much I have missed him and never want to let him go. His arms instinctively go around my waist to support me and when he tightens his hold on me and buries his face in my neck I know he is feeling the same way. I start hearing a whisper rattling around inside my head over and over, just one word mate. I missed you so much Emerson.
I cry out unable to control my emotions in the moment. I cry out unable to control my emotions in the moment. I love you. I've always loved you and I'm so sorry I left with Adam. I'm sorry I even got involved with him without you and Emma I was so lonely and he seemed. I continue but am cut of as Emerson crashes his lips onto mine devouring them with a passion I never knew existed, it feels as though he is pouring every ounce of emotion he has into that one kiss. I continue but am cut of as Emerson crashes his lips onto mine devouring them with a passion I never knew existed, it feels as though he is pouring every ounce of emotion he has into that one kiss. No Ash I'm sorry. He says breaking away and rests his forehead against mine. He says breaking away and rests his forehead against mine. I'm sorry I ever left you in the first place. I knew since the moment I first saw you I wanted you to be my forever and I have loved you just as long. I missed you every single second of every day we were apart and if you'll allow me I want to spend the rest of our lives making it up to you. Do you really mean that? I question unable to believe that my dreams of being with him forever are really coming true. I swear it. He says leaning back slightly and crossing an X over his chest with his finger. He says leaning back slightly and crossing an X over his chest with his finger. Emerson. I question a little unsure if I really want to ask this question and scared of the answer. I question a little unsure if I really want to ask this question and scared of the answer. What happened last night? Did you did you kill Adam? No. He replies as his grip on me tightens. He replies as his grip on me tightens. He got away, but don't worry I'm here now and I promise I will keep you safe. What did he hurt me with? I remember feeling a sharp pain and it felt like my whole body was on fire but today I feel perfectly fine. Ashley we have a lot of things to discuss but I guess now is as good a time as any. He says walking over to a large chair in the corner of the room and sits down taking me with him leaving me sitting on his lap and the image of us naked and me bouncing up and down with him inside me flashes through my mind. He says walking over to a large chair in the corner of the room and sits down taking me with him, leaving me sitting on his lap and the image of us naked and me bouncing up and down with him inside me flashes through my mind. Ash please. He pleads gripping my hips tightly which sends a sensation of pleasure straight to my core. I want to be inside you as well, but we need to talk about some things first. How did you know what I was thinking? I question. I question. We're linked now. I can feel everything you feel and until you learn to better control your thoughts I will be able to hear almost everything you think. What does that mean we're linked? I can't hear your thoughts. Once you mark me you will be able to. We are mates Ashley and when mates mark each other it solidifies their bond intertwining their souls and in a sense making them one. You lost me? Mates? Mark each other. I say then reach up to touch my neck as something inside me clicks. I say then reach up to touch my neck as something inside me clicks. Is that what Adam did last night was mark me? I forgot how smart you are. He says with a small chuckle but then goes back to being serious. Yes Adam forcefully marked you hoping to break our bond and the only way to save you was to place my mark on you since I am your fated mate. What are you? I ask confused what all of this means but finally understand Emerson was not simply a human man there was much more to him. I ask confused what all of this means but finally understand Emerson was not simply a human man there was much more to him. Emerson's POV. Werewolf. Werewolf. I simply state and watch her facial expression change now holding a mixture of curiosity and admiration, instead of confusion and weariness which I expected. I simply state and watch her facial expression change now holding a mixture of curiosity and admiration, instead of confusion and weariness which I expected. Is that why you growled? She questions. She questions. Ha! Huh. I ask not remembering ever growling at her. At the Halloween party where we first met I could have swore I heard you growl a couple times, but figured maybe it was just the booze playing tricks on me. I didn't even realize I did that. Sometimes I'm unaware of it and also Shadow will make noises without me noticing. Shadow. He's my wolf. He's my wolf. Can I meet him? He would like that very much. 
He would like that very much. I reply allowing shadow to take control of our body. I reply allowing shadow to take control of our body. Mate, he says lovingly as he reaches to touch her cheek. He says lovingly as he reaches to touch her cheek. Hi. She replies excitedly. She replies excitedly. How are you what exactly? She stutters unsure of where to start. Emerson allowed me to take control of his body so I can speak to you and touch you which I wouldn't be able to do in my natural form. Which is a wolf? She states inquisitively. She states inquisitively. Yes, and I promise I will let you see me in my true form soon, but first can I ask you a favor? Shadow speaks. Of course anything. She answers sweetly. She answers sweetly. Can I please speak to my mate for a few moments? I'm excited to meet her. He asks flashing his adorable puppy dog's eyes. He asks flashing his adorable puppy dog's eyes. What do you mean? I thought I was your mate. She replies with a confused look. She replies with a confused look. You are in a sense but your lichen is my true mate. She was made for me just as you were made for Emerson. Is a lichen like a werewolf? Is a lichen like a werewolf? She asks receiving a nod in response. And she's a part of me like you are a part of Emerson. She continues as he nods yet again. She continues as he nods yet again. How do I allow her to speak to you? Close your eyes, relax, and just let go freeing your mind she'll handle the rest. Close your eyes, relax, and just let go freeing your mind she'll handle the rest. He explains and watches as she closes her eyes and I feel her whole body relax on top of me. He explains and watches as she closes her eyes and I feel her whole body relax on top of me. Hello mate, hello mate. A sultry voice slips from Ashley's lips and we both notice her icy blue eyes are now a deep dark blue. It is a subtle change that someone who isn't one of us would even notice. A sultry voice slips from Ashley's lips and we both notice her icy blue eyes are now a deep dark blue. It is a subtle change that someone who isn't one of us would even notice. Can I know your name my lichen princes? Shadow asks. Shadow asks. Tabitha, I'm so glad to finally be free, and that we found you both. She answers lovingly. Can I kiss you, Tabitha? He asks sincerely. Yes, he is an animal and many believe us to be brutish simply because of that fact. Not Shadow, though. He loves and respects our mate more than anything just as I do and wants be sure she wants us equally, especially since we were forced to mark her. He asks sincerely. Yes, he is an animal and many believe us to be brutish simply because of that fact. Not Shadow though, he loves and respects our mate more than anything just as I do and wants be sure she wants us equally, especially since we were forced to mark her. A sly smile appears on her face briefly before she leans forward and brings our lips together roughly. She is showing her dominance and letting us know she likes to be in charge. She reaches around behind my head tugging on the hair at the lowest point bringing my head back against the chair and manages to slip her tongue inside my mouth deepening her kiss sending a shockwave of lust straight to my now stiff dick. She starts grinding on top of me and the friction between our bodies is torturous. Mine? She growls before closing her eyes and giving Ashley back her control. She growls before closing her eyes and giving Ashley back her control. That was such an odd experience, but I didn't hate it. She whispers. She whispers. I was a spectator in my own head. I could see and feel everything going on, but it wasn't me doing it. Did you two have a good time together? Yes, thank you. Shadow replies before relinquishing control back to me. We sit there in silence for a few minutes just staring into each other's eyes and then she relaxes against my body resting her head on my shoulder as I run my hands up and down her back gently to soothe her. I can tell her body is still a little worn out from the events of the night prior but I am amazed at how well she is handling everything I have told her so far. Those who are not aware of our kind and used to our ways often find it overwhelming upon learning everything but she seems to be perfectly on board with everything. Her lichen is phenomenal and quite controlling but Shadow and I didn't mind. He is willing to submit to her just as I have Ashley. 
They seem to be the perfect match balancing each other out. I love you Emerson please don't leave me again. She whimpers from my shoulder. Ashley I swear to the moon goddess herself I will never leave you again. I love you more than anything and I'm truly sorry it took us this long and under such crazy circumstances to finally be together but now that we are I cannot and will not let you go. So when do I get to mark you? So when do I get to mark you? She asks shyly. She asks shyly. Whenever you want. Most wolves do it during the mating process, but... Mating. Mating. She questions before I can finish my sentence. She questions before I can finish my sentence. Yes, the first time two mates have sex with each other is referred to as a mating ritual. I know real original, and typically we would mark each other during, but since I was forced to mark you earlier than anticipated you can feel free to mark me whenever you feel comfortable. Can I mark you right now? She asks timidly. She asks timidly. Really? I reply unable to contain the excitement behind my voice. I reply unable to contain the excitement behind my voice. Yes, I've been without you for too long. If this will bring us closer I want that more than anything, and the sooner the better. I would be honored to bear you Mark Prince's. What exactly do I do? She asks nervously. Well it's pretty simple just bite me here. I reply pointing to the spot at the base of my neck just above my collarbone. I reply pointing to the spot at the base of my neck just above my collarbone. Tabitha can help you with control only allow your canines to come out. We will work on fully shifting another day after you've had some time to rest and mentally prepare. Okay. She says closing her eyes to talk with her leekin. When her eyes open again one is Ashley's icy blue and the other is Tabitha's deep dark blue. She says closing her eyes to talk with her leekin. When her eyes open again one is Ashley's icy blue and the other is Tabitha's deep dark blue. Apparently Tabitha doesn't want to miss the show but I know she doesn't want to fully take over since this is a special moment for Ashley and I. My amazing mate kisses my lips sweetly then moves her lips to the spot I showed her and begins to kiss, suck, and lick the very sensitive area. The erection I had earlier is back in full force and it is becoming painful as it aches to be freed from my constraining jeans and buried deep inside my dazzling mate. I can feel the small smile against my neck for a brief second meaning clearly Ashley is enjoying the effect she is having on me. She pulls away from my neck just an inch, and before I know it her canines are deep in my marking spot. The pleasure of having her mark me as hers and all the time waiting to make her ours is too much so I stand up with her still wrapped tightly around me and start walking towards the bed. Ashley pulls away from my neck and licks her mark sealing it and forever claiming me as hers. I gently toss her on the bed and tear my clothes of in less than five seconds. She is up on her elbows enjoying the quick show biting her lip in enjoyment then her mouth opens wider than I have ever seen as she takes notice to my hard cock throbbing to be inside of her. Ashley I love you and I wanted our first time to be magical but I have been waiting two and a half years to mate with you and right now I just need to be inside you. This is going to be fast but I promise you next time we will take our time and make it special. She nods and pulls my shirt I slipped on her last night over her head tossing it on the ground then removes my boxers as well. I quickly climb on the bed settling between her legs and hold myself up with left arm as I slide a few fingers on my right between her delicate folds surprised to find her soaking wet for me. She wants this just as bad as I do and I love the fact that I can barely touch her and elicit such a reaction. I wanted to take the time to make her feel amazing like the first night we met, but the need to bury myself deep inside her is too overwhelming to wait. I dip my fingers inside of her just a moment coating them before stroking myself with her juices. I place the head of my heart member just outside her entrance and look deep into her eyes to make sure this is truly what she wants and doesn't have a hint of hesitation swirling around in her glamorous eyes. Fuck! I growl after thrusting inside her swiftly. Halting once I can feel my nutsack right against her A. Are you okay? I ask after seeing the pained expression across her face. I ask after seeing the pained expression across her face. Yes, more than okay. She replies once her eyes met mine. She replies once her eyes met mine. 
I pull out slowly then enter her once more taking it slow the first couple pumps into her tight pussy. She feels amazing and I am glad we both waited and for each of us being our first time made it even more incredible. She was pure and untouched for me and I'm happy I made the choice to hold it for my mate instead of fucking around with a bunch of different she-wolves. Once I saw the pained expression had completely faded from her face and was now replaced with a flush of enjoyment I grip her hip tightly and pick up my pace pulling out and slamming into her with reckless abandon. Every moan that escapes her lips egging me on to increase my movements as I push her legs open further and up towards her shoulders allowing me to dive deeper inside my mate. Oh God Emerson. She screams at the slight change of pace and positioning of her legs throwing her head back into the pillow in ecstasy as I bring her closer and closer to her climax. She screams at the slight change of pace and positioning of her legs, throwing her head back into the pillow in ecstasy as I bring her closer and closer to her climax. Does that feel good? I ask with a smirk already knowing the answer. I ask with a smirk already knowing the answer. Yes, 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 it feels amazing. She responds eagerly. She responds eagerly. I grab the back of her neck pulling her face up to mine so that I can once again feel her sweet plump lips pressed against mine, slowing down my pace and adjusting myself slightly so that each thrust finds that special spot I know will make her come for me. Once her breathing begins to quicken and legs started quivering beneath me I know she is almost there. With a few more quick deep thrusts she comes undone around me and like a ripple effect I find my release as well buried inside my exquisite mate. I fall on my back on the bed beside her, grab her hand in mind, and simply enjoy the intimate moment with her by my side as we both come down from the high of our first time together. I finally have the love of my life by my side and now that we are mated and marked each other our souls we are bound for eternity. Ashley's POV there are no words to describe exactly how I am feeling after what just happened other than pure euphoria. There are no words to describe exactly how I am feeling after what just happened other than pure euphoria. I had fantasized about being with Emerson ever since the first night we met and he gave me my first orgasm in the bathroom. He is a spectacular, sexy, and sensational man and even though our first time was short and sweet it was still marvelous and we had both been yearning to be with each other for so long I was kind of glad he didn't make me wait. The build-up had become too much and I had the desire to feel him fully inside me as equally as he did. It hurt for a moment but was soon followed by the finest sensations possible. Perhaps it was because we had been longing to be with each other for the past two and a half years or the fact that we were both so in love but sex with Emerson made me feel complete. I suppose that's what he meant by completing the mating ritual it brought our bodies together as one whereas our marks brought our souls together. Even just laying here next to him as he holds my hand resting from the intense orgasms we both just had. I roll over onto my side keeping our hands together but bring my other one up to cares the muscles across his chest. I let my head rest against his shoulder and am surprised I can hear his heart beating like it is a gong being banged right against my ear. I realize I could hear everything better. There is a small drip coming from the sink in the bathroom. I can hear birds chirping outside the window as well as leaves breaking and falling to the ground. I look around the room and everything looks brighter and vibrant. Your senses are heightened now, babe. Emerson says breaking my focus. Emerson says breaking my focus. With your leak in present, all your senses will seem extreme. Also, your sex drive is going to go way up. Oh, really? Oh, really? I reply quickly moving on top of him, a leg on each side of his torso, and grab his hands to push up against his bed. I reply quickly moving on top of him, a leg on each side of his torso, and grab his hands to push up against his bed. I think that's just cause you're so damn sexy. I continue leaning down to kiss his neck right where I left my mark on him. Fuck. He groans as soon as my lips touch his mark and I feel his dick instantly harden and press against my wet pussy which I am slightly surprised by since we had just had sex and I just started touching him. I'll have to remember that spot for next time. I whisper in his ear as I start to slowly grind myself against him while kissing along his neck yet again. I whisper in his ear as I start to slowly grind myself against him while kissing along his neck yet again. Babe. 
he growls, gripping my hips as I sit up ready to ride him, stopping me from fulfilling my desires. He growls, gripping my hips as I sit up ready to ride him, stopping me from fulfilling my desires. As much I want to keep going we actually have some guests downstairs who have been waiting for you to wake up. Oh. Oh. I reply wondering who could be downstairs. We should probably both shower first since we both reek of sex. He says. I pout wanting to stay in the bedroom all day exploring each other's naked bodies and trying out all the different positions Emma goes on and on about but we have people waiting downstairs for us and that's when I realize it is probably Emma and Bradley since they are the ones who were at the hotel as well last night. We both climb up the bed and make our way into the bathroom. Emerson starts the shower and once he adjusts the temperature just right we step inside. He lets me under the water first and I can't help the small moan I let out as the feeling of the hot water running down my body feels soothing and wonderful. I grab a sponge and squeeze some soap onto it. Let me. Emerson whispers seductively as he grabs the sponge and motions for me to turn around. Now facing away from him I feel a sudden thrill at the thought of his hands all over my body yet again. He starts innocently washing my shoulders and back. Once he reaches my lower back I am pulled back against him as he brings the sponge up to my neck then moves down to my left breast as his free hand squeezes my right gently before pinching and tweaking my nipple between his fingers. I throw my head back against his shoulder and moan his name as he switches breasts teasing the other the same way. He keeps his hand there and I hear the sponge drop to the floor after which his hand travels down my stomach and in between my thighs which I willing spread apart for him. Please. I beg needing some release. I beg needing some release. I love hearing you beg princes. He whispers against my neck as he kisses my mark sending a rush of pleasure straight my aching pussy. He whispers against my neck as he kisses my mark sending a rush of pleasure straight my aching pussy. He starts playing with my clit and I reach back gripping his thigh behind me digging my nails in as the delightful pleasure taking over below becomes too much after I feel two fingers slip inside me. He continues his sweet assault on my clit as his fingers work their magic inside my tight pussy. I can feel myself climb closer and closer to my climax when abruptly he stops. Before I can react, show him my displeasure in his action, he spins me around grabs the back of my thighs lifts me up and slams his hard cock deep inside of me. I grab his shoulders and wrap my legs tightly around him as he thrusts in and out of me bringing me right back to the edge that we both fall of simultaneously, and he pushes me back against the wall resting his weight against me. I don't think I'll ever be able to get enough of you. He whispers as the haze of him coming undone inside of me starts to fade. He whispers as the haze of him coming undone inside of me starts to fade. Ditto. I whisper back pulling his head back slightly to kiss his handsome face. I whisper back pulling his head back slightly to kiss his handsome face. I love you Emerson. I love you Ashley. I love you Ashley. He replies giving me another kiss, pulls out of me, and gently places me back down on the shower floor. He replies giving me another kiss, pulls out of me, and gently places me back down on the shower floor. Now come on let's get cleaned up and head downstairs. He says placing me back under the water so I can finish cleaning up. Once we are both all cleaned and dried if we go back into the bedroom to get dressed. He says placing me back under the water so I can finish cleaning up. Once we are both all cleaned and dried if we go back into the bedroom to get dressed. I can't help watch as Emerson put his clothes on. Every single muscle on his body is so defined and makes my hands itch to touch every single inch of his toned body. The way his body moves and how it looks so tempting calling out to me to touch him and make him moan my name from beneath me. Shaking my head from the thoughts that are starting to invade my mind and distract me I pick out a dress from my bag and slip it on. It is my bag from the hotel room which I am thankful they grabbed or I would have had to wear Emerson's clothes again. Not that I really minded I love being enveloped in his scent. Emerson grabs my hand in his as we make our way down the stairs where I hear some shuffling of feet and then the most surprising face. Granny. I scream, let go of Emerson's hand which earns me a small grow from him, and run over to my grandmother and let her give me one of her snuggly hugs. 
I scream, let go of Emerson's hand which earns me a small grow from him, and run over to my grandmother and let her give me one of her snuggly hugs. Oh sweetie I'm so glad you're awake and I've missed you so much, she says sweetly. How did you get here? I ask. I ask. I called her. Emma's voice rings from behind me. M. Emma's voice rings from behind me. M. I squeak leaving my grandmother's warm embrace to run and tackle Emma with a giant beat hug. I squeak leaving my grandmother's warm embrace to run and tackle Emma with a giant beat hug. I missed you so so much. I'm sorry about last night, I didn't even get to say hi to you before everything happened with Adam. No need to apologize. I'm sorry for not being able to protect you from that asshole. I thought we could trust him. I had always heard he was a respectable alpha, but apparently I was wrong. Speaking of, Emerson says, cutting into our conversation. Were you guys able to catch his scent and track that bastard down? Where is my beta, by the way? We lost his ascent a couple miles away from the hotel. There was a small stream we think he may have jumped in and let himself be taken downstream a bit before hopping out, and the water covered ascent. We lost his ascent a couple miles away from the hotel. There was a small stream we think he may have jumped in and let himself be taken downstream a bit before hopping out, and the water covered ascent. Brad is out doing a perimeter check just to be safe and make sure Adam didn't follow us here. Do you think he'll try to come after me again? I question unable to hide the worry behind my words. I question unable to hide the worry behind my words. I won't ever let that happen. Emerson states as he pulls me away from his sister wrapping his arms tightly around me. Emerson states as he pulls me away from his sister wrapping his arms tightly around me. You are mine. He says with a growl at the end. And you are mine. I says giving his ass cheek a little squeeze to lighten the mood. I says giving his ass cheek a little squeeze to lighten the mood. You gross. Emma says beside us, then gasps. Emma says beside us, then gasps. Is that what I think that is? She says pointing at Emerson's neck. She says pointing at Emerson's neck. She marked you. She squeaks. She squeaks. Yes. Yes, yes. She squeals as she wraps her arms around both of us at the same time. My Alpha and my Luna. She states proudly. She states proudly. I'm having trouble breathing with both of you squeezing me so tightly. I let out breathlessly. I let out breathlessly. Sorry. They both say in unison and release me from their holds. They both say in unison and release me from their holds. All right, you three, if we are done with the reunion, we have a lot to discuss. My grandma chimes in. My grandma chimes in. I'll make some coffee. I'll make some coffee. Emma says rushing of into the kitchen while Emerson and I follow Gran into the living room. So where to start, Ashley? You are the last female lichen alive. Your parents were the Alpha and Lunar of the only lichen pack in existence until almost the whole pack was wiped out by a group of primordial vampires and their offspring. A lichen bite is the only thing that can kill a primordial vampire. Since they are the first of their kind, they are stronger and faster and almost indestructible. After realizing how powerful they were, and that a simple werewolf would not be able to defeat them, the moon goddess created lichens so that if a primordial vampire ever gained too much power, there was a being able to defeat them. So she has alpha blood in her. Emerson interrupts. Emerson interrupts. Yes, which is how she is going to call upon the remaining lichens and bring her pack back together. We managed to get several young lichens to safety, and they have been waiting for the cal of their alpha. Our fight is not over yet. There were three primordial vampires that attacked our pack last time. Your father managed to kill one. And so did your brother, leaving one behind, Ares. Well, when we decided to wipe your memories and put you to sleep until your mate came along, we also found a way to tie your slumber, Hez. Which means as long as you slept, he would as well. When you woke up, so did he. I'm sure since he's been awake, he's been building his army back up and searching for you. 
How did you know Emerson was my mate? We didn't your lichen did. We didn't your lichen did. I don't know how exactly, but the witch was able to tell it was time to wake you up. The first time Emerson shifted to his wolf. That's when your first memories began. Then we let you live your life as normal as possible. Trusting the moon goddess would guide you to your mate when the time was right. So you said I was asleep. For how long? Years, years. She replies, and I about faint. She replies, and I about faint. So that's why I know nothing about the Leakins. Emerson says. I was sitting here wondering how I had never heard of a Leakin pact before now, but I supposed over time people just forgot. How does she not look a day over I know we typically slow down aging after 21 but years? Well the witch also halted her aging until she woke up again. We didn't know how long she would have to wait to find you and didn't want to burden her with lifetimes of heartache and longing for her mate. Why couldn't I sense her leakin or smell her when we first met? I know we can't tell who our mates are until we turn 18 but usually we can smell another wolf or sense them at least. It was a side effect of the spell we used. A small price to pay for her safety. Her lichen was to be locked away until the day she was marked. So let me get this straight. I say trying to wrap my head around everything. I say trying to wrap my head around everything. I'm the last female lichen and have a pack waiting for me to lead them in a war with vampires that can only be defeated by us. His army can be defeated by any wolf. They are only created from Ares. They don't share his power, but yes, only one of your kind can defeat Ares. His army can be defeated by any wolf. They are only created from Ares. They don't share his power, but yes, only one of your kind can defeat Ares. He will come with thousands to end the last of your kind. We need to cal your pack soon and get everyone ready, because while you have been living your life happily for the past nine years he has been preparing, and now that your lichen is awake and present, he will be able to track you down. Emerson's POV Shit. War? A war that neither of us signed up for all because of some feud over years ago. The only way to end it was for one her kind to kill the last primordial vampire. What if she can't defeat him and my mate ends up dead? I don't ever want to live without her and I promise to protect her, but I can't, I can't protect her from this. As an alpha I feel weak and useless at the moment and it's bringing on a fit of rage that frightens me. It's too soon for all of this I just found her and now all of a sudden there's this great threat that could possibly take her from me. Shadow and I are both furious at the thought of Ashley no longer being with us. My anger is out of control at this point as I break the coffee cup in my hand and it shatters. Emerson are you okay? My astonishing maid asks, worry evident deep in her icy blue eyes. My astonishing maid asks, worry evident deep in her icy blue eyes. I can't. I say rising from my seat and run outside before anyone can get another word in. I say rising from my seat and run outside before anyone can get another word in. We can't lose her. We can't lose her. Shadow says before taking over, as I let him shift and run into the woods behind the cabin. Shadow says before taking over, as I let him shift and run into the woods behind the cabin. We both run and keep running until every ounce of fear and anger disappears from our body. I love her more than anything and had already lost precious time with her and now we wouldn't even get some adequate time to just be together, run our pack, have some pups, and just enjoy life together. This was all happening so fast and it scared the living hell out of me that we may never get to experience all those things together. Then a new sense of determination took over my thoughts. Well one thing was for sure we are not going down without a fight. I will cal every other pack that I can think of to help us win this war. I will train Ashley myself and make sure she is at her strongest when Ares decides to show up. I know what I have to and that we need to come up with a plan so I decided to head back to the cabin not even making it to the porch before being attacked by Emma. What the fuck is wrong with you Emerson Daniel Jones? She screams jumping over the stairs on the porch and sprints towards me giving me a swift push against my chest. I needed to go for a run I was so angry Emma was a level that I have never experienced and I didn't want to hurt any of you. Where's Ashley? 
up in your room, probably still crying. She says bluntly with her arms crossed across her chest. She says bluntly with her arms crossed across her chest. What? Why? I say trying to walk past her, but she pushes me back yet again. Oh, I don't know, probably because after hearing all that information, you left her alone. She just learned a whole bunch of disturbing shit, and you left her in one of the most vulnerable states I've ever seen. She thinks it's all too much, and you're going to reject her now that you know all the bullshit that comes with being her mate, her words, not mine. What? I would never in my life reject her. Well, Yakinda did when you just left her there alone, and it was clear you were pissed. She assumed your anger was directed at her, and since you weren't there to defend yourself, she went to her room crying that she couldn't believe you left her. Well, Yakinda did when you just left her there alone, and it was clear you were pissed. She assumed your anger was directed at her, and since you weren't there to defend yourself, she went to her room crying that she couldn't believe you left her. I didn't fuck I'm such an asshole. I'm going to fix it right now. I say as I go to walk by her yet again waiting for another shove, but she lets me paw. I sprint up the stairs and into the bedroom. As soon as the door opens Ashley sits up in bed tears still streaming down her beautiful face. We lock eyes and I see all the sadness and pain that I caused swirling around. I don't waste another second as I make my way over to the bed and scoop her up in my arms. I feel so stupid for leaving her like I did. All that information was too much for me and I didn't even consider how overwhelmed she could have been feeling as well. I was selfish and let my anger and fear control me instead of realizing we are a team now and should be facing everything together. I'm sorry. She whimpers. She whimpers. For what? For being so complicated. For being so complicated. I didn't want to bring all this chaos with me and you're mad because you didn't expect all this and now I've brought war right to your doorstep. Ashley I'm not mad at you in the slightest. I'm terrified. I might lose you and we only just now started our lives together. I'm angry at myself because no matter how much I want to protect you and keep you safe I won't be able to. This war is coming and only you and your kind can win it. I feel useless and not worthy to be your mate. Hey. She says adjusting herself on my lap so that she is now straddling me and takes my head in her hands lifting it so we are staring deeply into each other's eyes. She says adjusting herself on my lap so that she is now straddling me and takes my head in her hands lifting it so we are staring deeply into each other's eyes. I would never want anyone else other than you as my mate. I love you more than anything and you make me feel stronger, braver, and quite frankly invincible. I feel with you by my side I can and will win any battle that threatens to separate us. I will fight for my people but more importantly I will fight and I will win for you. I love you Ashley. I love you Emerson. I love you Emerson. She replies crashing her lips into mine in a frenzy. I move my hands around to grip her as as she leans up slightly to deepen our kiss. I give her as a nice slap making her jump slightly but her moans let me know she loved it. She removes her dress tossing it on the floor before grabbing the band on my shorts and yanking them down in one swoop. They end up on the floor along with her panties and bra. She doesn't waste a second taking her place back over me as she grabs my dick in her right hand gently stroking it up and down while moving her left hand down between her thighs to find her wet pussy ready to take me. She lifts up just enough to align us perfectly before lowering herself down and slipping my cock inside her. Her lips find mine yet again and she begins slowly lifting herself up then going back down riding my dick agonizingly slow. She knows she is taunting me with her slow movements but perhaps this is her payback for running away from her. I grip her hips tightly begging her to pick up the pace and she gladly obliged. She bounces up and down on top of me as I lean up to take a nip at her perfect breasts jiggling in front of me. She throws her head back at the contact and I can feel her tight pussy constrict around me at the new sensation of me sucking on her hard nipple. I bring my other hand down to her core and use my thumb to rub circles against her clit while she continues to ride me faster and faster until she collapses on top of me after finding her release. I grip her hips thrusting up inside of her a few more times before releasing myself deep inside her. Don't ever do that again. She whispers. Ha! Huh. I question hazily. I question hazily. 
Leave me you promised. I didn't mean to make you think I left you I just needed to get out before I hurt one of you as I felt my anger began to consume me. I realize now that I should have explained myself before storming of. I also realized that you were probably freaking out just as much as I was about all the information we had just learned. I should have been by your side and we should have talked about it and we should face everything together. I'm sorry sweetie. This is all new to me, having a mate, working as a team. We are taught to lead our pack and be strong slash fearless. Today learning everything we did I felt weak because I'm not the one who can beat Ares and I'm scared to death that there is a chance I may lose you in this battle. Emerson, I'm not going anywhere. Tabitha knows that with the help of the rest of my pack members we will kill Ares. She says that with you by our side we are at our strongest and that when it comes time only you can help me defeat him. Well I will be right by your side the entire way. I won't run anymore and we will face everything together from this day forward. I wrap my arms tightly around her and she relaxes against my chest burying her face against my neck. We fall asleep like that wrapped together in our own little cocoon of love and warmth. The next morning when I wake up Ashley has moved to my side wrapped up with an arm across my stomach and leg thrown on my thighs. When she feels me start to move her grip on my tightens and leg hooks around me making sure I can't go anywhere. I can't tell if she was awake yet or it is just her body's way of telling me not to leave her again. She is clinging to me like she is scared to let me go because I may run away yet again. I decide to let her sleep some more and watch her peacefully as I think about all the things we need to do to prepare for the battle to come. I want us to get back to my pack and have our alpha slash luna ceremony sooner than later so that we can lead our pack into battle. I will need to reach out to all other packs and ask for their help, although I know a few who will say no, hopefully most will be willing to help. The hard part will be figuring when he plans on attacking. Maybe if we can figure out where he is we can set a time and place for it giving us an advantage and some time to prepare. I would be sure to start training Ashley as soon as possible maybe even today. I love you. I whisper unsure if she can hear me. I whisper unsure if she can hear me. I will never leave you and we will beat Ares. I continued then closed my eyes deciding to join my mate in dreamland a little while longer. Ashley's POV. Emerson and I stayed at the cabin two more weeks most of it on our own. He talked me through shifting and with the help and guidance of Tabitha I was able to now do it with ease and little pain. She was thrilled to be out in the open and freely run with Shadow several times. Emerson's wolf was a magnificent black beast and Tabitha was head over heels. He had taught me at least 20 defensive moves for someone attacking me up close and personal. He said to always go for the heart when killing another supernatural being. He also said to be safe we should be head and burn Ares since he is a primordial it's best to be safe than sorry. He let me practice attacking him giving me pointers along the way. I could feel myself getting stronger and faster each and every day. Even Emerson was feeling the same way. Tabitha said since we were now bonded some of my power would go to him so we would be equal in strength and speed. It was our last day at the cabin and we had just finished training. Deciding to take a dip we make our way to the lake a small distance from the cabin and wash away all the dirt and sweat that covers our bodies. It is hard to resist him as he playfully swims around me in the water. I want him every second of every day and find it hard to concentrate on anything but fucking when he looks so yummy all the time. He can see the lustful look I am giving him and swims up to me kissing me passionately as he squeezes my as playfully. Although I want you right here right now tonight is going to be our special night and so we are going to continue this later. He says pulling us from lake to our clothes laying on a log. Let go back to the cabin. I'm going to cook you the best dinner ever and then we will spend the whole night naked doing whatever you, my sexy little mate, wants. Oh yes, please. I reply excitedly at the thought of spending all night naked with my handsome man. I reply excitedly at the thought of spending all night naked with my handsome man. We walk hand in hand back to the cabin. I love small intimate moments like this with him. Just a simple thing like walking along with our fingers gently intertwined brings me pure joy. 
we spent almost every single minute of every day the past two weeks training both physically and mentally, only taking breaks to eat and sleep, but tonight Emerson promised to relax and enjoy our last night away from the pack slash our home. I sat on one of the bar stools at the island in the kitchen and watched as Emerson cooked dinner. I had never had a man cook for me before and it was adorable watching him move so effortlessly throughout the kitchen. I feel kind of bad that I never really got into cooking. I thought I could ask Gran for some recipes and at least try for him. He pulls out some wine and places a glass in front of me. After pouring some into my glass he fills his own and sits it in front of his spot. Gathering the food on two plates he puts them down on the mats in front of each of us and we start eating. I moan after the first bite because his cooking tasted beyond amazing. Emerson lets a low growl which makes me laugh at his reaction to my moan. I forget how easily he gets turned on by me sometimes. I eat everything on my plate and even get seconds. Normally girls are ashamed to eat so much but I do not care in the slightest because his cooking is too delicious. Emerson encourages me to eat more every day to help with my strength and stamina. He finds it amusing that I can eat almost as much as him. Tabitha said it's because we are leakin and need as much, if not more, energy as an alpha. Babe that was one of the best meals ever. Possibly even better than my grand's cooking don't tell her that, I say leaning back against the stool and rubbing my still flat stomach, even though I feel like it would be huge from a food baby. I'm glad you enjoyed it. He replies with a wink and kiss on the cheek. I need you to stay down here for a few minutes while I go take care of something. He continues. I shake my head as he smiles wider than I have ever seen before, making me wonder what kind of devious plan he had. I hear him opening and closing drawers but then decide to tune him out so I don't ruin the surprise. I grab our plates and clean the dishes from making and eating dinner. Just as I finished drying and putting away the last dish Emerson comes around the corner with his arms behind his back. I look at him adoringly as I wonder what he is hiding behind him. He accommodates my curiosity by pulling one hand forward holding a dozen red roses and the other has a small box. He walks over placing the roses on the counter and hands me the box. I open it swiftly and am taken aback by the beautiful necklace that is inside. It was a crescent moon with a large diamond hanging in the center like a star. I love it. I gush as he takes it out of the box and places it gently around my neck. I gush as he takes it out of the box and places it gently around my neck. Now for the real surprise. He responds grabbing my hand and leading me towards the hallway where the bedroom is. I am shocked to see the hallway lined with small lit candles and petals in the center. We walk slowly down the hallway and into the bedroom where there is a small walkway to the bed lined with candles and petals just like the hallway. We stand at the end of the bed and he kisses me gently on my lips, then my chin, along my jawline, and down to my neck ending on my mark. My arousal become evident by the small pool of juices settling inside my panties. Grabbing the back of my neck with his left hand Emerson slips his tongue in with mine exploring my mouth as his right hand makes its way up my thigh, under my dress, and slides under the top of my soaked panties. His fingers make their way inside me causing me to moan against his lips. His fingers work their way in and out of me at a slow pace teasing and taunting me with a glimpse of the pleasure he can give me if he shows his to. He removes his hand from my aching pussy causing me to whimper at the loss of contact. Then I feel my dress being lifted over my head, my bra being unhooked and tossed to the side, as well as my panties being pulled down and of of my body. I stand there naked and exposed with Emerson on his knees before me. He bends down further and kisses my foot, then ankle, and keeps moving up until he reaches my hip bone. I feel a cool sensation as he blows his breathe lightly over my hot center burning with desire for him. Back on the bed princes. He commands giving my ass a small slap as I oblige turning around to climb on top. I lay down on my back and he remains on his knees pulling me by my hips to the very edge of the bed hooking my legs over his shoulders. I grip his hair tightly as his tongue dives deep in between my wet folds. 
Every flick and twist of his tongue draws me closer to my climax and once he starts to apply pressure to my clit with his thumb there is no holding back as my orgasm rips through me like a tidal wave. He happily laps up every bit of my release and I can feel his smirk against me most like enjoying the fact that he is able to make me come so quickly. Once he is done he slides his hand under my back, scooting me up the bed and settling right in between my legs. He entered me slowly as he kisses me sweetly. I wrap my legs around him bringing us as close as possible as he fills me over and over again. He is taking his time, putting all of his love and affection into the slow sensual sex we are engaged in. After goddess only know how many minutes of slow deep strokes in and out of me he pulls himself away from me and I instantly miss the contact. Now I want you on your hands and knees my sexy little mate. He says huskily. I do as he says and flip over on the bed resting on my hands and knees as he slips behind me. His large hand comes down across my ass sending another wave of pleasure down below. He runs his hand down my back leaving one on my hip as he lines his dick up with my entrance but he hesitates for a moment which confuses me until both hands are on my hips and he thrusts himself deep inside me filling me completely. He starts fucking me hard and fast gripping my hips to keep me still. I can feel myself getting closer to another orgasm and then his hand makes its way up my back and into my hair pulling back harshly as he pulls me up flush against him and begins rubbing my clit yet again while still pumping himself in and out of my sore pussy. Come for me beautiful. He whispers against my ear and that is my undoing. He whispers against my ear and that is my undoing. Good girl. He says then lets himself go inside me before collapsing on the bed beside me. I am too tired to move but he pulls me back towards him, spooning me from behind, and I fall asleep in his arms with ease after such a long and strenuous two weeks we both need some sleep. The next morning I wake up happier than I ever thought possible. I turn over trying not to wake him and admire his handsome face. He truly is a magnificent man and I can't believe I get to have him all to myself. I look at my sexy mate, grateful for having him in my life and then I decide to wake him up in the best way possible by slipping under the covers and taking his large cock deep inside my mouth which earns me a low growl and grunt as I continue sucking until I feel him tense beneath me and his cum slides down the back of my throat. F s asterisk k ash, that was thank you for the wake up cal. He says as I slid out from under the covers and place a kiss on his lips. I know he may still be able to taste himself on my lips but I don't care and neither did he it seems as he kissed me deeply. We both shower and get everything packed before shoving everything in the back of the car and head on our way to his territory. He holds my hand while driving, rubbing his thumb against the back of my hand in a calming manner, and I realize he could probably feel how nervous I was through the bond. I am extremely nervous to be moving someplace new and meeting a whole pack's worth of new people. I wasn't a huge social butterfly growing up I mostly kept to myself but now I was going to be looking after a whole pack and expected to take care of them. That alone was daunting but I keep telling myself as long as Emerson is by my side I can handle anything. Everything will be great babe. He says reassuringly. He says reassuringly. I know I'm just scared. What if I'm not a good Luna? I don't want to disappoint you. You could never disappoint me and don't worry I will be with you every step of the way and besides you'll be learning for the best Luna possible my mom. He replies sincerely. Oh goddess I forgot about meeting your parents as well. Well now I'm nervous for a whole other reason. What if they don't like me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? They are going to love you just as much as Emma and I do. You are amazing babe anybody who meets you will instantly fall in love with you. But I'm different how do you know they'll be okay with you being mated to a leakin? They won't care as long as I am happy and we give them lots and lots of grand pups to play with. He says with a smirk. What will our kids be when they're born? I asked curiously. From what your grandmother told me while you were asleep any pups you bear will be a leakin since your genes are stronger than mine. Are you okay with that? Of course, princes. Of course, princes. 
anything that is made from me and you would bring me nothing but joy and I would love them regardless if they were lichen, werewolf, or even born human. That can happen? Yes, sometimes on the rarest of occasion as human is born amongst werewolves. It is very rare though. How long do you think we should wait before having them? I ask unsure if he wanted them sooner than later like I did. Well, considering we haven't used any sort of protection the last few times we've had sex, there is a possibility you're pregnant with my pup right now. Really? I say rather excitedly looking down at my stomach and placing my hand on top as if I could feel something, just the thought thrilled me. I say rather excitedly looking down at my stomach and placing my hand on top as if I could feel something, just the thought thrilled me. Emerson's POV. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? I ask a little unsure of how she would react. I ask a little unsure of how she would react. I couldn't deny that I had been fucking her without protection knowing full well what it could lead to but I love her and thought of her swollen belly with my pup inside makes me wish it would happen sooner than later. I want nothing more than to start a family with her and I know now may possibly be the worst time to do so but I don't want to wait for anything with her anymore not after we have already lost such precious time being together. I no longer want to wait for our future to start. I am being a little reckless and I am aware of that but she drives me wild. I look over at the stunning woman beside me and she has a smile on her face which tells me her answer but I still want to hear it from her pretty lips. Surprisingly yes. I know we're young and have a huge threat looming over us but I love you more than anything and I would be proud to carry your child. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. I love you so much Ashley. I reply. I reply. She opens her mouth to reply but no words are able to come out as an SUV rams into the side of our car causing it to roll over several times and into a clearing in the woods surrounding the road we were on. I black out for I'm not really sure how long but as soon as I can I open my eyes slightly. Everything hurts and my eyes are stinging from the bright sunlight shining through the windshield which I can now see has a huge crack across it. I open them again looking over to see if Ashley is okay but she isn't there and suddenly I can feel my heartbeat racing at an unhealthy rate as panic washes over me. I wonder if she has gotten thrown from the vehicle and is lying somewhere terribly injured. I need to get free from this car and find her quickly. I realize one of my shoulders is out of its socket as I go to get rid of the restraint across my chest. Using my other arm I rip my seatbelt off with my claws and climb through the door's windows. As I stand, gripping the car for leverage, and finally have a chance to look around my heart instantly stops at the sight in front of me. Alpha glad to see you're awake. Alpha glad to see you're awake. Adam spits out as he holds my mate by her throat in front of him, his claws digging into her flesh. I thought you might miss the show. He laughs sadistically. He laughs sadistically. Why are you doing this, Adam? She is not your mate, why can't you just accept that? You don't deserve a mate, you little prick, especially after hurting my sister who is. He continues on, but I block him out and focus on my mate. He doesn't know you're a leakin and you can shift. Do you remember what I taught you? Yes. You need to be quick and go for the heart. I don't know if I can do it, Emerson. You can ash we trained for this and you are amazing. No, I don't know if I can kill someone. No, I don't know if I can kill someone. She replies her eyes dropping to the ground and I can't tell if she's disappointed in herself or thinks I'm disappointed in her. She replies her eyes dropping to the ground and I can't tell if she's disappointed in herself or thinks I'm disappointed in her. And you, you stuck up bitch I've trying to fuck you for months and you couldn't even give it up once. And you, you stuck up bitch I've trying to fuck you for months and you couldn't even give it up once. Adam's voice and the words he just uttered break my concentration and bring it right back to grade A alpha asshole. Adam's voice and the words he just uttered break my concentration and bring it right back to grade A alpha asshole. In a flash Ashley's eyes are back up and looking straight at me but it isn't her icy blue eyes I see it's Tabitha and her dark blue ones. She throws her head back and I hear the sound of Adam's nose break. As soon as he lets go of her to instinctively put his hands over his nose she turns around at lightning speed and has him by the neck a foot of the ground. He looks at her dumbfounded not knowing she is a supernatural being let alone a strong and powerful leakin. 
His eyes widen and then close quickly as I hear his flesh break and bones snap as she rams her hand deep inside his chest cavity, grabbing his heart and viciously yanking it from his chest in a matter of seconds. She drops his body to the ground, throws his heart a few feet away, and then she falls to the ground on her knees sobbing. What have I done? She wails and I run over getting on my knees right in front of her. She wails and I run over getting on my knees right in front of her. Baby are you okay? You had to do that to protect yourself. I wouldn't have been able to get to you in time. It was self-defense Ashley. I respond looking into her icy eyes realizing although Tabitha took over she saw and felt everything happen. I respond looking into her icy eyes realizing although Tabitha took over she saw and felt everything happen. Get her now we are 20 minutes outside the territory route 5. I mind link my sister and Bradley then cut it off so I can turn my focus on my clearly traumatized and broken mate. I mind link my sister and Bradley then cut it off so I can turn my focus on my clearly traumatized and broken mate. I did the only thing I could think of pulling her into my lap and holding her tightly as her sobs echoed throughout the forest surrounding us. She is shaking and her tears seem endless. I can't remember the first time I had to kill someone but never imagined a reaction like this. Then again her grandmother told me her brother was super protective of her growing up and she never saw fighting. He and his father wouldn't even let her start training when most other lichens did they wanted to keep her safe and innocent for as long as they could. Most wolves are so accustomed to violence that when you were shielded from it most of your life I guess this is a justifiable reaction. The biggest question on my mind now was how could she beat Ares if this death is causing her so much anguish. Thankfully by the time Emma and Bradley showed up with another car Ashley's tears had run out and she is now cuddled close to my chest gripping my shirt with a few hiccups here and there as her body comes down from the adrenaline rush a first kill will give you. Her eyes are closed tightly as I imagine she is trying to wipe the image of holding Adam's heart in her hand from her head. Bradley snaps my shoulder back into place and we all get in the car. I am determined now more than ever to find another way to kill Ares. Hopefully her grandmother is right and the remaining few lichens that manage to escape will come when she calls. We need their help if we are going to beat him. I link the entire pack telling them to clear the pack house as we were arriving. I don't want this to be the way my pack meets their Luna. Although technically we aren't officially Alpha and Luna my pack understands and respects me as their future Alpha. After placing my sleeping beauty on my bed and making sure she is tucked and tied I head to my office where my parents, sister, and Bradley are all waiting for me. My parents congratulate me on finally finding my mate as that made them happier than anything. Their smiles falter soon after hearing about Ares and his plan to bring war upon the Lycans and we would need to be involved. We also had the daunting task of calling the Council of Werewolves that kept law and order amongst our kind to let them know that we had killed another Alpha. They would be here in a week to hear the whole story and determine if it was justified or not. After that nerve-wrecking Cal we all started discussing a strategy to guarantee we would come out victorious against Ares. In the middle of our discussion I am taken aback by a huge rush of multiple emotions, fear, sadness, hatred, confusion, worry. All these emotions aren't coming from me they are being fed to me through the other side of the mate bond. Ashley is awake, freaking out, and most likely in the midst of a panic attack. I excuse myself and rush up the stairs with unfathomable urgency. I burst through the door as the feeling gets stronger and stronger the closer I get to my mate. My eyes shoot straight to the bed that is empty then I hear the shower running and Ashley's sad whimpers. I run into the bathroom and the sight before me breaks my heart into a million pieces. She is sitting on the shower floor with her knees in her chest scrubbing her hand roughly under the water. It won't come of. She cries out looking down at her hands desperately to scrub what isn't there. She cries out looking down at her hands desperately to scrub what isn't there. Baby girl it's all of. I say stepping in the shower, kneeling before her, and taking her hands gently in mind. I say stepping in the shower, kneeling before her, and taking her hands gently in mind. I didn't want to do it. She screeches as she jumps into my lap, throws her arms tightly around my neck, and buries her face in my neck. She screeches as she jumps into my lap, 
throws her arms tightly around my neck, and buries her face in my neck. I know, sweetie. I whisper. She made me do. She cries. She cries. I hate her. She continues referring to her leakin. This was not a good time for her and her leakin to be at odds especially considering Ares could track and attack them both at any time. She continues referring to her leakin. This was not a good time for her and her leakin to be at odds especially considering Ares could track and attack them both at any time. We sit in the shower for quite a while and I don't care that my clothes are soaked and sticking uncomfortably to my body I just want to comfort Ashley and take away all her pain. Once I feel her relax completely in my arms I figure she has cried herself to sleep so I grab a towel wrapper securely in it before placing her in our bed. This is not the way I wanted to spend our first night in our new home together. After showering all the dried blood from my own body from the car accident and putting some clothes on I stand in front of the bed just admiring how truly unique and gorgeous my girl is. Her body is completely healed as well, you would have no idea we were in a car that rolled over several times but her body wasn't what concerned me it is her broken soul. I have to admit that I have no idea how to fix it. Ashley's POV the first four days after Adam crashed into our car, attacked me, and Tabitha killed him cold-heartedly I stayed in bed under the covers refusing to leave the room or eat anything. My appetite was completely gone and all I wanted to do was sleep and hope I would wake up and everything was a dream and I mean everything. I wanted to go back to the first night I met Emerson and run the other way and I know that isn't fair to him but I couldn't help it. My whole world changed the day I met him and set forth a chain of events that have destroyed me. I feel like I can't breathe and every time I even glance at my hand I see blood dripping from my fingertips and down my wrist. I run to the bathroom at least twice an hour to scrub the imaginary, and yes, part of me is well aware it's not real, blood from my hand. Emerson stayed in bed with me the first two days and I felt like such a crappy mate for wishing I had never met him. I loved him with all my heart but everything had become complicated and overwhelming since he came into my life. I would cuddle close to him at night to at least let my mind get a few hours decent rest and reset. He begged me to talk to him both days but I simply had no words to say to him or anyone for that matter. I refused to talk to my leakin, Tabitha, and when Emerson left the room the third day she took control of my body trashing the room trying to get me to feel her anger and rage and pull me from the emptiness that had consumed me. That's exactly what it was a void where I felt absolutely nothing and just watched the world go by, as people like Gran and Em came to check on me, but I didn't want to move. Even when Emerson came back that night and realized what happened he wasn't mad at me he just seemed sad and worried. I cried in his arms that night which I hadn't been able to do the past three nights so at least I was starting to feel something. On day four I snuck out of the room to go and try to find Emerson's office I was starting to miss him and felt the need to be near him. I heard a couple people coming from down the hallway and got spooked so I returned to our bedroom and hid under the blankets. I lay there and thought about what a terrible Luna I am. I am supposed to be by Emerson's side helping him lead the pack and instead I am cowering away in our room. I don't know what had happened to me. I am a smart girl, top of my class. I tackle any and everything thrown my way and overcame so much growing up especially without my parents. When Emerson climbed in bed with me that fourth night something in me snapped and I didn't want to be scared anymore. I'm sorry. I whisper grabbing his hand squeezing it tightly. Oh baby. He says pulling me as close as possible and burying his face in the hair along my neck. He says pulling me as close as possible and burying his face in the hair along my neck. God I've missed your voice. I know I've been a terrible mate Emerson. I spoke softly unsure of what words to really say. You are not a terrible mate. He replies. Tabitha shouldn't have taken your choice away from you. I grew up around fighting and death, but you didn't. You reacted how any logical person would have especially someone who didn't grow up in the supernatural world. But I shut you out you should hate me. I whimper. I thought such terrible things. I cree out against his chest unable to look into his eyes. I cree out against his chest unable to look into his eyes. 
You didn't completely shut me out. You still let me hold you at night, which helped Shadow and I both give you the space you needed. I just didn't have any clue how to help you, Ash. I would have done anything to take what you were feeling away from you, but I figured you just needed time. Thank you for being the best mate, best friend, best boyfriend ever. I don't know what I would do without you truly. I didn't really do anything, babe. You did though, just being there for me is enough. I love you, Emerson. I love you, Ashley. I love you, Ashley. Can we can we take a bath together? Of course. Of course. You stay here and let me get it going. He says excitedly. He says excitedly. He hasn't seen me naked since the day we arrived and he found me crying in the corner of the shower like a weak pathetic little girl. He and his wolf are probably dying to be with me again and I can't deny a small part of me wants that as well. After we settle in the tub together the intimacy of the bubble bath and candles he sweetly lit around the bathroom are making it impossible to resist touching him. I start feeling something again. I don't feel hollow any longer and the hunger to be closer to my mate is growing with each passing second as our bodies meld together beneath the water. I lean my head back against his shoulder and grab his hand that is resting on the side of the tub. I slide it beneath the water down my stomach and open my legs enough for our two hands to settle between my thighs. I want you to touch me. I beg letting go of his hand. Are you sure you want this? He asks tensely. He asks tensely. Please, Emerson. I plead and he instantly relaxes taking that as confirmation I really want what I am asking for. I plead and he instantly relaxes taking that as confirmation I really want what I am asking for. He wastes no time slipping his fingers inside of me and working them in and out of me slightly as his thumb rubs a torturous rhythm against my clit. I didn't realize how much I need to have my mate touch me and feel the things only he can do to my body until my first orgasm rips through me like a hurricane and even Emerson seems surprised at how quickly I came undone around him. His hand disappears from between my thighs and he lifts and twists me quickly yet carefully so that I am now facing him with a leg on each side. I giggle at the sudden movement and the water splashing out of the tub. Goddess I've missed that sound. He whispers as he pulls me in for a slow and sultry kiss. I reach down between our bodies and grab a hold of his already hard cock, he still wants me even after me shutting him out for four days and I was thankful for that. We need this to bring our bond back to what it was before my breakdown. If we can connect on a sexual level all the other shit would fall in line or so I hoped. To be honest in the heat of the moment I didn't really care all I know is that I want to feel him deep inside of me bringing me to orgasm after orgasm until my body can't handle it anymore. After stroking his hard member for a few minutes and hearing his sexy groans the faster I went I lift myself and replace my hand with my wet pussy sliding down on top of his dick in less than a second after removing my hand. FSK princes. He growls leaning his head back against the tile behind the tub. I start slow grinding my hips back and forth as I feel him against every inch of my pussy. His low and mumbled growls only encouraging me to keep going. I start to move my hips in a circular motion to see if it would feel any different and to say it did would be an understatement. Once I feel I had tortured him enough with my slow movements I lift myself up right to the tip before going back down roughly. I felt this raw anger bubbling to the surface from everything that had happened the past few weeks and I was determined to fuck my frustration out right here and right now. As I roughly ride Emerson gripping his shoulders for some stability he hooks his hands around my back just below my shoulder blades pulling me closer as he bites down hard on my nipple then immediately begins to suck causing a flash of pain followed by pleasure which was my new favorite combination, as he did the same with my other free nipple. The faster and rougher I went the more the water splashed around us and out onto the floor. Baby I'm gonna come. He whispers against my neck and just like that we both fall into the abyss that is our mutual climax. He whispers against my neck and just like that we both fall into the abyss that is our mutual climax. He leans back into the tub pulling me with him and I melt against his chest allowing all my fear and anger from the past few days to leave my body as a new sense of hope and love fill me up. I was so wrong about everything. I will never run away from Emerson.
Even if I had to do it all over again I wouldn't because it led us here. With him I am myself, my happiest, and he is my home. He is the one person I can count on and he's proven that the past few days. I lazily climb out of the bath and walk over to take a good look at myself in the mirror and see exactly how terrible I look after being cooped up in the room for four whole days with no sunlight and barely any food. Emerson climbs out of the tub himself and makes his way behind me. He starts rubbing my shoulders which I hadn't realized was carrying such tension. His hands are like magic and I feel all the stress leave them after a few minutes of him massaging them. He leans forward placing a small kiss behind my ear moving down my neck and across to the very end of my shoulder. My skin is crawling with sparks each time his lips touch me. He moves to the other side of my neck and does the same thing stopping to take a nibble at my mark which shoots a surge of energy straight to my core. Do you remember the first night we met? He whispers in my ear and all I can manage is a nod as his hands move from my shoulders down my arms. He whispers in my ear and all I can manage is a nod as his hands move from my shoulders down my arms. That night I wanted to mark you and fuck you right against that bathroom sink. Why didn't you? I ask breathlessly as his right hand dips between my thighs teasing my pussy by just brushing his fingers along the outside of my wet lips. I ask breathlessly as his right hand dips between my thighs teasing my pussy by just brushing his fingers along the outside of my wet lips. Because I wasn't sure you were mine then. He says grabbing my left tit in his left hand and squeezing it roughly as he pushes us forward against the counter, my hand slip towards the wall to keep myself upright. But now that I know you are mine would you like me to fuck you like I planned to that day and show you that you are indeed mine? Yes, please. Yes, please. I nod eagerly closing my eyes as his fingers finds their way inside me. Open your eyes Ashley. Open your eyes Ashley. He commands and it is different this time I feel obligated to listen. He is using his alpha voice on me and holy hell is it hot as fuck. Answer me. Yes. I spit out quickly opening my eyes to stare at him behind me through the bathroom mirror while his fingers punish me for daring to look away. Yes what? He commands yet again removing his hand from between my thighs, grabbing a fistful of hair bringing my head up and back so he can meet my gaze better. He commands yet again removing his hand from between my thighs, grabbing a fistful of hair bringing my head up and back so he can meet my gaze better. Yes. I pause not completely sure what he is looking for. I pause not completely sure what he is looking for. Yes, Alpha. I hum. I hum. Fuck. He groans as he quickly pushes his hard dick inside me, leaving his hand fisted in my hair, and grips my hip with the other. He groans as he quickly pushes his hard dick inside me, leaving his hand fisted in my hair, and grips my hip with the other. I need to remember to call him Alpha more often if this is the reaction I am going to get. After staring intently at each other through the mirror for a few minutes as he fills me over and over again he lets go of my hair pushes me down and forward over the counter. His hand that was in my hair runs along my spine ever so slowly before I feel a hard slap across my A, earning him a loud moan, and me A. Good girl. In response. With both hands placed firmly on either side of my hips he begins pounding relentlessly into me from behind with no remorse. In response. With both hands placed firmly on either side of my hips he begins pounding relentlessly into me from behind with no remorse. I sense he is letting all his frustrations and fears out in this moment just as I had in the the tub. He needs this just as much as I did and I willingly give him what he needs. God is yes, Alpha. I scream as I feel him reach the edge of his climax my words becoming his undoing as he stills inside of me filling me once more. I scream as I feel him reach the edge of his climax my words becoming his undoing as he stills inside of me filling me once more. We clean ourselves of and climb into bed. We lay down facing each other our hands resting under our pillows and simply stare into each other's eyes for a while. I love you Emerson and I won't shut you out again I promise. I whisper. I whisper. I love you more than anything Ashley. 
I'm sorry you had to kill someone I wish there was another way, but we need to prepare for the battle ahead because sadly, I don't think that will be last time you will take a life. I know. I sigh. I sigh. I just didn't realize this is what my life would become in such a short amount of time and it scares me. I don't want to turn into a monster. Is that what you think? You're a monster. He asked and I just nod. He asked and I just nod. Oh sweetie you are the farthest thing from a monster. You killed because you had to there are those out there like Ares who simply kill for fun or power those are the real monsters. But we can beat him right. I ask nervously. I ask nervously. In all honesty Ash I believe we can. You and I make each other stronger and as long as we're together I feel like we could take on the world. Plus once we officially take over the pack as Alpha and Luna we'll share the power of our pack increasing our odds for the better. We have so much to do babe but we are going to tackle it all together and by the moon goddess's good graces we will come out victorious. The biggest thing I need you to do is trust me. I do trust you. I don't trust myself. Tabitha just took over and I had no control. Well in her defense she was doing what she thought was best to protect you. You are as much as part of her as she is you. One cannot live without the other and you two are supposed to balance each other out. You may be fearful of death but she plays with it like fire. She is fearless and rather dominant. Where you are my cautious and submissive little Luna. He says with a wink at the end. Call me that again. My little Luna. I like that. I reply with a smile. I reply with a smile. Now I know why you like when I call you Alpha so much. Caught onto that did you? He reply with a huge grin. He reply with a huge grin. Good night my mighty Alpha. Good my precious little Luna. Good my precious little Luna. He responds kissing me on the forehead and pulls me against his body letting our scents combine and surround us like a cocoon, which helps us both get some much needed sleep. He responds kissing me on the forehead and pulls me against his body letting our scents combine and surround us like a cocoon, which helps us both get some much needed sleep. Emerson's POV Fuck I love my mate. Fuck I love my mate. She's is on my lap in my office as we look over some pack information and plan our Alpha and Luna ceremony together and she is absolutely stunning. Over the past few weeks her body has turned into that of an Amazonian princess. I can't believe how lucky I am to get to call her mine. She has always been beautiful since the first day I first saw her but now that her lichen has awoken her whole body is changed. Her hair has more bounce and shine to it and her skin glows like she's just spent the day sunbathing on the beach. Her muscles are becoming more defined as we picked our training back up. Every curve on her body is becoming firm and tight and I want to ravage her here and now against the desk. After our encounter in the bathroom a few days ago I can't stop thinking about bending her over the desk and fucking her senseless. So what are we going to do once I finally cal the last of the lichens to aid us with this war? Where will they stay? Will we initiate them into the pact? What if they don't? Whoa, 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 babe. He says cutting me of with a small chuckle. He says cutting me of with a small chuckle. First things first, let's get through this council meeting today. If it doesn't go our way, they could banish us from the pack and we would have to start at the beginning of trying to figure out what to do. Let's just get through this council meeting and if everything goes well we'll be officially made Alpha and Luna of the pack tomorrow evening then we'll go from there. You're right. She replies with a smile and kiss. Always am. I choke. I choke. Alpha. Bradley speaks just outside the door with a knock. Come in. I reply and Ashley tries to move of my lap but I hold her firmly in place and let out a small growl. The council is waiting for you in the meeting room downstairs. We'll be down in a few. I respond and wait for him to shut the door and leave before returning my attention to my mate. I respond and wait for him to shut the door and leave before returning my attention to my mate. Do you remember what I told you? I ask sweetly cupping her face in my hand. I ask sweetly cupping her face in my hand. Just be honest and don't try to hide anything. That's all I need you to do. 
We were in the right under the circumstances, there's no way this won't go our way. I love you, Alpha. She whispers before placing a soft kiss on my mark. I love you, Luna. I reply returning the favor. She hops of my lap and I grab her hand guiding her out of my office and down the main floor where our meeting room is. It's only been a few days so she's still learning where everything is and this is a room we don't commonly use. As we enter the tension in the room is thick. The council consists of five members. Two are selected by a vote amongst the packs every decade, two more every century, and the eldest who has the final decision in any case there is a dispute between the newer and older members is just that the eldest of our kind. He's has seen it all, as they say, and lived through so much I can't help but fear and respect him. They are all sitting on one side of the table so Ashley and I take our place on the opposite side. My mother and father are present as well since they are the current Alpha and Luna of the pack as well as my future Beta Bradley per my request. Thank you for joining us. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? Roderick the Eldest of the Council speaks out looking towards Ashley curiously. Roderick the Eldest of the Council speaks out looking towards Ashley curiously. Well, I first met Adam a little over a year ago when I started college in his territory. I didn't know it at the time, but Emma asked him to keep an eye on me for her and Emerson's peace of mind. Did you know she was your maid at the time? Another council member interrupts. No, we first met when I was still 17 and I left for training, and as you know that takes two and a half years to complete. I wasn't aware she was my maid until we returned and I saw her in the banquet hall. I answer. I answer. Yes, we heard about that incident from several other alphas. In my defense, he had his paws all over my mate. How would you react? I would like to hear more of Ashley's side of this story. Roderick interjects as he can feel the anger rolling of me as I at there thinking about that night when he forcefully marked my mate. As I was saying. Ashley continues while placing a hand under the table on my thigh to help calm my nerves. Ashley continues while placing a hand under the table on my thigh to help calm my nerves. He was very welcoming and kind. He was relentless in pursuing me and after some pressure I agreed to go out with him. Did you two mate? The only female council member asks. No never I was saving myself for marriage. Oh yes I forgot you told us her lichen was locked away so she grew up human. The council member says gesturing to my parents. Anyways he invited me to this party that he said would be full of important people and was excited to show me of. We got there and after we dropped out stuff in the hotel room we made our way downstairs. After some chatting I finally saw Emerson for the first time in two and a half years. She pauses and looks at me lovingly. I was so excited I ran over to him and jumped on him giving him a huge bear hug because I had honestly missed him so much. That's when Adam came over and grabbed my hand and Emerson attacked him. He was touching what was mine. I growl lowly even though I know they all heard me. I begged Emerson to stop and once he saw how scared I was he stopped immediately. Then he submitted to me only at the time I didn't know what he was doing. Adam made some remark calling him a mutt roughly grabbed my wrist and pulled me out of the hall and up to our hotel room. While he was in the shower I had some time to think and knew I needed to talk to Emerson. Before I could leave Adam blocked the door and claimed I was his. When I tried to get by him he slammed me against the wall and had his hand tightly around my throat I couldn't breathe. She explains tearing up at the end and I grab her hand to soothe her. That's when I barged in because I could sense her fear through the bond and know something was wrong. Adam looked me dead in the eyes knowing exactly what he was doing before he forced his mark on her. She would have died had I now claimed her. He made me mark her unconscious body to save her. He took away one of the most intimate acts between mates but worst of all he put his mark on her first knowing she was not his mate. I had to kill him. Ashley starts crying. He attacked us and if I didn't kill him he would have hurt us both. She burst out. She burst out. We've heard enough. Roderick said calmly. Roderick said calmly. We do not take forceful marking lightly and your beta showed us the pictures from the accident while we waited for you. You did nothing wrong Ashley. He continues sweetly as if he could tell her killing Adam was eating away at her. 
He continues sweetly as if he could tell her killing Adam was eating away at her. As for you, he says sternly turning to me, what a mood change. He says sternly turning to me, what a mood change. You are the future elf of this pack and need to keep yourself in check. If you want to keep that title, you can't lose your temper like at the hotel again and attack another alpha. I understand. I understand. I respond bowing my head slightly after feeling like a child being scolded for punching the kid that took his favorite toy. If it's all right with all of you, we were hoping to stay for the Alpha slash Luna ceremony. It's been a very long time since I've seen a lichen up close and personal. Roderick asks. Did you know my pack? Ashley perks up curiously. Ashley perks up curiously. Yes, I was very good friends with your mother and father, actually. They were excellent leaders, and our kind's safety was always top priority to them. Your pack is the reason our kind wasn't wiped from existence 200 years ago. If those three primordials had taken out your whole pack, there would have been no stopping them. Your parents and brothers' bravery saved us all. I'm truly sorry they won't be here to witness you take your place as Luna next to your mate. I know it would have made them elated. Can you tell me more about them? My granny has told me stories of my brother and I but not very much about my parents. I would love that my sweet child. Roderick calmly says with a hint of sadness behind his eyes, they must have been very good friends of his. Roderick calmly says with a hint of sadness behind his eyes, they must have been very good friends of his. Unfortunately living as long as he has he has endured more loss than any of us and surprising it hasn't dampened his spirit or heartened his soul. The way he beamed at my mate made me a little jealous but I'm sure if anything she would see him as more of a fatherly figure than anything. He dismisses the meeting and the three of us enjoy a nice lunch together while the others get settled in our guests' quarters. Roderick explains that Ashley's father was one of his best friends growing up. His own father sent him to the Leakin Pack when he was young to learn from the smartest and strongest of our kind. He also expresses his sorrow for not being there to fight alongside them, but he was overseas at that time. By the time he made it back almost everything was burnt to ash and no one knew if there were any survivors. He even mentions being at Ashley's birth it was a joyous event since she was the first female Leakin born in over two centuries. She is a rarity of her kind since most lichens born are males. He elaborates on the fact that they kept to themselves as a pack like her gran had mentioned when I brought up not hearing of a lichen pack growing up. Lichens are one of the most lethal creatures alive, but they are a peaceful race. When it came to protecting weaker werewolves packs they had no issue killing any threat but for the most part they liked to be left alone and enjoy the serenity of their long lives with each other on their own lands. Ashley asks to visit her home pack one day and Roderick sounds ecstatic at the idea of being able to take her there. I am actually happy the council ended up having to come here because it brought a special person into my mate's life. I grew up surrounded by my whole family but Ashley didn't have that luxury and seeing her interact with Roderick I can tell she is desperate for the fatherly affection he was providing. Instantly, he became attached and protective over her and made her promise before lunch ended that they would video chat at least once a week to keep in touch. He even offered to escort her the Alpha slash Luna ceremony. We give Roderick a tour of our lands and after my littlest sister Elizabeth arrives we all go to my parents' home away from the pack house for a more intimate dinner. They have already moved almost everything into their new home over the past week leaving the top floor of the pack house for Ashley and I. As we settle in for the night I think about some renovations I want to make in hopes that by focusing on something else my nerves about the ceremony tomorrow will go away. Ashley's POV I wake up early the next morning and reach over to find Emerson's side of the bed empty. I was sad until I noticed there is a note on his pillow with a lily laying on top. I remember telling him that was my favorite flower our first week away at the cabin when we spent time getting to know each other. The small gesture makes me smile and realize how truly luck I am that he is mine. I sit up and open the note. I have a few things to take care of for tonight and I thought it would be nice to wait and see each other at the ceremony build a little suspense. I love you. Soxo E, I climb out of our bed and decide to take a nice long bath to relax and prepare for tonight. After a soothing bath I slip on a robe and make my way out to the main part of the room. 
Before I can enter the closet to grab some clothes someone knocks on the door. Yes. I say opening it slightly. Surprise! Emma and Elizabeth both scream each holding a bottle of wine and orange or juice. Emma and Elizabeth both scream each holding a bottle of wine and orange or juice. What's going on? I ask opening the door more so they could come in. I ask opening the door more so they could come in. Come on boys. Emma says gesturing towards someone behind her as she enters. Emma says gesturing towards someone behind her as she enters. Emma and Elizabeth go over to the small bar Emerson has in his room and starts mixing mimosas as two men start setting up a massage station, foot bath, and chair for manicures and pedicures. Emma insists on pampering ourselves before tonight. We talk and talk while each one of us alter between the small stations set up in my room. I actually get to know Elizabeth a little better which is fun. She is more of a studious bookworm like myself than Emma the rebellious party girl. She just graduated high school and decided to come home for a bit before deciding what to do next. She wants to go to college but also wants to spend some time exploring the world. She loves reading about pyramids, colosseums, etc. but she wants to see all those things up close and personal. After about four hours of pampering we are all extremely relaxed when Emerson's mom, Stephanie, comes in with some lunch. We sit and talk some more and she explains to me what to expect and tries to ease my nerves. There is no way I can get rid of all my anxiety about tonight though this is a huge step and I am still unsure that I can slash will be a great Luna. Especially since his mother is so incredible and everyone adores her, she is a tough act to follow. After lunch some omegas come in to help us all with hair and makeup. I slip into the dress Emma helped me pick out and then I stand in front of the full-length mirror that is in our closet when I hear a gentle tap on the door. You look stunning, my dear. I wish your mom and dad were here to see how gorgeous you grew up to be. Roderick says stepping into the closet. Roderick says stepping into the closet. I wish they could have been here. I sigh sitting on the bench in the center of the closet. I sigh sitting on the bench in the center of the closet. Roderick, can I ask you something? Of oh, course, of oh, course. He simply states taking a seat next to me. Do you really think I can do this, lead a whole pack? Although I have not known you long, I can see your mother in you. She was a strong, fierce, and loyal Luna. I sense all of those traits in you as well. It will be an adjustment at first, just as it was for even your mother, but I have no doubt in my mind you will find your way and become one of the greatest Lunas alive. I have every bit of faith in you. Stephanie will always be there to guide you, and so will I. Thank you for everything. I reply leaning over and hugging him. I reply leaning over and hugging him. His arms wrap warmly around me and I feel a wave of relief wash over me as I process his words. He is right I can be amazing just like my mom and I am allowed to make mistakes as long as I learn from them. Like Emerson said he will be with me every step of the way. Then I realize it wasn't only Emerson I need. I need Tabitha as well. We still hadn't spoken since she killed Adam and I knew she like Emerson was just giving me space but especially tonight we both deserve to be happy and experience this together. I pull away from Roderick and he has a knowing look. We keep our hands together and I close my eyes to concentrate on my leakin. I'm sorry? Tabitha spits out quickly as soon as I open myself up to her. Tabitha spits out quickly as soon as I open myself up to her. Please don't shut me out again. I've been so lost and lonely without you the past week. No, I'm sorry. I start. I reacted harshly and it wasn't fair to you. I blamed you for making me do some that needed to be done. He would have killed us. You did what I couldn't and instead of thanking you I turned my back on you. It's okay Ash I get it. It's okay Ash I get it. I'm a natural killing machine. I am a beast but you are not. You were brought up human and know nothing of such violence but unfortunately it is unavoidable for our kind. I realize that now and I know that we have a huge fight ahead and I can't do it alone.
I trust Emerson and Shadow, they won't leave your side. I trust Emerson and Shadow, they won't leave your side. She s peeks up quickly before I can continue. She s peeks up quickly before I can continue. No Tabitha what I mean is I can't do it without you. Do you really mean that? She asks. Of course you're a part of me and I need you just as much as you need me. We can't beat Aria if we're busy fighting amongst ourselves. I trust you and I know you will always do what is best for us. Thank you Ashley I needed that. She whispers in my head. Now let's go become Luna. She continues excitedly. She continues excitedly. We're ready. I stayed opening my eyes and looking directly into Roderick's. He nods knowingly, stands, and extends his hand for me to take. I stayed opening my eyes and looking directly into Roderick's. He nods knowingly, stands, and extends his hand for me to take. I smile back sweetly thinking about how much of a father-like figure he has become for me over the past 24 hours. I know deep down it will never compare to having my real dad with me but he is a great substitute and I know he really cares for me like I am his real daughter. He never had a chance to have his own children because he wasn't lucky enough to find his mate. He told me he thought about taking a chosen mate a couple times but he tried to put his faith in the moon goddess. He is a firm believer that she has her reasons for everything she does and if him being mateless was his destiny he has to accept it. We just stepped out of the closet when a knock comes from the door and my granny slips inside. Mate. They each whisper in unison. They each whisper in unison. Goddess I've waited forever for you. Roderick says dropping my hand, racing over to my grand snaking his left arm around her back, pulling her close, and cupping her cheek in his right hand. So beautiful. He continues sweetly. He continues sweetly. I truly thought I was destined to be alone. How? I've already had a mate. Lichens don't typically get a second chance. She questions. She questions. I honestly have no idea, but who are we to question the goddess? He simply states as he looks at her with pure adoration. Can I kiss you? Gran. Gran. I gasp as she reaches up and pulls his face down to hers to kiss him. I gasp as she reaches up and pulls his face down to hers to kiss him. Hopefully that answered your question. She pulls away with a smirk. She pulls away with a smirk. Thank you, goddess. He says looking upwards. He says looking upwards. She is perfect. He whispers as if we wouldn't hear him. He whispers as if we wouldn't hear him. All right, you too. I say breaking their heavy gazes. Let get this ceremony over with and you can ride of into the sunset more like sunrise by the time this thing is over. I joke. Gran and I link arms with Roderick, one of us on each side, and make our way outside. The whole pack stands as soon as they are aware of my presence. It is a little overwhelming having the whole pack here and my nerves start to get the better of me as I tighten my grip on Roderick's arm. This is all becoming too real and my doubts about being a good Luna start creeping back up. We make it to the back of the long walkway leading up to in front of everyone and as soon as I lock eyes with Emerson all doubts and insecurities wash away. He looks so dashing, my very own Prince Charming, in a pair of grey dress slacks and black button-up dress shirt. The first few buttons are undone and I am drooling already. Emerson's POV Beauty, grace, elegance, perfection, so many words are floating around in my head as soon as I catch my first glimpse of Ashley heading towards me. I am waiting patiently at the front of our pack for her to arrive so we can get the ceremony started and as soon as I see her I'm pretty sure my jaw quite literally detaches and hits the floor. Her hair is in curls with a small portions from the top and sides, pinned up and flowers, tucked in between strands of hair. Her makeup is flawless, you can barely tell she is actually wearing any and it accentuates her features nicely. The dress she chose is simple and sweet. I told her since we were going for a pack run right after this not to wear anything to fancy, but I still want her to feel amazing. It is a white dress with two parts, a tight short dress reaching just above her mid-thigh, but over top is a lace material that contoured the other dress perfectly before cascading down to her feet flowing perfectly around her long legs. 
plus she is wearing the necklace I bought her and it makes me so happy. What's up with your grand she can't take her eyes of Roderick? I mind Link Ashley. Their mates can you believe it? Their mates can you believe it? She replies enthusiastically. She replies enthusiastically. That's awesome, you look beyond amazing by the way, and I love you more than anything G. That's awesome, you look beyond amazing by the way, and I love you more than anything G. Thank you, you look quite dashing yourself, and I love you just as much if not more. I effortlessly take my mate's hand from Roderick and place her close by my side as her gran and Roderick take some seats right up front. My parents stand and make their way up front beside us. After my mother and father each make a small speech they each take their place by our sides. I take my father's hand in mine and Ashley takes my mother's in hers. We each vow to always be loyal and protect our pack until our dying breathes. After which they each declare us the new Alpha and Luna relinquishing all of their power over the pack to us. I feel a sudden surge of energy shoot throughout my whole body and shadow takes over for a second to let out a large howl at the moon setting above us. May I present to you your new Alpha and Luna? My father yells as he and my mother raise our hands up in the air. My father yells as he and my mother raise our hands up in the air. Everyone stands, claps, and screams our names at the top of their lungs. After all the cheering and excitement die down just a bit we all make our way into the nearby forest to disrobe and go on our first pack run as Alpha and Luna. There are extremely loud gasps as Ashley transforms into her lichen and takes her place at the head of the pack. She isn't a short girl by any means, but once her lichen takes form she is right around 7 foot tall standing which lichen have the ability to do unlike werewolves. No one has seen a lichen in the past 200 years so it isn't surprising that the pack is astonished after Ashley's shift is finished. I was intimidated the first time she fully shifted in front of me at the cabin. Her size and strength are unmatched among the best of us. Thankfully there is no fear or trepidation in their eyes only admiration and adoration. We all run for hours throughout the whole territory. Tabitha leads us to the stream flowing through our territory so everyone can drink before going back home. As everyone gathers I watch her gracefully climb to the top of a small hill nearby and look up towards the moon she releases the largest and longest howl I have ever heard. Grander than either my father or I could ever muster. She truly is magnificent and I am so proud to have her as my mate. She makes her way over to me and rubs her muzzle against my neck while purring which I find enjoyable and a little humorous. I've called them my sexy mate. Tabitha mind links me. Tabitha mind links me. The rest of the lichens. The rest of the lichens. I question. I question. Yes. Let's hope they heard you. Let's hope they heard you. Let's head back home. We are the last ones to arrive back to the edge of the woods near our pack house. We are the last ones to arrive back to the edge of the woods near our pack house. We each shift back to our human forms, but before I can grab my clothes from behind a tree, Ashley quickly pushes me against a tree and kisses me passionately. She pulls away for just a moment and I notice her eyes are not the icy blue they should be, Tabitha still has control. She goes back to kissing me, slipping her tongue between my lips, and dominating our kiss. While her left hand rests on my shoulder her right one makes its way down between us and she starts stroking my heart member in her hand. She starts slow and then begins pumping hard, giving a squeeze, that was not too rough, but also not very gentle here and there to hear me groan slash moan at the odd sensation of feeling her tightening her grip. In response I take her left breast in my hand, tweaking slash pinching her nipple in between my thumb and forefinger a bit harshly because I know she would enjoy the small amount of pain. I place my other hand between her thighs and slip two fingers inside her roughly then started working them in and out as fast as I can and she bites my bottom lip in appreciation. Pulling away she moves her lips to my neck and when she gets to where they have left their mark she bites down hard causing Shadow to push forward and bite down on hers as well. Then he moves his hands down her back and grabs her as roughly lifting her and using his speed to switch their position so her back was now against the tree. Squeezing her as and lifting her up she eagerly wraps her legs around his waist and he thrusts hard and fast inside of her, 
halting for only a moment before picking up a crazy animalistic speed pumping in and out of her. Harder? She commands against his ear. Anything for you, mate. He smirks pounding into her wet pussy harder each time. He is burying himself so deep inside of her and using such force the tree slightly shifts backwards and you can see the tops of the roots that were buried underground now just above. He pulls out of her and positions her on the ground so she is on her knees holding herself up by her hands. He moves behind her on his own knees, grips her hips hard, and thrusts inside her again giving her every ounce of raw power he has. I know her knees are going to be bruised and torn from the amount of force he is using but thankfully we heal quickly. Her moans and cries of pleasure are filling the forest. They are getting close to finishing when Tabitha pulls away turning around and tackling him back onto the ground. No yet? She exclaims climbing on top and settling down with my hard dick back inside her. She exclaims climbing on top and settling down with my hard dick back inside her. She claws my chest as she rides me, bouncing up and down with an unimaginable speed and force. She moves her left hand down and starts rubbing her clit hard while gripping my throat with her right hand. She throws her head back and I groan at the intensity of all the different feelings coursing through my whole body. Her walls tighten around me as she finds her release. Come for me, mate. She whispers in my ear tightening her grip on my neck slightly. She whispers in my ear tightening her grip on my neck slightly. I come undone at her words and she stills on top of me as I empty myself deep inside. Her hand leaves my throat and when I look up her eyes were back to that icy blue I love so much. I have complete control as well now and when she collapses down on me I wrap my arms around her tightly as we both ride out our high and come down to a peaceful rhythm of breathing. I rub her back up and down as she relaxes quietly in my arms. My beautiful Luna let's go take a shower and get some sleep. She lets out a small yawn and carefully stands, wincing slightly as our bodies finally separate. I grab my clothes, putting the shorts on myself, and slip my t-shirt over her. Then I pick her up and start carrying her bridal style back to our room as she nestles into my chest. This is one of the best nights of my life and I am beyond amazed at how everything with Ashley is turning out. I never knew I could be this content and happy. After a quick shower we slip into our bed and fall into a blissful slumber. Ashley's POV. I will up the next morning with a huge smile on my face. I will up the next morning with a huge smile on my face. I am curled up close to Emerson and thinking about how lucky I am to have him in my life. Sure there were complications over the short amount of time we've known each other but he is my. One. I can't imagine being with anyone else at this point. Yes, it's cliche but he completes me. I never knew how empty and lonely I used to feel until he came into my life and we were separated. Then when we were finally able to be together I can't believe how amazing it feels to have him by my side as my soulmate for the rest of my life, however long that may be. His eyes flutter open and an instant smile graces his handsome face. Good morning sweet mate. He whispers before kissing my forehead. I reach up and pull his head down slightly so I can give him a slow intimate kiss. There is no urgency or lust in this kiss just a simplicity of love and desire to be close to him. He knows what I want as he makes his way in between my legs and enters me slowly, causing me to moan against his lips, and he stops once every lovely inch of him is buried deep inside of me. I hook my feet around the back of his calves to keep him close as he begins to slowly move his hips while pulling out and pumping back into to me at a steady pace. After last night's carnal rendezvous in the woods this is what I want slow and sensual. We are connecting on an even deeper level as I start to move along with him trusting my body to naturally move with his. I truly feel like our two souls are connecting as one and although I wish out first time had been this slow and intimate I realize we have the rest of lives to make up for how rushed our beginning was. I love you Emerson. I say softly as I gaze deeply into his hazel eyes for a moment. I love you Ashley. He replies sweetly. One week later I am sitting on the couch in Emerson's office reading up on some of our neighboring packs trying to learn as much about them as I can in case they decide to help us. We start putting word out among the vampires that we wish to have a private meeting with Ares where no harm would come to him. 
since we are planning on proposing a set date and time for this war he was hell-bent on bringing to our doorstep we know it is best to try and have the advantage of knowing when it would be. This way we could ask for the packs that Emerson's parents had built great relationships with to help us out. It isn't only to protect our pack but every werewolf pack if Ares is able to kill the last of the lichens, including me, he will be unstoppable and can eventually wipe wolves from existence with time. Lichens were created for that reason and Emerson is hoping that with me at the helm they will show up and fight with us. Tabitha has been going crazy all morning inside my head saying something is coming but she is being very vague and it's hard to tell if it is a good or bad thing. Alpha, Luna. One of our border patrols links us both. Yes, Gregory. Emerson responds. There are two men requesting entrance onto our lands. They said they mean no harm, but they were called here. Lichens. Lichens. I question excitedly, jumping up from the couch. They won't say, but by the looks of it, yes. We'll be right there. Emerson replies. Emerson grabs my hand, and we head to border cautiously. Even though Gregory said it was two lichens, there is always a small chance they could be anything but that. As we get closer, Emerson sniffs the air, which I find odd until he smiles and gives me a wink. They are lichens, love, they smell just like you. Now I know why you smell different at the party. Lichens have their own distinct scent from werewolves. I thought it was odd how much you were smelling my hair makes sense now. I reply with a chuckle. I can't believe you're actually alive. I can't believe you're actually alive. The taller of the two says, before running faster than anyone I have seen before, and picking me up which earns him a loud growl from Emerson. The taller of the two says, before running faster than anyone I have seen before, and picking me up which earns him a loud growl from Emerson. I take it this is your mate. He laughs putting me back on the ground. Yes I am. Emerson replies grabbing my hand and pulling me behind him protectively. I mean her no harm. He laughs again putting his hands up in surrender. You look just like your mother. You were close with my parents. I ask. I ask. Yes, I was your father's beta. That bastard used his alpha command on me and told me to lead the battle. He told me you would need me one day and commanded that I hide until the day you called. I even tried going back after I felt his bond with the pack break, but everyone was already gone. I'm sorry he took away your choice. I apologize. It's okay I'm happy to see Ares didn't find you at least now there's hope for us. How many of us are left? How many of us are left? I ask. Then, including you and your grand. Where are the others? Emerson ask. Emerson ask. Four of us stayed stateside the others spread out across the globe. Over the past two centuries I've been able to track them down and keep in contact they sent us to make sure the cow was real, before making the journey back here. So you are all willing to fight beside me? I question. I question. Yes. The first man says. The first man says. No. The other one shouts stepping forward. I will not sacrifice my pops for this war. I already lost my mate I refuse to lose them as well. I'm sorry Alpha but I won't allow them to join you. She is our Alpha and she needs all of us. The first one argues. They are the last pops of our pack we need to protect them at all costs. If all of us don't fight this battle it won't matter. If we all die Ares will find and kill them in the end. Stop. I say a little harsher than I intended causing them to each drop to a knee and bow their head tilting it slightly to the side. I say a little harsher than I intended causing them to each drop to a knee and bow their head tilting it slightly to the side. That was so hot I didn't even realize you would be able to command the lichens like an alpha. Emerson's voice comes through our link. Emerson's voice comes through our link. Is that what I did? Is that what I did? Yes I didn't put two and two together, but you have alpha blood in you and since your parents and brother both passed you are now the leader of all lichens. Yes I didn't put two and two together, but you have alpha blood in you and since your parents and brother both passed you are now the leader of all lichens. Please stand I didn't mean to do that. I spoke kindly to the two men in front of me. Let's start over. Can I know your names? 
My name is Micah. My name is Micah. The tallest one says proudly as he stands back up. That is Cassius. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Please don't call me Alpha just Ashley is fine. Cassius I understand wanting to protect your pups and I won't ask you to risk their lives. If it puts your mind at ease I can send my gran and her mate Roderick to keep an eye on them and out of danger. She protected me for many years and it would give me more peace of mind knowing she is far away from the war to come. I appreciate that more than you know Alf Ashley. So there are four other who are willing to join us? So there are four other who are willing to join us? Do they have any pups we need to worry about? I ask. None of us have found our mates yet so no pups for us. Micah states. What does that mean? Emerson asked. Why not choose a mate and have some pups? You guys have been around for so long doesn't it get lonely? It's different for us lichens. Micah begins to explain. Micah begins to explain. We don't get the luxury of choosing a mate. We also cannot have pups with anyone but our mates it was a way to ensure lichams didn't become too powerful or overpopulated. No one but our mates can bear our children. A lichen pregnancy would kill a regular wolf or human. That's sad I'm sorry you've been alone all these years. I'm sorry you lost your mate Cassius. I say genuinely reaching my hand out to rest it on his shoulder. I say genuinely reaching my hand out to rest it on his shoulder. Look why don't we go back to the pack house and talk some more. We can get you guys set up in some rooms and starting making a plan. Emerson speaks up. Micah and Cassius follow us back to the pack house and we make out way towards the kitchen. Emerson speaks up. Micah and Cassius follow us back to the pack house and we make out way towards the kitchen. I know I am going to need some coffee because it is going to be a long day and figure the guys might want some as well since I have no idea how far they had to travel. Since we have no clue when Ares and his army will attack we have to start planning right away. As soon as we step into the kitchen Elizabeth perks up from the book she is reading while sitting at the island and drinking some tea. I say hi but she isn't paying any attention to me. Her eyes are sharply staring behind me and I turn to follow her gaze which is directly on Micah and his eyes are locked on her as well. Mate. They both whisper. Oh hell no. Emerson spits out. Emerson spits out. She just turned 18 and who knows how old you are. He says gesturing to Micah who is still looking at Elizabeth with puppy dog's eyes. He says gesturing to Micah who is still looking at Elizabeth with puppy dog's eyes. Emerson. I say sweetly stepping in front of him and pulling his head down slightly to look at me. I say sweetly stepping in front of him and pulling his head down slightly to look at me. Technically I'm over years old as well. I joke trying to lighten his mood. You taught me to trust our moon goddess yet here you are denying her wishes. You're right. He replies closing his eyes and reining his temporary anger in. I'm sorry we just met you and this is my baby sister we're talking about. He continues pulling Micah's attention to him. He continues pulling Micah's attention to him. I would never hurt my mate. I've waited my whole life for her. Micah assures him looking back towards his mate. Micah assures him looking back towards his mate. My name's Elizabeth. She says standing from island stool and placing her book on the counter. She says standing from island stool and placing her book on the counter. Micah. He says grabbing the hand she extends for him to shake and instead pulls her against his chest and dips his head to the crook of her neck inhaling his sweet mate's scent. He says grabbing the hand she extends for him to shake and instead pulls her against his chest and dips his head to the crook of her neck inhaling his sweet mate's scent. You smell divine little wolf. He whispers against her ear. Well with this revelation why don't we take the rest of the night to rest, let the new mates get to know each other a little bit, and then we can start planning first thing tomorrow morning. I suggest. I suggest. Don't you think we should? Emerson starts. Emerson starts. Baby don't you remember how we were when we finally got to be together? It's one night. We are at war with an unknown enemy but we now have allies and two mates have been brought together. Let's end this day on a good note. 
let them have some time together before we have to get serious tomorrow. He simply nods and kisses my cheek. We show Cassius to one of the guest rooms in the pack house and Elizabeth sneaks Micah into her room, locking the door before Emerson can protest. He is about to go bust the door open but I distract him easily by slipping one of the straps from my dress down my shoulder and beckoning him to our room with my finger and a devious smile. Elizabeth's POV As we walk up the stairs to where the guest rooms are, I notice my brother is momentarily distracted showing Cassius which one he will be staying in. As we walk up the stairs to where the guest rooms are, I notice my brother is momentarily distracted showing Cassius which one he will be staying in. I quickly grab my mate's hand and run up one more flight of stairs to my room pulling Hum inside and hastily lock the door behind us before my brother can separate us. I hear him stomp up the stairs but then I hear Ashley sway him away into their bedroom. She is the best and I will be sure to thank her tomorrow. For tonight I just want some one-on-one -on -one time with my mate, my lichen mate. I can't deny the fact that he is a lichen is a little intimidating and he is much older which means more experienced than I am. I turn around to see my mate standing in the middle of the room looking around. So I take you really enjoy reading. He says walking over and running his hand along one of the two bookshelves built into the walls of my bedroom. All I can manage is a nod as his eyes trail up and down my body. I am a little confused as to why he is keeping such distance from me. From what I've heard when two mates find each other it's magnetic, they cling to each other like their life depends on it. Some mates mark each other within seconds of finding each other. I look down at myself suddenly a little self-conscious. Perhaps I wasn't what he was expecting, or maybe it is because I am so young he isn't attracted to me. I don't dress slutty like most girls my age, but I think my skinny jeans and tight button-up still make me look good. I start feeling insecure and fiddling with my fingers to stop myself from crying. Silly, I know, but I picture this going differently. I thought my mate would be overjoyed when he found me and here mine is acting as if I am just some acquaintance, not the woman who is supposed to complete him. Hey. I hear his voice, but I'm not ready to look up yet. Little wolf. He whispers after moving directly in front of me and lifting my chin. He whispers after moving directly in front of me and lifting my chin. What's wrong? Um, are you, are you disappointed that I'm your mate? What? What? He questions. Why would you think that? Most mates can't keep their hands of each other and you seem distant and disinterested. Oh, sweetie. He whispers leaning his forehead against mine and closing his eyes. I was trying to give you some space because I know you just turned 18 not that long ago and being mated to a lichen I thought you might need some time to get to know me and warm up the idea. So you accept me as your mate? Of course I do the question is will you accept me? Why wouldn't I accept you? Why wouldn't I accept you? I ask, I ask. Elizabeth. He says stepping away and takes a seat on the edge of my bed. He says stepping away and takes a seat on the edge of my bed. I've been alive for almost years. I am not as innocent as you. I am a lichen which makes me stronger and more dominating than most wolves you've come into contact with. I have certain desires that I don't know if you will accept. Like what? I ask walking over and taking a stand in between in his legs. My main desire is your complete submission little wolf. I want to have complete control over your body and you to trust me completely. I want to tease you and please you. He says with a smirk. He says with a smirk. You are so young and naive I don't know if you would be willing to do that for me and I don't want to force you into anything you aren't comfortable with. Is that all? I ask placing my hands on his shoulders. Yes, that's why I wanted to give you time to consider what you want. All I want. I say climbing on top of his lap, placing a leg on his side of him. I say climbing on top of his lap, placing a leg on his side of him. Is you. You are my mate. I will submit and do anything to please you. Do you really mean that? He asks his eyes glimmering with hope and again I just nod. He asks his eyes glimmering with hope and again I just nod. Just know that I would never do anything to hurt you and if you ever feel uncomfortable with me all you have to do is telephone me to stop and I will. Do you understand me? He asks and I nod again. He asks and I nod again. When I ask you a question I want an answer. He says with some authority behind his voice that immediately sends a pleasurable sensation right between my thighs. Yes. I answer quickly. I answer quickly. Sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. I reply understanding what he wants from me. Little wolf I want to claim you right now. Little wolf I want to claim you right now. He whispers as he dips his head into the crook of my neck. As soon as his lips touch my neck, a small moan escapes my lips and sends a shiver down my spine. It feels so amazing just having his lips against my skin sending tingling sensations with every kiss. 
He kisses up and down my neck seductively and I grip his hair tugging it lightly as he starts to suck the skin where his mark will lay. He groans as my grip on his hair tightens once his hands grip my eyes tightly pulling me even closer and I can feel the growing bulge in his pants pushing right against my aching core. His kisses and touch have ignited a fire unlike anything I have ever felt. Please mark me Micah. I plead as he grips my hips rocking me back and forth on his lap. Am I like hearing you beg? He whispers. Elizabeth. He says sternly, stopping what he is doing and moving back slightly so we are staring deeply into each other's eyes. I want you to stand up. I look at him confused. Things are just getting started and everything is so heated and now all of a sudden he wants to stop and is telling me get above him. I can't figure out if he is playing some game with me or what is going on in his head. I feel a sharp slap on my ass that causes me to jump slightly. Are you going to listen or do I have to telephone you twice? He says in his deep masculine voice. He says in his deep masculine voice. Yes sir. I reply quickly climbing out of his lap and standing a few feet in front of him. I reply quickly climbing out of his lap and standing a few feet in front of him. Good girl. He whispers and leans back a bit on the bed holding himself up by his extended arms positioned slightly behind him. He whispers and leans back a bit on the bed holding himself up by his extended arms positioned slightly behind him. I want you to take of all your clothes expect your panties little wolf. I stand there a moment confused yet again. He is asking me to strip for him which I find odd. I have never done anything like this and he is going to what just keep his clothes on and stare at me. Is this some sort of way to humiliate me I wondered. I look down at the floor nervously. All of a sudden I am feeling insecure again. He is much older, he has to have been with a bunch of other women, what if I don't live up to his expectations of me? I want to satisfy him but I have zero sexual experience. I haven't even kissed a boy yet. I am always too shy and everyone is so scared of my brother, boys won't risk forcing anything on me. Micah must sense my distress because he stands up and pulls my face up from the floor, cupping my face in his large hands. Are we going to fast my little mate? He asks with such concern that it melts my heart. No sir. I answer quickly shaking my head. I just I. I start but hate to admit what I am feeling because it may seem silly to him. I start but hate to admit what I am feeling because it may seem silly to him. You can telephone me anything. I've never done anything like this before. I've never kissed anyone before and I'm scared you'll be disappointed. Oh little wolf I could never in a million years be disappointed with you. We are going to take this slow, okay? I am still feeling nervous so go with a simple nod. I am still feeling nervous, so go with a simple nod. He keeps his hands on my cheeks and leans down slowly gently pressing his lips to mine and instantly I feel sparks ignite. Our lips feel perfect against each other's and as his lips move against mine with more passion and urgency that I am unfamiliar with but it excites me. I am glad my first kiss is with my mate. His tongue moves forward against my lips begging for entrance which I eagerly allow. I let him explore my mouth with his tongue mimicking his actions which earned me a low growl from the back of his throat. First things first. He whispered pulling away. He whispered pulling away. When I telephone you do something I want you to obey me without question. I will never ask anything of you that will cause you harm but if you do not do as I please I will have to punish you. He continues. He continues. Do you understand? He asks to which I reply with a nod. He asks to which I reply with a nod. I need you to use your words. Yes sir. I say sweetly knowing how much he likes when I call him that. I say sweetly knowing how much he likes when I call him that. He moves away and takes his position back on the bed, sitting on the edge and leaning slightly back supported by his hands down on the mattress. Now I have already asked you once and you disobeyed me. I will repeat myself once more and then show you what happens when you don't listen the first time. Take of all of your clothes except for your panties. Yes sir. I reply eagerly this time as the excitement of mating takes over my body, my wolf jumping for joy at how sexy our mate looks just casually sitting on the bed. I reply eagerly this time as the excitement of mating takes over my body, my wolf jumping for joy at how sexy our mate looks just casually sitting on the bed. I bend down and quickly kick of my shoes not caring where they fly of to. Slow down little one. Micah demands. Micah demands. We have all night and I want to enjoy this. Calm down my wolf, Sina encourages I take a few deep breaths to calm my nerves and excitement. He is right, we have all night and there is no need to rush. I move my hand to the front of my top and slowly undo each button keeping direct eye contact with Micah. I see the excitement glimmering in his eyes each button lower I get. Once I am completely done I let the top slide down my arms and onto the floor. 
I reach back and unclasp the back of my bra, sliding each arm out while still holding onto the front, before letting it fall to the floor as well. Then I unbutton, unzip, and slide my jeans down my legs tantalizingly slow before stepping out leaving them on the floor behind me. Mike is POV. It is taking everything in me not to mate and mark her instantly but I need her to see the real me, the one she is choosing to be with forever. It is taking everything in me not to mate and mark her instantly but I need her to see the real me, the one she is choosing to be with forever. Once we mark each other there is no going back and I need her to know what she is getting into. She is a living breathing goddess. Her innocence is astounding and I can't help but think of the many ways I plan to corrupt her. She is already catching on quickly and even seems to enjoy pleasing me with such simple things as calling me sir. She didn't listen right away though and now is as good a time as any to show her what will happen if she hesitates or denies me in the future. Come. I gesture with my hand after she takes her time stripping in front of me. She quickly scurries over not wanting to displease me any more than she already has. I gesture with my hand after she takes her time stripping in front of me. She quickly scurries over not wanting to displease me any more than she already has. I pull her by her wrist roughly, but not enough to actually hurt her, across my lap face down so her gorgeous round as is stuck in the air. She wriggles around in anticipation knowing exactly what is about to happen. I can already smell a hint of her arousal. With my left hand I move the hair in front of her face around to other side of her head so I can see her beautiful face and gauge her reaction better to what I am about to do. I place my right hand on her ass rubbing across her entire backside building the suspense. I draw back slightly and slap her left cheek with half strength causing a small gasp and then giggle to leave her pretty little mouth. She thinks this is funny I think to myself before pulling my hand back farther and put more force behind my smack as it lands firmly on her right cheek. An even bigger gasp and whimper leave her perfect mouth. I give her one last fast and firm smack on her left cheek. That is a small idea of what can happen if you disobey or displease me. Do you understand that next time would be much harder and longer? Yes sir, yes sir. She says breathlessly. She says breathlessly. On the bed. I demand and she instantly complies removing herself from my lap and settling herself in the middle of the bed on her knees with her hands resting on her thighs. I demand and she instantly complies removing herself from my lap and settling herself in the middle of the bed on her knees with her hands resting on her thighs. She is an instinctively good little submissive taking one of my favorite positions without even being told to. The moon goddess really has paired me with the perfect mate. I stand from the bed and turn around to face her. I reach for the bottom of my shirt and begin to pull it up when her voice stops me. Sir? She says softly. She says softly. Yes mate. I respond dazzled by the desire in her eyes. I respond dazzled by the desire in her eyes. May I? She asks scooting closer to the edge of the bed. Yes. She climbs of the bed and stands in front of me. I drop my hands to my sides and she grips the bottom of my shirt moving it upward slightly before bending down and places a kiss just below my navel. With each inch the shirt moves up so do her lips sending tingling sensations across my abdomen and chest. I raise my arms as she pulls the shirt over my head and tosses it to the side. Her hands then enthusiastically move to the my belt. Once she has that undone, along with the button and zipper of my jeans, she hooks her fingers inside the top of my briefs and jeans yanking them down with ease. She naturally settles on her knees yet again and gasps as she comes face to face to with my hard dick ready and waiting for her. Watching her strip, having my hand across her A, and feeling her lips along my stomach has me stiff as a board. She raises her gaze to meet mine asking permission. I am surprised by how open and unabashed she is for this being her first time. I assume the mate bond or perhaps her wolf are helping her relax. I give her a small nod and she moves her eyes back down to my fully erect cock begging to be touched. She reaches her hand out tentatively as if she is a bit frightened of hurting me but once her hand wraps around me I can't help moaning from the electricity I feel from just that simple touch. She slowly moves her hand up and down testing the waters. She starts slowly in a repetitive motion for several strokes before picking up the pace, testing different pressures, and moving her hand round and round as she slides it up and down. I close my eyes so lost in the sensation of my mate's touch that I don't even register she stops moving her hand for a few moments before I feel her wet lips on the head of my cock. My eyes shoot open and her eyes are dead locked on mine as she takes me further inside her mouth. She is almost at the base and I can feel myself near the back of her throat. She moves her head back slowly sucking as she pulls away then moves forward again her saliva coating my dick. Her mouth is so warm and inviting once she starts picking up the pace of her movements I impulsively move my hand to the back of her head grabbing a fist full of her hair and taking control. Relax. I whisper as I start forcing myself faster and farther into her mouth. 
I whisper as I start forcing myself faster and farther into her mouth. I can see a few tears slipping from the sides of her eyes as I start pounding myself into her soft and sweet mouth. I feel myself getting close and let go of her hair ready to pull back but she gripped my hips and looks back up at me with determination. Her eyes conveying her desire for me to keep going. I can't deny my beautiful mate and after a few more deep thrusts inside her mouth I find my release and she readily swallows every last drop. She pulls back resting on the balls of her feet and waits for me to telephone her what to do next. The fact that she is catching on so easily and so willing to please me without any real incentive other than my satisfaction has me hard again in a matter of seconds. I believe you deserve a reward for such a good job little wolf. I say extending my hand and pulling her to her feet. I say extending my hand and pulling her to her feet. I want you on your back on the bed. She does just as she is told and eagerly waits for my next move. I stand at the edge of bed for a few moments admiring how sexy my innocent mate is. I love that she doesn't openly flaunt her amazing body by exposing to much of it like most girls her age but still manages to look ravishing. Watching her strip in front of me was enticing and I had to fight my lichen for control he wanted to rip her clothes of and have his way with her which I knew would be rough. This is her first time I want to savor it a bit and make sure she enjoys it. Like a predator about to devour its prey I climb on the bed and over her boxing her in underneath me. There is nowhere for my little wolf to run now. I kiss her sweet lips a few moments before moving to her neck, kissing up and down each side as her body trembles below me. I love that simple kisses can cause a reaction I wonder how intense it will be once my lips make their way further down. I move my left knee between her legs spreading them wider and situate myself in between them. As I continue to kiss her neck I let my hard cock rub against her, her juices soak through her panties, and the friction of the material is definitely tormenting not only her but myself as well. I can't wait to have my dick buried inside her as I sink my teeth into her marking spot. Please. She begs the more I push myself against her. She begs the more I push myself against her. She hooks her legs around the back of mine and her fingers are digging in along my side begging me to give her what she needs. I move down slightly taking one of her hard nipples in between my teeth, biting and pulling slightly, which causes her to gasp then moan at the new sensation. I moved to the side of her nipple and started sucking on her skin lightly. I want to leave as many love bites as I can on my mate. While doing that I pinch her other nipple in between two fingers, twisting and tweaking it, testing to see what kind of reactions I can get. I switch back and forth between each one of her breasts until I have her breathe ragged and her pleading with me to keep going. I kiss across her ribcage and down past her navel. The closer I get to her wet pussy the more she begs. I kiss her inner thighs using my hands to spread her legs wide for me. I brush my nose up and along her panty line, inhaling her sweet scent, and then with a finger hook under the top of her panties on each hip I pull them down slowly. I move back up with my face right in front of her wet entrance and run my tongue along the outside of her folds teasing her before spreading them slightly with my fingers and slipping my tongue inside, flicking and twisting it in such a way that I know will bring her her first orgasm. She is panting and crying out my name as my tongue moves up to her sensitive clit and I slip three fingers inside pumping them in and out faster and faster until I feel her tighten and release around me. Oh Micah, she moans as her first orgasm rips through her. I move up capturing her lips once more as I place my rock hardcock just outside her entrance. It will hurt for a moment but I will take it slow. I whisper sweetly as I push myself all the way inside her, stilling for a few moments allowing her to adjust to the sudden intrusion. I whisper sweetly as I push myself all the way inside her, stilling for a few moments allowing her to adjust to the sudden intrusion. She has a pained expression for a moment but then she starts to wriggle beneath me and I take that as a sign to move. I go slow and steady, filling her over and over. I start kissing her neck once again and make my way to her marking spot. I pick the pace up thrusting in and out of her with an urgency and need that I know will push her over the edge yet again. Just as I feel she is getting close I sink my teeth deep into her neck and mark her as mine, for now and always. She moans my name once more letting herself go around me. I lick her mark and continue to pump in and out of her chasing my own release. Sensing I am close she does just as I did and lets her canines pierce the skin right where her mark should rightfully be and I come instantly deep inside my precious mate. Emerson's POV the next morning I wake up next to my amazing mate and give her a sweet kiss on her forehead before slipping out of bed and making my way into the bathroom for a shower. The next morning I wake up next to my amazing mate and give her a sweet kiss on her forehead before slipping out of bed and making my way into the bathroom for a shower. I am leaning into the shower adjusting the temperature when her scent hits me. I turn around to see her leaning against the door with her arms crossed. 
I smile sweetly at her as she makes her way over to me. You are going to shower without me. She pouts. She pouts. Well, we had a pretty eventful day yesterday, I just wanted you to get some extra rest. I figure you might want to start training with Micah today. So what better way to start my day than a shower with my sexy alpha? She responds with a wink as she pulls my t-shirt over her head and steps in the shower, brushing against me. I drop my boxers and climb in behind her. She responds with a wink as she pulls my t-shirt over her head and steps in the shower, brushing against me. I drop my boxers and climb in behind her. She is under the water, with her eyes closed, letting the water cascade down her hot body. Without warning I gather both her wrists in my hand, push her back against the shower wall, and pin her arms above her head. I kiss her roughly before moving my lips to her neck. Kissing, biting and sucking along each side. She tries to pull her arms from my grasp to touch me, but I only push them harder against the wall. I'm in charge Luna. I whisper huskily in her ear. I whisper huskily in her ear. Turn around. I release her arms and she does just as I say turning away from me. I grab her arms once again and pull them behind her back. Settling her wrists together at the small of her back and holding them together in my left hand I position her against the shower wall again, her face is turned to the side, and bare breasts are squished against the tile. She moans as I spread her thighs and slip two fingers inside her hot and wet pussy. As I finger her, I start rubbing her tight little asshole with my thumb to gauge her reaction. She whimpers as I push it slightly in but doesn't ask me to stop. She squirms a bit at first but starts to loosen up after a few moments. My hard cock is aching to be inside of her. I move my hand from between her thighs and position myself at her back entrance. She stiffens slightly. Relax, baby. It's only going to hurt for a moment. I whisper against her ear as I ease my way inside of her tight hole. I whisper against her ear as I ease my way inside of her tight hole. Ah. Uh. She shrieks at first, but when I move my hand around her front and start rubbing her clit she relaxes and her sweet moans take over. Once I am all the way in she gasps and then I pull back before pushing back in yet again. As I start fucking her round ass faster her moans get louder and she even arches her back and sticks it out more for a better angle. As I get closer to my release I begin rubbing her clit harder and inserting two fingers inside her hooking them around to hit that sweet spot inside her. We both come at the same time and I slowly pull out of her, releasing my grip on her arms, and pull her back into my embrace. I hug her tightly and kiss her neck from behind. Grabbing the soap I wash every inch of her as she relaxes. After we are both clean and dressed we go down to the kitchen for breakfast. Micah is sitting at the table with Elizabeth on his lap while she feeds him fruit. She is giggling and so in love and I can't help but feel happy for my littlest sister. I don't like that it all happens so fast and he is older but technically Ashley is correct in pointing out that she is much older as well. Plus he is a leakin, they are kind and caring but also stronger than the average werewolf and overprotective so what more can I ask for an AA mate for my sister? We take two seats across from them and soon Emma and Bradley join us. We start talking about taking a trip with Micah and Cassius to their home pack to let Ashley see where she grew up. It is unlikely that anything remains but at least she can see the land where her family settled and established their pack. Vampires One of our border patrols links to Ashley and I. One of our border patrols links to Ashley and I. We're on our way. I link back standing quickly. I link back standing quickly. Ashley you stay here with Em and Liz. Micah and Bradley you two come with me. I command. I command. No absolutely not. Ashley says standing up and grabs my hand. This is my fight too, we do this together. She continues with determination in her eyes. What because we're women we need to stay back and out of the fighting. Emma says standing as well. What kind of misogynistic crap is that, brother? We don't have time to argue. I reply sternly. Then don't. Emma says grabbing Ashley's hand and pulling her towards the front door. Once we are all outside we each shift and make our way to the border. 
Once we arrive we see a young girl dressed in all black standing in the middle of four men, around her ready to attack as our two patrol guards pace around them in their wolf forms. We all shift back and I step forward. Ashley makes her way to my side, but I push her slightly behind me on instinct to protect her from any danger. What is your purpose for being on our land? I asked. I asked. You asked for us. The girl replies sarcastically. We reached out to Ares. Ashley speaks up from behind me. I'm one of his followers, Genevieve. I'm one of his followers, Genevieve. He sent me in his stead. Pleased to meet you all. She responds with a small curtsy at the end. Did you really think he would show up to what may very well be a trap? She continues with an almost bored expression on her face. She continues with an almost bored expression on her face. He killed my family. Micah growls from behind me. Now he's too much of a coward to show his face. He's not stupid. He wants to try to negotiate before slaughtering a whole pack. There is nothing to negotiate. I state. I state. So you would have your whole pack killed over a few lichens? You don't scare us. You don't scare us. Bradley snorts. Bradley snorts. We should. She replies confidently. She replies confidently. We have thousands whereas you have maybe pack member at most and that's including women and children which I'm sure you don't want them fighting. If you want a war we are prepared for it. You really think so? You really think so? She says walking towards us, I push Ashley farther behind me. She says walking towards us, I push Ashley farther behind me. Just give us the lichens, that's all Ares wants. So he can kill them and then be powerful enough to wipe every werewolf pack around. So he can kill them and then be powerful enough to wipe every werewolf pack around. We know that only a lichen can kill and why would we give up our only defense against his kind? Ares doesn't care about little wolves. He only wants revenge on the lichens, they killed his brothers. We had every right to, he attacked our pack. Micah booms stepping towards her with his claws extended. Micah booms stepping towards her with his claws extended. We lived in peace. We never attacked unless absolutely necessary. Let's cut to the chase. She groans. She groans. Ares took over the land where your pack once resided and his message is simple, attack if you dare. With that she turns and runs away with her four companions. We all make our way back to the pack house and go into my office. Micah can you see how far away the remaining lichens are? I'm going to cal as many of my ally packs and see how quickly they can be ready for this battle. I say we plan and go full force a week from now. It'll give enough time for everyone to get there. We need to get this done and over with sooner than later. I want Elizabeth to go with Gran and Roderick to watch Cassius's children. I need her safe. I can fight. Elizabeth speaks up. Elizabeth speaks up. Lizzie. Lizzie. You're my baby sister. I need you safe. Is Emma sitting out? Hell no, hell no. Emma snorts. Emma snorts. How is that fair, Emerson? Elizabeth asks. Elizabeth asks. Little wolf. Micah says pulling her close. Micah says pulling her close. Only a lichen can kill Ares. I need to be able to focus and help Ashley and Cassius take him out. I can't do that if I'm worried about you. I just found you, please. He continues sweetly. He continues sweetly. Fine, but if something happens to you, I will never forgive you. She responds in defeat. She responds in defeat. I can tell my sister doesn't want to fight with her mate and see how much he cares and needs to know she is safe. I think about how nice it would be to keep my mate safe as well. After her last kill I can't help but worry what will happen when she is face to face with an army of vampires but I also know she needs this. She needs to avenge her family. I notice Emma and Ashley slip out of the office as I pick up the phone to Cal Alpha Morrison, the next state over, and fill him in on our plan. Miss POV. I asked.
ask Ashley to go outside with me once they are done arguing with Liz. I ask Ashley to go outside with me once they are done arguing with Liz. Something major happened, and I need to tell someone. Emerson and Elizabeth won't understand. Bradley isn't an option in this situation. Ashley is my best friend and can give an outsider's opinions, and she isn't as close as my mate and family. Her thoughts can be more objective, and that's exactly what I need right now. What's going on, Em? She asks once we are outside and a little ways away from the pack house. This is a conversation I don't want heard. She's my mate. I spit out quickly as we keep walking. I spit out quickly as we keep walking. Who? She asks. Flashback after leaving the house and heading to the border to check out the vampire situation. My heart started beating faster the closer we got. We got close enough and shifted. Then the smell of blueberries and honeysuckle caught my attention and I tried to pinpoint exactly where it was coming from. That's when I spotted her. She had short red hair, pale skin, and an all-black ensemble. I couldn't deny she looked badass, but she was a vampire. They normally smell like death, yet I was getting a much sweeter smell from her. Mate. Grace, my wolf, howled in my head. Grace, my wolf, howled in my head. I instantly stiffened as we had all settled a safe distance away from them. She caught my eyes on here and shot me a curious look back. Her gaze ran the entire length of my body twice. It wasn't until my brother spoke our trance was broken. Bradley grabbed my hand and gave it a squeeze, noticing something was wrong. Everything all right, babe. He asked over a personal mind link. Yay, just not used to being this close to vampires. Don't worry, I would never let anything happen to you. He linked back reassuringly. Flashback in. The vampire. The redhead. What the hell am I going to do, Ash? I don't even understand how I have two mates in the first place. Or what I did to Pies of the Moon Goddess for her to pair me with a vampire. I spit out quickly as my nerves get the better of me. I spit out quickly as my nerves get the better of me. Whoa, Emma, breathe. She replies, grabbing my hand to calm me. If I've learned anything from everything that happened to me, it's to trust that everything happens for a reason. Imagine if we never met in school, you would have never dragged me to that silly Halloween party, and I would have never found Emerson. Without Emerson, I would have just been some silly human with a poor leakin trapped inside her. There has to be a reason you have not only a werewolf mate, but a vampire one. Also, she is kind of hot, so that is a plus. She replies joking at the end to get me to laugh, which works. She replies joking at the end to get me to laugh, which works. What you're saying makes sense, Ash. But even if I were to accept her, how on earth would I begin to explain this to Bradley? Even Emerson? You think he would accept a vampire as his little sister's mate? It might be an adjustment, but I'm sure deep down inside all he'll ever truly want is for you to be happy. You're right. This is why I love you, Ashley. I say pulling her into a hug. I say pulling her into a hug. Go back and be with Emerson. I need some time alone to think and be alone. Well, link me if you want to talk more. She replies pulling away. She replies pulling away. She heads back towards the pack house, and my mind starts racing again. What if I accept her and Bradley doesn't? Then I will have to choose between them. Obviously, I would choose Bradley, but would that be fair to her? I hate to admit that although I love Bradley with all my heart, I still feel incomplete. Like there is something missing. There must be a good reason that the moon goddess would give me two mates. Do I need to be worried about Barbie? Her sweet melodic voice rings out. I'm not as territorial as you wolves, but she was touching what is mine? She continues stepping out from behind a tree and casually leans against it. Ashley is my best friend and definitely not the Barbie type. I wasn't judging, just saw blonde hair and the first thing I thought of was that dumb plastic doll. So you know we are mates? I wasn't quite sure at first, so I stuck around and may or may not have eavesdropped a bit. I wasn't quite sure at first, so I stuck around and may or may not have eavesdropped a bit. She says looking up in the distance with a smirk. She says looking up in the distance with a smirk. My wolf says you are my mate, but I don't understand how. I already have one. I state. I state. You mean the hottie that was holding your hand early? She questions. She questions. Interesting you think my other mate is hot. I respond now leaning against a tree myself. I respond now leaning against a tree myself. I mean not the most gorgeous man I've ever seen, but I would turn down a threesome with the two of you. She winks, she winks, I wee weir. I stutter and sure of how to even properly respond to that. I stutter and sure of how to even properly respond to that. What's wrong? She says as I feel her body brush the front of mine, her arms around my waist, hands holding the tree. Cat got your tongue? 
she whispers with her face right next to mine and breathe against my ear, sending a shiver throughout my whole body. She waits a moment for a response, but my mind is blank, and that's when I feel her teeth graze my earlobe and lips on my neck right below. I close my eyes and let my head fall back against the tree, enjoying the new sensations flowing through me. Her kisses are slightly different than Bradley's, less possessive and hungry. Hers are light, gentle, and sensual. As her lips move down my neck, I feel her hand move from the tree and slip under my top. I am surprised to feel the same sparks I feel when my other mate touches me. I feel her teeth graze the bare side of my neck, which is opposite to where Bradley's mark lie. I can't deny that if she tries to mark me now, I won't push her away. As if sensing exactly what is going through my mind, I feel her other hand move up around the back of my neck, grab a fistful of hair, and pull my head to the side just a bit more before her fangs pierce my skin. Placing her mark, and she gets her first taste of my blood. I can hear my blood flowing into her mouth and down her throat, and instead of freighting me, I find it exhilarating. It is making me want more. She pulls away slowly and licks my wound as a wolf would. I heard it's best to seal the wound. She whispers. She whispers. Now, my big bad wolf, are you ready to mark me or do you need more time? I want to, but before I claim you, it's only fair I talk to my other mate. I understand. She says, backing away, but I can see the slight hurt in her eyes. She says, backing away, but I can see the slight hurt in her eyes. We will see each other again soon. She continues and runs up before I have a chance to respond. She continues and runs up before I have a chance to respond. I decide I need to find Bradley and figure things out sooner rather than later. I don't want to hide something this big from him, and I just pray to the moon goddess he will at least give her a chance and trust the fact that I believe she is meant for both of us. Once I arrive back at the house, I follow my mate's scent to our room, and when I step inside, I am surprised to find him stuffing some clothes into a backpack. Babe, what's going on? I ask, I ask. Well, after you and Ash left, we talked about going to check out their old pack lands and get an idea of their actual numbers. You're leaving now? I ask a little stunned. I ask a little stunned. The sooner the better. Micah and I want to have time to get there and back before other packs start showing up. Well, I needed to talk to you about something kind of important. Can it wait until I get back? He cuts me off with a bit of urgency. He cuts me off with a bit of urgency. I have another mate, Bradley, and I think it's kind of important to discuss it now since she already marked me. What? What? He yells, dropping his bag to the floor and rushing to my side to inspect my neck. You let someone else mark you. Wait, did you say she? Yes, the vampire that showed up earlier is my mate. She marked me in the heat of the moment. But I told her I wouldn't mark her until I talked to you. A vampire. He growls. He growls. You let a blood sucker mark you without my consent. Excuse me. I say pushing him away. I say pushing him away. I don't need your consent. This is my body and it's my choice. The only reason I didn't mark her back right away is because if I am going to accept her fully, I need to know you are okay with it. But clearly you're not. Well, you just sprung this on me. And how would you feel if I showed up with another mark on my neck? I didn't think of it that way. I reply honestly. I reply honestly. She's a vampire, Rim, and not just anyone, one of Ares Legion. Can we even trust her? I do I trust her. You just met her, how the hell can you? He questions. He questions. Same way I did you. It's our bond. I doubt she would ever betray it. And why did you have to throw this at me now of all times? And why did you have to throw this at me now of all times? Micah is waiting for me downstairs. We have to go. He says, grabbing his bag from the floor and heading for the door, but stops with his hand resting on the doorknob. He says, grabbing his bag from the floor and heading for the door, but stops with his hand resting on the doorknob. I love you and you are my mate. I don't want another one, Emma. He continues before leaving me alone in our bedroom. I drop to the floor beside out bed, bringing me knees to my chest, and cry. What just happened? We have never had a fight this bad. And then he just left with no resolve. A part of me is mad at him for making it seem like he should choose if she was able to mark me, but the other part of me is upset with myself for allowing her to in the heat of the moment without telling Bradley first. Now I may have to wait days to fix things with my first mate, and who knows when the next time I see my new mate will be. How did this day end up so disastrous? I think to myself as I climb under the covers and try to forget my problems for a little- Ashley's POV it's been three days since Micah and Bradley went to scope out our old pack lands and get an estimate of how large our army actually is. It's been three days since Micah and Bradley went to scope out our old pack lands and get an estimate of how large our army actually is. I haven't gotten any response from Micah and neither Emerson or Emma have heard from Bradley. We are all worried and Emma is distraught because her and Bradley got into a fight over her other mate. 
I slept in her bed with her the past two nights to comfort her but she's so scared of losing him and never having the chance to make amends that she's been inconsolable. I leave her in the room to join Emerson, Cassius, Elizabeth, and the three alphas who arrived yesterday morning. I walk into the office and take a seat on Emerson's lap. I miss not sleeping next to him even though it has only two nights. Thank you for waiting for me. I speak up as Emerson hugs me tight and takes a few deep breaths of my scent to calm himself, it's been a rough few days for us all. I speak up as Emerson hugs me tight and takes a few deep breaths of my scent to calm himself, it's been a rough few days for us all. So we sent two scouts out three days ago and they are yet to return and we can't reach them so our assumption is they've been captured. We need to attack sooner than later. The longer we wait the less chance they will be kept alive. My mate's pack is willing to meet us there with warriors, along with our own. Alpha Klein speaks. Thank you. Emerson and I say simultaneously. Emerson and I say simultaneously. I brought with me and more will meet us there. Alpha Trenton adds. My men are awaiting my order, and they will depart the same time as us. Our neighboring packs Alpha continues. Let's plan to leave first thing tomorrow that will put us there by nightfall. Emerson insists. Emerson insists. Elizabeth, you leave tonight with Gran and Roderick to go meet and protect Cassius's pups. Bring him back to me. Elizabeth begs holding back a sob. Elizabeth begs holding back a sob. We will. I say jumping of of Emerson's lap and pulling her into a tight hug. I say jumping of of Emerson's lap and pulling her into a tight hug. We are going back to check on Emma and get Liz packed to leave tonight. I trust you gentlemen to handle everything from here. I am going to get some rest because tomorrow we kill Ares and save the last of the lichens. I give Emerson a kiss on the lips and whisper to him I love him before leaving with Elizabeth to go back to Emma's side. I give Emerson a kiss on the lips and whisper to him I love him before leaving with Elizabeth to go back to Emma's side. I cannot imagine how each of them are feeling with their mates missing. As far as we knew they were both still alive or the girls would have felt their bonds break but I can tell they are feeling some sort of pain. Neither one of them want to talk about it and I don't want to push. I just hope my presence and reassurance can help even the slightest bit. Elizabeth and I enter Emma's room and climb on either side of her wrapping her up in our arms. Elizabeth is leaving tonight M. I whisper. I whisper. I think you should go with her. What? She hisses as her eyes shoot up and her dark gaze meets mine. She hisses as her eyes shoot up and her dark gaze meets mine. I will not be sitting out on the fight to save my mate. Don't forget I have not one but two mates on that monster's territory. We understand that sister but with the state you're in, going in there could be detrimental to the rescue mission. You aren't thinking rationally and who knows what kind of rash and possibly dangerous decisions you could make. I will not stay here and wait. I will go and fight for both of my mates. If you try to stop me it will not end well Ashley. She threatens and it catches me of guard. She threatens and it catches me of guard. I know she is hurting but she has never once spoken to me like that. She seems to sense my unease pulling me into a hug whispering an apology for snapping. All three of us lay there curled up for what seems like several hours just enjoying each other's presence and silently praying to the moon goddess to let everyone make it out alive. Even if we do manage to rescue Micah and Bradley we still have a legion of vampires to get through to kill our main target Ares. We cannot and will not leave until this is finished once and for all. My gran told me stories of how fearless and strong my father and brother were and it made nervous to wonder how on earth I would kill Ares. Who knew what state Micah would be in when we found him and although Cassius and I had some intense one-on-one -on -one leak in training the past few days I was unsure if it was enough. He hadn't fought in so long and this was all still new to me could we really defeat someone who has had years to prepare. He survived the first time and even though I have the determination and desire to annihilate him a part of me is worried he will get away again. I can't seem to shut my mind down enough to rest so I sneak downstairs to make some tea. What's on your mind beautiful? Emerson speaks softly against my ear as he hugs me from behind. 
Emerson speaks softly against my ear as he hugs me from behind. I'm just worried about how tomorrow will go. We all are but we can and will defeat Ares and his army. We all are but we can and will defeat Ares and his army. I believe in you. I believe in us. Just trust Tabitha and Cassius will be there as well. Hopefully the last remaining Leakins will meet us there. I know Micah sent them each an encrypted message before he left. He survived against a whole pack of Leakins Emerson how can you be so sure he won't win this time? I whisper turning in his arms to face him, wrapping my arms around him, and resting my head on his chest allowing his steady heartbeat to calm me. I whisper turning in his arms to face him, wrapping my arms around him, and resting my head on his chest allowing his steady heartbeat to calm me. Cassius is a fierce warrior and we have several packs as backup but most importantly Ash we have you. Cassius is a fierce warrior and we have several packs as backup but most importantly Ash we have you. You are the last female Leakin and you have alpha blood in you that makes you stronger than anyone us. Plus we both know that once you put your mind to something there is not stopping you. We will play it smart and don't forget I am going to be by your side every step of the way. Thank you. I don't know what I would do without you. I love you so much. I love you to Luna. He responds sweetly placing a gentle kiss on my forehead. He responds sweetly placing a gentle kiss on my forehead. Now let's go get our farewells out of the way and make sure Gran, Roderick, and Elizabeth are safely on their way before we go to bed. We will need plenty of rest since we are leaving bright and early tomorrow morning. After sending the three of them up to the location Cassius gave us where his pups are hidden we all spend an hour going over the plan for tomorrow once more before going our separate ways to get some shut eye. Emerson volunteered to stay with Emma for the night so I find myself alone in bed tossing and turning nervous for the following day, eventually wearing myself out and drifting into the void of nothingness where bad dreams dwell. I could see the pack house clearly. He had rebuilt it just as my parents had had it once before. As I ran across the field the smell of blood and death surrounded me. Bodies of both wolf and vampire littered the ground around me as I rushed towards my mate. I could feel our bond hanging on by a tiny string just one more pull and it would break. I had to make it in time. I couldn't lose him not now, not ever. There was no way I could continue living without Emerson. Just a few feet away from the front door I watched in horror as his body came tumbling down the front steps and I looked up to see Ares standing there triumphantly holding my mate's heart in his hand. I fell to my knees as the horrendous pain of Emerson's death tore through me. No! I cried as I began crawling towards him. Please no! I whimpered. This all could have been avoided. Ares spoke from above me. Ares spoke from above me. All you had to do was surrender yourself to me. He continued as he pinned me to the ground wrapping a hand around my throat. He continued as he pinned me to the ground wrapping a hand around my throat. All those wolves' lives would have been spared, even your pathetic mates. I looked towards Emerson as I felt his hand move from my neck downwards. This was my end. The only good thing was I would once again be with my mate in the afterlife. How tragic it was we never got to really live this one. Emerson. I cried out as my death snaps me awake. I cried out as my death snaps me awake. I shake of the dread and despair from that horrid dream. Perhaps there is a truth to it. If I surrender myself to him could hundreds of wolves' lives be spared. I can't do that to Cassius or his pups. It isn't just about me anymore. I have a small tribe of my Lycan brethren to protect too. That dream should scare me but instead it gives me more reason to fight. I will not allow that to be the outcome of tomorrow. Ares will die by my hand. Emma's POV After a long journey we arrive a few miles outside Ashley's Old Pack's territory. We send a few scouts quickly around the borders to see if there are any weak spots and access the best points of attack. There are warriors with swords, wooden stakes, archers with silver-tipped arrows, 
and even several men with sides. I tightened my grip on my axe. I wasn't as studious and girly as Elizabeth growing up. I wanted to start training as early as our father would let me. I wanted to be able to defend myself. As I grew older, I became more in tune with my feminine side and realized I can be a badass and still rock a sexy dress, although hiding my axe underneath one was nearly impossible. Ashley will draw Ares out through the front and distract him while Emma and I sneak around back and inside. Once we get Bradley and Micah out safely we will attack. Emerson says going over the plan once more as we take our place near the edge of the forest. Emerson, Emma. Ashley whispers. Ashley whispers. If this doesn't end well just know I love you both more than anything and I'm so glad I got to be a part of your family even for a short amount of time. Ash, don't do that. I say quickly. I say quickly. Don't say goodbyes. This is your home. Defend it. Show Aries who really belongs here. She gives Emerson a long kiss and squeezes him tightly, making my heart hurt. It's feel like forever since I've last kissed or touched my mate. I broke down and shut down thinking I may never see him again. But now being this close, I have to focus. I am going to save my mate mates. They will both be coming back home with me. Ashley gives me a hug as well before shifting into her lichen and running to the front of the pack house Ares had rebuilt. Ares, you coward. Tabitha yells. Her lichen is both beautiful and terrifying. Tabitha yells. Her lichen is both beautiful and terrifying. Come face me once and for all. It's time you pay for taking my family from me. Once we hear the front door open and his cold hard voice speak back to Ashley slash Tabitha, we carefully and cautiously make our way to the back of the house. Once we hear the front door open and his cold hard voice speak back to Ashley slash Tabitha, we carefully and cautiously make our way to the back of the house. Just as we are about to approach the door, two vampires came around the corner, almost catching us but take too long to notice our intrusion, giving us ample time to subdue and behead them. Once inside, we manage to get past several more bloodsuckers and successfully find their cells in the basement. Both Micah and Bradley are chained to a wall, bloodied and broken, but still alive. Dragging one of the guards over to the cell doors, we stick his finger on the keypad to unlock both cells and rush inside to get them out. I'm here, love. I'm sorry we fought. I'm sorry about everything. Please forgive me. M. M. He whispers, he whispers, baby let's go home. Emerson and I each hold on around their stomachs and they'll lean on us for a bit of support. They have clearly been tortured with silver and wolf spain, which will make them useless during this fight. So we just need to get them far enough away to be safe so we can get back to Ashley. Once out the doors, we stop in our tracks. Emerson lets out a low growl. While I stand there wide-eyed looking at my other mate, standing about 20 feet away, arms crossed, with a scowl on her face. She was expecting us. I don't see anyone else with her, though giving me hope that she isn't here to harm us. I was wondering when you would show up. She says, pausing to take a few steps forward. She says, pausing to take a few steps forward. Took you long enough. She jokes in an attempt to let Emerson know she means no harm, as she can tell by his body language he was prepared to attack her. She jokes in an attempt to let Emerson know she means no harm, as she can tell by his body language he was prepared to attack her. Let's go quickly before my comrades notice what's going on back here. She continues as she makes her way over to me helping me with Bradley as we all start walking toward the forest again. Attack. Aries' voice thunders around us. Aries' voice thunders around us. Oh no. Oh no. Genevieve whispers, and I notice her grip tighten on Bradley. Genevieve whispers, and I notice her grip tighten on Bradley. Emma, you have to run. She says looking at me with worry in her eyes as she drops her hold on Bradley and steps away looking as though she is fighting against some sort of force. She says looking at me with worry in her eyes as she drops her hold on Bradley and steps away looking as though she is fighting against some sort of force. Sweetie, what's wrong? I ask Kinsure exactly what is happening. I ask Kinsure exactly what is happening. He's given his command ammo. I can only fight him for so long before I attack you. Please leave. No, I will not leave you. I promised myself that both of my mates would be coming home with me. I paused to look at my brother. I paused to look at my brother. Emerson, get Mike out of here and go help Ashley. I've got this. He hesitates but continues on his way to safely hide Maiko while I am still holding tightly onto one mate while watching the other struggle painfully to control herself. It is making me ill seeing her like this. I want to take a step towards her and notice she stops fidgeting her eyes lifting from the ground and that's when I notice the red irises. She is no longer in control. She rushes us grabbing Brad and tossing him a few feet away on the ground then pushes me back towards a tree pinning me there with her forearm against my neck. I can tell she is still slightly holding back maintaining the tiniest bit of control, or she would have crushed my windpipe by now. I told you to leave. 
She whispers, getting me a small bit of hope, my sweet mate is in there. She whispers, getting me a small bit of hope, my sweet mate is in there. I'm not going anywhere. I growl as my wolf starts fighting me to shift. I growl as my wolf starts fighting me to shift. Yes, she is our mate, but she is now a threat to Bradley, who we have already marked and mated. My wolf will not allow any harm to come to him, even if it means killing our second one. I notice Bradley crawling towards me, trying to find the strength to help. I reach up, grip her forearm tightly, and in one swift motion, push it forward, flip her around, and twist that same arm behind her back, shoving her front side into the same tree. Mark her. Bradley say from a few away as he leans against a tree for support. Bradley say from a few away as he leans against a tree for support. What? I respond as my eyes snap to his. I respond as my eyes snap to his. Emma, if you mark her, it will break her bond with Ares, tying her to you. It's the only way to stop her or you'll have to kill her. What about you? I don't like it, Em, but I love you and she is also your mate. Do it. I don't like it, Em, but I love you, and she is also your mate. Do it. Do it, please. Do it, please. Her voice cracks as she pleads in front of me. I look at Bradley once more, trying to understand his sudden change of heart. His eyes show worry and fear. Is he scared of what will happen if I mark her? Is he worried our bond will break if I mark another? The moon goddess wouldn't curse us like that, right? She wouldn't give me two mates just to take one away. I hesitate as the thought of losing Bradley hits me hard. If I honestly have to choose, it will always be him. Could I do really do this? Handle two mates? and one being a vampire. Genevieve starts struggling to release herself from my hold harder than before, and I notice her red eyes starting to glow brighter. Aries' control of her is taking over powerfully with each passing second. It is now or never. I am going to lose her if I don't mark her. I go with my gut as I remember the feelings for her in the woods back at our pack, and sink my canines deep into the side of her neck, placing my mark and sealing our bond with one another. She cries out slightly from the pain, but it quickly subsides to a small whimper as I pull my mouth from her neck and lick the wound. I heard it's best to seal the wound. I whisper against her ear with a slight smirk, repeating her own words after she placed her mark on me. I whisper against her ear with a slight smirk, repeating her own words after she placed her mark on me. Thank you. She says turning quickly, grabbing the back of my neck, pulling my head forward, and crashing her lips against my own. She says turning quickly, grabbing the back of my neck, pulling my head forward, and crashing her lips against my own. Although I am finding this kind of interesting watching you two lock lips, we need to get out of here. I'm in no condition to fight. Bradley says snapping us out of our days. Let's get Bradley somewhere safe, then I am going to help Ashley take Aries out. Genevieve says as she grabs my hand, pulling me over to Brad's side where we each help him walk towards our meeting spot. Genevieve says as she grabs my hand, pulling me over to Brad's side where we each help him walk towards our meeting spot. Emerson's POV About halfway through the forest to the spot we intend to leave Micah and Bradley once we had rescued them I hear a pained howl in the distance. About halfway through the forest to the spot we intend to leave Micah and Bradley once we had rescued them I hear a pained howl in the distance. Instantly I know it is Tabitha and pause in my tracks. She isn't supposed to engage him without me there as backup. The plan was for her to distract and taunt him until we could get Micah and Brad to safety. We just needed him occupied long enough for everyone to move in and get them safely out. I am torn on what to do. Leaving him this close to where the battle is going to take place could be fatal if someone were to stumble upon him he wouldn't be able to fight back and Elizabeth could lose her mate but obviously my mate is hurt. We've got him. A familiar voice comes from beside me pulling him from my arms and over to her side. Go save your Luna. She urges. She urges. Thank you. I whisper. I whisper. I don't know how or why but thank you. I rush past Bradley and Emma shifting mid-run to get back to Ashley faster. As I break through the forest's edge the scene before me is astounding. Each wolf is outnumbered five to one by vampires, but the amount of dead bloodsuckers laid across the land with severed heads or arrows sticking from their chests is unbelievable. We are winning. I can see Cassius and the other two lichens that showed up to help taking out six or seven vampires at a time. Al our training over the years had finally paid off. Sure every pack could have slacked of since there hasn't been a major war in over years, but we didn't and it is paying of now. I hate to admit that being in the center of all of this is an adrenaline rush. Unfortunately I know lives will be lost on our side not just theirs but we have to take a stand and show these vampires we aren't scared of them and will never back down from a fight. 
the lichens protected us for thousands of years and now it is our turn to stand alongside them. That's where I need to be beside my mate, my amazing Luna, the lichen of my life. Hastily I make my way through the battlefield toward the front of the house where I last saw Ares and Ashley. As I round the corner Tabitha is still in charge towering over Ares, but he is fast and agile. Once I kill you I'll go after that pathetic maid of yours. Ares taunts her as they circle each other. Ares taunts her as they circle each other. Is not the pathetic one here, that's you? She retorts and I notice her limping which means he hurt one of her legs. She retorts and I notice her limping which means he hurt one of her legs. Then where is he uh? He keeps going with an evil grin. What alpha leaves their Luna all alone to fend for themselves? She launches at him in a rage, allowing her anger to take charge instead of logic, a rookie mistake, but this is all still new to her. She needed more time to train a luxury we weren't afforded since Bradley and Micah were taken captive. Once she is close enough her arm extends to claw at him, but he swiftly moves to the side grabbing her arm and flipping her on the ground roughly twisting her arm behind her back popping it out of place. He starts to kick her side repeatedly as she tried to get back up. Her arm needs to be reset so it can properly heal and continue fighting. I make it just in time before he can land another blow, ramming into him catching him of balance as he tumbles along the ground with me. He is out from under me in a flash knowing full well if I get the upper hand it is over. You finally decided to show up. He laughs. He laughs. Shadow growls menacingly. He is trying to get us riled up so we will make a mistake too but it isn't going to happen. I have been trained for a moment like this. I move forward slightly and watch him sidestep. Moving toward him yet again I watch him step the other way. He isn't moving backwards or towards me. He is planning on doing exactly what he did to Ashley a side attack. I am going to give him just that. I dash towards him as if I am going to attack him straight on. At first he had moved left, then right, if I was right he will move to the left again. Just as I predicted once I am close enough he dodges to the left but I catch him of guard by also turning at the same time clenching his side in our jaw and allowing Shadow to shake him around a few times like a chew toy and toss him a few feet away. He is too busy feeling the huge chunk of flesh and muscle now missing from his side to notice a stalking towards him like the prey he is. He is as good as dead. I just need Tabitha to bite him and rip out his heart for good measure and this whole thing is over. No. I hear Ashley cry out distracting me for a second as I look to see her crawling towards, Frederick, one of two lichens who met us at the borders. I hear Ashley cry out distracting me for a second as I look to see her crawling towards, Frederick, one of two lichens who met us at the borders. She had lost a fellow lichen, a member of her pack, and I can only imagine the pain Tabitha was feeling. I know firsthand what it feels like to lose a pack member and it's agonizing. I want to comfort her, but first I need to get Ares weak enough for her to kill. Killing him will help with the loss of all her leak and pack not only from today but years ago when they killed her family. I turn my attention back to Ares but he's no longer on the ground. Frantically I start searching the area only to hear the whimper of my mate behind me. I don't know how he snuck past me without me noticing. Tabitha is gone and Ashley is kneeled next to Frederick's body with Ares behind her his sharp nails digging into the flesh around the nape of her neck. As I make the mad dash to save my mate a grim look takes over Ares' face before he sinks his fangs deep into her right where my mark is. He must have known that would cause me the most pain as my heart constricts in my chest. I collapse onto the ground just a few feet away and try to fight the overwhelming stabbing pain shooting through my heart with every ounce that he drains from her I feel our bond weaken. He is going to kill her. Out of nowhere Genevieve comes up behind him pulling his head from Ashley's neck and throwing him back on the ground where Cassius pounces on him sinking his own canines into Ares' neck, it was done and over. Once bitten by a lichen there is no way he will recover. Ashley baby! I cry out pulling her up to me and listening to her shallow breaths. Cassius got him my precious Luna. We beat him. Your family got their justice. Rest now. Heal. Shadow how is Tabitha? Shadow how is Tabitha? 
resting. She has started to heal Ashley, but it's draining. They both need time. Take her to the medics, I'll be there shortly. I order one of the warriors as I gently pick Ashley up and place her in a female warrior's arms. You! I say turning my attention to a writhing Ares as he claws at his neck where the leak and venom is eating away at him. You took everything from my mate, my Luna. Look where it got you! I say standing over him. Our goddess made them for a reason and their purpose has finally been fulfilled. They can now live in peace, but just to be sure. I say separating his cold dead heart from his body. Burn him just to be safe! I yell to the wolves around me as I leave to check on my mate. I yell to the wolves around me as I leave to check on my mate. Emerson. She breathes out once her eyes find me. She breathes out once her eyes find me. I'm sorry I failed. She says crying as she runs into my arms. She says crying as she runs into my arms. Whoa! I say as she collapses against me, that little energy exertion probably isn't best. Save your strength. Allow yourself time to heal beautiful. I tried to kill him Emerson, but I wasn't fast enough. We lost Frederick. It's all my fault. Ash. I say gently lifting her head from my chest. I say gently lifting her head from my chest. Ares is dead Cassius killed him. We won. Our family is safe. We knew going into this there would be losses. How are you so calm? She whispers. Because I have my lovely Luna in my arms and there is no longer a huge threat to your kind or mine. Ares is gone the last of his kind. The only vampires left in existence will never be strong enough to beat a badass Lycan like Tabitha. She fought hard and so did you. Emerson, can we go home? Yes, but first let's go check on Emma. Bradley and Micah all when the vampire girl from before is apparently on our side now. Yes, but first let's go check on Emma. Bradley and Micah all when the vampire girl from before is apparently on our side now. Well, considering she is Emma's second mate, I would hope so. Ashley whispers. What? I question shocked by this new revelation. She can explain it all when we get there. Ashley says pulling me closer as we walk together into the forest towards the spot we were meant to leave Bradley and Micah. A branch on the ground snaps to the right of us and I push Ashley behind me unsure of what or who might be in the woods with us. Ashley says pulling me closer as we walk together into the forest towards the spot we were meant to leave Bradley and Micah. A branch on the ground snaps to the right of us and I push Ashley behind me unsure of what or who might be in the woods with us. I wasn't fast enough to dodge the dart that pierces the skin on my thigh or the second one that lands further up in my stomach. Ashley grips my back unsure of what is happening. As I turn to tell her to run another dart hits my back and I fall to the ground. Ashley drops with me a dart shot right around her shoulder. I can hear the footsteps approaching and as my vision begins to blur as the drugs seep deeper into my system I see the face I never expected to standing above us with a smug smile. Small preview. You will mark and mate me Emerson or I will kill Ashley and your inborn pop right here and now. Otherwise I will allow her to stay alive until she gives birth. I would never take your first pop away from you Emmy. She cooed using the nickname he hates most in the world. I will raise him or her as my own and then we can have our own pops like I've always wanted. If I mark you now it will kill them anyways. If I mark you now it will kill them anyways. He growls out. He growls out. Fine, we can wait until she has the pop, but then you will mark me. At least then there's a chance she will survive. Until then you can and will mate with me. That pain alone won't kill her. You are my Emerson. She growls back, gripping his jaw firmly in her grasp. She growls back, gripping his jaw firmly in her grasp. Now shall we put on a little show for your mate? She says seductively climbing over his lap, straddling him while looking back at Ashley. Or shall we take this somewhere more private? She leans in whispering against his ear. Miss POV. 
Waiting is not my strong suit. I want to fight Bead by my Alpha and Luna's side. I know I need to keep my mate and Micah safe, but Genevieve left to go fight, and now I'm concerned I could possibly lose the mate I just marked. We haven't even spent any proper time together, and she could die. I have no idea how it's going. I don't want to my mind link Emerson or Ashley and possibly distract them at an inopportune time. We have to win. We will win. Ares is no match for Shadow and Tabitha working together. I just hope that our loses aren't many. I hear footsteps approaching and quickly take a stance in front of Bradley and Micah who are still resting while healing. It's me, love. Genevieve's voice rings out and my heart skips a beat. As soon as she enters my eyesight, I rush towards her, pulling her tightly against me. I nuzzle her neck, inhaling her sensual scent to calm my wolf who has been going crazy with worry about losing her. She pulls back, slightly brushes some hair away from my face, and leans in to give me a long slow kiss. I feel her pouring all her admirations and care into the kiss. I allow her to slip her tongue inside, to twist and turn with mine. I can't wait to mate with this beautiful creature before me. I start to think about having both my mates at once, and the thrill of that idea sends a fluttering sensation across my stomach. I want that too. She whispers after pulling away. Huh? I question. Both of you. She pauses shooting a glance over to Bradley. She pauses shooting a glance over to Bradley. At the same time. She continues. How did you? Once you marked me we became connected on a deeper level. Once you marked me we became connected on a deeper level. Not only are our souls not intertwined, our minds are as well. I can see and hear your thoughts if you allow me. You have the option to keep me out, but I hope you don't ever feel the need to. It may take some getting used to, but I will try not to ever hide anything from you. That's why I had to tell Bradley as soon as I found you, I hate dishonesty and deceit. I don't either, so we are off to a good start. She replies with a wink. She replies with a wink. Let's get our mate and get out of here. Yeah, we need to find Emerson and Ashley. I've been so worried. They didn't come here. She asks. No, I haven't seen Emerson since he left us here. That's odd, I swear I saw them headed this way not too long ago. She replies, Emerson Nash. I try linking them. Neither of them are responding. You grab Bradley and I'll get Micah. We need to find them and talk about what we are going to do next. What the? She trails of when she grabs a hold of Bradley's bare arm to help him up and pulls her hand back like she had been shocked. How? What is it? I ask. The bond. Bradley speaks. Bradley speaks. I feel it too. I don't understand how. My wolf isn't claiming you as my mate, but I feel the bond with you same as I do with Emma. He says to Genevieve, strange, strange. She whispers, that doesn't mean I'm going to let you mark me. He snips as she helps him stand, and he leans on her every so slightly. I don't want you to mark me either, Mutt. She responds with an eye roll, and he lets out a low growl at the nickname. I can only think about how much fun this is going to be as I listen to them bicker on the way back to the house Aries built. Micah keeps trying to link Elizabeth to let him know he's okay, but his lichen is still weak. His body holds no more injuries but his lichen wasted a ton of energy keeping him alive and healing him externally. I've been so busy constantly trying to link Emerson and Ashley that I give up and let Elizabeth know Micah is safe with me. Cassius, I breathe out when I see him standing near large fire burning the bodies of all the vampires killed. Have you seen Ashley or Emerson? I thought they were going to find you. He responds pointing to Micah. He responds pointing to Micah. Wherever they are we need them to decide what to do with vampires who have surrendered. How many are there? Genevieve asks. Genevieve asks. I think around. Cassius responds. Cassius responds. Lock them up somewhere until we can. I start, but Genevieve cuts me off. No. No. She all but screams. They have surrendered. Ares is dead. They no longer have a master and need a home. Many of us had no control of our actions. He made us and he was able to control us. Not all vampires want death and destructions like Ares. So what do you suggest we do? So what do you suggest we do? Cassius asks. This is our home. We have lived here for years. Why not continue to allow them safe haven here if that us okay with all the lichens of course. I know this was once your home. She responds. She responds. Ashley is the alpha of the lichens. Her decision will be final. Has anyone seen our alpha and Luna? I link our pack. A's the beta female, I have the ability to do so, although I typically don't unless there is an emergency. Guy, we have a problem. I announced to Cassius, Micah, Bradley, and Genevieve. I announced to Cassius, Micah, Bradley, and Genevieve. Nobody has seen Ashley or Emerson. 
Attention, your Alpha and Luna are missing. Spread out and find them. Attention, your Alpha and Luna are missing. Spread out and find them. Genevieve can asks all the vampires left to help us search. Genevieve can asks all the vampires left to help us search. Bradley ask every pack Alpha to assist. We have to find them. I say quickly. I say quickly. I shift into my wolf and chase through the woods where we had just come to try and catch either of their sons, but they disappear not to far in. Just as I am about to leave, I spot something shiny laying on the ground. Shifting back, I pick it up, finding a dart. I sniff the cartridge, and it smells like a mixture of wolfsbane and silver. Whoever took them was smart. They waited until they were both caught of guard, and not at their strongest after battling with Ares. This was planned and planned well, and they now had at least an hour's head start, which depending on whether they were taken by other shifters or not is a huge deal. Ashley SPOV My head hurts, my ankles and wrists feel like they're on fire, and the nausea that I feel is terrible. My head hurts, my ankles and wrists feel like they're on fire, and the nausea that I feel is terrible. As soon as I go to move my hand to my head to try and rub the migraine away I realize something is wrong. I'm barely able to move my arm. I don't want to but I know I need to open my eyes. One eye to test the water, then two when I realize it's pitch black wherever I am. Crap. I try to remember where I was last. I was in the woods last with Emerson when he heard something and pushed me behind him. By the time he fell and I realized he had been shot three times a large dart hit my shoulder and I dropped beside him. Emerson. I whisper wondering if he is still near me. Emerson. I try again. I'm here Ash. He says back. He says back. What happened? I ask to see if he remembers anything that I don't. I ask to see if he remembers anything that I don't. I'm so sorry. He whispers. He whispers. I never thought she would be crazy enough to attack and kidnap us or that she was smart enough to get us at our weakest after a fight. He continues. What are you talking about? Adam, his. Adam, his. Don't spoil the surprise, my love. A female's voice rings through the darkness. A female's voice rings through the darkness. Let's see if she can guess. She continues as the lights in the room shine brightly hurting my eyes. She continues as the lights in the room shine brightly hurting my eyes. Who are you? I ask as my eyes adjust to the light and watch the short dark-haired girl who looks slightly familiar to me walks in through a steel door. I ask as my eyes adjust to the light and watch the short dark-haired girl who looks slightly familiar to me walks in through a steel door. The woman who should bear Emerson's mark. She growls in response. She growls in response. You are not my mate, Rachel. Emerson growls back. Oh, but I will be. She replies with a smug smile. How do you figure that? He asks irritation evident in his voice. Well, after I kill your first mate and you mark me, I will be your mate and Luna. She answers happily. You won't lay a hand on her. He growls pulling at the chains holding his wrists and ankles. As he pulls I'm pulled back against the wall and bang my head back against the steel wall. He growls pulling at the chains holding his wrists and ankles. As he pulls I'm pulled back against the wall and bang my head back against the steel wall. You're the one hurting her, not me. She laughs as he goes back to the wall, loosening the slack on my chains once again. You two are connected if you haven't figured that out. No way for you to be near each other. Quite sad, huh? She taunts. Why kill her? Why not just make me reject her? Emerson asks. Emerson asks. She is marked. Her rejection won't matter at this point. Only her death will sever your bond. If you kill her, I will never mark you. Emerson yells. I think you will, she says getting closer to me. She says getting closer to me. So I have found some leverage to use against you recently. Just listen closely. She continues bending slightly and placing her ear against my stomach. No. I gasp as I realize she is listening to a pup's heartbeat, ours, and I wonder how I didn't notice it before now. I gasp as I realize she is listening to a pup's heartbeat, ours, and I wonder how I didn't notice it before now. Now as I was saying you will mark and mate me Emerson or I will kill Ashley and your inborn pup right here and now. Otherwise I will allow her to stay alive until she gives birth. 
I would never take your first pup away from you, Emmy. She cooed using the nickname he hates most in the world as she strides over to his side of the room. She cooed using the nickname he hates most in the world as she strides over to his side of the room. I will raise him or her as my own and then we can have our own pups like I've always wanted. If I mark you now it will kill them anyways. He growls out. He growls out. Fine we can wait until she has the pup, but then you will mark me. At least then there's a chance she will survive. Until then you can and will mate with me. That pain alone won't kill her. You are my Nemerson. She growls back gripping his jaw firmly in her grasp. She growls back gripping his jaw firmly in her grasp. Now shall we put on a little show for your mate? She says seductively climbing over his lap, straddling him, while looking back at Ashley. She says seductively climbing over his lap, straddling him, while looking back at Ashley. Or shall we take this somewhere more private? She then leans in whispering against his ear. She then leans in whispering against his ear. I see it in his eyes as he stares at me over her shoulder now. He's conflicted. He doesn't want to break our bond or cheat on me but he also wants to do anything he can to keep not only me but out pups safe even if it means quite literally sleeping with the enemy until we can find an opportunity to get out of here. We both know what he has to do and I know it will hurt but it won't kill us and we just need to survive a little while longer. Surely our pack has noticed we are missing and will look for us. We just need to do whatever we can to survive right now and with that thought in my mind I close my eyes and nod in his direction letting him know I understand. Let's go somewhere more private please. Emerson responds defeated. Emerson responds defeated. Yes. She squeals then grabs his face and kisses him full force. She squeals then grabs his face and kisses him full force. I can see the look of discomfort and disgust on his face and it makes me happy he isn't returning the kiss. Although I want to growl and fight to rip her eyes out I keep my face stone cold. I won't allow her to see that she is affecting me or that seeing her kiss my mates hurts me. That's what she wants. Then it clicks why she looks so familiar. He said Adam, she looks just like him, she must be his sister. Is this revenge for me killing him? Why bring Emerson into it? She leaves the room for on a few seconds but Emerson reminds me he loves me before she enters with a silver collar that has a chain attached and places it around Emerson's neck. Now be a good boy. She jokes and it makes me sick that she is treating him quite literally like a dog. She jokes and it makes me sick that she is treating him quite literally like a dog. If you try anything my men know to kill her immediately. She continues before releasing his ankles and wrists and pulls him up and out of the door. He shoots me a sorrowful look just before he disappears from the room. She continues before releasing his ankles and wrists and pulls him up and out of the door. He shoots me a sorrowful look just before he disappears from the room. I settle into the silence and try my hardest to get free from my restraints now that Emerson isn't linked to the other side. I'm still weak from everything that has happened the past 24 hours. Between fighting with Ares and being kidnapped I'm exhausted. Maybe if I just rest and get my strength back I can find a way out of here even if I have to use brute strength. As I think about strength I think about Tabitha I can't sense her. Normally I feel her at the back of my mind but that feeling is faint. I sit on the floor and try to get comfortable to try and rest for a while. Just as my lids become too heavy to hold open any longer a sharp pain rips through me. It feels like my body is on fire and my whole stomach is in knots. The pain in my chest is still there but has gone down to a dull pain. Thankfully it only lasts a few minutes. I feel the same pain and discomfort three more times over the next few hours and anger fills me with how Rachel is somewhere taking advantage of my mate. She is using his unborn pup as leverage for some sick game. A fury builds inside me and I let the pain consume me the last time it happens. Tabitha resurfaces with a vengeance forcing a shift, breaking free from the chains binding us, and thrashes throughout the room in a rage. The walls are thick and clearly enforced as she leaves dents but nothing cracks or breaks, we truly are trapped. She howls in pain before shifting back and I collapse to the floor as darkness consumes me.
Adley's POV. We spent three whole days searching high and low around the Lycan territory with no sign of Ashley or Emerson. I feel like a failure to my pack and Alpha and Luna. First, I was dumb enough to get captured on a recon mission and to weak to fight my way to safety. The few days they tortured Micah and I were pure hell. Ares was a sick bastard. Not only would he come cut us with silver and use a whip dipped in wolfsbane on us, he would let us loose in the yard and allow his legion of vampires to get daily practice beating us till we were unconscious. The only mercy he showed was not allowing them to kill us. I'll never really understand why he kept us alive. Then they saved us and I had to watch as my amazing beautiful mate claimed another. I knew it was the only way to stop her. Emma couldn't kill her and Genevieve wouldn't have been able to stop herself from killing Emma and I with Ares command taking control of her. Years and years of being taught that vampires are bad and I just offered up my mate to one. I was beyond mad when she informed she allowed her to mark her before I left. I felt betrayed slightly. Yes, her body is her own, but we were bonded first, and it was as if it meant nothing to her in that moment. I felt as though our bond no longer mattered. Seeing her and Genevieve together is thrilling, but I am still struggling to accept that my goddess-given mate is now also the mate of a creature I have grown up believing to be pure evil. A part of me knows she is good, an exception. She helped us get away from battle to safety. She went back into battle against her own kind to help Emerson and Ashley and Ares reign. Perhaps it is her bond with Emma that made her choose us. All I know is that even though Emma has completely accepted her as a maid, I can't. I don't want anyone but my mate, my one and only. Babe. Emma's voice rings through my ears, snapping me from my thoughts. Are you okay? Yes, yes. I reply smiling sweetly and grab her hand on top of the counter. I reply smiling sweetly and grab her hand on top of the counter. I'm just worried about Emerson and Ashley. Are you sure that's all? Are you sure that's all? She asks, squeezing my hand. Yes. I lie because I don't want another fight about Genevieve right now, not when our Alpha and Loon are missing. Good morning. Genevieve's voice comes from behind us as she enters the kitchen, and I let go of Emma's hand, shifting uncomfortably on the stool. Are we all ready to talk yet? She asks again as she has been the past three mornings. We'll talk once our Alpha and Loon are home safely. I respond through gritted teeth. Someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. She whispers as she leans in and gives Emma a kiss on the cheek before grabbing a cup of coffee. She whispers as she leans in and gives Emma a kiss on the cheek before grabbing a cup of coffee. I'll be heading out shortly to do one more sweep of the area. Bradley care to join me? Genevieve asks. I'd rather not. I reply sarcastically. Babe. Emma pleads. Please try for me. Elizabeth and Gran are arriving today. I need to be here to greet them. I would feel better if you two were together, just in case. Fine. I grunt. I grunt. I'm going to shower, then we can leave. I place my dish in the sink and head up the room Emma and I have been sleeping in while here. It's right next to the one Genevieve has occupied for the past several years while staying with Ares. I know Emma snuck out last night to sleep in the same bed as Genevieve, and it hurts slightly, but I also know that it's their bond, and Emma needs contact with her just as much as she needs it with me. I get undressed and make my way into the shower. Once inside, I close my eyes and let the heat of the water relax my muscles and try to relax my mind, which has been a maze the past few weeks. We should try being with both of them. My wolf viper chimes in. She's a vampire, how can you be okay with this? I ask. I ask. I trust our goddess. She must have a plan. She's a vampire. She feeds of a people. Who knows how many innocent people she has killed. The shower door opens and Emma comes to stand in front of me, moving her hands up along my chest and around the back of my neck. She kisses my lips hungrily, slipping her tongue between my lips, and then I feel another set of hands come from behind me and slide down my stomach to my hard member. One hand stroking me as the other plays with my balls. I feel Emma's hands running through and tugging at my hair as Genevieve's hands work their magic. No, I snap, stopping the thoughts my wolf projects forward. I don't want that. I will never want her to touch me. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. My wolf snickers before leaving me be. I look down at my now hard cock all thanks to my wolf and sigh. Those kinds of thoughts shouldn't get me this excited. I only want my mate, my one true mate. I keep repeating this over and over in my head as I rub myself, releasing a massive load against the shower wall. I then climb out and throw on some basketball shorts. As soon as I step foot outside of my door, Genevieve comes out from her room. I see her eye me up and down, and a small glimmer of lust crosses her eyes. 
It disturbs and delights me at the same time. I hate feeling this way, so conflicted, but I know what's right. She is not my mate and I will not want her even if my wolf may. Shall we go? I all but growled to get her to stop ogling me. Calm down my big bad wolf. Calm down my big bad wolf. She says smirking. She says smirking. I don't want you either. She continues pushing past me. Once outside I shift and we head south. It's the last direction we have to try after going the other three routes the past few days. After running for several hours I needed a break and found a stream to rest at. Viper took some laps of water then lay down resting his head on his paws. Genevieve emerges from some bushes with two rabbits in her hands and throws one at Viper taking a seat several feet away, drinking from her own rabbit as Viper munches on his. He admires her as she quietly buries the rabbit after draining it. I don't feed on humans. She says as she catches us staring. She says as she catches us staring. Sorry, I mutter shifting back and putting my shorts back on. I mutter shifting back and putting my shorts back on. I just figured you should know. She whispers taking a seat again watching some ducks floating along the stream in front of us. She whispers taking a seat again watching some ducks floating along the stream in front of us. So you never have the urge. I question. I question. Oh I do but I don't give in to it. I did get a taste of Emma's blood when I marked her but it was only a little and I would never hurt her I hope you know that. I don't think you would hurt her on purpose but what if one day animals aren't enough to satiate you? I ask honestly. I ask honestly. If and when that day comes Bradley I give you permission to lock me up and throw away the key. She replies equally as honest. Your wolf is beautiful by the way. Viper, his name is Viper, I reply. He thinks you're quite gorgeous as well, and he says you're very fast. I continue and I see a hint of a blush rise on her cheeks but she turns her head so I can't see. You're fast as well. She compliments back. She compliments back. Shall we go a little farther then head back? I don't think we are going to find anything who ever took them was smart. They attacked right after we defeated Ares when everyone was distracted and Ashley and Emerson were weak from fighting. They obviously aren't stupid enough to leave a trail. She continues sounding frustrated. She continues sounding frustrated. I agree but we have to keep trying. They aren't dead or I would have felt their pack links break. Well then. She says as she stands and walks over to me offering her hand. She says as she stands and walks over to me offering her hand. Let's go. I grab her hand and she pulls me up. I grab her hand and she pulls me up. I feel the sparks again as I do with Emma and it startles me but I don't let go. Instead I do something I know I'll regret. I pull her close resting my hand on her lower back and reach up brushing my thumb against her cheek. She really is stunning even though she is a vampire. I lower my head to hers, my lips hovering just above hers, close my eyes and wait for a response. I won't force myself on her but at this point I need a taste to see if maybe I can feel the same way as I do with Emma with Genevieve. I open my eyes and see hers closed as well but she isn't moving. I'm sorry, I say letting her go and stepping back. I say letting her go and stepping back. I don't know what got into me. You said you don't want me and I respect that. I say rambling. Bradley. She starts, but I for some reason can't handle her rejection right now, so instead of listening I immediately shift and take- Miss POV. Both of my mates have been gone for hours, together, which I'm hoping will lead to some progress in their relationship, but also worried it could cause more damage. The funny part is I don't think Bradley is upset that I have another mate, or even that it's a her. He just can't get over the fact that it's a vampire. While we have always been taught they are bad, and I admit that it caught me of guard when I first heard my wolf claim her as our mate, but I believe the moon goddess must have a reason to join us three. I just hope Bradley will eventually get on board so that I don't have to feel so torn all the time. I felt terrible ignoring her the first two days and nights after everything went down with Aries. We were so busy trying to track down Emerson and Ashley. And I miss Bradley. I spent those nights with him. Then the third night, I couldn't help but sneak out after he fell asleep to go see her. I craved and missed her presence as much as his. We didn't even do anything just laid in her bed talked, and cuddle with each other. It was nice to be the big spoon for once. Just laying next to her was calming, but I couldn't deny the empty feeling of not having my other mate with us. I just hope one day we can all get to the point where we share everything and all sleep in one bed. I know Genevieve is at least attracted to Bradley after a comment in the woods when we first met. The thought of us three intimately together at once gives me major butterflies. 
but I would never force them into anything they weren't comfortable with. I just want them both to be happy, for all of us to be happy. Hopefully somewhere and sometime we can come to a compromise where it isn't necessary that I lose either one of them. I receive a link from one of our PAX guards that Elizabeth and Grant have just entered the territory, so I quickly throw the maps I was looking at on the desk and run downstairs to wait for them. Elizabeth, I yell running over to her as soon as she steps a foot outside the car. I yell running over to her as soon as she steps a foot outside the car. I've missed you little sis. I missed you too, Em. She says hugging me back. Any news on Emerson or Ashley? Not yet, not yet. Bradley and Genevieve went out to check again this morning. Genevieve? She asks. I have a two mates now. I sigh at the farts of my two mates not wanting each other. I sigh at the farts of my two mates not wanting each other. Oh, Em? She says squeezing me into another tight hug. It'll all work out. I hope so, baby sis. So where is my sexy mate? She asks, she asks, right here. Micah speaks up from beside us as he and Cassius come from the opposite direction Bradley and Genevieve went this morning. Micah speaks up from beside us as he and Cassius come from the opposite direction Bradley and Genevieve went this morning. Oh. She squeals as she runs and jumps up on him, wrapping herself like a sloth to a tree tightly around his body. Goddess, I've missed you. I hear a whisper, I hear a whisper. I miss you to my little wolf. He replies nuzzling against her neck. Bowies. I hear Cassius say as he pulls two large men into a hug. I hear Cassius say as he pulls two large men into a hug. These are your pups, I ask. Well, yes. They were only 10 when the original attack happened. They may be older now, but they will always be my pups, and I wouldn't risk their lives for anyone. He explains. He explains. I get it. I reply. Welcome back home. I'm Emma. I say as I shake their hands. Elijah and Asher. Cassius says, I'm going to go get them situated, and then we can all have dinner and figure out what to do next. That sounds like a great plan. I'll make something homemade. Gran says from behind us. Gran, I'm sorry about Ashley. I say as she pulls me into a hug. I say as she pulls me into a hug. It's not your fault, sweetie, and we will find them. Both have faith in our goddess. Their story is not over yet. I really hope you're right. She replies sweetly. She replies sweetly. Now show me where the kitchen is. It looks like you guys haven't had a proper meal since we left. Let's go. Roderick says grabbing Rand's hand as we all start walking towards the house just as Bradley comes storming out of the woods. Hey, what took you guys so long? I ask because he tries to brush past me. I ask because he tries to brush past me. Nothing. He grunts after I grab his arm to stop him from storming past me. He grunts after I grab his arm to stop him from storming past me. I need a shower. We'll talk later, Em. He says, and I can see a confused expression in his eyes, so I let go and let him pause. He says, and I can see a confused expression in his eyes, so I let go and let him pause. What happened? I ask as Genevieve who comes out just a few seconds behind him. It's nothing, love. She says kissing my cheek, and I get a brief flash of Bradley holding her closely, and he looked like he was about to kiss her then it vanishes. I must have seen inside her head through our bond. So something definitely happened while they were gone. But clearly neither one of them wants to admit. A part of me is happy that they had a moment, but clearly it upset Bradley and I can't understand why which is worrisome. Especially if he is hiding it from me, he must be fighting his feelings and doesn't trust me enough to talk to me about it. That hurts more than anything. We grew up together and he is my best friend. I thought we could talk about anything and everything, but apparently I was wrong. Just give him some time. Genevieve whispers against my ear, pulling me from my thoughts. We all go inside and head to the kitchen to help Gran cook while Roderick, Cassius, Micah, and the twins went to get settled and showered. After getting most of dinner prepared, Genevieve excused herself to get cleaned up before we eat, and I go up to check on Bradley and tell him dinner will be ready shortly. When I walk into the room we've been sharing, he is sitting on the edge of the bed in a pair of boxers with his head hung low, clearly lost in his own farts. Mate, I whisper as I stand in front of him lifting his head. My sweet, sexy, amazing mate. I continue climbing over him, a leg settled on each side. I love you, Bradley. Please don't shut me out. I can't do it, Em. He whispers as he pulls me close and lays his head on my chest. I just can't accept her as a mate. I only want you. I'm sorry, Bradley. I never wanted to put you in this situation. I certainly didn't to expect to be caught in the middle of something like this. But no matter what, you are my mate and I love you more than anything. What are we going to do, Emma? He asks, he asks, well first, I smirk, pushing him back on the bed. You are going to stop hiding things from me. I continue as I slide my hand down between us. I continue as I slide my hand down between us. 
Second, I say as I slip my hand down inside his boxers and slowly start stroking him, bringing his member to life beneath me. You are going to fuck me quickly before we go down to dinner because I have missed having my mate buried inside me, making me squirm and scream. His lips clash with my own as he slides his own hand in my shorts, placing two fingers inside my slick folds, working them in and out until my juices coat his hand. He flips us over, sliding me up further on the bed, hastily pulling my shorts up, throwing them on the floor, and then discards of his own before climbing back on the bed and slamming his hard cock into my wet pussy. His relentless pounding in and out of me is just what I need right now. With everything going on, I want to get lost in this moment with my mate. I want to feel something other than worry and fear. His hands roughly grasp my breasts as he pulls each nipple up between his teeth before releasing and sucking on them. Picking up the pace, he moves his right hand between us, rubbing my clit furiously, sending me over the edge as I come undone with him tightening around him as he condoms deep inside me. It was fast but perfect for what we both needed. He pulls put and collapses back on the bed next to me. I cuddle close to him for a few minutes before insisting we both shower quickly then go down to join the others for dinner. We walk hand in hand into the dining room, taking a seat next to Micah and Elizabeth who seem to be in their own little love bubble as well. Genevieve enters the dining room and takes a seat on the other side of me, reaching for my hand under the table. I notice Bradley tense slightly as she sits, but once I rub his knee a bit, he relaxes, and we enjoy our meal as a f Genevieve POV. He almost kissed me in the woods when we were alone together, but he waited to see if I wanted it. He almost kissed me in the woods when we were alone together, but he waited to see if I wanted it. I did with every fiber of my being. I not only feel a connection to Emma, but Bradley as well. I'm not quite sure why his wolf doesn't claim me as his mate like Emma's does, but either way, I want him just as much as her. His wolf is a dark chocolate brown. Fast, huge, and gorgeous. Running alongside him in the woods felt like the most natural thing in the world to me. The only problem is I know he isn't ready to fully accept me yet. I resisted kissing him because I don't want him to regret it right afterwards, which I believed he would. Then he opened his eyes and I saw the hurt but before I could explain he ran up. I tried to catch him but by the time I caught up he had stormed into the house leaving Emma asking me what happened. I didn't really know what to say so I showed a glimpse of our moment instead, hoping she would understand why neither of us really wanted to talk about it. After helping with dinner I excused myself to go shower and clear my head before joining everyone once again. After showering I slip on a towel and head towards my closet but stop when I hear Emma and Bradley next door. What are we going to do, Emma? I hear Bradley ask. Well, first, she replies and pauses. She replies and pauses. You are going to stop hiding things from me. Another pause. Second, you are going to fuck me quickly before we go down to dinner because I have missed having my mate buried inside me, making me squirm and scream. Now I'm jealous. She has yet to talk to me like that and we still haven't been intimate with each other. I enjoyed having her in my bed and just talking, but I can't deny that I've had dreams about her Nate kid in my bed with my head buried between her thighs as she screams my name over and over. I don't want to pressure her since we just met not that long ago and I know things are strained between her and Bradley because of me. I hear her moans through the wall and lay back on my bed, slide my hand underneath my towel, and start to finger myself thinking about the two of them together as I hear them fucking in the next room. Oh how I wish I could join them. Once I hear them each finish, I find my own release, thinking about their hands and lips all over my body. Dinner is a little awkward as I hold Emma's hand underneath the table and I know she has her hand on Bradley's knee to calm his tension towards me. I wish their moon goddess had just created an instant bond between Bradley and I like she did with Emma then this would all be so much easier. At least if I could understand why she chose to only bond me with Emma. All of this is so nerve-wracking and all I really want is for all three of us to be happy together. I know we can be but not until Bradley gets over his hang-up of me being a vampire. It wasn't as if I had a choice to be made into what some deem a monster. Even after Ares changed me into what I am today I live differently than most. He was so worried about building his army and killing all the lichens he never paid attention to little things like the fact that I didn't feed on any of the humans they would kidnap and bring into our territory. I stuck with animals, and Emma was my first real taste of human blood. All Ares cared about was that I was loyal and stuck by him, which I did for almost years, but once I saw a better future with Emma and Bradley, I knew I would betray him. I just wish Bradley believed that I will never harm either one of them. What do you think, Jen? Emma nudges me as we sit around the living room talking, realizing I was not paying attention. Ah. Uh
Micah, Elizabeth, Gran, Roderick, Cassius, and the twins will return home while you, Bradley, and I stay here in case Emerson and Ashley find their way back here. I think that's a good idea, plus we still need to decide what to do with this place and all the vampires sticking around, there's at least 75 left. What if they chose a leader and made this their own pack? Roderick suggested. Roderick suggested. They have been living here for a while now, and having them as allies could prove beneficial in the future if we allow them to keep the land and home they know. I'll gather them tomorrow and see how they feel about that idea, then we can go from there. Also, I've called in a witch from a coven connected to the council to see if they help track Ashley and Emerson. She'll be here in the morning. Roderick added. Thank you. Emma says gratefully. Emma says gratefully. I'm going to head to bed so I can do one more search before our guest arrives. I say excusing myself from the conversation. I say excusing myself from the conversation. Watching Bradley and Emma cuddle close on the couch as everyone talks hurts me. I want the same love and attention he gets, but it's not fair of me to ask her to ignore the mate she has known the longest and loves the most just because I am a little insecure in our bond. Plus, I want her to want to spend time with me on her own terms, not because I'm demanding it. Also, I don't want Bradley to further despise me for stealing his mate away from him. I know it seems silly, but this isn't how I imagine finding my soulmate to be. Finding out she was a wolf was startling, but would never be an issue for me. I just didn't ever think I'd have to fight for love and attention from the one person meant for me. Jen. Emma says softly after knocking on my door. Emma says softly after knocking on my door. Can I come in? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I respond. I respond. I think we need to talk about what happened in the woods. She says once she is inside the room and sitting next to me on the bed. She says once she is inside the room and sitting next to me on the bed. There really isn't anything to say, Em. I showed you what happened. We almost kissed. We didn't. It wasn't my intention to anger Bradley in that moment. I just... Just what? Just what? She says grabbing my hand intertwining our fingers. She says grabbing my hand intertwining our fingers. You can talk to me. Maybe I can help. You are both my mates. She continues emphasizing the word boat. She continues emphasizing the word boat. I wanted to kiss him, but I didn't want him to regret it immediately afterwards. I know he has a deep issue with what I am, and it's just the small bond we share because of you making him want me even a little. So I did was right for him and didn't kiss him back. It was what was right in that moment, but he didn't give me a chance to explain. I'm sorry this is so complicated. She says falling back on the bed with our hands still connected. She says falling back on the bed with our hands still connected. I never expected to have two mates and I'm struggling, Jen. I want to spend time with you and love you the way you deserve. But he's my Bradley. He's hurting right now because he doesn't understand why the moon goddess feels I need two mates. I think he believes he's not good enough anymore and I don't ever want him to feel like that. I hope you can understand that nothing I do is to hurt you. I get it. I respond laying back next to her. I respond laying back next to her. I think I should stay here with my brothers and sisters after we find Emerson and Ashley and you and Bradley should return to your home. My place is here with them and yours is with your family. We can be long distance mates. I continue and can't help but chuckle at the idea. I think it will easier if Bradley doesn't have to see me every day. No, she practically screams, sitting up and speedily shifting herself over top of me. She practically screams, sitting up, and speedily shifting herself over top of me. I don't want to be away from you. She keeps going grabbing both my wrists, lifting them above my head, and pinning my arms there. She keeps going grabbing both my wrists, lifting them above my head, and pinning my arms there. Like I said, you are both my mates. She whispers as she dips her head down to my neck, kissing the spot she marked me and I squeeze my thighs together at the rush of pleasure that shoots right down below from one simple kiss. It's a handy trick I learned with Bradley. She smirks as she continues to kiss my neck up and down, sucking and nibbling on my skin as she does. She smirks as she continues to kiss my neck up and down, sucking and nibbling on my skin as she does. I want you. I basically beg unable to hold in my emotions any longer. I basically beg unable to hold in my emotions any longer. I want you to my beautiful mate. She says now cupping my cheek as she stares deeply into my eyes. I don't want it to be rushed like you and Bradley earlier. I want our first time together to be special. Once we find Ashley and Emerson. Wait, you heard Bradley and I earlier. She cuts me up. Sorry. I blush, breaking eye contact. I couldn't help it these walls aren't soundproof and I'm right next door. D 
Did you listen? She questions with an amused look on her face. Yes, I answer honestly. Did you do anything else? She asks now running her right hand up and down my side under my shirt, and all I can manage is a nod as her fingers lightly graze my hardened nipple through my lace bra. Will you show me? She asks and I almost lose it right then and there. She asks and I almost lose it right then and there. What did you do while you heard Bradley fucking me in the next room? She whispers as her lips once again find their way to my mark. I move my right hand from above my head down between us, slide it beneath my jeans and panties, slipping two fingers inside myself as she pulls my bra down slightly so she can twist and turn my nipples between her fingers as she pleases. I begin to eagerly move my fingers in and out of myself as Emma's hot breath trails along my neckline and her hand roams across each breast. Once I start to rub my clit as well, I inch closer and closer to my climax and just as I'm about there, Emma bites down hard on my mark, causing me to come hard doll over my own hand. Fuck. I hiss after such an intense orgasm. I hiss after such an intense orgasm. That was amazing. I manage to spit out as I remove my hand from my jeans and go wipe it out of the bedsheets, but Emma is quick again to grab my wrist, bringing my hand up to her mouth, the proceeds to lick my fingers clean. I manage to spit out as I remove my hand from my jeans and go wipe it out of the bedsheets, but Emma is quick again to grab my wrist, bringing my hand up to her mouth, the proceeds to lick my fingers clean. Goddess, you taste delicious, she says once done. Ashley's POV I've been on my best behavior the past few days as they came to give me food and drinks. I wanted to give the illusion that I had given up, but the truth was far from it. I'm not an idiot. The longer we stay here the less likely we are to stay alive. I have to get us out of here so I've been watching and waiting. They bring me food around the same time every day and there's a different person every time. The reasoning behind that I'm unsure of but it doesn't matter. At this point I will feel no sympathy for who I have to kill to get my mate, pup, and I out of here safely. The biggest problem is I have no clue where we are. We could be a Apex land or in the middle of nowhere. I honestly don't know if Rachel could get away with keeping us in her pack without someone noticing but then again she could lie and say we are rogues she caught. I wonder how Emerson is holding up. I can't feel him and Tabitha can't reach Shadow. I know something is wrong but until I get out of here I won't be able to find out what. I know he's still alive or we would have felt our bond break. I just wish I could see him again it's only been a few days and I miss him. I realize now how much I need him, not only me but our pup. It's early on the morning and breakfast should be arriving soon. I'm going to try and get out and find Emerson. Hopefully not everyone is awake yet and I can find him quickly. I thought about trying during the night but being in an unknown territory I figured it would be unwise. I move from my usual spot on the far wall closer to the door, pressing myself into the corner, and as soon as the door opens I attack. The man carrying the tray steps in a few feet startled I'm not in my usual place and I take advantage of his stunned state to sneak up behind him and snap his neck quickly. I exit the room and enter a hallway. It's short and there's a set of stairs directly ahead of me. I go up the stairs silently steeping on each one trying to make as little noise as possible. Opening the door I see the sun rising and trees all around me. Stepping outside I realize I've been held in some sort of bunker. I hear footsteps approaching and realize it is most likely some sort of patrol. I allow Tabitha to take over and discard of the two men swiftly. Moving quietly and being as stealthy as possible I move throughout the woods trying to find their pack house where I pray to the moon goddess my mate is. After being lost for what seems like hours I notice a group of people in a field fighting, probably training, which must mean I'm close. I keep a safe distance so they won't hear or see me but keep heading towards them looking for a pack house. Then I see a roof through the trees up ahead and know I'm almost there. It takes me some time to dodge people and sneak my way inside but somehow I manage. Perhaps the moon goddess is blessing me with a little bit of luck. I head to the top floor since that where I learned most alphas and their families preside. It quiet, eerily so, and I wonder if Rachel cleared this floor of the pack house out so she and Emerson wouldn't be disturbed. I quietly tip top to the first door and open it but the room is basically empty just a bed and dresser both covered in sheets. 
The second door I open holds a familiar scent I realize to be Adam's and I instantly stiffen. The thought of him fills me with a mix of emotions. He hurt me but it lead me back to Emerson and made me stronger. Although a part of me feels bad for ending his life it had to be done he would have killed my mate if he had gotten the chance and possibly me if I didn't give him what he wanted. Thinking about it now Rachel is just as crazy if not crazier. She is smarter though. She planned her attack on us and kidnapping. Adam was reckless and impulsive which ended his life sooner than later. They both share a common thread. Wanting what isn't theirs. I reach the third door and Tabitha perks up at the faint scent lingering just outside he door. Emerson is in there. Are you ready Tabby? We don't know if Rachel is in there with him or not. We may have to fight her I can do this Ash. Let me at her. She hurt us and mate. This time I open the door quickly to catch her by surprise if she is in there. I step inside and shut the door not spotting her right away. As my eyes settle on the bed my heart breaks and I rush over to his side. Rachel has my mate naked cuffed with his wrists and ankles each cuffed to a bedpost. I can see the skin beneath them is red and raw showing he had been fighting hard to get out of them. The collar she placed on him still sit around his neck. I notice several vials and syringes on the nightstand. She has clearly been drugging him. Emerson baby. I say touching his cheek. I say touching his cheek. Wake up we have to get out of here. Ashley. He whispers opening his eyes slightly and I can see the doubt in his eyes that it's really me. He whispers opening his eyes slightly and I can see the doubt in his eyes that it's really me. Ash. He asks almost unsure if what is seeing is real. Yes, Emerson, it's really me. We need to get out of here now. I whisper and I summon some of Tabitha's strength to rip the cuffs apart from his arms and legs. The collar burns and I struggle to get it off but after a few moments finally manage to break the back apart and pull it of throwing it on the bed next to him. I swear I tried not to ash. He cries out pulling me down on top of him and wrapping his arms tightly around me. I didn't want to but she drugged me. She had four men come in here to restrain me. Then she stripped me down and injected me with something. I don't remember much but I felt her pain through our bond. I tried to fight her but without shadow I couldn't. Emerson I know you would never hurt me on purpose and the only reason you got her out of that room was so she wouldn't hurt our pup but right now I need to you to gather whatever strength you have left and help me out a little. We can't have much time before she realizes I'm gone and will come straight here. He nods letting me go from the hug. I rush to the closet to find some shorts and notice that one while half of the closet is clothes all in his size. She really intended for them to be mates and him to stay here forever I thought as I grabbed a pair and went back into the room. He slipped them on and stood from the bed stumbling a bit which is to be expected after being cuffed and unable to move for several days. I pulled him close, he threw his arm over my shoulder, and leaned on my slightly as he tried to get his bearings back. Again very discreetly and soundlessly we both somehow managed to sneak outside. The joy I have feeling the sunlight against my skin and cool breeze coming from the trees is short-lived when an alarm starts sounding from the house just a few feet behind us. I knew I shouldn't have gotten my hopes of freedom up to soon. I know what I have to do. Shifting into Tabitha's large form she picks Emerson up on her back and runs of into the forest as he hangs on for dear life. It doesn't take long until we hear paws thumping on the ground behind us. Tabitha pushes faster but I can tell she is running out of energy. She sees a stream ahead and quickly jumps in trying to hide our scent in the flowing water and throw them off slightly. Following the stream a little ways we notice a small cave-like structure under the stream's natural embankment. It was as good a place as any to rest for a while and hide. Placing Emerson gently on the ground against the wall I shift back and crawl in next to him. He pulls me flush against him wrapping both arms securely around me probably scared this is all a dream and he'll wake up without me there. I can't deny that I feed the same thing. We survived Ash, we survived. He whispers and I sigh. 
it's not over yet we still need to find our way home. I whisper back as our close letting sleep take over. Bradley's POV. Waking up I reach over to the other side of the bed and my mate is missing. Waking up I reach over to the other side of the bed and my mate is missing. I figured she might be after I heard Emma and Genevieve together in her room the night before. I can't be mad at her for wanting to spend time with her other mate, but it still hurts slightly every time she chooses her over me. I want Emma to be happy, and I can my strained relationship with Genevieve is taking its toll on her, but my feeling towards her kind won't just change overnight. I could try to pretend to be on board with whole situation, but then I would end up resenting them both for feeling like I'm being forced into a multi-partner relationship I don't truly want. I wish I could just forget about all my training and the horror stories I heard while Emerson and I were away, but we were taught that vampires and rogues are dangerous and not to trust them. I feel like I'm being rushed into making a decision about being with both of them. Emma and I have truly only been mates for several months, now it's kind of new still, and now to add another partner to the mix. My mind is a maze and my heart is torn. They have marked each other as well so that makes things difficult even if I were to ask Emma to choose me which I think she would breaking their bond would be terribly painful for both of them now. Finding and being with my mate was not supposed to be this complicated. Good morning sexy. Emma says entering the room with a tray of food and huge smile on her face which must mean last night her and Genevieve had some fun making me a little more jealous. Emma says entering the room with a tray of food and huge smile on her face which must mean last night her and Genevieve had some fun making me a little more jealous. Morning, I respond trying not sound grumpy or let my jealousy be known. I thought we could have breakfast in bed before we go meet the with and see if she can help us find Emerson and Ashley. She practically chirps happily. Sure let me shower really quick, I say hopping of the bed. Want me to join you? She replies with a wink. Not this time. I mumble feeling the need to just be alone with my thoughts a tiny bit longer. I mumble feeling the need to just be alone with my thoughts a tiny bit longer. Oh, okay. She says and I can hear the slight disappointment in her voice. I'll be quick. I respond faking a smile and kiss her on the lips quickly before I disappear into the bathroom. I do as I promised and take a quick one letting the steam clear my head. Today I'm going to focus on finding Ashley and Emerson. I need my alpha and best friend back. He can help me work through some of this. Emma is one of my best friends too, but she's right in middle of all of this, so she won't be much help. As soon as I step outside of the bathroom, I see not only Emma, but Genevieve sitting on the edge of our bed chatting away. Sorry to interrupt your breakfast date. Genevieve says sweetly standing and stepping a little closer to me. She reaches out, grabs my hand, pulls me towards the bed, rips the towel from around my waist, and pushes me back on the bed. Genevieve says sweetly standing and stepping a little closer to me. She reaches out, grabs my hand, pulls me towards the bed, rips the towel from around my waist, and pushes me back on the bed. Before I can protest, as she gets down on her knees in front of me, Emma's lips meet mine, keeping me silent. I feel Genevieve's hands start to stroke me up and down as the other cups and lightly squeezes my balls. Once she has my heart and squirming beneath her, I feel her mouth enclose around my throbbing cock. I close my eyes enjoying the sensation and don't even notice Emma stands slipping of her shorts before she climbs back on the bed and straddles my face. I feel her knees on either side of my head and open my eyes to see her glistening pussy right above my face. I reach up and grip her hips pulling her slightly forward then slip my tongue deep between her wet folds. Hello Earth to Bradley. Emma says snapping her fingers in front of my face. Emma says snapping her fingers in front of my face. Damn it, Viper, stop with the fantasies already. Just accept her already. Just accept her already. We can all have so much fun together. It's not that simple, and you know it. I tell my wolf, shutting him out. Sorry. What did you say? I was hoping you would join us later when we talk to the vampires and figure out what to do. Genevieve states. Genevieve states. If you want me there, I will be there. I promise trying to show that I'm putting in a little effort. I promise trying to show that I'm putting in a little effort. Well, let's go meet this witch and find our Alpha and Luna then. Emma says as she grabs Genevieve's hand and leads her out of the bedroom so I can get dressed. All I'll need is some blood from either Emma or Elizabeth to enchant the map and around an hour to cast the spell then it will help you track and find your brother and his mate. The witch says as I realize I once again zoned out to worried about my mate situation to focus. I'll do it. Elizabeth volunteers quickly ready to help her brother in any way possible since he fulfilled his promise of getting her own maid out safely. 
Good, that gives us time to go have our own small meeting. Emma states standing and grabbing Genevieve's hand yet again. Emma states standing and grabbing Genevieve's hand yet again. We'll be back in an hour to fill you in on how it goes. All three of us leave the room and follow behind Emma and Genevieve. I watch how in sync they move and the way they seem to just naturally fit together. It's how I used to feel about us, but now here I am following like the third wheel that I am and not knowing what to do with the sudden insecurity of being left behind. The more I see them together, I think maybe there is a chance Emma would choose her over me. I don't ever want to lose her, so maybe it's time I just suck it up and accept Genevieve. The sooner the better for all of us. I stand behind them as they address the vampires that chose to say tuning most of it out as I think of how to go about taking to the girls about our bond as three parts of a whole. So the majority of you want us to stay here and lead this pack as our own. Genevieve states as the majority raise their hands in concurrence. Genevieve states as the majority raise their hands in concurrence. Bradley will be your alpha and Emma and I will share the Luna duties then. No, just you two. One guy's shouts from the back. One guy's shouts from the back. What does that mean? Emma growls stepping forward, but Genevieve gently grabs her arm to stop and calm her. Emma growls stepping forward, but Genevieve gently grabs her arm to stop and calm her. He clearly has a distaste for vampires. He can't even accept her as his mate. You have. He say pointing to Genevieve then Emma. Yeah, if he can't accept her, why would he accept us? Another vampire chimes in. Another vampire chimes in. I do accept her. I do accept her. I say finally stepping forward, taking my place beside them. Yet she only bears one mark, same as you. The first guy sneers. Emma, I mind link to grab her attention and she looks at me with worry in her eyes. I mind link to grab her attention and she looks at me with worry in her eyes. Be honest with me, is this truly what you want, Brad? I she pauses, looks between Genevieve and the crowd of vampires in front of us, then turns back to me. Yes, it's almost a whisper in my head. It's almost a whisper in my head. Mark me. I state moving closer to Genevieve. I state moving closer to Genevieve. What? What? Her and Emma simultaneously say stunned. I'm accepting you now, mark me. I say bearing my neck for her. Bradley, you don't have to do this. She whispers. She whispers. It's what Emma wants and all I want is for her to be happy. This will make her happy. I whisper back. I whisper back. Please just mark me. She looks deep into my eyes and I know she can see the truthfulness behind my words, but I also know she see my apprehension towards her still. She looks deep into my eyes and I know she can see the truthfulness behind my words, but I also know she see my apprehension towards her still. With one final pleading look she grabs my hand, I bend down slightly to make it easier for her, and after just a few moments of hesitation on her part, I feel her fangs pierce my neck, leaving her mark and forming a bond between the two of us. She pulls away licking her lips, then licks the blood away from my skin, and I sense her enter my mind. Your turn. She says as she bears her neck to me. Viper I can't. I need you to mark her. I say to my wolf, giving him control, and allow him to mark her completely our bond and finally tying our souls together. I say to my wolf, giving him control, and allow him to mark her completely our bond and finally tying our souls together. Once he pulls away from her neck, sealing our mark with his tongue, the crowd of vampires start cheering, calling us their Alpha and Lunas. I look down at Genevieve still holding my hand as Emma grabs her other one. Realization that I have just given in to something I'm still unsure of hits me like a freight train and I start to panic at the thought of what I had just done. I begin to wonder if I made a mistake and acted too rashly. I pull away from the two of them as the crowd begins to come forward and congratulate us. I sneak away easily since they are closer to Emma and Genevieve anyways. I find Elizabeth and Micah still with the witch in an office upstairs, and it looks like she just finished her spell as she hands the map to Micah. I'll take that, I say snatching it from his hand. I say snatching it from his hand. I'm going to find my best friend now. I continue turning to leave because the need to get away is becoming more overwhelming by the second. I continue turning to leave because the need to get away is becoming more overwhelming by the second. I'm coming with you. Micah states. He saved me to I owe him. We can leave first thing tomorrow. No, I shout. We need to leave now who knows what kind of danger they are in. I say more calmly. I say more calmly. Fine. He huffs in response turning to hug Elizabeth and whisper something in her ear. He huffs in response turning to hug Elizabeth and whisper something in her ear. I feel slightly bad that I am pulling him from his mate so soon after the reunion, but at this point I feel like I'm suffocating. 
I need to shift and focus on anything but what I just did. I don't bother grabbing any clothes or necessities. I just walk outside quickly with Micah hot on my tail. As soon as I'm close enough to the woods, I drop the map, shift, and pick it up with my mouth holding onto it tightly as I sprint up toward the woods. I can hear Genevieve and Emma yelling for me and soon their voices fill my head, but I can't face them right now. I need time so I block them both out and focus on the mission at hand. Find and save Emerson and Emma's POV. I don't understand what just happened. He announced in front of our new pack that he finally accepted Genevieve, and I was ecstatic that we could all finally start the next chapter of our lives together. In an instant, I was hopeful for building a strong and meaningful relationship between the three of us. Seeing them mark each other was probably one of the happiest moments of my life. Then as usual it all went downhill in an instant. Bradley freaked out and ran off. I chased after him and wanted to shift, but Genevieve stopped me. And just give him some space and a little time. We kind of rushed the whole marking thing just because he accepted me doesn't mean he was ready for that. She speaks gently. No, I state. He can't keep leaving like that. He did the same thing right after I found you and then got captured leaving me a mise. Lost without him. Now he's doing it all over again. It isn't fair to me or you for him to act this way. I know love, but this time around I'm here for you. We are all bonded now, meaning you and I will both know if he is safe of not. Bradley is smart, and I doubt he or Micah will make the same mistake as last time. Plus it's unlikely a legion of vampires is waiting for them wherever they are headed. Let him do this have some control over his life. He probably feels like all these choices are being made, and isn't getting much of a say-so in how his life is going right now. Well, I didn't think about it that way. I guess this whole thing was kind of forced on him, but still he needs to quit running away. We should face everything together as a team and talk things out. He's a male wolf. He is not used to depending on anyone but himself. Eventually we will get there, but for now we both just need to be patient and understanding. I will try, but I may kick his ass when he gets home for leaving me twice now. I joke trying to cheer myself up. Maybe we can tie him up and have a little fun torturing him. Maybe we can tie him up and have a little fun torturing him. She retorts and winks. I love you. I said suddenly catching Genevieve and myself of guard. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. I mean, I do. And it's not just the bond I swear ever since I first laid eyes on you. You're cute when you ramble. She said cutting me off, pulling me flush against herself and capturing my lips with hers. I love you too. She whispered, breaking away for only a second, before leaning back in and hungrily kissing me yet again. I want to make you dinner tonight, just you and I, to get your mind of everything that has been going on, even if it's just for a little while. I would really enjoy that. I replied with a large smile, thinking about what I would consider our first date. After placing some calls to packs around the area asking for help finding Emerson and Ashley and discussing creating new living quarters for coupled vampires staying to have more privacy, I made my way upstairs to shower before tracking down my lovely mate for our one-on-one -on -one dinner date. While I'm in the shower, I hear the door to the room open and assume it's Genevieve. The thought of having dinner with her makes me happy but the fact that Bradley isn't here hurts. I shake the thoughts of Bradley away. He chose to leave me, and that's twice now. I need to focus on the mate still here, who admitted she loves me to today. I need to focus on the positive, and not go back into the saddening slump I was in after Bradley left and get captured by Ares. Hey babe, I say tying the towel around myself, and opening the door to the bathroom. Oh my. I hope you like it. I hope you like it. She says gesturing to the small table she had brought into the room along with the candles lit throughout. I love it. I reply sweetly as I make my way over and give her long SND meaningful kiss to show my true appreciation for the gesture. Let me just put something on really quick. I say after breaking away. I'll be patiently waiting. She jokes as I slip into the closet. Once I'm in the closet, I can't decide what to wear. Normally I would just wear shorts and a shirt. That's my day to do day go to. But this is sort of a date, so I debate on a dress. Then again it's kind of late, so maybe I should just wear some pajamas. There's the possibility we could finally complete our bond by mating tonight, and I'm sure she would appreciate some lingerie. I decide to go with a light pink silk nightgown. It's comfortable, daring, and hopefully will give her an idea of where I wouldn't mind this night ending. I walk out and she almost drops the glass of wine in her hand. You look breathtakingly beautiful. She says, grabbing another glass of wine and handing it to me before pulling out a chair for me to sit. This smells amazing. I state as I settle into the seat and take a sip of wine. Thanks, it's one of my specialties. She responds, sitting down across from me. Chicken cacciatore and bruschetta. Thank you for cooking me dinner. It is my pleasure. She replies with a wink as we both begin. So I was thinking since this seems to be out new home. 
How about we get the entire top floor where Aries used to stay and make it our own? I like that idea. I reply between bites. Can we wait for Bradley to return to make any major decisions on the layout and such? I don't want him to feel left out. Of course, love. I want him to be a part of our plans as well. For now, though, we can at least start in getting everything out of there and start with a blank canvas. The rest of the meal, we talk about my pack and what it was like growing up for me. She also shares a bit of her upbringing or what she can remember. I didn't realize Aries had made her one of his own before the attack on Ashley's pack. She admitted that she had taken part in the attack and killed two lichens, but I assured her I wouldn't hold it against her. She was young and tied to Aries. If he gave her the command, no matter how hard she fought, eventually it would take over. It's the same with the Pax Alpha and Luna. They essentially hold all the power. If they choose to, they can give a command and it is unbearable for a wolf to ignore it. A few bad apples take advantage of that power, but for the most part, Alphas and Lunas respect their pack members enough not to use that power against them. Do you think we can really do this? I asked tentatively. What do you mean? Lead a pack of vampires. I know nothing of your kind and what happens when other packs learn about us. A pack of vampires and werewolves. You will learn and I will help you. As for other packs finding out about us, we shouldn't have any issues as long as we keep to ourselves and stay out of trouble. Like I've said before, not all vampires are bad and I believe the ones who chose to stay did so for a reason. They don't want to be alone and they need a purpose in this world besides fighting for Ares. Now that he is gone, we can give them that. We will make this a home and safe space for an species who doesn't quite fit in with their own. I know I said it already, but I love you Genevieve. You are truly amazing and I'm so glad the goddess decided to pair us together. I feel the same way. I truly thought I would live this life alone, but finding you was the best twist of fate. Now, she says pauses, stands, walks over, and grabs my hand. I think it's time for some dessert. She continues, pulls me from my chair, and yanks my nightgown of in one swift motion, completely exposing me to her hungry eyes. Scooping me up in her arms, she walks over to the bed and gently tosses me on top. Then I lay there, watch as she takes her own clothes off quickly, and slowly crawls on the bed, settling over me. We spend the rest of the night exploring each other's bodies, bring each other to orgasm after orgasm, before she falls asleep, snuggled closely to me. I say a silent prayer to the moon goddess to bring Bradley back safe, and help him accept our bond, especially since none of us can easily take it back now. I love you. I simply link him in hopes that he hears here, before allowing myself to slip into a- I say smiling, thinking about my new future and my new home with my wonderful lovely mates. Emerson's POV. I wake up feeling physically ill and drained of all my energy but from the sparks against my skin I know my mate is finally back with me. She saved me and we finally got away from Adam's crazy ass sister Rachel. It was only a few days but being chained to a bed and used against your will is exhausting. At first my only thought was getting her out of the same room as Ashley and our pup. After that I wasn't really sure what to do. I wasn't expecting to be ambushed by four of her largest warriors and chained to her bed. I fought them as hard as I could but with the silver collar my strength was diminished greatly. Every time she took advantage of the state I was in I could feel Ashley's pain but no matter how I tried Rachel got her way. She drugged me to keep me up and ready for her. I'm so sorry Ash. I whisper kissing her forehead. As soon as we both gained enough strength we would get out of here and find our way home then I would march back with an army of my own and kill Rachel for what she had done to us. I shouldn't have underestimated her obsession with me and I could have better anticipated her wanting some sort of retribution for the death of her brother. I was so focused on defeating Ares I never considered other threats. She was smart catching us by surprise after we fought him but now that we were no longer under control she would meet her end at my hands. Then I would do everything in my power to make it up to Ashley. I never in my life wanted to hurt her the way I did and if it weren't for our bond she wouldn't have felt anything. My Alpha. She whispers, opening her eyes slightly, and pulls me closer. My Luna. I respond with a smile because I had missed having her in my arms. Thank you for saving us. Well our pup needs both us and I refuse to let that wretched woman have my child. She says with a small growl at the end. She has to die, Emerson. She continues with a serious tone. She will. We will stay here for one more night, maybe two, just until Shadow and I are both stronger, then we will make our way home and come back without pack warriors. Ashley. Hmm. She says, snuggling closer. 
there's a proper way to do this, informing Roderick and the council but I can't wait for them Ash. I need her gone for my sanity and our pup's safety. I am going to kill her with my own hands. I understand. She simply replies. Emerson. She says shifting slightly so her face and mine and in front of each other. I know what she did to you please don't blame yourself. I know you did what you had to do to protect our pup. I will never be mad at you. She chained you up like an animal there was nothing to do to stop her. I'm sorry that happened to you. Ashley I love you. I whisper pulling her head down to my chest as I let out the dam of tears I had been holding in free. I love you to Emerson. I always will forever no matter what. After resting and eating some berries and a few squirrels Ashley managed to catch we decided to leave our hiding hole and figure out where we are and get back to our pack. I step out first and look around to see if any of Rachel's pack patrol are lingering outside. Thankfully being near the water and surrounded by dirt the past 48 hours helped mask our sense but as soon as we start our journey back home if she wants her warriors can track us. We will have to move fast and stay hidden as much as possible. If my guess is right we are at Adam and Rachel's pack which is less than an hour's drive from our home but we are traveling by foot. I had never actually been on their territory so navigating it may be a little difficult but we would somehow manage. As soon as I was able to sense Shadow again I would send a link out to my family and hope they were out looking for us. I don't know how much wolfsbane she injected me with the past couple days but I was having trouble connecting me wolf even after being free for almost two full days. Tabitha exerted a ton of energy getting us out of there and in her weakened state went dormant so as of right now both Ashley and I are incommunicado. We start by following the stream a ways away until it meets the river and I direct us west which I believe should take us towards our pack if my sense of direction is correct. Every little noise has me on high alert. Each time I push Ashley behind me protectively. I refuse to lose her and the pup after all we've already been through. I am more determined than ever to get us home and safe. After what feel like several hours of walking I see a few building up ahead. We must be near a town. If I can find out which one it will help us go in the right direction home. About a mile away from the town's border I heard footsteps coming fast towards us and freak out. I quickly pull Ashley behind a tree and shield her with my body. We are flush against each other, face to face, and I close my eyes and pray to the goddess that if it's rogues they don't spot us and move on. Neither one of us will be able to fight a band of rogues without our wolves. Then again it's been a few hours since I've tried to reach Shadow maybe just one more shot. Shadow, are you awake yet? I really need you right now. Nothing. I curse Rachel's name once again for weakening me to this extent. They get closer and closer not stopping or turning a different direction. I take a deep breath and turn away from Ashley protecting SND shielding her as best I can. I am going to put up one hell of a fight and hope that Shadow comes back at some point to help. I'm ready, I think to myself, trying to hype myself up then a male's voice reaches my ear and my body instantly relaxes and hope spreads throughout my whole body. Emerson. Ashley, please tell me that's you. Bradley's voice comes from about 10 feet away. Thank you, moon goddess. I whisper, turn, grab Ashley's hand and walk out from behind the tree. How on earth did you find us? I say rushing over and pulling my best friend and Beta into a huge bear hug. Magic map. He replies with laugh. I watch as Micah pulls Ashley into a tight hug as well. He was probably scared they lost her again. I walk over and pull Micah into a hug as well. It's only been a short while but he is family too. Let's go home. I say grabbing Ashley and pulling her close to my side. We're both still having trouble connecting with Shadow and Tabitha. Can you link someone from the pack to bring a car? I ask Bradley who nods. Finally we are going home. Miss POV. I woke up next my gorgeous mate sprawled out naked kid beside me and smiled wide. I woke up next my gorgeous mate sprawled out naked kid beside me and smiled wide. The past two nights had been fantastic together as we learned to please each other in new ways and explored feelings for one another making our connection grow stronger. It helped that two nights prior Bradley linked me and let me know he loves me and he's sorry. It took a load of my mind that it seemed he was finally coming to terms with everything. I know he probably hated the fact that he was basically put on the spot to mark Genevieve, but I also know deep down they already care for each other. Neither one has showed it outwardly, 
but I could see their stolen glances whenever they were around each other. Genevieve told me more about their run together. She could sense his wolf wasn't the one with the issues, it was all Bradley. She understood why he was so hesitant, and also his insistence they mark each other in front of everyone. A part of him did accept her, but he was still scared. We talked about giving him some space when he gets back and letting him come to us. Since they had rushed their marking, she would try not rush the rest of their bond. Eventually, they would need to mate to complete it, but it would be one Bradley's terms. I can't deny thinking about the fun we could have tempting him to join us, but we have the rest of our lives for that sort of stuff. Good morning. Genevieve says smiling as her eyes flutter open, finding mine. Morning. I sweetly reply leaning over and giving her a kiss before climbing out of bed to take care of my morning business in the bathroom. So, I think today we should discuss a training schedule. With my help, I can teach our new pack fighting technique specific to a wolf. Just in case we ever get attacked by rogues, it may help for them to know our soft spots the best places to strike. Then I thought we could talk about visiting some other packs once Bradley gets back. If we are really going to do this have our own pack, we will need alliances. I say stepping out of the bathroom. Are you sure your kind will accept a pack that is predominantly vampire kind? We will never know unless we try. To be honest, I have no idea how other packs will feel. I'm sure we will be met with some resistance, but my family is well respected in the werewolf community that will at least get us in the door and once they meet you. I continue laying down next to her, running my hand along her side. They will see that not all vampires are alike and our pack will be different, more inclusive. I love you. She replies, pushing me back against the bed and moving over top of me. You are so sexy. She whispers, placing her lips against my neck. Smart. She says moves to the other side. Kind and caring. She continues as her lips move down to the swell of my breasts. Honey, I'm... Bradley stops mid-sentence after entering the room abruptly and seeing the position the two of us are in. Shed sorry, I didn't think. I should have not. I just got back and I missed you. And I'll be downstairs when you guys are done. He rambles seemingly flustered and turns to leave. Wait, I shout to stop him and Genevieve moves from on top of me. I missed you too. So much. I say running over and jumping up on him catching him of guard slightly, but he turns just in time to catch me as I crash my lips against his. I honestly didn't even realize exactly how much I missed him until I was back in his arms. I kissed him hungrily, driving my tongue deep into his mouth as I pulled his hair forcefully. Although I had missed him, I am still a bit angry at the way he left, and before I pull back, I bite down on his lip hard drying blood. I smirk as he gasps and sets me down on the ground then reaches up to touch his now busted lip. We both step into the room more and Bradley closes the door. I sit on the bed as Genevieve climbs up. I'll give you guys some time alone. She says making her way towards the door. We need to talk. Bradley whispers as he grabs her wrist gently not letting her pause. What I mean is I need to talk to both my mates. Oh. She replies surprised, but turns and takes a seat next to me on the edge of the bed. Firstly, Bradley speaks kneeling in front of us and grabs one hand of ours in each of his. I'm so sorry for the way I've behaved. I should have never left so abruptly. After we marked each other, I had so many thoughts and emotions running through me I didn't know how to properly process it all and bailed. Neither of you deserved that, but from this point forward I will try to be better for you, both of you. He says making sure to make eye contact with Genevieve during that last part. We understand. I start. We actually discussed giving you some space when you got back. I know the marking happened abruptly, and you weren't expecting it to be soon. But I'm grateful you did. I love both of you. I continue and look between the two of them. From now on, any insecurities or issues we have, we need to talk about them together as a team, especially since soon we will be running an entire pack together. Speaking of which, Roderick told us that it's not as simple as starting a new pack. The council needs to meet and have a vote. What if they vote against us? He asks. We will figure that if it comes to that. With Roderick, Ashley, Emerson, Mom, and Dad by our sides, I have a good feeling about this. We also have another surprise for you. Genevieve chirps in excitedly. She really has missed him as well. I had a small crew clear out the top floor yesterday. And now that you are back, we can start planning how we want our floor plan to look. We? He whispers, looking down at our hands. And for a moment, I can't tell if he is having second thought again or what is going on that head of his until his face lifts with the biggest grin. I like the sound of that. He says, then reaches up pulling me down for another kiss before he switches to Genevieve, catching her by surprise as his lips devour hers. And I can't deny that seeing them kiss is stirring something inside of me. Emma? He lowly growls, pulling away from Genevieve. I can smell your arousal, and as much I want you both right now, I still need to make it IP to you too. I want to do something romantic that we will remember forever as our first time together.
I like the sound of that. I whisper. Who are you and what have you done with the old Bradley? She jokes. Let's just say a visit from our goddess will make you see things more clearly. Selene, she actually visited you. I asked stunned because it is rare to hear from her. Yes, she just had a few things to tell me, but I don't want to spoil our future, so I will keep it to myself. He replies with a wink at the end. You two go and shower. I am going to start my penance by making you two breakfast. Then we can handle business and go take a look at our new living quarters. He made good on his promise and made us a delicious breakfast, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And not just because the food was amazing, but having both of them at the table with me was simply fantastic. I finally felt complete with both of them here beside me. Bradley seemed different. I no longer say hesitation or confusion in his eyes only love and admiration. He really was ready to turn over a new leaf and be with both us. He was putting in major effort, and that's all I could ask for. Later in the afternoon after coming up with a training schedule and reaching out to a few packs requesting a visit via emails, we decide to head upstairs to the top floor and talk about what would like out living quarters to look like. How about three closets? Genevieve suggests as we discuss our shared bedroom. That way we each have our own and small space to call our own. We'll need a tub and shower big enough for all of us. Bradley adds with a wink nudging Genevieve, and it's amusing to see them flirting now. Three sinks. He continues. We should have at least three bedrooms for pups. Continues, and both Genevieve and I stiffen since neither of us have thought to discuss that possibility. Pups as in plural, I ask. Yes. Bradley replies smiling wide at the two of us. The moon goddess said we will have quite the litter. He says with a laugh. Can I have pups? Genevieve asks quietly as she looks down and gently rubs her stomach. This is uncharted territory here. I've never heard of a vampire and werewolf actually mating and marking each other. I believe. Bradley says as he moves behind her, wraps his arms around her, linking his hands with hers. If the goddess wills, it is bound to happen, but if you don't want to, we can be precautious. I understand if you don't want to try. He continues, and I think both hear the slight sadness at the thought of her rejecting the idea of having a pup with him. It's not that. She says, turning to face him. What if I'm not good at raising a werewolf? We don't usually procreate, we just turn someone and they are typically older and grown. I don't know the first thing about raising a child yet alone one that isn't the same species as I am. She explains, looking down between them. Hey. He speaks softly, lifting her chin. I'm done running. I'm not going anywhere. We can and we'll do this together if you so choose, but I will let that be your choice. You always have me too. I say feeling a little out as I walk over and settle behind her. I lean down and kiss my mark, causing Genevieve to let out the tiniest moan. I hear another moan and glance over to see Bradley kissing his as well. I see her hands grip his shirt tightly as she fights the urge to rip our clothes off, but we both want to wait for it to be special like Bradley said. Should we stop? I ask Bradley directly through our mind link. I don't know this is quite fun making her squirm. He jokes. Please. She pants as our kisses along her neck become erratic, and hands roam her body freely. I need you. I want you. Wait. She whispers. Do you want us to stop? I hear Bradley whisper against her neck. No. I mean yes. I mean I want it to be special like you said. You're right. I say pulling away and hear a small whine escape her lips at the loss of contact. Next time there will be no stopping no matter how much you beg. Bradley adds with some authority as he backs away as well. We should go back downstairs before. I halt as I hear footsteps running up the stairs. Alpha, Lunas, our potential. We have yet to discuss it with Bradley yet. Beta Riley rushes in. There are several packs outside posing a threat to us, but they wish to speak with you first. Let's go. I say, grabbing both my mate's hands as we follow him downstairs. Genevieve's POV. As we walk down the stairs, my mind runs wild. As soon as the suggestion of us leading a pack together came up in the back of my mind, I worried about so many things. One alpha and two lunas, how would that work? Would my vampire brother and sisters actually listen and follow my two werewolf mates? How would the werewolf community feel about a pack that is predominantly vampires led by two wolves and one of their own kind? I oddly enough never thought it could possibly bring war to our door yet again. I could understand some disliking the idea but we would never harm another pack unless the situation arose like now when they are brining the fighting to us. I wonder how news spread so quickly. Then again, there were several packs that came to help Emerson and Ashley defeat Ares, so of course they would spread the news of his defeat and the fact that hundreds of vampires survived and surrendered. If we had just had the time to stick to our plan and visit packs, letting them meet us and hear our intentions with their own ears instead of hearsay, it's a little more intimidating this way. 
just us three talking to several packs and who knows how many warriors each one brought. I just hope that when we get outside our vampires are calm and collected. If we do not instigate a fight, then perhaps they will listen. Once we all step outside I first notice how all the vampires who decided to stay are gather around the front of the house defensively. They are in a semicircle around the front porch to the corners of the house so no one can get indirectly to attack any of us they will have to get through them. We did not ask them to do this and it makes me slightly proud that they are protecting us of their own free will. I see five different alphas and their betas at the forefront of around 50 warriors apiece. We are still at a disadvantage of 3 to 1 odds if they do decide to attack, but I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. Emma makes her way towards the front of the group, and although I want to grab her and pull her back to safety, I understand she wants to try to talk things out peacefully first. Alphas to what do we owe the pleasure? She says with a little sass and makes me smile seeing my feisty mate in action. This is going to be a fun pissing contest to watch. Brad links me taking me by surprise as he takes his place beside me where I stand slightly behind Emma. Emma has bigger balls than half the alphas here. He adds and I see a smirk on his face. You know exactly why we're here Emma and the only reason we haven't attacked yet is out of respect for your mother and father. We respect them and your pack. This is your one and only chance to leave and let us finish the job of destroying these abominations. An arrogant alpha steps forward speaking. Alpha Thaddeus. Bradley links. He's a real prick but a respected alpha. The packs around are four of his biggest alliances. He explains which I appreciate since I know nothing of their world. They are not abominations. Emma's voice booms and I shudder at the amount of authority behind it, even though she is not officially a Luna yet. These are our pack members. It does not matter that they once fought alongside our enemy. What matter is that they surrendered willingly after and chose to stay to live a different life than they were taught. Everyone deserves a second chance, and this is theirs. She continues and moves forward slightly at the end. Have they attacked or harmed any of your pack members? She asks rhetorically. No, they have not. They simply came out to defend their home. You have decided to trespass on our territory and threaten us. It is not a threat, it is a promised little girl. The Alpha spits back and Bradley growls making a move forward but I grab his arm and give him a pleading look to calm himself. Don't let him get to you, it's what he wants. I link him. I am not a little girl anymore Thaddeus. She replies and you can hear her distaste for the man with the way she says his name. That's Alpha to you? He says stepping towards her menacingly. We gave you a chance, now you're going to what happens when you disrespect? What is the meaning of this? Roderick's voice cuts him of as he releases his aura. Being an elder council member I've learned he holds a lot of power but rarely needs to use it. I notice every werewolf, even Emma and Bradley's slight, bare their necks and submit to him as he comes storming down the front steps of the house fuming. The rage emanating of him is crippling even I have the urge to submit to him. I can see the alpha that was just threatening my mate fighting against Roderick but his wolf seems to be holding the power as he steps back in line with the other alphas who decided to join him on this crazy crusade. Alpha Thaddeus I do not know what you were hoping to accomplish by coming here but I suggest you leave. No we came here with a purpose, we cannot allow a bunch of vampires to form a pack, it is a disgrace to our kind to pretend they could hold equal value amongst us even if their alleged alpha and lunar werewolves. This shouldn't be allowed, he says through gritted teeth. That is not for you to decide. The council intends to hold a meeting and determine whether or not to allow these vampires to form a pack or not. I have been watching them, and as of now they do not pose a threat to us. They will always be a threat to us, they are vampires. Thaddeus growls stepping forward yet again looking ready to attack Roderick. Enough. A voice thunders over everyone and it takes me a second to realize it came from my mouth but it isn't me. I have heard enough from all of you my children. The voice continues as my body moves against my control to the middle of the action. Goddess. Roderick questions looking at me oddly. How? She's not a werewolf. Exactly. She responds and I finally realize their moon goddess has taken over my body and is speaking through me leaving me confused as to whether I should be mad or impressed. I chose this vessel for the purpose of showing you they are not all the same. She is different than us but still one of us. She is marked by not one but two different werewolves making her uniquely in her own right. I am ashamed at you. She continues then points at Thaddeus before she keeps going. To bring the threat of war against those who want nothing more than a safe place to live, a home of their own. 
they have not caused any trouble so far, and with the leadership of Emma, Genevieve, and Bradley, this pack will thrive. How can you be so sure? Thaddeus questions. Do you trust me no longer, my child? She asks back, and he shakes his head left to right quickly. I know what their future will hold, and although there is always a chance it could change, I trust these three to keep their pack in line. Roderick and the council will watch them as they do every other pack. The only difference between their pack and yours will be their members, who we should treat as equals not matter what kind of supernatural being they may be. Do you all understand? Yes, Selene. Al Wolfs respond quickly. Now on to the second reason for my visit. She says turning my body towards my mates. You will both make a great Alpha and Luna in order to do that I wish to bestow upon you the power those titles hold, since typically the titles are passed down through heirs, you two are starting brand new. She places a finger from each hand on each of their foreheads and I see their eyes close. I worry as I see their eyes move frantically from left to right beneath their lids, but once they open I feel a relief rush over me. Their auras are strong and pushing forward naturally then I see them both take a deep breath which seems to rein it in. I can sense the power they both now have just below the surface and it's magnificent. I feel a little jealous all of a sudden that I will be left out and potentially weaker than my mates. Don't worry Genevieve once I leave your body you will hold the same power as your mates. The goddess speaks directly to me, obviously understanding my thoughts and concerns. You may not be a wolf, but you are a leader, and I want to make sure you are all on a level playing field. Thank you, is all I can think to reply as my mind reels over the fact that somehow the goddess possessed my body and she gave not only my mates but me the power of her kind's leaders. I must go now. She speaks softly but with everyone heightened senses they hear her clearly. I expect you all to return home. She says turning to face Alpha Thaddeus and I see his head fall. Good luck, she adds turning back to my mates and just as quickly as she appeared, she disappeared from my mind and body. That was such a crazy experience. I had no control of my body or the words leaving my mouth. I felt at a distance from myself, but I could hear and see everything so clearly. Once I was fully back in control, I felt invigorated and there was a new sense of power deep inside my bones. I rush forward to my mates and pull them both close, feeling a rush of excitement at all that had just happened. I knew, even though our kind doesn't believe in gods, having their goddess choose me as a vessel to deliver her message was an honor. It would have been nice to have a little heads up, but it was thrilling nonetheless. I heard Roderick speaking to all the alphas in a harsh tone and we all took that as our cue to leave, turning to head back inside and talk through what just happened. Miss POV We have the blessing of our moon goddess. She not only spoke on behalf, but chose to use Genevieve as her vessel to do so. That proves just how special she truly is. As soon as I stepped outside and saw that arrogant Alpha Thaddeus, I knew we were in for some trouble. He was an old and respected Alpha. The four other Alphas he brought with him were from some of the oldest, most established packs of our kind. The fact they barely brought any warriors had me fuming because he thought we would be such easy pickings. I couldn't say for sure that we would have won had things come to that. But I would have died trying. This was now our pack. Even if the goddess hadn't willed it herself, and the council denied our request, we would have found a way to stay together. The vampires that surrounded us surrendered and chose to stay in a home with werewolves. Going against their nature and upbringing by Ares himself, they did not not attack when basically ambushed by a small army. Instead, they stood defensively unwilling to make the first move. I could see it in their eyes as I passed them and felt it in the air that they did not want to fight anymore, but would defend us until their last breath. We had hardly done anything yet, and their overwhelming allegiance to us was phenomenal. I was jealous that each of my mates had their own personal experience with the goddess, and here I am the odd one out. It's silly though she had shown all three of us favor by bestowing actually power to both my mates. I had alpha blood on my veins, but that didn't make it difficult not to obey another alpha's command. And technically I was not ranked as the alpha of our own pack. If Emerson truly wanted to, he could use that power and make me submit. But he never did, nor would. We officially had our own pack now to run as we see fit, and all three of us will be respected as equals in the werewolf community. No one can deny our union after the display outside. Even Alpha Thaddeus, the biggest prick of them all, couldn't deny that our moon goddess blessed us and gave us the proper power to rule over a pack. Bradley would have to train harder now, 
but just the small amount of power she bestowed upon him would place him at a level playing field as all other alphas. There would be no need for him to feel inferior due to his upbringing and the rank he was trained for. I have no clue what Emerson will do without his beta. I know he will have to pick a new one, but he and Bradley grew up and trained together. It would definitely been an adjustment for both of them. Bradley was now in charge of a pack instead of being under Emerson and following his order. He would be leading and giving his orders. We all enter the study slash meeting room next to the main office on the first floor. What just happened? Genevieve asks, seemingly shocked still. Our moon goddess gave us her blessing to run our own pack. I state, I dare anyone to defy her direct orders. Yeah, even that an ace tricks, ace tricks hat Thaddeus. Such a pretentious dick. Bradley adds with an eye roll. This is all becoming so real. Genevieve says softly, flopping down on the one sofa in the room. We are truly two Lunas and an Alpha. That's never been done before. Guys, the moon goddess was inside me. She continues with a small shiver at the end. It was so odd hearing and seeing what was happening, but having no control over anything. Yes, I've heard it can be a rather jarring experience. She only does so in times of great desperation. Bradley chimes in. Now we need to plan a ceremony. We will open our new pack and present ourselves to the entire werewolf community. This way they can see we are no different than other packs, just a different variety of members. We have to invite everyone back home. Oh my goddess, I scream realizing how terrible I am. I haven't even called to check on my best friend and brother. With everything that's been going on and I just missed you so much, Bradley, I didn't even think to see how they are doing. Well, let's do that now. Bradley suggests grabbing a tablet from the table and opening a video chat. Hello. Ashley says answering looking a little confused. I forgot even though you are book smart, you are durable with technology. I laugh as my best friend finally figures it out and I see her smiling face invade the whole screen. Ashley, I'm sorry it took us so long to find you. Then Bradley came home and I miss him so much and some alphas showed up to try and make us leave. Then the moon goddess game I ramble. Slow down. Some alphas tried to make you leave. She growls. Wait, the moon goddess came? What does that mean? Well, she spoke through Genevieve. I say moving the tablet to the side so she can see her again. And they both wave. I'm so happy you have both your mates, M. Ashley squealed. So what did she say? Oh, wait one second, your brother just walked in. Hi, my wonderful Luna. My brother's voice rings through the background. Is that Emma? He asks excitedly as I see Ashley scoot over and Emerson sit down beside her. Where are you? I ask, noticing the bed they're on seems awfully small. The Pax Hospital. We just wanted to make sure everything was okay. He says looking down and I feel like he's hiding something but I'm not sure. Are you both okay? I ask. I ask. Yes. Ashley replies then looks at Emerson strangely and I believe they are mind linking each other. Yes, Emma. Emerson says, breaking eye contact with his mate, and I notice the huge smile on his face. All three of us are just fine. Three of you, huh? I ask confused. Wait, are you? Bradley asks from the sidelines, and I give him the same confused expression. But then Genevieve taps my arm and makes a gesture over her belly, making it click right into place. I'm going to be an ant. I scream, tossing the tablet on Genevieve's lap, and jumping up to do a happy dance. Geez, do you think she'll be this happy about our pups? I hear Bradley whisper to Genevieve. I heard that. I respond sticking my tongue out. Congratulations you too. Genevieve says holding the tablet up so she and Bradley can both be seen. Thank you. So when do we get to see you guys? We need to celebrate our news and the three of you finally accepting each other. Ashley says. Actually that's one reason we were calling. The moon goddess appointed us official leaders of this pack even passing an alpha and luna's powers unto us. We want to gold a ceremony soon to announce our new pack to the entire community. We want you to be there, the whole family in fact. Of course we'll be there, Em. Emerson responds sweetly. Also, now that Bradley is going to be an alpha, you'll have to find a new beta. I say solemnly. I kind of figured. Emerson responded with a chuckle. We will figure it out, but Em. I need Bradley to help me finish something first. He continues with a now serious tone. Should I be worried? I ask. M. Rachel is the one who took Ashley and I. She has to pay for what she did to us. I plan on going there and taking her captive myself, but I need Bradley with Micah, Cassius, and I as backup. He knows me better than anyone and he will probably be the only one able to stop me from killing her. I want to but Ashley talked me down and convinced me to capture her and turn her over to the council.
He explains with an angry expression. What she did is wrong, Emerson. Ashley says softly, pulling close to him, trying to calm and comfort his rage. We have seen enough violence for a lifetime, let it end now. We need to be the ones to take the high road. Revenge never leads to anything good, just look what happened to Ares. She's right, you know. I say beaming at how amazing my best friend truly is. She is the perfect balance for Emerson. We will plan for the ceremony to take place in a week. Is that enough time for you boys to catch Rachel, subdue her, and lock her up, then travel here for the festivities? Yes. Emerson answers immediately. The sooner the better. I don't want her thinking she got away with this or try to come after us again. I want it done and over with as soon as possible. He and Bradley start further discussing their plans for capturing Rachel. And I sit back and just think about how amazing it feels to finally be in a good place with both of my mates. I am so lucky to have them by my side as we start this new journey. I never imagined this is how my life would turn out. Being born to an Alpha and Luna, I assumed I would be mated to another Alpha and forced to move to a new pack and basically be a trophy. Something pretty to stare at while the men make all the decisions. When I found out Bradley and I were fated mates, I was ecstatic. We were best friends. Maybe not as close as he and Emerson were at first, but our bond felt so much stronger since we basically already had a small one beforehand. I didn't care that he was a beta where as most Alpha's daughters expected to be Luna's one day. I am glad we ended up here where we are today. I never expected to have a pack of my own, but what makes it so thrilling is I won't just he some seasonal decoration for my mate to take out show of. I feel completely equal in all of this. Yes, we had our hiccups at the start, but we have found our way together. And I look forward to learning and growing together, not just in pack life, but our personal lives as well. I take Genevieve's hand in mine and rest my head on her shoulder as she listens intently to their plan and even suggests taking some of our new pack members with as extra backup. Bradley's POV. I wake up next to both of my mates cuddled close together. I can't help the huge smile that takes over my face after our first night sharing a bed. My wolf and I feel so content just laying next to both of them. Last night when I suggested sleeping together and only sleeping they were both ecstatic but as soon as we changed and actually climbed into the bed together you could feel the sexual tension growing by the second. Genevieve and I had to yet to mate and officially complete our bond but I had something special planned for them both. Then I remember I'm leaving again. This time it isn't out of fear or confusion but a duty to Emerson. Although he is no longer my alpha, he is still my best friend and I want to help him catch that crazy bitch who took him and Ashley. We talked a little after Emma and Genevieve left the study to cook, and he told me everything she did to him. She really is a sick girl. I knew something was wrong with her the moment we heard through the grapevine that she told this tale of Emerson being her mate and him rejecting her. Adam was dumb enough to believe her. We should have seen what happened coming a mile away after her psychotic brother forced his mark on Ashley. The crazy gene runs deep in that family. I'm finding it so hard to get up from this bed and leave my mates yet again. I promise myself this will be the last time we are separated for quite a while. I wasted time at the beginning and I don't intend to waste any more time with them. The good news is by the time our ceremony date comes our new floor will be ready. I can't wait Chris in every room on the floor with my mates. It will nice having a bit more privacy if we so please. We are also having a custom bed built to a slightly larger size. Even though we are on a king-size bed, now it's still a little cramped with all three of us. I lightly kiss Genevieve's neck since she ended up in the middle last night, then lean over carefully and kiss Emma on the forehead before gently climbing out of bed. I go into the bathroom and start a shower. Once under the water, I say a silent prayer to the moon goddess to keep us all safe and bring us back to our families. I'm so thrilled that Emerson and Ashley are going to have a little pup running around in a couple months. I can't wait to find out if it's a boy or a girl. My mind drifts to what the moon goddess told me in my dream. We'll have a litter of pups of our own. I wish I knew when and how exactly all of that will work. I've heard of a few witches being mated to werewolves and their hybrid offspring share both parents' attributes. But how will that work with Genevieve and I? Penny for your thoughts. Her voice says behind me as she steps inside the shower with me wrapping her arms around my stomach and resting her head on my back. I was just thinking. You know you can talk to me. She whispers. I want you to be able to tell us both anything, not just him. I will. I respond, turning around. She keeps her arms wrapped around me, but tilts her head up to look at me. I was just thinking about having pups with you and Emma. I've never heard of a vampire and werewolf having one together, so I just wonder how different he or she will be. I don't want them to be treated differently or feel like the odd one out. 
We will cross that bridge when we get to it. I think as long as we show the same amount of love as any other children we have, that will be all matters. You're right, I say, and lean down to place a gentle kiss on her lips, but one kiss turns into two, three, and our kisses become hungrier, and I'm fighting with every fiber of my being not to take her against the shower wall. We should stop, I whisper, pulling away with great willpower. I want you, Bradley. She whispers against me neck before kissing my mark, and if my cock wasn't hard before it becomes painfully so when her lips meet the place her teeth sunk into my neck. I learned that from Emma. She adds smirking as she pulls back. Goddess, I want you to Genevieve, but I don't want our first time together to be in a shower with my mind everywhere but here. I want to go help Emerson come back, have a ceremony together, and then complete our bond without any distractions or disasters in the way. Besides, the build-up will make it so much better for all of us. You're right, we should wait, but if you don't fuck me right after that ceremony, Bradley, there will be consequences. She says with a playful gleam in her eyes, and I try to imagine what kind of pleasant torture she has in mind. Such a tease. I joke and we both finish showering quickly as the urge to touch each other starts clouding our minds. After getting dressed and having breakfast with both Emma and Genevieve, they walk with me outside for one last goodbye before I shift and start running with Riley to meet Emerson at the Dark Knight's border to bring he and Ashley some justice. I, along with our new Pax Beta Riley, arrive at the border a few minutes after everyone else. Bradley, Roderick, Micah, Cassius, and the twins are all waiting patiently for us when we finally show up. We start discussing now that we see their patrols are lax if we should just try to sneak in and take her or still stick to our original plan and simply request an audience with her. After much consideration and convincing from Roderick, we decide to do it the proper way. We will let him speak for the council and make their pack members aware of her treason and reasoning for taking her away. This way, hopefully, it will save us a fight and their pack members' lives. What is your purpose for being in our territory? The voice of a large man, I would assume this Pax Beta, says loudly after we get a few hundred feet inside their borders. We are here on behalf of the council. Roderick steps forward to speak. A member of your pack kidnapped and mistreated another Pax Alpha and Luna without just cause, and she needs to be brought in for a trial. We do not trust her to turn herself over, so we are here to take ourselves. We do not wish to harm any of your pack members. Just show us where Rachel Archer is and we will be on our way. Why would she take another Pax Alpha and Luna? He asks harshly. Because she is obsessed with me. Emerson cuts in. Wait. He says with a thoughtful look in his eye. I know you. You and your mate killed our Alpha. He growls out and takes a few steps forward. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Micah's voice booms as he and Cassius shift into their lichen form, taking a defensive stance in front of Emerson. What? How? The man stitters, taking a few steps back, clearly frightened by the two large lichens now standing in front of him, and I hear the twins snicker behind us. Like we said, we don't want to cause any harm to your pack, but if we must... Emerson says. We know some people in your pack helped her take us, but we are not even going to try and hold any of you accountable but her. She needs to pay for what she's done. I... I was there. He admits. I was there the night she took you. She said we were getting retribution for Adam by taking the two of you to our cells. She said she alerted the council, and they would decide your fate. They did. They found us both innocent weeks ago. He forcefully marked my mate and then attacked us we had every right to kill him. Emerson said as I feel the anger rolling above him in waves, especially after learning this piece of shit helped take him and Ashley. We didn't know. He says shamefully. We thought we were doing what was right for our pack and getting justice for our lost Alpha. As Emerson said, we are not here to hold anyone responsible, but Rachel now just show us where she is, and we will leave your territory and pack and harmed. As Emerson said, we are not here to hold anyone responsible, but Rachel now just show us where she is, and we will leave your territory and pack and harmed. She's not here. She's not here. He states. Well, where the hell is she? Emerson growls frustrated. No, I mean, we haven't seen her in a few days. And no one has been able to link her. She's disappeared. Ah! Emerson screams before shifting into shadow and taking up into their territory. What is he? The beta asks, turning to chase after him, but Cassius and Micah block him. He doesn't believe you, I say. He won't harm any of your pack members. But she harmed him, and his mate he needs to see with his own eyes she is gone. So who's been in charge since your alpha died? Roderick asks trying to distract him. 
Rachel has sort of been running things, ordering everyone around. Then she start acting rather chaotic and neglecting the pack, so I've been looking after everyone. I figure as beta it's my job when the Alpha family is indisposed to step in and take over. When the council convenes we will discuss the leadership of your pack. Since Adam is dead and Rachel is missing a new Alpha will need to be appointed. After admitting to taking part in the kidnapping PF another packs Alpha and Luna I can't say that you will be a good choice. I understand. He whispers looking down at the ground. She's really not here. Emerson shouts as he stomps back over towards us and I can still sense a mountain of rage consuming him. If she comes back here, can we trust you to let the council know? He asks the beta with a calm but deadly tone. I swear it. Now that I know the truth, I will tell the rest of the pack members what really happened and to keep and die for her. Good. Roderick replies. I will speak to you soon regarding the leadership of you pack. For now continue on as is. Thank you. And I truly am sorry for my part in all of this. He says looking to Emerson as he sincerely apologizes. With that everyone heads home and I am grateful to be returning to my mates so quickly but also disturbed by the fact that Emerson and Ashley Tormentor is somewhere out there free and roaming around without any consequences for what she did. Miss POV. Once Bradley returned home and told us what happened at Rachel's pack. I was shocked. How could she just disappear without a trace? She was basically their leader by default, and she was the only child besides Adam the previous Alpha and Luna had. After Roderick urgently convened the council to discuss a new Alpha and Luna take over and keep the pack together, they all voted and decided Micah and Elizabeth would be a good fit. Since Elizabeth was born to an Alpha and Luna, our parents, and Micah was a strong lichen who's been around for a while, they seemed the best choice. Especially since Emerson and Ashley Pack is the next territory over. It all works out very well. Cassius and the twins decided to come and live with us. He explained that he missed his home. All those years on the run and the twins were so little when they escaped. He wanted them to experience back life where they were meant to, where the lichens originally settled our land. And he liked the fact that our pack would be welcoming to anyone. He felt that he had to keep so much from them in order to keep them safe growing up. And now with the threat of Ares gone, they needed to experience more of life. I called and spoke to Ashley and Emerson about postponing out Alpha and Luna's ceremony with the threat of Rachel still lingering. But they both insisted on sticking to the plan and not letting her interfere with our happiness. She and Emerson talked and they would remain vigilant. But they escaped her and didn't want to let her win by constantly living in fear or her returning when it's quite possible someone already took care of her. And that's why there's no trace of her anywhere. They were excited to join in the celebration of not only all three of us becoming official leaders of the pack, but also the fact that they has a healthy pup to look forward to. Ashley won't stop bugging me about Bradley and I starting a family, but with everything that's been going on lately, we haven't found the time to discuss it. Bradley has been very secretive the past two days, and every time Genevieve and I try to get an idea of what his special plan is for after our ceremony, he manages to hide everything. I never knew he was so good at keeping a secret. He's been so thoughtful bringing us coffee and breakfast in bed before leaving for the day to find us some business to keep the pack running. Emerson and Roderick helped him invest in a nearby club where the owner was ready to retire and looking to sell. Bradley figured it would be best to own a nightclub for the vampires to work in at night to keep their true identities safe and protected. We also made it clear that any member of our pack are no longer to feed on unwilling humans. There are of course those humans who willingly offer themselves to nightwalkers. Tonight is the night before the ceremony, and since this is the closest thing we will all have to a wedding Ashley insisted all three of sleep in separate rooms and try not see each other until the ceremony starts. I don't like the idea of sleeping without my mates, but it is a cute idea. It will a nice surprise seeing each other all dressed up at the same time as everyone else. I went with a white strapless dress with a corset at the top and the bottom is tool stopping mid-thigh. Ashley was going to help me pin my hair up and add paper whites throughout. I wanted my neck to be bare so I could proudly show of both of my marks. I lay in bed restless, and I can't tell if it's because I've become accustomed to sleeping with one or both of my mates the past few weeks, or my excitement about tomorrow keeping me up. It's all becoming so real. All of our friends and family are coming, and other packs will be in attendance to show their support, or just simply see for themselves how different our pack really is. I just hope that after what happened with Thaddeus and his allies, we don't have any more drama or fighting. That visit from the moon goddess startled and scared even Thaddeus. It is rare to go against out goddess, 
because the consequences could be disastrous. I started thinking about the many possibilities for our future as a pack, and mates managing to drift up to sleep amid my thoughts. The next morning, I woke up to a knock on the door and reached over to nudge one of my other mates so they could get it. But when I felt the empty space beside me, I remembered we spent the previous night apart. Groggily, I climbed from the bed and trudged my way over to the door, not too pleased with whoever decided to wake me this early. I opened the door ready to chew somebody out, but no one was there. My anger grew as I looked left to right down the hallway and saw no one. I growled and was about to slam door shut, but my eyes happened to drift down and noticed a tray on the floor. There was a plate with a cover, a cup of coffee and a vase holding several different colored roses. I brought it inside and sat at the small tablet next to the reading chair in the room, then picked up the small card folded on the tray. Good morning, mate. I can't wait to see how breathtakingly beautiful you are later. Enjoy, Jen. I sat down in the chair and enjoyed the crepes and yogurt parfait she made for me. Sitting there sipping me coffee, I think about lucky I am to have her and Bradley in my life. Growing up, I was never as concerned with finding my mate as most other girls in my pack, but then the closer I got to turning 18, the more I wondered who it might be. I didn't want an over-masculine possessive asshole. I wanted someone strong but caring. A mate that would be understanding and accept me as I am not tried to change me. I was always open with my sexuality and the fact that I find both genders attractive. But who know if my mate would be okay with it. That was the funniest part to me about finding Genevieve Bradley didn't give two S A strix A strix D S. Jen was a girl her only cared she was a vampire. I'm so proud of them both for coming so far and getting over their stubbornness and insecurities. I know we can all be supremely happy with each other. We all complement and complete one another in a unique way. I can't wait for tonight when we finally all sleep in our new bed on our new floor. It will be the true beginning of our life together as leaders of a brand new pack. Bradley told us he has a surprise for us after our run with our small pack, which a tradition when a new elf or Luna is appointed. And I'm excited to see what it could be. After breakfast, I run a bath and slip inside after adding some bath salts to help relax and soothe me. As I'm laying in the tub, I think about something nice I could do for my mates. And then I remembered Emerson sending a masseuse to Ashley before their Alpha and Luna ceremony. I grab my phone from the shelf built into the wall surrounding the tub and dial a local shop to see if they can send two people R for a hot stone massage for each of my mates. Then I ordered some champagne and strawberries cliche I know, to be delivered to both of them as well. With each passing minute, my excitement for tonight grows. Several hours later, Ashley and I stand in my room putting the finishing touches on my hair before heading downstairs. I think back to not the long ago when we were in our dorm room getting ready for the Halloween party where she first met Emerson. So much has happened since then, and everything is so different now for both of us. But it is all well now, and both our futures look bright. I notice her standing in front of the mirror flattening her dress over her stomach, and I can see her tiny little baby bump. Who knew Emerson would have a pup before me, but I'm glad they found each other and get to start a family together. She lets go of her dress, and it loosely falls around her midsection. She chose to wear a dress that flows down and out just above her midsection to hide her pregnancy. She said she isn't quite ready for everyone to know yet. I also think she is still a bit weary after everything that happened with Rachel, even though she insists she is fine and doesn't want to talk about it. We both leave the room and start our descent down the stairs, and the sight waiting for me at the bottom stops me mid-step as I grab a hold of Ashley's arm for support. My gorgeous sexy mates are both at the bottom of the stairs, patiently waiting for me. Bradley is dressed in dark gray slacks and a black button-up, simple yet out so sweet. I can't wait to rip every button on the shirt of as I yank it of him later. Genevieve stands there in black dress pants with stilettos, which I couldn't honestly picture her wearing before now, but she is definitely pulling off. And on top, nothing but a gray waistcoat. I think it's adorable they are wearing matching colors. And my white dress balances them both. Once I finally reach the bottom of the stairs, they each pull me into a tight embrace. Bradley, of course, nuzzles my bare neck right where his mark lay. And I'm sure Viper missed me last night as well. I know Grace was being extra whiny last night because she feels like we have spent too much time apart from him already. All three of us make our way into the dining hall and up onto the small platform we had built just for this occasion. We all eat and drink before make our formal ties and vows to our new pack, the thunderous triad. Emerson and Ashley cheer the loudest, of course, as soon as Roderick finishes his part as council approval. We mingle and meet with as many other alphas and lunas as well before going outside to run with our pack members. All three of us strip down to our birthday suits, and I see Bradley hungrily eyeing Genevieve. 
Although she didn't need to strip, she thought it would only be fair, and I think part of her reasoning was to tease our dear mate Bradley. They have yet to mate, and I know it has been driving him wild, waiting for the right moment. She told me about their little moment in the shower a few mornings back. Running together feels unlike anything I've ever felt. Genevieve chases Bradley and I around the forest, basically playing a game of tag with our wolves. After a while, Bradley links us both to follow him. We do, and we started heading in a direction neither of us has ventured to. Since he patrols the territory more often than us, he more familiar with every area belonging to us. I start to see them lights up ahead, and the anticipation builds. We get closer and closer, and when Bradley shifts back, I follow suit, and Genevieve and I both stand in awe as we look ahead of us at the outdoor daybed with a canopy in the middle of several sets of trees. Hanging from the tree branches are small lanterns illuminating the dark forest. He leads the way to a small stream to rinse and clean of after outrun, then we stroll back to the bed hand in hand, and my heart speeds faster at the thought of what comes Bradley's POV. Both of my mates look stunning tonight. When Genevieve came from the kitchen after checking on the food, she looked fabulous. She typically sticks to black and gray, so I wasn't surprised to see those colors on her, but the way her sexy hips looked in those pants had me panting like an actual dog. She chose to wear just a waistcoat on top, and it fit her like a glove. I thought about biting each of those buttons up with my teeth before getting a taste of what's underneath. Then I noticed the crimson red lipstick she was wearing. It was a bold choice, and one I believe she went with the please Emma who always jokes she needs to add a little more color in her life. Plus having the sense of humor she does, I'm sure she chose red lips as a nod to her being a vampire drinking blood. We stood next to each other patiently waiting for Emma, and I thought about grabbing Jen's hand, but I wasn't sure how she would feel about it. I don't know why I always second-guess myself with her. Maybe it's because Emma and I grew up together, and everything just comes naturally between us. With Genevieve, we were sort of thrust into each other's lives, and now after finally accepting one another, I have to learn a whole new person. What her likes and dislikes are, and how to read her nonverbal communication. I imagine this is how mates from different packs feel when they first meet. It's odd meeting your soulmate and knowing nothing about them. I'm thankful Emma and I were familiar with each and had a strong friendship base to build on our actual relationship. I hear footsteps coming from the stairs and look up to see Emma and Ashley finally making their decent. Emma's body is one I am all too familiar with, but even after the years we've known each other and the months we've been together, I get excited each and every time I see her. The dress she chose is adorable and fits her perfectly. The corset on top shows her sexy side while the tool bottom alludes to her more girly side. It's an interesting combination but works well together on her. Her hair is up showing of both her mate's marks proudly and I love that. I see her steps halt for a moment and she grabs Ashley's arm. I can't tell if it's nerves or just the sight of us two together that caused that reaction. We enter the dining hall and start the festivities. I thought these things were boring before attending as Emerson's better few times, but being an alpha now I find it even more tedious. I just want to go for a run with my mates and get some alone time with them away from the pack house. After all our mingling and introductions to several other packs who seemed surprised by my ascent from beta to alpha which I found a little condescending I was finally alone with my mates. Once we had returned to the little cabana I had built in the middle of a secluded area of the woods after cleansing ourselves in a small stream nearby, my nerves set in. I had this sudden anxiety overwhelm me. I had never thought about action being with both of them at the same time. I wondered how on earth I was going to handle two women when Emma had always been a handful herself. Emma and Genevieve must have sensed my nervousness and climbed on the bed together laying down side by side. Emma gives me a small wink before leaning over and kissing Genevieve with a sensual passion that makes me feel a little jealous as it's not often she kissed me that way but I know she is trying to put on a show for me and ease me into everything that is about to happen. As she starts kissing down her neck, chest, and stomach before settling between her thighs my dick springs into action begging to be touched. I watch Emma's as wiggle in the air as her tongue dives between Genevieve's slick folds. Her head goes back and loud moans emanate from her beautiful mouth. At this point I've had enough of standing on the sidelines and make my over to the bed and stand at the edge. Bending slightly I lick Emma from top to bottom before stick my tongue deep inside her dripping hole. Her moans reverberating against Jen's clit as she sucks hard on it while her fingers work in and out of her wet pussy. Emma moves up more still pumping her fingers in and out of Jen as they once again find one another. My hard cock is painfully aching now and I take this opportunity to climb on the bed behind Emma and thrust inside her quickly taking her slightly by surprise. 
I know I won't last long with the two of them underneath me and all the build-up of this moment, but we have all night long for this. Both of their egging me on as I pick up the pace slamming into Emma fast and hard. I feel her begin to tighten around me and notice Genevieve's hand slip between us. Emma's breathing intensifies and I'm sure Jen is rubbing her clit furiously to push her over the edge with me, which it does a few moments later as she condoms around me and I empty myself deep inside her. I pull out of Emma and lay back down next to Genevieve coming down from the high of the first time with both of my mates at once. I'm extremely happy and satisfied with how we work together and seem to naturally fit together without any awkwardness. I close my eyes for just a moment trying to calm my racing heart when I feel a shift next to me and open my eyes to find Genevieve straddling me with a mischievous smirk. She leans down gently kissing my lips nipping at my bottom lip seeking entrance which I happily grant letting her tongue slip inside with mine. Her kiss become more urgent as she grinds on top of me and I can feel my cock start to come alive again beneath her. I feel her smile against my lips as her hand goes between us and she lifts herself slightly grabbing a hold of me stroking me up and down. My rock hard cock is ready and waiting eagerly for her to sink down on top of me which she eagerly does after a minute. As soon as my dick is inside her I feel the bond we share completely snap in place and I feel a fullness in my heart that's overwhelming. As she begins bounce up and down on top of me I reach over and grab Emma pulling her into me kissing her deeply as the need to be connected both of my mates at once stakes over. She stops kissing me and pulls back and I look at her confused until she sit up on her knees and moves position herself over my head so I can taste her sweet pussy while Genevieve rides me like a roller coaster. I hear them kisses above me which only fuels my tongue's assault on Emma. Genevieve's pace has quickened and I know she's close. My balls tighten and I release my load inside Genevieve. Emma comes undone over my mouth to which I lap all her juices up happily. And Genevieve shudders on top of me reaching her climax at the same time. They each dismount and fall to either side of me. Each one places a head on my shoulder and arm across my stomach, crossing their arms together as I feel their legs entangle with mine. We cuddle close, the bundle of arms and legs together as one, and soon our bodies and minds shut down for a small bit of rest before spending the rest of our night trying new things together. Two weeks later I am sitting in my office going over the first few weeks financials for the club we opened the same weekend as our ceremony. Riley took charge of everything for now until we get our new pack's financials under control and everyone adjusted to their new roles in our pack. It's been hectic since our ceremony getting everyone situated in their new homes, and we even had several wolves come from packs across the country to join ours. Most felt inappreciated in their own packs or like an outcast and needed a change of scenery. The three of us are usually so bust throughout the day as soon as we find our way back to our floor, we eat dinner together and fall asleep quickly. We still find small time here and there to be intimate but nothing like the night of our ceremony. I bent Emma over my desk just two days ago and had my way with her after feeling frustrated at how little time we had to spare for each other. I caught finishing each other of in the shower the other morning, but I was rushing to a conference call with some other alphas about a road problem in the south. Genevieve surprised me in the car by sucking me up on the drive to another pack to discus an alliance last week. It's been strenuous, but we are trying, and once things settle down and become more routine we will be able to spend much more time together. Hello, handsome. Emma is entering the office with Genevieve right behind her. What an awesome surprise. I say closing my laptop and pushing it to the side of the desk. We have a surprise for you. Genevieve says as they both stop and stand right in front of the desk and Genevieve brings a container from behind her back. What is? I ask as Emma brings out a cupcake and sets it to the left of my desk and I notice it has a D on top. Genevieve places a cupcake a little farther down on the right side of the desk with the letter Y, and I see now they are spelling something. Emma proceeds to put another cupcake down to the right of her first one with the letter A, and Genevieve adds another with the letter D to the left of hers. There is one letter left, and as I look down it clicks, and I look up at them in shock as they place the last cupcake in the middle together, and I see the word Daddy whole, my heart soars with excitement and love. Which one? Both of us are. Emma beams cutting me of with such a thrill behind her words. Really? I gasp, jumping from my seat and making my way between them. You're, I say turn towards Emma touching her stomach. And you? I continue turning towards Genevieve touching hers as well. This is so amazing. I exclaim dropping to my knees between them and pulling them both closely, one tummy next to each ear as I listen intently to hear two tiny beating hearts. Four years later. Emma's POV.
I'm sitting on a bench with Genevieve on my lap and Bradley next to me holding our baby girl, who's just one year old Alyssa. I gently rub Genevieve, growing bump, where our third son, Griffin, is thriving at the moment. Patrick and Vincent are chasing Ashley and Emerson's daughter, Kennedy, around the small park Micah had built when he found out Alyssa Buff was pregnant with their first pup, Harvey. And now we are all waiting for our time to visit the twins they just welcomed into the world an hour ago. We wanted to give them time, just them and the their little ones, before we bombard them with family. So we have an announcement. Ashley speaks up from the bench beside us. We officially have our own little prince on the way. Beams with pride, clearly happy to finally have a little boy. Not that Emerson was upset at all when they found of their first pup was a girl, but I think it's every dad's dream to have a little version of himself. All I know is if he is anything like Emerson growing up, Ashley is going to have her hands full with the three of them. But she looks genuinely pleased with her life. And I'm glad to see my best friend and brother getting their happy ever after. For a while we were worried Rachel may come back into their lives. And I think that's part of the reason they waited for long for another pup. But after four years with no sighting or word from her we all assume she is dead. Okay guys. Micah shouts from outside the pack house. I think it's safe to come in now. We all enter making our way up to the alpha floor and trickle into their bedroom where Elizabeth lay on the bed with a baby in each arm. She was glowing even after birth and the joy of giving birthday to two healthy baby was evident all over her face. I walked over and sat on the bed beside my beautiful sister, looking down at the gorgeous baby girl in her right arm as Emerson took a seat on the opposite side to look at her dashing son. I was so elated to watch our families grow and proud of not only my baby sister, but my big brother as well. I still find it astonishing that we all grew up in our own little world together, and through time and circumstances, have managed to venture out and each have our own packs to lead. End of part Two, part three will be the final one and follow the lives of Ashley slash Emerson's children Kennedy and Trevor, Bradley slash Emma slash Genevieve's kids Vincent, Patrick, Alyssa and Griffin, and Elizabeth slash Micah's children Harvey, Lewis and Laura. Small preview. Bradley's POV. Bradley's POV. I'm sitting in my office when a knock breaks my concentration on the contracts for our newest restaurant we are building a few towns over. And walks my son Patrick, and he looks a little nervous, which puts me on edge feeling that something is of or wrong with him. He just turned 13, and according to a few witches we've spoken to over the years, and a couple of mates who were also a werewolf and vampire paired by the goddess and had hybrid children, his vampiric senses should be kicking in soon. Hopefully there wasn't anything serious going on with my boy. Dad, can I talk to you about something? He asked, taking a seat in one of the chairs in front of my desk. Of course, son. I'm always here for whatever you need. I found my mate. Or beloved I guess since my vampire side is the one that claimed her so soon. Do I telephone her dad? I mean she's just a few months older than I am. What if she doesn't want me as a mate? Is it fair to telephone her now or should I wait until she turns 18 and figures it out herself? Honestly son I can't tell you what to do in this situation. Mom and I grew up together and neither one of us knew we were mates until I turned 18 and I told her right away. I couldn't wait until she was 18 to be with her, my wolf wouldn't let me. This is a little different though you guys are so young still, and if you tell her no she may feel forced to accept a bond she's not even sure about yet. In this case it may be best to wait at least until she's older. I already done like being away from her. He mumbles. I'm sorry son. Maybe talk to mom and see what she thinks would be best. Get a different point of view from the opposite gender and someone more familiar with the pole of a vampire. I assure you thought our goddess always has a plan, sometimes you just have to trust in her. I'll try. He replies after sitting for a minute thinking. I love you Patrick, and I can wait to meet your wonderful mate someday. Kennedy's POV. Tonight is my 15th birthday. Tonight is my 15th birthday. My lichen awakens tonight, and I'll shift for the first time. Gran also told me that unlike werewolves I'll be able to sense my mate if he or she is near. I'm so excited to shift for the first time. My mom assures me both her and dad will be there the entire time to encourage and help me because it can be kind of scary and painful. They were throwing a party for me and our whole family was coming to celebrate. I was excited to see my cousins. We were also close growing up because of how close most of us were in age and our parents always instilled in us the importance of a close family. My dad and both my aunts were very close growing up, 
My Aunt Emma actually ended up being made into my dad's best friend Bradley, which would probably anger a normal alpha male wolf or brother. The thought of his little sister with his best friend, but not my dad. He was thrilled. Plus they grew up together and knew each other beyond the mate bond. My aunt always goes on and on about how lucky she was that her first mate ended up being one of her best friends. My mom and dad actually met through Aunt Emma which is the sweetest. I love hearing my mom and dad's story, although I know they tend to leave certain things out. There are rumors though that a crazy she-wolf kidnapped mom and dad when she was pregnant with me. They got away but when they went back she was gone. It's been 15 years and no one has seen or heard from her. I can't believe someone was that obsessed with my dad to kidnap him. I just hope Patrick is back to acting normal this visit. Around a year ago he began being weird around me and seemingly avoiding being around or alone with me. We were the closest as children growing up. Although he isn't technically a blood relative, we grew up a cousins. His mother Genevieve and dad's best friend Bradley are both mated to Aunt Emma, and they had two hybrid children Patrick and Griffin. Again, they aren't technically blood related to the rest of us cousins, but it didn't matter growing up, we all were treated the same and still are. I think it's awesome having hybrid cousins. As I was saying Patrick and I were the closest of any of the cousins, and I always thought it was just because of our close age, but the older I got the deeper our connection felt. He was the one I spent the most time with, and I felt as though he was my best friend, but then sometime after our 13th birthdays he started pulling away from me. He would find excuses to stay home and skip large visits with our family. Holidays he seemed to hide from me or distract himself with my brother and his doing dumb boy stuff. Every time I would get close he'd disappear into thin air. I knew his vampire side kicked in at, so he would now be faster, stronger, and his vision at night would be heightened. I just assumed he would never use his new speed to quite literally run away from me. I tried to figure out what I did wrong or if something I ever said could have upset him, but I haven't been able to come up with anything. Hey birthday girl. Oliver, a newer pack member, says breaking me from my thoughts as he takes a seat on the outdoor swing set up near the back of the pack house. What are you doing out here with a party specifically for you going on inside? I just needed some fresh air. I reply meekly. Oliver came to our pack as a rogue on the run. He explained to my dad that his mother and father were killed a few years ago, and he managed to escape the attack and harm thanks to them hiding him, but he was scared to go back to his pack in case they were targeting his family specifically it's the first place they would look. My father was unsure about taking a rogue that could be a risk to our pack, but my mother convinced him to take the him in since he was young and all alone. He's been nothing but sweet to everyone here since he arrived a few months ago. Something about him makes me nervous though, and I don't know if it's because he was a rogue for a while, or there's the small chance he's my mate. Anything you need to talk about? Just nervous about shifting tonight I suppose. I partially lie because I am, but that not the only reason I needed to be outside for a while. Your parents will be with you though right? Of course, but it's still going to hurt. I say with a little laugh at the end to try and lighten the dark mood around me. Well I can't wait to see your leakin on the training grounds tomorrow. I bet you'll be even more badass than you already are. He jokes back nudging me slightly with his arm. So listen. I was wondering. He pauses, and I can tell he's nervous, and I find it awfully cute. Could I take you out to the movies next weekend? Um. I didn't know what to say, and all of the sudden Patrick slips into my mind again. Can I think about it? Yeah, sure. He replies, and I can hear the disappointment in his voice. I'm going to go back inside. Happy birthday, Kennedy. Good luck with your first shift. He continues standing from the swing, but before he leaves he leans down and places a gentle kiss on my cheek. As he walks away I think about that small gesture. It was so sweet, but if I'm being honest with myself, it wasn't him I wanted to kiss me. As soon as he asked me out and I thought of Patrick, I realized what my real issue was. 
he pulled away from me, and I missed him like crazy, but it wasn't because he was my cousin or felt like a best friend. It was because I want Patrick in a way I shouldn't want him. I want to kiss Pat Rick and go to the movies with him. I know we aren't technically related, and it doesn't feel like it would be wrong to me, but I don't know if my family would see it that way. We were raised as family, and he is like forbidden fruit. It doesn't matter anyways because clearly he has no interest in me since he can't stand to be alone with me anymore. Going out with Oliver could be a good thing. It would help me get over this silly crush I have over someone that will never be mine. My chest tightens slightly as I think about forgetting about Pat Rick and moving on. It's for the best even if for some odd reason he secretly did have an interest in me our family wouldn't allow it. And the last thing I want is for my parents to be ashamed of me. I would choose Oliver for now. And who knows maybe he is my mate. I promised myself long ago, like my father and aunts did, to wait for my mate. But that didn't mean I couldn't have some innocent fun with someone new until then. Besides who knew how long it could take to find my mate. It took my Uncle Mike over years to find my Aunt Elizabeth. Did I really want to be alone for that long? I will accept the invitation from Oliver, but make sure he understands that no matter what I will be saving my most intimate moments for my mate. And only my mate. There's my beautiful princess. My dad says from behind me. Are you ready for your first shift? As ready as I'll ever be, Dad. I reply standing up, and he quickly pulls me into a hug and kisses my head, something he always does when he senses I'm sad or worried. Your mom and I will be with you the whole time, and then we'll go for a run together. He says pulling away, and grabs my hand. We start walking into the woods to give me some privacy for my first shift, and my mother is patiently waiting. She gives me a huge hug and a few words of encouragement before I go behind some large bushes to strip and shift. Getting naked in front of the rest of the pack would take some getting used to. It is normal amongst our kind, and after a while I know I won't be as shy or awkward about shifting in front of other, but since this is my first time I'd rather be a little hidden. The moon is high and bright my body starts to feel strange. A pain radiates through my whole body in waves, and I cry out as I try to focus on my parents' voices assuring me I will survive, and to trust my lichen, and not fight her. I breathe in and out, focusing on each small bit of air I inhale and exhale. Soon I'm standing tall at, and I look down to see light brown fur covering my arms and almost all of my body. Hi gorgeous! The voice of my lichen rings through my head. You did so well. Are you? Your lichen. Yes. Venus, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. You too. I exclaim. Why aren't we as big as mom? She's huge. You're still growing, Kennedy. As you grow, so do I. Oh. Can we go for a run with mom and dad now? I ask. I ask. Yes. Wait. She says and turns to look behind us. Mate. She whispers. What? Our maid is here, I ask excitedly. I'm not sure. I caught a small whiff of him but then it disappeared so quickly. She answers us. Maybe he doesn't want us. I hope that's not the case Kennedy but even if it is then clearly we shouldn't want him either. Don't worry about him right now let's go for our first run together. She says, taking complete control of my body and stepping out towards my parents. Beautiful. They both link at the same time. Ready. Venus asks excited to run with her parents as much as I am. Yes, we have been looking forward to this day since you were born. My dad responds before they both shift and we take of running. Patrick's POV. I couldn't stay away, not tonight. I couldn't stay away, not tonight. I've tried my hardest to keep my distance. I don't want to accidentally spill the beans that we are mates and force her into something she probably isn't even ready for. First things first we're both are still so young and to take on the maid at this age who knows she may end up resenting me later on that as if she were even to want me that way. We've always been close but we were raised together as family which makes this even more messed up. Yes technically we aren't blood related but would that make it any less awkward and how would our family truly feel about the two of us together? I don't want to disappoint them even though I kind of already breached the subject with my dad I didn't telephone him who it was. 
flashback to a few months ago. Dad can I talk to you about something? I asked after entering his office and taking a seat in one of the chairs in front of his desk. Of course, son. I'm always here for whatever you need. I found my mate. Or beloved I guess since my vampire side is the one that claimed her so soon. Do I telephone her dad? I mean she's just a few months older than I am. What if she doesn't want me as a mate? Is it fair to telephone her now or should I wait until she turns 18 and figures it out herself? Honestly son I can't tell you what to do in this situation. Mom and I grew up together and neither one of us knew we were mates until I turned 18 and I told her right away. I couldn't wait until she was 18 to be with her, my wolf wouldn't let me. This is a little different though you guys are so young still, and if you tell her no she may feel forced to accept a bond she's not even sure about yet. In this case it may be best to wait at least until she's older. I already don't like being away from her. I say lowly even though I know he can hear me. Maybe talk to mom and see what she thinks would be best. Get a different point of view from the opposite gender and someone more familiar with the pull of a bond with a vampire. I assure you though our goddess always has a plan, sometimes you just have to trust in her. I'm sorry son. Maybe talk to mom and see what she thinks would be best. Get a different point of view from the opposite gender and someone more familiar with the pull of a bond with a vampire. I assure you though our goddess always has a plan, sometimes you just have to trust in her. I'll try. I reply after sitting for a minute thinking. I love you Patrick and I can wait to meet your wonderful mate someday. I thought about it for several weeks and tried to act normal around her but it was so difficult for me to not just grab her and kiss her. She's so beautiful, strong, and kind. If I didn't already love her as family I would be head over heels in love with her. She is so perfect and I would love nothing more than to claim her as my mate right this instance but I decided a while ago to wait and let her decide on her 18th birthday. I spoke to my father about leaving early for alpha training so that I can be back in time for her birthday. I want to be there for when she turns. I plan on leaving for training in a few months and I'm going to stay away because I know saying goodbye to her will be unbelievably hard. I'm going to write and text her as much as I can while away so she doesn't forget about me but I think the space will do us good. We can both grow up more and then when we come back together we will both be ready for exploring the possibility of us truly being mates. I have to stay for her first shift then I'm going straight home. I just need to see her lichen once before I leave. I hide behind a tree a ways away so hopefully she won't be able to sense me. I notice her mom enter the woods and then she and her dad come in not too long after. As she starts to take of her clothes I turn around, she may be my mate, but we haven't talked about it yet and until she willing accepts me I don't want to creep on her. I hear her cry out and turn around worried. I see her hunched over on the ground and fur starts to sprout from her back and limbs. Her arms and legs extend as well as he torso and soon she stand in all her tall magnificent glory. She is beyond unbelievable and I'm so proud of her for making it through her first shift so quickly and without too much of a fuss. Suddenly she turned towards the direction I was hiding and I freaked and ran the opposite direction as fast as possible. I hate that I felt the need to hide from her but it was what I think is best for the both of us. Accepting a bond so young could end disastrous. We are still discovering ourselves. Neither of us are done growing up. Sure at the age of 18 we may not be completely ready either but we can at least have a better discussion about it when we are both a little older. I need to focus on my training so I can be the best alpha possible whether it be leading with Kennedy at her pack or bringing her home to my pack. I plan to work hard on myself so that when I return I'm the kind of man and mate she will proud to call her own. Kennedy's POV After returning from our run I go to my room and shower. As I stand in the shower I can't help but think about Venus saying she smelled out mate for a moment. I feel my heart ache because whoever it was left, were they disappointed I'm a lichen and not a regular werewolf or do they know me personally? It would hurt worse if the person knew me and clearly I'm not good enough for them. I sink to the floor as my insecurities start to bubble over. Perhaps they were intimidated because not only am I a lichen but an alpha female like my mother. Being the firstborn it is my birthright to take over and lead the pack. But I couldn't deny that for my mate I would give it all up. My younger brother could take over as alpha with ease. My mate is supposed to be my other half and love me no matter what. But instead they ran for the hills. The least they could have done was shown themselves and reject me properly. It would have hurt, but I could have gotten closure. 
Now I will have the thought of my mate out there somewhere not wanting me in the back of my mind for who knows how long. Once I get older I can always take a chosen mate. I'd much rather prefer my goddess-given mate. But after being left along in the middle of the woods, maybe it's for the best I pick someone who wants me for me, not because of a bond. I finish my shower and shake of all the different feelings overwhelming my body. I take a seat on my bed and pull out my phone. I scroll and my finger hovers over Patrick's name. He's the one person I want to talk to right now. I want to tell him about my first shift and smelling my mate even if it was just for a moment. But with the way he's been acting, I don't know if he would even answer. I have to at least try, so I push the cal button, and after a few rings I get sent to his voicemail, which hurts. I feel rejected not once but twice tonight. Oliver, I send a personal mind link hoping he's still awake. Kennedy. He questions, yes it's me. How was your first shift? It was great. My lichen smelled our mate. But whoever it was left faster than we could respond. Oh. I'm sorry Kennedy, maybe they were just nervous. Maybe, I say hoping ever so slightly he could be right. If not they don't deserve you Kennedy. Don't let a jerk who ran away from their mate ruin your night. You met your leakin tonight and got to go for a run with your family. That's what's important. Thank you Oliver. I really appreciate that. Anytime Kennedy. Get some sleep and we can. I want to go to the movies with you. I cut him up before I chickened out. Really? He's sounding surprised. Yes, this weekend. I'll let you pick the movie. I can't wait. Sweet dreams, Kennedy. Within a few minutes of ending our conversation via mind link, I managed to drift up to sleep only to be thrust in the nightmare of chasing my mate endlessly, calling out to him over and over again, but never catching up. I wonder will that be my reality? Vincent's POV. Patrick returns today, and I must say I have missed my brother. Patrick returns today, and I must say I have missed my brother. Our moms got pregnant around the same time, and we actually share the same birth dear by some miracle. He went to alpha training early but wouldn't tell me why. I was shocked because I assumed we would be going together. We always did everything together growing up. But something changed when we turned. He withdrew from the family and seemed to hide out anywhere but home. Our territory grew three times the size since my parents were blessed by the moon goddess as Alpha and Lunas. My parents like to refer to our pack as a merry band of misfits. Our pack started with a group of vampires who chose to surrender after their master was killed. They trusted and fought for our parents to stay on the land and form their own pack. Mom always tells the story of the day the goddess spoke on behalf of them, and gave them the authority to run the pack as any other born Alpha and Luna would. Our dad started out as a beta, and the goddess didn't want him to ever feel inferior to other Alphas, so she bestowed the same amount of power within him. Not that he needed it. All of my parents had become well respected among the whole supernatural community. Not only did we have several werewolf slash vampires mates come out of hiding and join our pack after hearing about the pack with two werewolves and a vampire leading it. For the first time they felt they had a safe haven where they wouldn't be judged for their bond. Our moms and dad proved that the different species mating could lead to great things. Our pack not only initiated witches and warlocks, but a few fairies even sought asylum from their realm where they felt unsafe. I had taken her a liking to a fairy named Reed. We started spending time together shortly after he joined the pack. I hope the closer it gets to my birthday that he is my mate, but from the way my uncle Emerson described the feelings he had when he first met my aunt Ashley, I have a bad feeling he is not. We both are on the same page though. We hang out and have sleepovers, totally PG. But if he is not my mate, we decided we'll stay friends. We were watching a movie in my room when mom knocked on the door and came in with some snacks. Both my moms really loved and adored Reed. Hey you two thought you might be hungry. She says placing the tray on the small table next to my bed. Also I heard from your brother he just got back, but he said he needs to go take care of something at Aunt Ashley and Uncle Emerson's pack before coming home. Did he say what? I ask concerned wondering why he wouldn't come home first. 
what could be so important? He didn't. She replies with a hint of sadness in her voice. Our moms treat us the same growing up. It didn't matter which one wasn't biologically ours. It wasn't like they could hide whose was whose, since Patrick was half vampire, but we didn't care. My mom took it kind of personally when he started shutting down and pulling away from the family. He used to talk to them openly about anything but started feeling like maybe since he wasn't biologically hers, he was shutting her out personally. My dad reassures all the time, that is not the reason, in a very vague way. We both know he knows something we don't, but obviously he doesn't want to break the trust Patrick had in sharing something personal with them. I just hope he comes home and is back to the same Patrick we all know and love. Patrick's POV I just got back from Alpha training on a remote island built specifically for the training of all future Alphas, Betas, and Gammas. The higher your rank the longer you have to stay. It is training developed and put on place by the Werewolf Council to ensure all future leadership had a strong base to start with. They don't want anyone thrust into a position of power without any real experience or idea of how to properly run a pack. That could lead to the downfall of packs, which it is their duty to the werewolf community to watch and keep packs in line. They never stepped in unless absolutely necessary due to pack members being in danger or not properly cared for. I know I should probably go home to see my parents and siblings first but I've been away from my mate long enough. She turns 18 at midnight and I plan on being there as soon as the clock strikes 12 and hope she claims me as her mate. We talked while I was away not nearly as much as we used to but I was happy we were at least keeping in touch. I missed her even though it was my choice to keep my distance until we were older it still hurt being away from her. I can't even lie and say there weren't a few nights I was away I cried myself to sleep overwhelmed but how much I want and need my mate. I second guessed my decision not to telephone her a lot but I stuck to my guns. Now here I am in the small town a few miles from my aunt and uncle's pack buying flowers and a small cake for us to celebrate tonight. I also have a gift bag I filled with love notes I wrote over the past three years. I want her to know that I was always thinking about her and hope after me explaining everything she understands why I did what I did. I let my uncle Emerson know I am going to surprise Kennedy at midnight so patrol knows I'm coming and I don't scare anyone sneaking into the pack house that late at night. And I make my way up the stairs towards her bedroom and can't help pacing up and down the hallway for another two minutes as an uneasy nervousness takes over. I move right in front of her door. In my left hand I have the gift bag and small cake box and in my left a dozen roses. I try to figure out how to knock on the door but a second after the clock strikes 12 the door flies open. Mate is the one and only word that comes out of her sweet mouth. It's the one word I've waited what feels like ages to hear. Her mouth drops open in surprise and I'm not sure if it's the fact that I'm back or that I'm her mate, perhaps both. Then I see a sense of confusion and apprehension. Finally her face scrunches and I notice the small scowl on her face before she abruptly slams the door shut in my face. I stand there in shock unsure what just happened or what to do next. I can't figure out why she is so angry I was her mate. I can understand if she is a little disappointed but her anger confuses me. Again I start pacing outside her door trying to figure out what my next move should be. I think about knocking again but then again maybe I could give her some time to cool down and get over the initial shock of me being her mate. Then again if she is angry or disappointed perhaps I should just let her reject me now. Just as I make the decision to try to talk to her again and turn around to knock the door opens yet again as if she can read my mind. I just want to know why. She asks stepping outside and closes the door behind her. Why what? I ask a little confused. Why did you leave me? I sensed you the night of my first shift, Pat Rick. You were there. You wouldn't have been there hiding unless you already knew we were mates. So why did you leave? She asks then looks to the floor and I can telephone she's nervous to hear my answer. Wait you could sense I was your mate, but you weren't. It's different for Lycans, Pat Rick. That doesn't answer my question. I, I didn't know if you, if we, babe. A male voice says from the door that opens behind her. Are you ready to, oh hey. He continues but stops when he notices me. Who the fuck are you? I growl unable to contain my anger towards the guy in my mate's bedroom calling her babe. Whoa. Kennedy says putting her hand up on my chest to stop me from advancing on him which I honestly hadn't even realized I had begun to do. Oliver please go back inside. I'll be in in a minute. She says turning to face him, he nods and goes back inside shutting the door again. You have no right. She starts. 
I'm your mate I have every right. I cut her of. No Patrick you don't. I sensed my mate three years ago and then they left. I had no idea who it was all I know is that I felt like something was wrong with me or whoever it was obviously didn't want me since they never came back. I was sad for a really long time and that guy in there, Oliver, was there for me when I needed someone. So no Patrick you have no right because you weren't there. Are you going to reject me? I whisper looking down at the floor myself as the anger in her voice startles and scares me. To be honest I promised myself if my coward mate ever showed their face again I would reject them because I was so hurt that night but now that I know it's you I don't know what to do Pat. I love Oliver. She explains and I can't help but growl when she says she loves him. Patrick I secretly wished you were my mate once up a time but I'm not the same girl I was back then. You leaving me alone that night changed me. I'm not sure I can accept you as a mate after all that time. Kennedy, I pled. Just let me explain everything and Here, I say handing her the gift bag. Look just open and read what's inside it will help you understand. Don't give up on us yet. I made a mistake and I'm sorry. Please Kennedy. We both need sleep Pat. Tonight is my birthday party and I want to have fun and celebrate. Tomorrow we can talk. I'm not promising you anything. Patrick, Oliver and I have been together for a year and a half now, and I told him if my mate didn't show up by the time I turned 18 I would take him as my chosen mate. It was three years. You left me alone for three years. She said and I could see the gleam of a few tears lingering in the corners of her eyes. I'm sorry Kennedy. I wish I could take it back now. I want to change how I. Good night Patrick. I hope you come later, but I really need to go to sleep. She says cutting me of clearly done with this conversation for the night. I watch her turn and go back into her bedroom. I want to storm in there and rip Oliver's heart out but she would never forgive me for that. As they say I made my bed and now I have to lie in it. I just hope if I give her a little space she'll let me explain myself and we can talk it out. We're mates, bound by the goddess, and I just hope that means something to Kennedy. I go to one of the guest rooms on a lower floor and collapse on top of the bed. I toss and turn thinking about my mate until darkness consumes me. Kennedy's POV Patrick is my mate. He is actually my goddess-given mate. I was laying in bed watching a movie with Oliver when the smell of pumpkins and daisies, two of my favorite things, came wafting my way from under the door. I knew immediately what that smell meant. My mate was back and right outside my door. I was excited for a moment before I remember he left me the night of my first shift. Thankfully Oliver climbs out of bed and goes into the bathroom then so I have a few minutes to deal with my mate's situation. I told myself I would reject whoever it was if they ever returned for just up and leaving me alone for three years. But then I open the door and Patrick is on the other side. I am surprised it is him standing there. Last time I knew he was still at Alpha training. The shock that he is actually my mate catches me of guard. Once upon a time I hoped we somehow ended up as mates, but now that it was reality I didn't know what to think or do. This was Patrick, my cousin, who I grew up with. I know we aren't blood related, but it is still crazy that we are fated mates. Then I go back to remembering how he must have known this whole time that we were mates. That's why he was there that night when I shifted for the first time. I feel a rage building inside me thinking about him knowing for three years and not telling me, also running away with that information. I try to get an answer out of him, but we are interrupted by Oliver. At first I want to snap on Oliver because Patrick and I were in the middle of something, but then Pat growls at him. My anger quickly shifts to Patrick. How dare he ask about Oliver when he is the one who disappeared. I understand he is my mate, but he shouldn't have just left. Even if he didn't want me to be his mate, he should have told me not leave me in limbo for three years. I honestly went through such a hard time after my first shift doubting my self-worth. I couldn't understand why my mate wouldn't want me. I am alpha female lichen, a rarity in and of itself, but also I like to think I'm kind, smart, and strong. I just could not wrap my head around why my mate would leave. Oliver was the one who pulled me out of my self-pity and doubtful phase. 
He was such a good friend, and slowly things developed into more than friendship. He was a good person, caring, gentle yet strong, protective, and so many other good qualities anyone would want in a mate. He was the one who suggested choosing him as a mate. I never really thought about it, but he explained it would help with the dull pain I felt in my heart without my mate. I wondered why he didn't want to wait for his mate, but he said I was the best mate anyone could hope for, and he wanted me to be happy. He wanted to be the one to bring me joy and fulfill my needs. This is my Patrick though. This changes everything. I can't just reject him, not without at least hearing him out, but not right now. I am tired, and emotions are high already. If we hash it out now, it won't end well. I know he won't just leave, so I chose to exit the situation and go back into my room. I close the door and look up to find Oliver sitting on the edge of the bed. He's your mate, isn't he? He simply asks. Yes. I answer honestly, not really sure what else to say. Why didn't you reject him like you said you would? He asks eerily calm. Oliver, I say, taking a seat next to him, and grab his hand. I didn't know who it was, but now, things are different. I've known Patrick all my life, and it's so complicated, but I have to at least hear him out, and then... So you might accept him. He asks as I trail of unsure of what else to say. I honestly don't know what to do right now, Oliver. I love you and cherish every moment we've spent together, but this is my mate, chosen for me by the goddess. I need a few days. Please don't be mad at me. I don't want to lie to you. I just want a few days. I never expected it to be him. Kennedy. He says turning towards me and cupping my face with his free hand. I love you too and because of that I am going to give you the time you need but just remember who was with you when your so-called mate abandoned you. Sometimes fate isn't right and you need to choose your own path. I'll go and give you some space. He continues, then leans forward and gives me a soft kiss on the lips. Oliver leaves the room and I collapse back on the bed. My mind is going in all different directions unable to properly process what just happened. I can't deny that a part of me wants to go find Patrick except him, mate with him, and mark him as mine more than anything, but the fact that he basically ran away after finding out I was his mate makes me want to keep my distance. Maybe Oliver is right, and fate isn't always what is right. I could make my own choice and choose a new path, my own mate, a man who has been there for me and shown me how much he loves me every day. I have to leave for my own alpha training in a few months. Maybe giving Patrick a taste of his own medicine would give me a sense of justice. I can't do that to him though, just leaving him hanging on by a thread. I will take a few days and make a decision. My main focus right now is to enjoy my birthday party later and spend time with my family and friends. Oliver's POV So her mate finally decided to show his despicable face after three years. Everything was going to plan. We are in love and I had convinced her to take me as her chosen mate. Now with this setback I'm not really sure where I stand. I need Kennedy to choose me. She will pick me, I will make sure of it. I'm in too deep now to lose. Small hiccup, her mate showed up. I text don't worry there's always plan B. M responds I delete our text thread as I walk into my bedroom on the lower floor of the pack house. I plug in my phone and climb into bed. I've been sleeping next to Kennedy the past couple months, nightly, and now I'm laying here hoping she actually chooses me. I want her. I need her. She is mine no matter what. I will try to go all out tonight and make her feel special remind her how perfect for her I am. I say softly and leave before any more words can be spoke. Patrick's POV I was trying to give her some space and time to think things through. I knew if I stayed and kept pushing it could make her reject me right away and I couldn't let that happen. I went to a guest room and tried to sleep unsuccessfully of course. I understand why she is upset and hurt. If I had known that lichens can sense their mates earlier than werewolves I would have stayed but I didn't want to scare her away. Fifteen is such a young age to accept a mate and be stuck with them. We both would have been able to go away to alpha training together which would have been wonderful. I messed up and now I was paying for it.
I was a coward before but I wouldn't be any longer. I wanted Kennedy no matter what our family or anyone else thinks. She came down for breakfast looking delicious in a light pink sundress. She got stuck sitting between myself and Oliver. When he got up and pulled out her chair I was upset he was quicker than me as I was just about to do the same thing. Maybe it was for the best. Our family might find it a little of my pulling out her chair and she made a point that until we figured out what we were doing our family should be kept in the dark. When he grabbed her hand I wanted to growl and snatch it away but kept myself in check. Then I got quite the idea. I turned to talk to my brother about how things have been going at our pack since I was gone and while doing so discreetly move my hand under the table to find her knee next to mine. She didn't give anything away but I knew she felt the tiny sparks of our bond as my hand roamed up her thigh. She tried to close her legs to me but with a tight squeeze of her thighs I made my way up to my final destination, her sweet pussy. She was so wet for me and I wished we were alone so I could hear the sexy moans I knew she was holding back. I went slow and steady to torture her, then I felt her hand on top of mine, and expected her to pull my hand away but she did the exact opposite. She used her own hand to work mine in and out of her faster. She was guiding and using me to get what she needed. It was so thrilling feeling her cum on my fingers and the urge to bend her over the dining room table and slam into her was becoming overwhelming. I needed to get out of here and go find some release somewhere. She excused herself from the table in such a rush I had to stay seated trying to adjust my hardcock and give it a little relief. I wait a few minutes to excuse myself so I don't raise too much suspicion. Oliver goes after her when she leaves and after finally exiting the dining hall I see him coming back so clearly he hasn't found her. On my way to the stairs Kennedy suddenly appears, grabs my hand, and pulls me into her mother's office. Being alone and in such close proximity is torture. Again I want to claim and take her right here against the door but refrained. I can't help teasing her. Then she stops me and when she says those words. Well you didn't have an issue with it the past three years. It hurt like hell but she was right. I let her leave and enjoy her shopping trip with the girls. All the men and boys of the family headed to the cabin early to get all the rooms set up and food prepped for the cookout later. After helping out I went out to the lake nearby a little earlier than everyone else and take a seat on the dock. I'm torn because I want to give Kennedy space but I already wasted so much time being away from her. She is my mate and I want to be with her every moment I can from now on. Plus she will have to leave for her own alpha training soon and if she chooses to accept me I don't want to regret wasting this little time we have before she leaves. Hey! An obnoxious and now familiar voice comes from behind me and I don't even bother looking back or acknowledging him as he takes a seat beside me. Look I get that she is your mate. Yeah my mate not yours. I all but growl cutting him of, angered by the audacity he has to even speak to me about Kennedy. Technically she is your mate but you left her pat. Technically she is your mate but you left her pat. It's Patrick. Only my family calls me Pat. I snarl not liking how familiar with my family he seems. You mean like your cousin Kennedy? He retorts. We aren't blood related. I point out. I didn't come here to argue. I didn't come here to argue. Patrick did you ever stop and think about what is best for Kennedy? You left her and I was there for her. I have been by her side and I make her happy. Maybe you should just leave again. Let us get back to the way things were before. All you're doing now is causing her stress and pain. I can make her happy. The goddess paired us for a reason. You trust in a moon goddess too much even she sometimes makes mistakes I'm sure. Not this time. I simply reply. How can you be a werewolf and not even trust in the goddess that created you? My mother. Her fate. Like I said sometimes the goddess makes mistakes. Is all he responds and something about his words struck me as odd. It's Kennedy's choice to make Oliver but I know her better than you think. She is just a little confused right now but in the end it will be her and I. I wouldn't be so sure about that. He says rather ominously before standing once again and walking back towards the cabin. I hate that he was the one there for her the past few years and I know I'm to blame for running away but I'm back now. Even if he does make her happy I can bring her life even more joy, more than he ever will. I just have to prove I'm the better man for her. I won't let him win. She is mine and not just because fate decided it. I love her with everything in me and I need to show her that. Oliver's paw. There was so much more I wanted to say to that prick. I was trying to convince him on doing what is best for her by allowing her to choose me but I could see it in his eyes and hear it in his voice he truly loves her as more than a family member and he isn't going to go down without a fight. 
I'm smart I know not to start anything with him here amongst his family. I wouldn't stand a chance. Although they all seem to like me he is blood and they will always take his side over mine. Perhaps I could think of a way to push him away or make them hate him. If I can get her family on my side surely Kennedy will pick me over him. I try to come up with some sort of plan as I set up balloons and decorations that Kennedy's mom asked up to get ready before they showed up. Trevor comes over and asked if I want to toss a football around with him. I immediately stop what I am doing to join him. I can't deny that growing up without a family of my own it was nice fitting in with Kennedy's. Trevor became sort of like a little brother to me as well over the past year. I wish I had a sibling growing up it would have made me less lonely. I would make sure nothing ever happened to him. He was innocent in all of this. The girls finally arrive and I drop the football to rush and help them brings in bags from the SUV they brought. I pull Kennedy into a bear hug and shower her cheeks with kisses well aware that Patrick is nearby watching. I am secretly hoping he snaps and blows their cover. The more drama he causes the quicker he'll push Kennedy towards me. I want her to choose me willingly it will make things so much easier. If I could just get some alone time with her and remind her what it was like before Patrick showed back up. That's all I need is for her to forget about him and remember how great I make her feel. Kennedy's POV Shopping with my cousins, mom, and aunts was just the distraction I needed after breakfast this morning. It was the hardest thing to do. Pushing the bow of my first kiss with Patrick, and the wonders he worked with his finger under that table, but I managed to do it for a couple hours. We went to a few stores and got new workout clothes for me to take when I go to training. Also a few elegant dresses for when I return. Mom and Dad want me to start attending meetings with them to get used to it, and start making proper acquaintances with the council members and other pack leaders. Roderick stepped down now that long ago to spend more time with Gran and their grand pups. They come and go as they please from each of our packs, which was interesting growing up. We would see them every few months, and they would spoil the crap out of us, then disappear for a while. I had briefly met some visiting Alfu and Lunas, but typically kept myself busy with training and school when other packs would visit. Patrick and I used to hide in the attack when other packs would visit because being the oldest kids our parents loved to parade us around. That's when it hit me. When I think about meeting other packs and taking over as Alpha there's only one person I want besides me, and it isn't Oliver. No matter how much I try to stay mad at Pat for what he did three years ago I can't. I sort of get it we were both super young still. That's why the goddess made it so wolves can't find their mates until they turn 18. It gives them a chance to grow up and enjoy their childhood and most of their teen years. With lichens it's a little different. Our lives typically last a lot longer than a normal wolf. My uncle Micah is over years older than Aunt Elizabeth. Toby alone for that long must have been hard. Just being away from Patrick for three years was tough. I don't want to be away from him ever again. I know there's a small chance our family may not accept us as mates, but he is my mate regardless. I think I'll let him sweat it out for the rest of the day. Every time I think about that night, and the fact my mate left hurts, but now that I have a future to look forward to with him I want to just let the past go. I just hope Oliver understands. I'll talk to him once we get home and away from the huge family gathering. Everyone is returning home tomorrow morning so it'll be better if it's just us. I don't want to cause a scene in front of my entire family. Besides I owe him some privacy when discussing this matter it's the least I can do. I just hope he finds his mate soon and it will make the loss between us easier to cope with. Late in the evening so I spent the afternoon at the lake flaunting my body in a teeny tiny bikini just to torture my mate slightly. Considering we were in front of our whole family and there was no way for him to touch me, I could feel his eyes on me throughout the afternoon. He jumped in the water at one point with me trying to get close, but I was a faster swimmer and got away every time. The chase was actually quite fun. I kept a small distance between Oliver and I as well. It wouldn't have been fair to Patrick since I've decided to accept him as my mate to hang all over another unmated male. I respect the bond that much. 
After cooking out, we all settle into different rooms throughout the cabin. Some of the boys decided to sleep in the living room and stay up playing video games all night. Alyssa and Laura decided to share a room. I chose one by myself. Oliver asked to stay with me, but I told him it was a long day and I just wanted to get some rest by myself. Thankfully Trevor asked him to stay downstairs and play video games with them to which he agreed. It hurt seeing how much he loved my little brother, but even if we weren't together, he is still a part of our pack. I'll have to make sure he understands that tomorrow, that he's still always welcome to hang out with Trevor or anyone in the family for that matter. I take a shower and slip some pajama shorts and a camisole on then turn of the light before snuggling under the covers of the bed. I start thinking about my maid again when I hear the door creak open, close a moment later, and I hear the lock click. I was going to snap on Oliver for sneaking into my room when I specifically asked him not to. I sit up ready to yell at him, but notice the slightly taller figure walking over, and that's when his amazing scent hits me. Pat, I huff out once he's close enough for me to see. You scared me. No, I didn't. He laughs. You were ready to chew whoever it was out, I saw it in your eyes. What are you? I was hoping we could sleep together. He cuts me of. I'm sorry about everything before baby but I just. I need to be near you it's been so long. He continues, and I can hear the longing need in his voice. Well come on. I grumble pretending to be bothered. He pulls the covers back and climbs in, settling down on his back. I can feel feel how tense he is next to me, and I'm sure it's because he's nervous. This will be the first time we're sharing a bed since we were very young. He would bunk with me when Aunt Emma, Aunt Genevieve, and Uncle Bradley would visit, but around age 11 we started sleeping in separate rooms. Now that I think about we were quite literally inseparable when we were super little to around the age. It all makes sense now knowing we are mates. I never felt that close with Vincent, and he's the same age as Patrick and I. I decide to take the initiative and turn on my side snuggling close against him. I put my arm over his stomach and rest my head on his bare chest, which I just now notice. Now I'm tense with his toned chest beneath my head, and the abs for days resting underneath my arm. How did I not notice at all today how extremely sexy my mate truly is? Alpha training sure did his body wonders. His arm behind my back moves, and I feel his hand running along my side. We both settle in and relax into each other's embrace. I feel it now, the way my dad always describes finding and finally being with my mom all those years ago. Oh, it's that simple, my true other half is finally here, and we fit together like two perfect puzzle pieces. Kennedy. He whispers. I love you. Pat. I whisper back, shifting my head slightly so I can look at him. I love you too. He leans his head down and places a soft gentle kiss on my lips. It feels so simple yet so sweet. I can't wait to kiss him and only him for the rest of our lives. In just a few moments his tender kisses turn more heated and he rolls me onto my back, pushes my legs apart with his knee and slowly starts grinding against me. The friction between us causing an immense buildup that I know I am going to need some sort of relief from. He grabs my hand interlocking our fingers and bring it up beside my head. His grip on my hand tightens as he pushes it down against the bed and settles his weight on top of me. Not enough to hurt me, but just enough to pin me in place. I reach my free hand around his back pulling him impossibly close as I move my hips back and forth against him to let him know exactly what I want. Patrick, please. I breathe out as his lips move down to the spot where his mark will one day be. Patrick's POV. I left her alone for most of the afternoon but I couldn't take my eyes off of her. She wore possibly the tiniest bikini in existence to swim in the lake and I tried to chase her down and cover her up but she wasn't having it. I noticed she took a seat far from not only me but Oliver as well when we ate. She was taking the whole space thing seriously. I didn't like it but at least it was only me she was keeping her distance from. She went to bed upstairs and I picked a room on the main floor. 
Oliver was staying up to play games with Trevor and Griffin. Vincent was out there as well but I didn't feel like being near Oliver knowing how close he had got to my mate the past few years. I laid in bed trying to sleep but my wolf, Flynn, wouldn't stop whimpering for his mate. I knew it could blow up in my face but I had to at least try to see her. I had been apart from her for so long. Even if it was just to simply sleep I needed to try and be next to her. I would even sleep on the floor at this point as long as we were in the same room. I snuck upstairs as quietly as possible as not to wake either one of our parents who retired earlier in the night. I followed her scent to a door at the far end of the hallway and prayed to the moon goddess she left her door unlocked. With a tiny turn I realized it was indeed open so I slipped inside quickly trying to go unnoticed, shut, and locked the door behind me in case someone else had the same idea as me. She sat up upon hearing the door open. At first I don't think she knew it was me until I started approaching the bed then she said my name so sweetly. She begrudgingly let me climb in bed with her even though if she honestly didn't like the idea she could have easily told me to leave so I think a part of her wanted me to stay. When I laid down I wasn't quite sure what to do so I stayed stiff as a board so I didn't anger her. Even just laying next to her was satisfying both my wolf and vampire sides. She surprised me by moving close and snuggling against me. Having her in my arms was heavenly. I was so ecstatic feeling her body pressed tightly alongside my own. Kennedy. I say breaking the silence. I love you. I continue needing to say it again, I will say it forever and always if she allows me. Pat. She says moving to look at me. I love you. She keeps going uttering the three words I hope to hear the rest of our lives. I can't stop myself from kissing her. A simple kiss to show my appreciation for her honesty and letting me stay with her. With every second my lips touch hers a hunger begins to grow inside of me. I want to claim her in every way possible. I push her back, pin her beneath me, as I greedily devour her mouth with my own. I move my hips forward gently rubbing myself against her letting her know what a simple kiss from her does to me. When she starts moving her hips along with me I almost lose control but I won't go any further until I hear the words leave her lips. She pleads with me Pat. Please but it's not enough for me. What do you want Kennedy? I whisper against her ear. You. She huffs out becoming breathless beneath me. Be more specific beautiful. I tease returning to her marking spot where I gently suck on the skin causing her to buck beneath me. Patrick. Claim me. Mate me. Patrick. Claim me. Mate me. I'm yours. I accept you as my mate. Please. As you wish. I say pulling away and hopping of the bed swiftly. She sits up and huffs clearly irritated by the sudden loss of my body on hers but once she sees me slip my shorts and boxers down her frown turns upside down and I see the glimmer of lust in her eyes as she takes in every single inch of me. She licks her lips in anticipation and grabs the bottom of her camisole ripping it of and over her head. She shimmies her pajama shorts down and I help by pulling them of at her ankles. She grabs my arm and pulls me back down on top of her. Gripping the back of my hair she pulls my head down smashing our lips together once more. I feel her hand slip between us and grip my hard dick firmly before loosening her grip and moving her delicate hand up and down my shit. I move my hand between us as well slipping two fingers between her slick folds and into her wet pussy. As she picks up her pace stroking me I do as well, her sexy moans only egging me on. I pull her hand away as I get close because I don't want to come all over her hand. I plan to be buried deep inside her the first time I climax with my mate. She whimpers as I take her hand away but that quickly stops once I hook my finger inside her and rub her clit at the same time, applying just the right of pressure to send her spiraling down the rabbit hole of her second orgasm with me. She grips my arm tightly clearly reeling from the intensity of the pleasure I just provided. Before she can get to complacent I line myself up with her opening and push myself all the way in halting for a few moments as she adjusts to the new intrusion. I can't deny wondering how far she and Oliver had gone but by the grimace on her face I am her first and that makes me elated. I start moving slowly first so I don't hurt her too much as she still adjusts but once her nails start dragging along my back I take that as encouragement to move faster. She begins moving also matching each of my movements with her own. She is so fucking perfect and I feel so lucky to finally claim her as mine. I want to mark her but before I get the chance to I feel her canine sink deep into the side of my neck and I still, instantly emptying myself deep inside her. It is the most intense and insane first orgasm with her and I can't help the few tears lingering in the corners of my eyes. 
She starts moving beneath me and before I have a chance to react she flips me over taking charge with me still inside her. Just the one simple move has me hard and ready for her to ride. She wastes no time lifting and lowering herself on top of me at a frantic speed chasing another orgasm. As her walls begin to tighten around me I pull her down and move the hair away from her neck. Allowing my wolf to come forward and mark her she condoms undone around me as soon as our teeth sink into her beautiful neck. I pull away and lick the blood flowing from her mark allowing my vampire side to get its first taste of our mate's blood, which tastes delicious. Thank you Kennedy, I say softly as she rests on top of me and I run my fingers gently through her hair. You're my mate, Patrick, I shouldn't have bought it, she responds. You had every right to baby I never should have left you before. You're here now, she says sitting up and cupping my face in her small hand, I instinctively lean into it. We are here together, it's you and I forever now. She continues kissing my lips, then my mark, before settling into a comfortable position beside me. What are we going to telephone our parents? I ask. Let's worry about that another day. Just enjoy tonight with me Pat. She replies and a few moments later we both drift up to sleep. Oliver's POV I was playing a video game with Griffin but I was distracted thinking about Kennedy. She pulled away today. She kept her distance from me and I hated it. She also kept her distance from him so I wasn't too upset but I still didn't like it. I excused myself to go to the bathroom but secretly I wanted to go and check on Kennedy. If I could steal one goodnight kiss it would help me sleep tonight. I follow her sent up the stairs to one of the last bedrooms down the hall but my excitement quickly turned to anger when I notice his scent is mixed with hers. It doesn't just linger outside the doorway. He is inside with her. She chose him and I can see all our plans going down the drain. I run downstairs and outside quickly shifting and making my way through the woods back towards the pack. I need a new plan and some time to cool up before I do something reckless. Kennedy's POV Waking up in my mate's arms is the best feeling in the world, and the fact that those strong sexy arms belong to none other than Patrick somehow makes it even better. Waking up in my mate's arms is the best feeling in the world, and the fact that those strong sexy arms belong to none other than Patrick somehow makes it even better. I feel safe and warm snuggled closely against him. I can feel my lichen, Venus, content in my mind as I lay there thinking about how wonderful last night was. I'm so glad he came to my room. I thought staying away would be best, but him coming to me last night was exactly what I needed, what we both needed. He was right we wasted so much time apart already, and I was ready to remedy that. It was going to be an adjustment finding time for each other and figuring out how exactly this would work with our different packs, but I know we can figure it out together. I lay with my head against his chest listening to his steady heartbeat and imagine our future together. I want to build our own house away from the pack house. I know most Alpha and Luna stay in the pack house for security purposes, and so they are always available, but I want privacy for Patrick and I. Even if it's only feet from the pack house a place of our own to Kel home is what I want with him. I wonder how many bedrooms we would need. I want to have a ton of pups, but I wonder how Pat feels about that. I'm so lost in my thoughts that a sudden knock at the door startles me. I jump out of bed and throw on a robe draped over the chair by the vanity. Hey honey, my mom says sweetly when I crack the door open. What time is it? I blink trying to adjust to the bright light shining in from the hallway. It's close to 10. I was just wondering if and when you were going to come down for breakfast. Oh, I say, peeking back to the bed, noticing it now empty. I'm still kind of tired. I think I might skip breakfast. Okay, sweetie. Just make sure you run a brush through that hair before you come downstairs. She says with a wink at the end. Oh my goddess. I whisper shutting the door and lean against it. Good morning. Patrick says stepping out of the bathroom. Morning. I say rushing past him, but placing a quick kiss on his cheek before going into the bathroom. I look in the mirror and see what my mom was talking about my hair is a mise, and she definitely knew what I was up to last night. I'm glad she didn't push me into disclosing who was with me in the room. I hope she hadn't guessed. I still wasn't quite ready to face our family yet. 
I wanted to keep us a secret just a little bit longer. I do my business, wash my hands, and go back into the bedroom to find my handsome mate sitting up against the headboard reading something on his phone. I saunter over and climb on top of him. He immediately throws his phone to the side on the bed and gives me his undivided attention. I need to go home today. I've been gone so long for alpha training I need to catch up with Outpack but then I'm coming right back to see you and we're going to figure out what exactly we're going to do. He states, it's really complicated, huh? I mean I have my pack and you have yours. Did we rush into this? Goddess no. Kennedy you and I will figure everything out in due time. We will have to make some adjustments and find out what will work best for everyone in our family. Our family? I whisper. Patrick, what are we going to tell them? What if they don't accept us as mates? First of my parents will always accept us. They are the most open and honest parents anyone could ask for. Just look at how large our pack has grown over the years because of how accepting all my parents are. Your parents might find it odd at first but I don't think they would ever deny you your birthright or judge you for choosing to be with who the goddess chose for you. You're right. As long as you're by my side, we can handle them. Now let's make out a bit before I leave. I need something to tide me over until I can see you again. He begs giving me the cutest puppy dog's eyes ever, and I happily obliged. A few hours after leaving the cabin, we all arrive back at the pack house a little bit before dinner. After having brunch with the family, Patrick and I go with our families back to our own home packs. The larger the distance between us grew, the more my heart hurts. I know it will be difficult being away from my mate, but the dull H in my chest makes me sad. I unpack my small bag and go on the search for Oliver. I need to explain everything to him and let him of as easily as possible. I look everywhere I can think of, but he was nowhere to be found. I try linking him, but he blocked me. I sit at the dining hall table picking at my food, done able to eat because I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I excuse myself early and head back towards room. The sense of danger grows stronger with every step closer to my door. I can tell exactly who's in there by my scent. Although Venus is urging me to turn around and leave, I push her thoughts away. I'm safe in my home. My family is just downstairs, and if I need them I can just link all of them. Plus I hate to sound conceited, but I know if needed I can subdue Oliver by myself easily. As soon as I enter the room Oliver stands from my bed. We need to talk. He says rather sternly. Lock the door. I don't want us to be interrupted. Okay. I reply softly turning to lock the door then taking a few steps away from the door towards him. Mom, Dad, I'm in my room with Oliver. Something is up. I link them when my back was turned to lock the door. So you choose him, huh? He asks with anger laced in his voice. Oliver, I say cutting the distance between us and grabbing his hand in mine. He's my mate. I love him. I continue hoping my touch will calm him down so he can understand where I'm coming from. A mate who left you, abandoned you. He spits out, pulling his hand from mine, and turns away from me. You should have picked me. You are meant to be with me. I don't care what some goddess says. Oliver, just wait until you meet your mate, then you'll understand. I've already met my mate. He whispers, looking down at the ground, and I hear the sadness in his voice. What? I question. He's younger than me, he doesn't know who I am to him yet. It doesn't matter anyways. Why not? Because I told him to reject him. A new voice comes from the bathroom doorway as a dark figure makes their way over taking a stand next to Oliver who continues to look down at the ground and I can see his body tense up the closer they get. Who the hell are you? I growl not liking the stranger in my personal space. That doesn't concern you child. Mom dad I need you now. I try linking my parents as panic sets in from the dark aura coming from this new person. That won't work, dear. The airy voice says breaking my concentration, even though I was having trouble getting through to anyone I need to keep trying. Kennedy. Oliver whispers, and in a flash, he is behind me holding my arms behind my back. I'm sorry. 
he says, but before I can shift and even put up the slightest fight, the stranger places a finger on my forehead and everything goes Ashley's POV. Kennedy seemed sad after returning home yesterday and I think it had to do with the person who spent the night in her room. Kennedy seemed sad after returning home yesterday and I think it had to do with the person who spent the night in her room. I wanted to ask and get a sneak peek of who is was. With everyone in the same cabin the scents were strongly mixed all throughout the house and it was hard to tell who was where at times. She hadn't told us she found her mate yet but from the looks of her hair in the morning she clearly had some fun with someone. She always told us she would wait to be with her mate but after her first shift she went through a brief depression and I always thought maybe she found her mate sometime around then and was rejected. I asked and she denied it so I didn't push the issue. I don't know why she would hide something like that from us. My best guess it was Oliver I know they were talking about chosen mates not too long. She mentioned taking Oliver as her chosen mate to help her lead the pack. He was such a sweet and caring boy. He grew close to Kennedy after she turned 15 and helped bring her out of whatever funk she was in after shifting. I secretly hoped they were goddess-given mates but after three years she would have told us. Especially since it's never like they tried to hide sleeping in the same bed. I told her to just make sure they are being safe and she is completely sure before taking him as a chosen mate. It's a big decision and I would hate for her to miss out on the mate our goddess chose for her. I can't imagine being with anyone other than Emerson. I think back to how I tried being with Adam but even if it hadn't turned out as disastrous as it did I would have never been truly happy with him. He made me feel happy for a few months but even then I felt empty without Emerson. Your mate is your other half and they really do compliment and complete you. Emerson and I were drinking some coffee in the kids talking to Trevor about school when Kennedy and Oliver came in holding hands smiling happily at each other. Mom. Dad. She said excitedly. Can we talk in your office please? Of course. Emerson says, placing my cup and his into the sink then we all make our way into his office. So we have some news? Kennedy starts of grinning from ear to ear as she clings to Oliver. We have accepted each other, mated, and marked each other. Oh, Kennedy. I squeal pulling her into a tight hug, happy to see my little girl all grown up and glowing. I'm so glad to see you so in love. I whisper noticing how overjoyed her and Oliver seem to be together. Congratulations, son. Emerson says grabbing Oliver's hand and pulling him into a hug as well. There's more. Kennedy says pulling away. We bought you guys tickets for a cruise. You guys deserve a vacation. She continues pulling two tickets from her back pocket. Also, I want to talk to you guys about officially taking over the pack before I leave. I want Oliver to feel secure in his place in the pack and act as alpha while I'm away. I was hoping we could just do a small ceremony to pause along the titles here in your office. Then when you get back from your trip, we can hold a huge party to celebrate Oliver and I taking over. This way you guys don't have to worry about anything while you're away. You just turned 18 Kennedy. Emerson states. We should wait until you're done with your training. Please daddy. She begs giving him that sweet innocent look she always does when she wants to get her way. It would be nice to get away and not have to worry. I link him. Elijah and Asher will still be here in case anything happens. Plus Elizabeth and Micah aren't that far away. I didn't take the title until after I was 20 and had finished all my training. He responds. I know but Kennedy has always been responsible and we always knew this day would come when we would paw the pack down. Oliver has never given us a reason not trust him and Kennedy clearly loves him. Look at the way he looks at her. Okay, but I'm going to ask Roderick and Gran to check in on them. Maybe we can try for another pup while we're away. I roll my eyes at him after he shoots me a wink. I love our life and how everything turned out but we had it rough at the beginning of our relationship. Then raising our pups and running the pack took up a lot of our time. I am actually looking forward to getting some free time away from everything with Emerson. It'll be like our first weekend away at the cabin. We raised out baby girl right and Oliver has been nothing but helpful since joining our pack. He's so good and close with not only Trevor but most pack members. 
Elijah and Asher will remain betas for quite some time so knowing that they will be here to assist Kennedy and Oliver if anything should happen while we're away is a huge weight of my conscience. Oliver's POV As I watch Ashley giddily hug Kennedy after learning we have chosen each other as mates I felt a slight pang of guilt for what we have planned for the pack. I can't deny that in living here the past several years I've grown attached to this pack and many of its members. Sometimes I wish things didn't have to turn out this way but justice needed to be served. What Ashley and Emerson had done was unforgivable and unfortunately in the game of retribution casualties, like sweet innocent Kennedy, happen. When we were done with them they would regret what they did to our family. I was determined to make the two of them pay no matter the cost. I would make sure Kennedy stayed alive and after everything we have planned is executed I will return her to Patrick. I need her right now though. In order to keep plans in motion and gain the power we need for the ultimate endgame she needs to be by my side. My mate slips into my mind as I think about officially becoming an alpha and how I wish things were simpler and I could be by his side. If my circumstances were different growing up and we met each other in a different time and place maybe things would have worked out but now it was impossible. Not only because I was told to reject him, which I didn't, but because after what I have planned there will be no way for us to be together. The destruction of their pack is going to be own downfall and I am well aware I will not survive this battle but if in the end they feel even the smallest amount of pain as I felt growing up it would be worth it. Emerson pulled a small pocket knife from his boot and made a small cut on each of our palms. He joined our hands and the girls joined hands as well. With a few words and shallow commitments I felt the power paw through Emerson into me. I look over and saw the same surge of power flow away from Ashley. This was it we were finally in control of their pack thus completing step one of our plan. Trevor's POV Mom and Dad left for a cruise a few days ago, and ever since they left things have drastically changed. We all felt a shift in power as a pack right before they left, and I knew it was Mom and Dad passing along their titles to Kennedy and Oliver. They came into the kitchen happily together. Oliver disappeared the night we stayed in the cabin, so he must have been in Kennedy's room. I was so happy for my big sister because I thought she would make a great alpha female. Instead she is acting like a tyrant. She's been giving orders to our warriors to throw people in the cells of our basement for insignificant reasons. She changed the patrol schedule around so much that of guards are confused and missing shifts. I've tried reaching out to mom and dad, but they have all communication cut off. I get it they are trying to enjoy themselves and have some alone time, but I don't know what else to do. I feel like maybe I should go see Aunt Emma and Uncle Micah, whose pack is the next territory over, and see if they can help me figure out why the sudden change in Kennedy. I just finished my training and head towards the kitchen to grab a snack and some water when I hear Kennedy yelling at an Omega. Are you stupid? She screams and I hear a slap. My wolf pushes me forward and I growl when I see an Omega Felicity on the ground holding her cheek, with tears pouring down her cheeks. Felicity is a young she-wolf who helps her mother out in the kitchen. We're in several classes together, and I've always been fond of her. I would never want any Omega to be hurt, but my wolf, Dexter, seems to be overprotective of Felicity. Even when one of the mean girls at school tried to bully her I felt the need to protect her. I see Kennedy reach down and grab her hair clearly not caring that I'm in the room. Gets your hands of her now. I yell and feel my alpha aura pushing forward which I didn't know was possible since I only shifted for the first time a few months ago, but it is almost as strong as my father's. I see both girls look at me with shock in their eyes, and Kennedy immediately releases Felicity. She gazes at me as I run to Felicity crouching down and lightly touching her cheek. I turn back to Kennedy and growl louder after seeing her handprint on who I'm almost positive is my mate now. She backs up against the corner but doesn't say anything. She doesn't look scared, only dismayed. It's taking everything in me not to ham my sister right now. Something is seriously of with her, and until my parents return I'm getting Felicity and as many families out of here before it gets worse. Come on, I whisper gently to Felicity helping her stand and pulling her close into my side. I'm sorry I didn't get here sooner. I say grabbing an ice pack from the freezer as we leave the kitchen and go to my room. I don't know what I did wrong. She stated sniffling, burying her head in my shoulder as we walked. Kennedy has never been so mean to me before. She whimpers. You did nothing wrong sweet girl. Something is wrong with my sister and until I figure out what it is I am getting you out of here. 
I'm going to text my aunt and uncle and let them know we're coming. Their territory isn't too far from ours, we'll be safe there. I'm going to go urge any families with pups or elders to leave with us. I want to ensure at least their safety, it's the least I can do. I explain once we're inside my room, and I have her settled beneath my covers. She looks tired, and I wonder if Kennedy has been overworking the Omegas who work inside the pack house. Her actions have become so chaotic and drastic that I wouldn't be surprised. Felicity snuggles her face deep into the main pillow I use, and is out like a light in seconds. My scent is calming to her further confirming my suspicions she is my maid, and for our future I will make sure she is safe somewhere else while we figure out what is going on here. I pull out my phone and send a quick text to my aunt and uncle letting them know I will be there tomorrow with some guests. I send and delete the messages instantly just in case. I hope they don't cal. I don't want to have an open conversation because you never know who could be listening around here. Patrick's POV I've been busy the past few days meeting with new members that joined the pack since I've been away. Business meetings to acquaint myself with the few new investments we got involved in as well, and other general stuff to catch up on. The longing for my mate grows stronger each day I am away. It's been several days and I miss her like crazy. We were marked now but I was having trouble sensing anything, even the tiniest emotion, or mind linking her. At first I thought it was the distance but now I'm not quite sure. Even Flynn couldn't reach out to her like in Venus. He said anytime her tried there was just a void. I am starting to think something may have happened. I decided to surprise her and left this morning after training so I'd get there a little after dinner time. I could at least spend the night and we could spend the day tomorrow figuring out a game plan for the near future. Whether it be swapping time spent at each other's packs for a little while. There were decisions to be made. Our pack was now the largest pack in the world so having myself and Vincent as dual alphas would be the wisest decision considering we only plan on expanding more after we take over. A coven of witches has been in talks with our parents about moving onto our territory and that would be a huge growth for us. Trevor could a ways take over as Alpha when he came of age. The closer I get to my mate's pack the greater my sense of worry becomes. Something doesn't feel right and I fear Kennedy is in trouble because I still can't reach out to her. Crossing the border is way too easy. I don't hear or sense any sort of patrol roaming the outer border of their territory which is concerning. As I approach the pack house it's eerily quiet. I barely sense anyone around which is odd since it's barely after dinner has finished. One step into the pack house and I'm met with dead silence. My wolf Flynn is screaming at me to get to our mate right now because this all seems wrong. I rush up the stairs and just as I'm about to reach the top landing I pause hearing a door open. I stay deathly still and peek over the top step to see Oliver exiting my mate's room. And anger grows inside me and thankfully before it boils over he is down the hall and out of my sight. I go to her room immediately to find out what the hell he was doing in there. As soon as I walk in I see Kennedy in lingerie standing in front of her full-length mirror admiring herself, which is odd, because Kennedy has never been so vain. Why was Oliver in your room? I growl out noticing her outfit. That's none of your concern mate. She replies snarky. That mark on your neck says otherwise. I bite back angry at her dismissive demeanor of me and not understanding what is happening. Kennedy is acting strange. Let's fix that, shall we? She says turning to face me with an evil smile. I Kennedy Ivy. I Kennedy Ivy. What do you think you're doing? I practically yell in her face after racing over and placing my hand over her mouth preventing her from finishing the rejection she thought was possible. That's when it hits me hard. Where my hand is touching her face and other is on her bare arm there are no sparks. I take a deep breathe and find no scent. In a second I harshly push her back against the mirror and hear the back of her head smash and crack against the glass. I move my hand from her mouth down to her neck and tighten my grip. Who the fuck are you and what have you done with Patrick POV? Your mate is still alive, but that can change very soon if you do not release me right now. The imposter who somehow looks exactly like my mate speaks. I study her for a moment. There is a rage burning in her eyes similar to mine. I want to strangle whoever or whatever this is and find my mate but seeing as she looks just like Kennedy this has to be witchcraft. The possibilities of what she can do to my mate are endless and I just can't risk it. I hate that we were apart and this is what happened. I drop both hands and step away from her. She smooths out her lingerie and fixes her hair which makes me snarl. If she doesn't take me to my mate soon I will probably just kill her. If I take you to your mate you will not be able to leave. 
Are you sure that what you want? Yes, I reply through gritted teeth. If you hurt her in any. She's unharmed. She cuts me off. For now. She adds and I know that as soon as I'm shown where she is I'm not leaving her side and will do everything in my power to protect her. She saunters out of the room like this whole situation isn't fucked. She's walking around like she owns the place and it's her own personal catwalk. I'm beyond angry and trying to figure out who would have a vendetta against me or my mate. I am also curious where the hell Kennedy's parents are and how they didn't notice this wasn't their daughter. It only took me a few moments to have a hunch it wasn't her. They were her parents her flesh and blood they should have been able to sense she wasn't their firstborn pup. Then again if this was some sort of spell perhaps they are under one as well. We descend down the stairs to the basement where several cells for captives are held and as we paw by as one is filled to max capacity with what I'm assuming are pack members. There's no way on earth all of these pack members did something heinous enough to deserve time in the cells. Ashley and Emerson were just rulers they typically matched the punishment to the crime. The cells were used but not often and not to this magnitude. I spot a cell on the left towards the end with a sleeping Elijah and Asher on two separate cots. Then when I look to my left and see Kennedy in the same state on a cot in the very last cell by herself with the door wide open, which is odd considering she could escape ever so easily. Kennedy. I whisper beside her in a flash, down on my knees, and touch her cheek feeling the sparks from my mate. What did you do to her? I growl turning around now noticing the door is shut behind me. She's an insurance policy of sorts to assure I get what I want. The woman replies with a bored expression on her face. What about Elijah and Asher? They are a part of the deal I made as well. She adds with a quick glance in their direction. What deal? What deal? All in due time. When will she wake up? I ask wanting to see my mate's gorgeous eyes again. Not until I get what I want. All three of them are in a coma-like state for reasons I can't disclose at this time. When I get out of here, I growl rushing the cell door but it doesn't budge and I can't even put my arm through the slots in between the bars. I if you get out of here. She laughs. It was a tricky spell, but I managed to figure it out keeps you in and unable to communicate with anyone outside of this cell, other than myself of course. I would love to stay and chat more, but I should be expecting some visitors soon so I'll give some time with your mate. She continues before turning on her heel, exiting the basement, and leaves me alone with Kennedy. 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 I whisper climbing on the cot and settling next to her awkwardly with an arm maneuvered under her back and the other around draped across the bottom of her ribcage. I'm sorry I failed you again. I'm the worst mate. I should have been with you and no one would have hurt you. I know this is some sort of magic but baby if you can fight it try for me. Please. Emerson's POV. Two weeks of pure bliss with my mate and I feel well rested and reinvigorated. I can't wait to get back to the pack and see how things have been going for Kennedy and Oliver. A part of me hated that Kennedy didn't wait for her mate. Ash and I taught her the importance and significance of waiting for your mate and how special the mate was but she was young and impatient. Oliver and her spent so much time together the past few years it was no wonder feeling grew between them. I just hope she doesn't grow to regret her decision in choosing a mate and if her mate does ever show up hopefully it will not wreck her relationship with Oliver. He does seem to care for her greatly. She seemed so happy coming downstairs and asking us to join them in my office. I couldn't deny feeling rushed in handing over the pack to them so soon but it was hard saying to my baby girl. She was smart, strong, and determined. I didn't want her to feel like I didn't trust her because I did. She has such a kind heart and I know she will make an amazing leader. I just think maybe we should have waited until she returned from her training. My thoughts are disrupted by the sight of Trevor standing outside the gate as we depart the plane. I was expecting Elijah and Asher to be here to get us. Hey son. I say as we approach and Ashley gives him a big bear hug clearly missing her baby boy while we were away. Where are Asher and Elijah? I ask after hugging my boy as well. Dad. He whispers in a tone that instantly has me worried. Something happened at our pack. We're going to go back to Aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Micah's pack and tell you everything. We all climb into the car after putting our bags in the trunk and start heading towards home. Thankfully my sister and brother-in-law's pack is the territory right next to ours. The entire ride my anxiety is in overdrive. I have a terrible feeling in the pit of my stomach. My gut was probably right we rushed the transfer of power of the pack and now something was wrong. 
Ashley and I were selfish and put our own need and want for time alone ahead of what was best for the pack. After arriving at our sister pack we follow Trevor up to the Alpha's office and when we enter there stands Micah, Elizabeth, Vincent, Jared, and an Omega from our pack Felicity, it doesn't escape me when Trevor settles close to Felicity. I am surprised to see Jared, who was beta long before Micah and Elizabeth, in the room. He was Adam's beta before Ashley killed him and had a hand in taking us captive, but he sincerely apologized because Rachel had spun a sour story of us killing Adam for no reason at all. He wasn't aware of her deception and seemed genuine in his actions. After being appointed new Alpha and Luna of the pack Micah and Elizabeth granted him a second chance and let him keep title and stay in the pack he had always known as home. Over the years we've all come to trust and admire him but it's odd he's in this meeting considering this seems to be more of a family matter. So what is going on, you have us worried beyond belief. Ashley says wrapping her around my side and shuffling close, seeking comfort, which I happily oblige draping my arm across her shoulder and pull her tightly against me. Mom, Dad. Trevor begins and I see Felicity's hand slip inside his almost on instinct. A few days after you left something changed in Kennedy. I have no clue why, but she started changing things around, acting harshly towards everyone, and even became abusive towards pack members. He pauses and I don't miss the small glance over to Felicity. Oliver just hides in your office all day. Pack members started being sent to the cells for nonsensical things. After I worked into the kitchen to find Felicity. His hand tightens around hers. And Kennedy standing over her ready to hit her again. I got her, the pups, and our elders out of there and brought them here. At least ten families left and came to our pack. Victor continues. Rogue started wandering onto the territory and realizing the patrol was lax moved further in attacking and raiding homes closest to the outskirts of your land. Kennedy and Oliver seemed to either not care. My parents tried reaching out to Kennedy and even Elijah and Asher. Cassius was worried. After finding their mate and deciding to move back to your pack, they still kept in constant contact with him. He hasn't heard from them in a week and a half and his lichen can't seem to reach out to theirs. We don't want to outright attack Kennedy. Elizabeth chimes in. She is our niece, our blood. We decided to wait until you got back to have you two go with some warriors and try to figure out what is going on and talk to her peacefully first. Thank you. I say. Ashley and I will leave right away. I'm coming too. Both Vincent and Jared say simultaneously. Patrick left about a week ago after training. Patrick left about a week ago after training. All he said was he was coming her for a day or two. I haven't heard or seen him since then. I need to make sure my brother is okay, if not for my sake for our parents. Vincent elaborates. My wolf is urging me to go. He said I have to be present in this meeting, and if there is a plan to go we have to be there. He was very adamant about that part. Jared explains. Then let's go right away. Trevor stay here. I need you safe for my own sanity. Who knows what's going on with Kennedy? I don't want both of my children in danger. Patrick's pa. I don't know how long exactly we've been down here together. It's been several days. The Kennedy lookalike keeps bringing me food but firstly I don't trust her not to have poisoned whatever she brought and secondly I have no appetite. With the state my maid is in I feel lost and sad. I can't think of any way to wake her up and I've tried a few. I just snuggle close and keep her warm. Her scent and having her right next to me gives me a small peace of mind. At least we aren't being tortured or separated any longer than we have been. The thought that no harm has been done to her, or I would have felt it even being as far away as Mapak, was comforting. I just wish I knew why this witch needed Kennedy, Elijah, and Asher in the first place. I love you Kennedy. I whisper in her ear as my eye kids become heavy and I drift up to sleep again. Mate. I hear whispered in my dreams. My handsome, sexy, sweet, mate, wake up. I couldn't have fallen asleep that long ago and her voice sounds so close. Then I feel fingers brush my face and small tingles. I open my eyes hoping this isn't a dream. As soon as I meet my wonderful mate's gaze I waste no time grabbing her and pull her in for a deep ravenous kiss. I missed her so much, even though I was right next to her this whole time, she wasn't fully here with me. Seeing those beautiful hazel eyes staring back at me once I opened mine was like heaven. I am so happy it wasn't a dream. I pull away and start to kiss every inch of her face because I love and missed her so much. Okay, Pat. She says with a giggle.
stop. Your scruff is tickling me. She jokes. Sorry. I say pulling away, forgetting the hair growing along the bottom of my face. I forgot. I haven't been able to shave in a bit. I kinda like it. She replies with a wink. Where are we? She asks finally taking notice to our surroundings. The last thing I remember was going into my room. Oliver. She says shooting up to sit on the cot. Oliver was with some woman. She was creepy, and Oliver seemed almost scared of her. She did something to me, and then I blacked out. I don't know exactly who she is but she looks just like you Kennedy. When I got her I saw Oliver leaving your room and she was inside with lingerie. I got so mad thinking you had cheated on me. Then she tried to reject me. As soon I touched her I felt no sparks and knew it wasn't you. You would have felt it. She adds. Huh? If I cheated on you, you would have felt it. Of course. I say realizing she correct. Kennedy the first don't know who she is or what she wants but Elijah and Asher are asleep like you were too. I think it has something to do with your lichens. Her vendetta isn't against us though or she would have just killed you to hurt me. I also can't figure out what Oliver has to do with this. I didn't like the guy before but he didn't seem like a terrible person. He fooled me too. To think I almost chose him. She mutters, earning a small inescapable growl from me. Patrick. She cooed. I chose you, remember? She says grabbing my hand and placing it over her mark. I'm all yours. She continues and kisses me passionately on the lips as she pulls my body close against hers. Hate to break this little love reunion up but... Oliver's voice cuts through the cell's barrier and startles both of us. Kennedy you're coming with me. He says nonchalantly. Like hell she is. I growl, jump from the cot, and take a defensive stance in front of my mate. You think you can take us both out? Fake Kennedy says making an appearance, taking her place beside Oliver. You haven't eaten so you're weak enough already. I can just kill you and take her. No. Oliver growls and it startles me that he is basically telling her to spare me life. Our issue is with Emerson and Ashley. I told you I will not harm innocent people in all of this. Do you truly not want her as your mate? The woman asks. No she belongs with Patrick. Just because the goddess may have chosen wrong for you and I does not make it fair to punish others. You promised me mother. He says and my confusion builds. Just grab the girl. He says to Oliver who unlocks the cell door. One wrong move and all I have to do is snap my fingers to kill her boy. She snarls in my direction. I look back at Kennedy. I have no idea how true her words are. I don't want to be the cause of my mate's death because I'm reckless. Oliver seems to actually care for Kennedy in an odd way and I'm starting to think maybe I should put a little faith in him that he will keep her safe. She gives me a small smile and stands from the cot. I love you she mouths before walking towards the door. It takes everything in me to hold back the two sides in me fighting to get out. My wolf wants to rip them both to shreds. My vampire side wants to snap Oliver's neck and drain the woman pretending to be our mate. I watch Oliver open the door and Kennedy steps out willingly. I sense she is also fighting the urge to try and take them both on but I feel her fear is the same mine, she doesn't want to lose her mate. I am putting my faith in our goddess that somehow we will get out of this alive. I sit on the cot and watch my mate being led away from me. Oliver's POV I'm a coward and still feel like a child when I'm around her. My mother has always been distant and cruel. Running since I was a baby was never a heathy upbringing but motherly love could have made it bearable but she was unable to provide that. Growing up I seemed to always disappoint her no matter what I did. I felt like I did something wrong before I was even born. When she told me how Emerson and Ashley killed my dad and made her and I robes, before I was even born, I found a new target for my anger. We came up with a plan and waited, bidding our time, until the perfect opportunity arose. I joined their pack as a rogue and easily made them believe both of my parents were dead. I knew they would be a little weary of me at first but over time I would gain their trust. At first I faked every emotion and my actions were purely born from deceit but then I spent almost four years in their pack. I actually grew to love pack life. I lived so long on the run and in hiding with my mother that I forgot most wolves live in packs. They are like one bug family and I started to see and understand what I was missing for so long. Emerson and Ashley didn't seem like hateful or harmful leaders. I wondered for a long time if it was all just an act but the closer I got to their family the more I saw how much they actually cared for each and every pack member. 
I always knew Kennedy was going to be the best way to get to Emerson and Ashley and it was easy getting her to like me. I almost started forgetting about my old life my life with my miserable mother but then came the night of my first shift. I was a couple months older than Kennedy so I turned 18 before her. I never did tell anyone in the pack my exact age. I snuck up into the woods to be alone but somehow my mother knew or remembered it was my birthday and actually showed up. It was painful and seemed to take forever but once I finally shifted all she had to say was. You look just like your father. That small sentence reminded me why I was in Ashley and Emerson's pack in the first place. I got back on track and went full force pushing Kennedy to take me as her chosen mate. Once we had power of the pack we would destroy it and kill Emerson and Ashley when they tried to fight for it. Then Kennedy went and accepted Patrick, mated and marked him. I had no other choice to but to tell my mom. She showed up and put her to sleep. Then we hid her in a cell and my mom managed to maintain Kennedy's appearance by keeping a lock of her hair on her at all times. I never understood where these powers came from. We were werewolves, purebred as far as I knew. If she was born a hybrid witch slash werewolf I should have powers too. Then maybe I wouldn't feel so powerless against her. I hid in Emerson's after they left because I really didn't want a part in destroying the pack I had called home for the past four years. My only concern was revenge and for that I needed only two people Emerson and Ashley. My mother shows up suddenly and tells me we need to get Kennedy and be ready because they'll be here soon. After grabbing Kennedy from the cells we head towards the back of the pack house. My mother pauses and Kennedy and I stop behind her. They're here. You keep her here until the right time do you understand? She asks giving me a stern look that sends a shiver down my spine then walks around the corner of the back house. You don't have to do this. Kennedy pleads as soon as my mom is out of earshot. Yes I do. I growl out, knowing that my father's killers are here has me on edge. Ollie I know you, I know. I growl out, knowing that my father's killers are here has me on edge. Ollie I know you, I know. Ollie I know you, I know. You know nothing about me. I say angrily grabbing her arm and pull her in front of me. Vincent's POV. When we cross the borders to my Aunt Ashley and Uncle Emerson's pack, the stench of rogue is overwhelming. We venture further in to find a camp of about 20 rogues, who all shift into a fighting stance immediately upon our approach. We all take a defensive stance except Emerson and Ashley. I see them looking towards the pack house. Something must be going on for them not to even acknowledge the danger of these rogues. Go! Go! Jared urges me, pushing me towards them. We have this under control. He says gesturing the six warriors behind him, then shifts himself. Ashley and Emerson take off towards the pack house, and I go after them. They stop for seconds at a time taking in the burned down houses throughout their territory. Trees are down, and trash is everywhere. We can all sense there are more rogues in their territory, but right now I know their main concern is their daughter. As we get closer, my wolf comes forward pushing me faster and I assume he senses our brother. Waiting in front of the pack house is Kennedy, alone, which is oddly frightening considering the large smile she has on her face. Kennedy! Emerson screams a few away from her. What the hell happened? I would watch the way you speak to me. She snarls. Kennedy. Ashley scolds her for the way she speaks to her father. Wrong. She spits out. What? Ashley asks. Kennedy. She snickers and reaches her hand in the pocket of the jeans she's wearing. I'm not your sweet innocent Kennedy. She says pulling something out and holding it up. Would you like to know the real culprit behind your pack's destruction? She smiles, and Emerson roars shifting into his wolf shadow abruptly. Kennedy, or a person pretending to be Kennedy apparently, throws the item in her hand far away from her, and suddenly her appearance changes drastically. In Kennedy's place now stands a woman who seems to be around 40, with dark brown hair slightly graying settling just above her shoulders. I hear a gasp from Ashley, and Emerson growls louder than I've ever heard from my uncle. They seem to know her, but I don't recognize her. Rachel. Ashley whispers. How? What you thought I was dead? She asks with a laugh. After you escaped, so did I. I knew you would come back full force looking for me. So I ran and stayed hidden. Why, Rachel? Emerson asks after shifting back. Why are you so obsessed with me? Why won't you move on with your life and leave Ashley and I alone? 
He yells. You should have been mine. I had you right there, and then my wolf left me for what I did to you and your fucking mate. I haven't been able to shift in over 18 years. She won't heal me. She even rejected my mate without me to free him before leaving me. What? You have a mate? Rachel, if you have a mate, then why continue to come after me? Emerson asks, and I can hear the pain and rage behind his words. It doesn't matter now. I made a deal with a demon. We sacrificed a witch so I could take her powers and get to this exact point right here. Your pack under my control, destroyed, and now I'm going to make you suffer by killing your mate right in front of you. Not if I kill you first. Emerson is stepping forward but stops when she puts her hand up. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And turns her head, bringing all of our attention to the figure emerging from behind the house. Mate, he halts once around the corner, and his eyes meet mine for a brief second before immediately drifting away. He has Kennedy in front of him, with her wrists cuffed, and a knife sharply against her throat. He pushes her forward, and they walk until the stand next to Rachel. It takes me a few moments to place his face, but once it clicks, I'm more confused than ever. Firstly, I'm a week shy of my 18th birthday and don't know how my wolf is able to acknowledge him as our mate. Second, it's Oliver. He has been friends with Kennedy for a while now, and I fought dating him at this time. I want to run to him and ask him the hundreds of questions running through my mind, but now is not the time. Oliver's POV When I rounded the corner of the house I knew I would be coming face to face with the people who killed my father. The Alpha and Luna I wasted the last four years pretending to submit to. What I did not expect was my mate to be standing there with them. His lean muscular body did things to me and he had the most mesmerizing heterochromatic eyes. One was a dazzling hazel and the other a dark blue. The first time I saw him he took my breath away. I noticed him at one of the family visits shortly after I joined the pack. His moms and dad would come visit quite often. He never seemed to notice me which was probably for the best especially after I realized he was my mate not too long ago. It was hard concentrating on Kennedy when he was around. Sitting around the breakfast table a few weeks ago I knew exactly what Patrick was doing to Kennedy under the table but I honestly didn't care because my mate's scent and voice was soothing. I just wanted to soak up as much exposure of him as I could before all of this went down. I knew before this all started I wouldn't be able to be with him. I accepted that fact but I wasn't expecting to see him here and now. It was becoming too much. I was fighting with every fiber of my being not to go to him. Oliver how could you? Ashley asks and I hear the pure betrayal in her voice. I'll kill you, both of you. Emerson growls out. You would kill your own son. My mother gasps and my head snaps to the side. What did you just say? I ask shocked to my core at this revelation she just thrust upon me. Then I look towards Ashley and Emerson. Ashley's face is full of shock, confusion, and sadness. Emerson looks downright scary with his murderous gaze set on my mother. I look down at Kennedy. So she is my sister, I think to myself, and then think about all the time as I kissed her. Thank God we never actually mated and marked. How far was my mom really willing to let me go? Then my thoughts go to Emerson. I ask shocked to my core at this revelation she just thrust upon me. Then I look towards Ashley and Emerson. Ashley's face is full of shock, confusion, and sadness. Emerson looks downright scary with his murderous gaze set on my mother. I look down at Kennedy. So she is my sister, I think to myself, and then think about all the time as I kissed her. Thank God we never actually mated and marked. How far was my mom really willing to let me go? Then my thoughts go to Emerson. If he is really my father then everything my mother told me all these years is a lie. The whole reason for me being here and doing everything I had done up to this point was to avenge the death of my father. A death I believed Ashley and Emerson caused. Everything my mom told me was a lie. That is your son. Rachel says speaking to Emerson but pointing to me. That's a lie. A voice thunders from behind Ashley and Emerson. A man just a bit shorter than Emerson comes from some trees adjusting shorts, seeming to have just shifted. He takes a stand next to Ashley and Emerson and he eyes my mother warily. So many emotions cross his face and I can't decipher half of them. Then his gaze lands on me. 
We each take each other in and the more I look at him the more I realize he looks familiar to that of my own reflection in the mirror. Jared's POV My wolf has been going crazy the past week ever since Trevor showed up with a young she-wolf and others from Ashley and Emerson's pack. My wolf has been going crazy the past week ever since Trevor showed up with a young she-wolf and others from Ashley and Emerson's pack. What happened 15 years ago was a disaster. I trusted Rachel when she said we were getting justice for the death of our alpha. We found out the council ruled in their favor but one of the council members was closer to the Lycan family. Rachel convinced me that that was only reason they got of the hook. I had heard of Ashley. She and Adam were dating so it made sense that some other jealous wolf would kidnap her and kill Adam. I helped her take them back to our pack then Rachel ordered me to leave her and them alone. I never knew what she had planned or even that they escaped until they showed up one day with two large lichens as backup. Then after hearing what really happened I knew I screwed up. I apologized and braced to be killed myself for having a part in their alpha and Luna's kidnapping but surprisingly showed me mercy. I even expected to be banished from the pack but instead the new alpha Micah and Luna Elizabeth chose to keep me as their beta. Since I knew the pack and was familiar to them they thought it would best for transitioning them into new leadership. Now here I am fighting rogues with a few other warriors while Ashley and Emerson try to figure out what happened in their pack. As soon as we crossed the border my wolf started pacing in my head. My whole body is on edge and I feel as though something big is about to happen. We killed every last rogue in the camp and I started running towards the pack house. I stopped a short distance away when I caught sight of Rachel with a young man and Kennedy next to her. As soon as I caught sight of the young man my wolf uttered one word. Pup. There's no way that's our pup we would have known. Rachel would have told us. There's no way that's our pup we would have known. Rachel would have told us. I told him before edging forward listening to their conversation. The closer I get I see the resemblance between the young man and I. It's my darkest secret. I chose to keep the fact that Rachel and I were mates for years. I told him before edging forward listening to their conversation. The closer I get I see the resemblance between the young man and I. It's my darkest secret. I chose to keep the fact that Rachel and I were mates for years. Not only because she told me to, but because I was ashamed that I fell for her lies because of a bond. Now seeing my son in front of me I regret not searching for her after she disappeared. Why would she not tell me? I hate to say it, but I would have left with her an instant if I knew she was carrying my pup even if her wolf did reject mine. If we were bound I wouldn't have cared. I would have protected her and cared for our kid. I start to wonder where she hid all these years. Who helped her raise our child? Was he well cared for? Did she even tell him about me? Why was he knowing holding Kennedy against him with a knife to her throat? There were so many questions rattling around in my brain my head was starting to hurt. I hear her say he is Emerson's son and my whole body starts to shake as I think about her telling him all these years Emerson was his dad. No way will I let her lies destroy my son any longer. I shift and rush the distance between us, grabbing a pair of shorts hidden in a tree then making me way to stand next to Ashley, Emerson, and Vincent. I shift and rush the distance between us, grabbing a pair of shorts hidden in a tree, then making me way to stand next to Ashley, Emerson, and Vincent. That's a lie. I shout and see his eyes dart towards me and stare at me for a few moments. Jared, what the hell are you doing here? Jared, what the hell are you doing here? Rachel spits out, clearly surprised my presence and stance alongside her two worst enemies. Mom what is he talking about? Mom what is he talking about? My son asks. Nothing. They're the liars. Can't you see that? Nothing. They're the liars. Can't you see that? I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I say taking a step forward towards him and he takes a step back which hurts. You mother and I were mates. You mother and I were mates. No. No. My son screams. Oliver's POV. What is happening right now? First my mother says Emerson is my father which is a revelation in and of itself considering she raised to believe Emerson and Ashley kidnapped her and my father tortured and killed him. Then when my uncle Adam came to save her they killed him as well. She instilled in my a hatred for these people all throughout my childhood. She neglected and admonished me because of her own hatred but I thought one day we would have our revenge and she would finally be the mother I had always wanted. Now here I stand in front of a man who looked just like me and he is telling me they were mates and that would mean he is my dad. No. I scream trying to silence all this madness overwhelming me. Mom you told me Emerson was your mate. 
I say staring her down. You told me Ashley stole him from you. That the goddess was wrong in allowing her to mark him when he was fated to you. You wanted me to reject my mate. I choke out and can't help but glance at Vincent, his eyes bore into mine as well. Just to spite her, you made me believe that after moving on and meeting my dad, Ashley still continued to torment you. She kidnapped and tortured you both killing him. Mother you had thinking my father was dead this entire time, and that they killed him and Uncle Adam. Son. She cooed giving me her full attention. I would never lie to you my son. You're my little boy. You never treated me like a little boy. You mistreated me since I was little. You poisoned my mind and made me feel insecure and hateful. What mother does that? I had to. You needed to be strong. I need you to hate them as much as I do so we could take them down together. I wasn't lying they killed your Uncle Adam. In self-defense, Emerson roars out. Oliver. Ashley says softly taking a few steps forward. Your Uncle Adam forcefully marked me. Emerson saved me, his true mate, and Adam retaliated by ambushing us. I had no other choice but to kill him. She continues and I see a few tears in her eyes. Your mother took Emerson and I hostage and forced herself on him. I don't know who your father is and if it's Emerson. He's not. The man I believe to be my father speaks. Ashley, I would have felt it if they were together. Rachel and I were mates at the time and she cheated. I would have known. But how? Emerson asks. A spell. Rachel lets slip and I can see she immediately regrets it. What do you mean a spell? Ashley growls. It made him believe we were together, and Ashley feels the pain of a mate cheating. I was already pregnant with you at the time, and didn't want to risk anything happening to you. So they're telling the truth. I ask and she doesn't respond giving me the answer I need. Mom, I plead for her to keep telling me they're lying and that this isn't all true. Son, she says sternly. We came here for one reason and one reason only. She continues lifting both hands in the air, one wide open and the other a closed fist. Suddenly Ashley drops to her knees clawing at her chest. I can see Emerson, Jared, and Vincent trying to move to help her but they seem stuck. I hear Kennedy in my arms crying out for her mom. She's begging me to help her but everything is muffled, drowned out, by the realization that my mother is a psychopath. She orchestrated all of this and turned me into a monster in the process. I blindly believed everything my mother ever told me and hurt innocent people in the process of her revenge. She used me as a pawn in her sick and twisted game. I see Ashley collapse to her side on the ground and the life is slowly draining from her eyes. In a split second I make the decision I never thought I'd have to make. I'm sorry. I whisper after dropping Kennedy to the ground, bolt over behind my own mother, and rip her heart out through her back breaking all her spells and castings. I'm sorry. I whisper again, dropping her heart on the ground as her body falls, and tears start to stream down my cheeks. I'm sorry. I whisper yet again as I look around to Ashley on the ground with Emerson and Kennedy down beside her making sure she's okay. I'm sorry. I say looking to my dad, the dad I thought was dead, and never got the chance to know. I'm so so sorry. One last time as I look at my mate the one chosen for my by a goddess my mother taught me to hate. There's a look in their eyes and I can barely breathe let alone begin to imagine what is going through each and every one of their minds. So I do the thing that feels right and what needs to be done, I run as fast as I can. Shifting into my night black wolf I push fast and hard to get away from all the chaos I caused. I know I deserve to be punished for my transgressions against their pack but I can't be near my father and mate. I don't want to put them through that pain. We ran for years and years without being caught and I can do it again. I'll find someplace small to hide in Cal home. I'll find a way to balance out my karma and do some good once and for all. I tell my wolf to reach out and reject our mate just as my mother's did. He deserves a second chance and someone better than me. One day I will reach out to my father but right now it's too soon. Kennedy's POV I've never been more scared in my life, and not for myself for my parents. As soon as I saw my mom drop to the ground I begged Oliver to let me go and help her.
After everything he had heard from his wretched mother, I had hoped something in him would see that he didn't have to so this. My mom fell to her side on the ground, and I could see her life slowly draining away as Rachel squeezed her heart. My sobs and tears were uncontrollable at that point, and suddenly I felt myself drop to the ground. I didn't care why or how, but I rushed to my mom's side. She stopped grabbing her chest, and I could see a sense of relief in her eyes. The pain had stopped. When I turn around Oliver stands there, his mother's heart in his hand, and he body drops cold and dead before us all. I hear my dad come over and start talking to my mother. I hear his voice, not his words, as my attention was still focused on Oliver. He is still my Ollie. He made some mistakes and betrayed us. But after hearing all the lies his mother told, a tiny part of me understood his decisions. I want to go to him, but there is so much hurt in his eyes that I don't dare move. I can't possibly think of anything to say or do to make him feel any better. He apologizes over and over again as his own tears spilled from his eyes. Then without another word he runs, shifting into his black wolf. Go after him. I yell to Vincent and Jared, who both stand there dumbfounded by all that had just been revealed, and the outcome. They exchange a glance and take up after him. I turn back to my mother, who is now sitting up in the arms of my father. I scoot closer and wrap my own arms around them both. I am beyond elated my family is okay. After being sent to a dark place for who knows how long, I had no clue how any of them were doing. For all I knew she had taken out my whole family while I was asleep. I still don't understand why she didn't kill me and kept me alive in a comatose state. Kennedy. I hear a voice yell. Kennedy where are you? I finally recognize as Patrick's voice. I turn to see him running from behind the pack house frantically looking for me. He stops in his tracks once his eyes meet mine. And I can see them flooded with relief. I jump to my feet without even thinking and run, jump up and wrap myself around him like a koala bear. Thank the goddess you're safe. All of the sudden all the cells unlocked and Elijah and Asher woke up. I was so worried she had killed you. He spoke softly against my ear as he holds me tight. I'm fine. Oliver killed her. I say leaning back slightly so I can look into his eyes and he can see I'm truly okay. It's over. I love you. I say and kiss him like my life depends on it. I kiss. Love. Kiss. You. Kiss. Two. He says between each one, getting more heated every time. A throat clears near us and we both snap back to the reality that we are not alone. Then it hits me we just made out in front of my parents, which is a super subtle way to break the news that I'm in love with my cousin, and he's my mate. I try to decipher how they may be feeling as Patrick sets me down on the ground and grabs my hand in his, but their expression are neutral. He gives my hand a soft squeeze as we walk over to them and ready ourselves for the possibility they won't be okay with this. If not, it will be heartbreaking, but we will deal with it. Neither one of us is going to walk away. We are in this together. So you too. My dad starts of, but leaves it open-ended as if he's unsure of exactly what to say in this situation, which is understandable. She's my mate. Patrick says bluntly, standing tall, and showing he's proud of that fact. And he is mine. I add moving both arms around his midsection and holding him close. Well, my mom says with a blank expression, Congratulations. She squeals and rushes us in a bear hug with my father not far behind. We kind of figured you two were mates. You were pretty inseparable growing up. Why do you think we sent you to Aunt Jen, Aunt Em, and Uncle Brad's pack every summer? She jokes. So, you guys are okay with this? I ask hesitantly. Of course, sweetie. My dad replies. We want nothing more than for you to be happy. Patrick has always made you happy. He's your mate we would never go against our goddess's wishes. But what about Oliver? I ask. To be honest we were both surprised when you two came down and announced you chose each other as mates. In hindsight we should have been more weary of that announcement but like I said we just want you to be happy Kennedy. 
That's all we'll ever want. Alpha, Luna. We hear Elijah and Asher say together. We're so happy to see you safe. Elijah adds. What happened to you too? Ashley asks. You dad has been worried sick. A demon showed up. Apparently Rachel made a deal with him. Three lichen souls for the powers of a witch. He came to collect but she reminded him that he didn't get a thing unless Ashley and Emerson died. He put us in a deep sleep so we couldn't escape. When she died, the deal broke, and so did every spell she ever cast. Asher explains. We failed you. Elijah says. We took the position of Beta to protect this back. And look. He continues gesturing to the destruction surround them. The pack house has definitely seen better days. Boys. My father says. We don't hold you responsible in the slightest. If anyone is at fault, it's us. We had a feeling it was too soon for Kennedy to take over and we should have had a sense that she wasn't really our daughter. It will all be okay. We can rebuild and make it better than ever. Until then we can stay with Elizabeth and Micah. What about us? I ask. I think we should go to my pack. Patrick says. Vincent just lost his mate. If it was you I wouldn't stop until I found you. He may need some time and I'm sure my parents are all worried sick about us as well. This will give us all time to regroup and we can figure everything out. Important things like where we want to live and how many pups we'll have. He continues whispering the last part and gives me a little wink. Grand pups. My mother squeals again and I can't help but roll my eyes. Way to get her started, I say and playfully smack his arm. Mom, Dad are you two okay? Oh honey, we will always be okay. It was scary for a little while but we survived, we always do. I'm just sorry that our crazy past caught up to us and hurt you. I wasn't hurt thankfully, but Oliver. I tray love, and look of in the direction he want. Mom Oliver did something terrible I know that, but. Vincent will find Oliver and we will go from there. My mom says. Let's go back to Elizabeth and Micah's pack and rest. We will discuss things in more detail tomorrow. Tonight I think we all need some rest, comfort of our family, and maybe even some alone time with our mates. She continues and shoots me her own little wink at the end, which makes me blush with embarrassment. Asterix 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 will Vincent find Oliver? Could there be a second chance made out there somewhere? Find out tomorrow asterisk asterisk asterisk. Oliver's POV. Running away from my mate and father was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, even harder than killing my own mother. She never loved or truly cared for me, but I knew my mate was meant to love me, and I could see the love in my father's eyes, even though he just found out about me. I didn't deserve my mate, though not after what I did to his family. I ran and kept running for a good 60 days, but then I had to stop. My wolf kept taking over and brining us back towards Vincent's back. Anytime I tried to get further away, he would take over while I was asleep and bring us right back. He never entered their territory in case their patrol chose to attack us. So I found a homeless shelter a few towns from my mate's pack to stay at. While there I ventured to a soup kitchen nearby and that where I met Marie. She is in her latest and runs the soup kitchen. After volunteering to help her out in the soup kitchen and do some good for a change, she took me under her wing and moved me into the spare room of her small house. I helped her fix some things around there and continued working with her at the soup kitchen. I wasn't making any money, but I had a roof over my head and Marie had some company for breakfast, lunch and diner. You look beat. Are you sure you don't want to stay here and get some extra rest? One day won't hurt Oliver. Everyone needs rest. Marie says, No, I'll be fine. I reply with a yawn. For the past month since I've settled in with Marie, I haven't been sleeping well. I feel my mind shut up at night, but then when I wake up, I'm somehow still exhausted physically. I can't deny it's starting to take a toll on me. Marie and I walk to the soup kitchen and start getting everything set up. Before everyone starts coming in she asks me to take out the trash, and after grabbing the bags I make my way out to the alley to put them in the dumpster. After tossing them inside, I shut the lid and turn to go back inside, but the sound of trash crunchy on the ground stops me in my tracks, and I look towards the noise. Mate. My wolf yelps as I make eye contact with Vincent standing a short distance away down the alley. Vincent's POV. 
after Oliver ran away, I was honestly in shock that he had just killed his own mother, and that was even part of all this in the first place. Thankfully Kennedy snapped me back to reality, and I realized that if I didn't go after him, he would get away, and I would lose my mate. Even with his father chasing him with me, we couldn't catch up. He was gone. My mate was nowhere to be found, and I felt empty. I shouldn't even be able to tell he is my mate yet, but somehow my wolf knew, and I think he was trying to prevent this from happening by telling me early. After a talk with Kennedy and Patrick, I decided to continue searching for him while they looked after our pack. I returned home for my 18th birthday as my parents requested I take a break from trying to find Oliver and come celebrate with my family just for the night. I tried really hard to enjoy myself, and for a little bit I did. But then night came, and I laid in my bed, drown in thoughts of Oliver. Suddenly a howl in the distance caught my attention. I jumped to my feet and ran outside toward the noise. Something deep inside was telling me that I was meant to follow that howl. A mile outside of our territory a black wolf emerged from behind a tree startling me. Normally I would shift and go into attack mode, but this wolf seemed familiar to me. That's our mate. My wolf Hector tells me. He's beautiful. I respond and walk over to run my hand through his soft fur. He came for your birthday. His human won't come but he didn't want to stay away any longer. My wolf explains after apparently talking to Ollie's wolf. Then I'll let you to have some time together. After shifting into Hector, he walks a circle around Oliver's wolf a few times before nuzzling against his neck. I can feel the connection our wolves have and it makes me jealous. They lay down and snuggle close, resting together for a while. But before the sun rises Oliver's wolf nudges us letting us know he has to go. I could have followed him but decided against it. Then the next night the same thing happened. It became a routine. For the past month our wolves spend their nights together. And in the morning we go our separate ways. I've had enough though. I want my mate home with me. He's been gone long enough and it's time. So I followed him home and then to work so we could have some privacy. Don't run. We need to talk. Please, I ask when I notice him looking as though he is about to bolt. Okay. He replies meekly. I swear I tried to get my wolf to reject you so you wouldn't have to see me again but... I don't want a rejection. I cut him off and move closer. Right in front of him to be exact. That's not why I came. Then why? I don't deserve you. You're an alpha. You should be with someone more trustworthy and less damaged. You heard what my mother and uncle did to your family. They're crazy, it's in our blood or something, and you shouldn't be with someone like me. I could turn out just like them. But you didn't. Don't you see that Oliver? You are at a crossroads. You could have chosen the path your mother and uncle did, but you didn't. You chose to do the right thing. I don't want anyone but you. If we're talking about second chances, the one who deserves that is you Oliver. We have all already forgiven you. Now you just need to forgive yourself. I don't know if I can. He whispers, and it pains me to hear his broken voice. Hey, I say cupping his cheek, snapping his eyes that were on the ground up to me. Will you at least try, if not for yourself, for me? For this, I say grabbing his hand and placing it over my heart. Our bond means more than anything to me, and I don't want to give up on it. I explain, and he nods his head, as a few small tears escape the corners of his eyes. I love you. He whispers. I have ever since I first saw you. I'm sorry I messed everything up. You didn't, we're here now together. Oliver, I know this seems rushed, but can I mark you? My wolf has been driving me nuts this past month. Spending every night with you has been torture for both of us. We wanted to mark and mate you every single time you came. What do you mean when I came? Oh yeah. I forgot Hector said you didn't know. Your wolf has been meeting with mine for the past month at night. Maybe that's why I'm always so tired. He whispers more to himself. So, I ask, can I please mark you? Mate. As long as I can mark you too. He replies with a genuine smile. I love you too by the way. I say before pushing him back against the wall and pressing my lips to his. His lips are nothing like I've ever felt before. Reed and I kissed a lot, but it was never this amazing. His hand moves up my back, settling on the back of my neck as he deepens our kiss and we both begin to fight for dominance over one another. I press myself against him so he can feel exactly what he is doing to me. I pull the bottom of his hair, slightly earning me a small moan. I break away and move my lips down to his neck, kissing and sucking on that one special spot, where I then sink my canines in marking him as mine forever. Not a second after pulling away and sealing my mark with my tongue, he does the same, 
and I tense as his canines bite down but then relax. I'm flooded with a euphoric feeling as our bond strengthens, and I can't wait to mate my sexaman and complete our bond. That was amazing. He says after pulling away and licking his own mark clean. I agree. By the way, probably not the best time to tell you this, but your dad is with me. He's waiting in the car. We decided not to overwhelm you. Oh. He says looking down. Asterix, Asterix, Asterix tomorrow Oliver and Jared's reunion slash Oliver and Vincent will complete their bond. Asterix, Asterix, Asterix. Oliver's POV. I can't deny that I'm a little angry at my wolf for going behind my back and spending time with our mate but the again I can't really blame him. When he first showed up I was sure he was there yo reject me and I would have deserved it. That's not what he was after though and after listening to him I knew he was right I needed to forgive myself. I went a different direction than my mother and uncle and now I was trying to be better. I could and would be a better man not only for myself but for my mate as well. I couldn't help telling him I love him. I needed him to know how I felt and what a big deal this was for me. Then he asked to mark me and I was overjoyed. I wanted to mark him the very first time I saw him but my mother made it very clear that if I met my mate I was to reject them. She never even knew that my mate was another male. I can't imagine how she would have reacted to that but it didn't matter now. He was here in front of me and he actually wanted to claim me even after what I did to his family. They were truly amazing and forgiving and I would make sure to make amends with all of them, not just my mate. When I feel our bond strengthened after marking each other I'm overcome with a sense of peace and comfort. Afterwards he informs me my father is here as well and my heart starts racing. My nerves kick in and I start thinking about all the time we lost because my mother lied to me. I can't help but wonder how different my life would have been had I known my father and he was a part of my life. We exited the alley and he was standing by the car on the phone. He smiled brightly at me and put up a finger letting us know he would be a minute. I grabbed Vincent's hand and led him inside so I could introduce him to Marie, who had become like a mother figure and good friend over the past month. Well you look much better than you did this morning. Marie joked as she took notice of walking in. I feel a lot better. I replied grabbing the silverware to help her finish setting up for the day, it's the least I can do since I will be leaving in such short notice. I'd like to introduce you to someone special. I add, gesturing my mate forward. This is Vincent, my mate. Oh what a pleasure to meet you finally. She says outstretching her hand to shake his. Ollie here told me a little bit about you, not the whole story I'm sure. I told Marie I was a wolf after a week of living with her. She seemed trustworthy and it didn't feel right staying under roof hiding such a huge secret from her. She was a little shocked at first but came around to the idea quickly. She said if she can believe in aliens no reason not believe in vampires and werewolves as well. We hear the door creak and all turn to see my father walking in. He stops dead in his tracks and his eyes set on Marie. Mate. Comes out his mouth and I can't help but gasp. Maria. I say after composing myself. This is Jared. I continue as he also snaps back to reality and finally comes over. It's nice to meet you. He greets her kindly, reaching out to shake her hand. Oh come on. She says with a smirk, grabs his hand, pulls him forward, leans up on her tippy toes, grabs the back of his neck with her other hand, and pulls him down for a fast firm kiss. We are mates after all. She adds cheekily after pulling back. You, you know what that means? He asks. Yes. Oliver here told me all about your kind and his mate Vincent not too long ago. You're sure are a hunk. She replies before bolding eyeing him up and down, and I can't help but chuckle. You are very beautiful, mate. He whispers pulling her back forward to kiss her yet again. Get a room you too. I say fake gagging as their makeout session starts getting a little heated. Sorry. They both mutter after breaking away from each other. I can't believe I found my son and a second chance mate all in one day. My dad exclaims. Well I do hate to cut this short but people are going to start showing up soon. Can we finish this later? Marie asks. No. Dad all but shouts. I don't want to leave yet. Can I, can I help out? I would love that. She replies with a huge smile, clearly enjoying my dad's overeagerness. If it is okay with you too, Oliver and I going to go back to my pack and rest. We've been separated for so long, 
and I think we both need some time to catch up. Can we come back tomorrow, and we can all have lunch together? I would like to talk to you about moving closer to our pack, so you and Ollie can get to know each other better. Vincent says. I was hoping for the same thing. I was on the phone discussing taking a leave with Micah and Elizabeth. He explains. I'm really glad you guys found me. I state. And I'm glad you found someone after mom. I add speaking to my father directly. I can't wait to spend some time with both of you. I give my dad a huge hug and Marie one as well. We leave the car for my dad and Marie. Vincent and I head into the woods and shift together. He leads the way to his pack and I follow enjoying the run with my mate. I feel bad now depriving my wolf of this kind of time with his other half but I will be sure to make up for it in the future. We arrive at the pack and shift back. I start getting nervous again at the thought of facing Kennedy, Patrick, and his parents. I don't know how Kennedy will ever forgive me. I hurt her the most. We walk through the front door of the pack house and all of a sudden I hear footsteps running and Kennedy crash into me squeezing me tightly in her arms. Ollie, I'm so happy Vincent found you and you're safe. We all missed you. We didn't know where you went. Everyone was so worried. Trevor has been going crazy without his best big bro, as he calls you. And, she says speedily. Kennedy breathe. Patrick jokes cutting her off. He's home now. You can hound him later. He continues pulling her close and kissing the side of her head lovingly. Kennedy. Patrick. I just want to say I'm so so sorry for. It's all the in the past bro. Patrick saying cutting me of this time, something he seems to be very good at. Al is forgiven. You saved us. You saved my mate and my Aunt Ashley. It's time for a fresh start. Thank you. I appreciate that. I reply sincerely. Where's dad and our two crazy mothers? Vincent asks with a small laugh. Out. As soon as you told us you found Oliver, they all went out to get stuff to make a homemade meal for all us. And I'm sure they're buying him some homecoming gifts. You know how they are. Remember when Pat brought me home that first night? She explained and Pat and Vincent both laughed. They can be a little over the top. Vincent leans closer to explain the joke. They'll probably be a couple hours if you guys want to rest a bit before dinner. We're going to go check on training and patrols. We'll see you guys later for dinner. Kennedy says grabbing Patrick's hand then they stroll out the front door. A couple hours. Alone. Vincent whispers. We could rest, or, he says with a wink. I can definitely think of a few other things we could do than resting. I tease back. Well then, he says, grabs my hand, and starts leading me upstairs. We share the third floor with Kennedy and Patrick. My parents are on the fourth floor. As soon as we step into his bedroom he shuts, closes, and locks the door. I take the opportunity to spin him around and push him back against it. My lips meet the spot I marked him and he shudders against me. You don't know how long I've wanted to kiss you. I whisper against his neck. How hard it was not to claim you as soon as my wolf named you as our mate. I continue as I trail kissed up his neck and along his jawline. I really do love you Vincent I want you to know that. I say resting my head against his and place a gentle kiss on his lips. I. I pause with my eyes closed. I've never done this before. I confess. Been with anyone I mean. Hey. He says reaching up and touching my cheek causing me to open my eyes. I have no experience with this either, but we can learn together. We discard our clothes quickly and collapse on the bed next to each other. Our hands move along each other effortlessly and affectionately as we explore and ease ourselves into finally mating. The lower his hand moved the greater the anticipation grows and when he finally touches my hard cock I almost find my release in his palm. I get the courage to finally touch him and we just lay stroking each other and looking deeply into each other's eye for a few moments before he stops, rolls over, and grab a small bottle from a drawer in the nightstand by his bed. Turn on your side. He commands in a sexy sultry tone and I happily do as he says. I'll go slow. He whispers against the back of my ear. I feel a warm liquid and the head of his cock slide between my cheeks. He kisses and sucks on my mark distracting me as he eases his way inside me. It hurts but his kisses and soft gentle touch along my hip eases the discomfort I feel. 
Once fully inside he gives me a moment to get used to the full feeling then begins moving his hips back and forth driving his hard dick in and out of me meticulously slow. Vinny please, faster. I beg as I start stroking myself. I feel him pull back and slam forward causing a small jolt forward. He picks up his pace, going faster and harder than before, and it's sending me into overdrive as my moans become louder and uncontrollable. I didn't know sex could feel this amazing and I'm not sure if it just because it Vincent or the fact he's my mate but it's better than I ever could have imagined. I feel connected to him on a whole other level. He moves his hand from my hip to my wrist, gripping it as I continue to work my dick in my hand. Faster. He whispers and I do just that, soon we're both close, lost in the sensations our bodies are feeling, and before I know we both come at the same time and it's like fireworks exploding all around us. That was fantastic. I can't believe how great that was. I never imagined. He trails of and then slowly pulls out of me. I feel him get out of bed, hear the water running in the bathroom, and then he comes out and cleans us both of with a washcloth. After discarding it in the laundry bin we climb under the covers and snuggle close. I love you. Thank you for finding me. I whisper. I love you too, and I'm happy you're finally home. Next two chapters will be dedicated to Kennedy and Patrick, then an extra chapter just for Trevor and Felicity. Patrick's POV. When Vincent linked Kennedy and I to let us know he found Oliver and they were coming back to the pack I was nervous. We all forgave him for his transgressions. Kennedy and Emerson urged my brother Vincent to go find and bring home his mate. Our parents of course were over the moon when Vincent told them he had met his mate. It was a long story that explained thoroughly. They supported and encouraged him each day he took hunting down his mate. Same with Kennedy and I I don't know why I was ever worried about our family being against our bond. Surprisingly when Vincent and Oliver entered the house Kennedy ran and grabbed Oliver into a huge hug. If this was several months ago I would have been jealous and ripped them apart but now knowing he was never truly interested in my mate and tied to my brother, the mark very present on his neck, I stayed back and let them have their moment. We left them alone for a few hours and made ourselves busy around my parents' territory. We talked about her upcoming training and our plan to take a small vacation once she was done before taking over an alpha female and alpha male of my parents' pack. We decided since our territory was the largest and had the most members pf any other pack we would lead alongside Oliver and Vincent when he returned as well. After saying our goodbye and sending our mates up to the private island where they would recite their special training Oliver and I went to my Aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Mika's pack so he could spend some time with his dad and we could all help clean Aunt Ashley and Uncle Emerson's land, get rid of the remaining rogues, and start to rebuild. The first year of their training went by so fast because we were busy helping our aunts and uncles that we enjoyed the small amounts of time we could video chat. The next year was a little harder once Oliver and I returned to our home, eagerly awaiting they return home. Oliver's father, Jared, moved just outside our territory permanently to be close to his second chance mate Marie. Not long after their mating they announced they were expecting their first pup and Oliver seemed overjoyed at the thought of being a big brother. Oliver also decided, with some encouragement from my parents, to start an orphanage on our land. For abandoned, orphaned, or mistreated pups. His upbringing wasn't the greatest and he felt if he could even save one kid from having to live the kind of life he did growing up it would all be worth it. I volunteered to help get things up and running to help distract me from missing my mate. Laying in bed a few weeks before finally getting to be with my mate again I anxiously wait for her phone call. Hello gorgeous, within second of her beautiful face filling my screen. A little eager there Alpha. She jokes. I miss you Kennedy. I haven't seen you in person in two years and it's getting close and close, so yes I'm a bit eager, I retort. I love you and I'm so excited to come pick you up in two weeks. I love you too, and I can't wait to spend three whole weeks on a private beach with you making up for all the lost time. She says with a playfulness behind her voice. The good news is we can pack light. I don't intend for either of us to be clothed for most of the trip, I add, teasing her. I miss you so much. She says. How are things going there? How is Ollie and the orphanage? Things are great. We've had several packs reach out to us asking us to take some special lost children in. Oliver seems to have taken a liking to a baby found at the border of Alpha Lincoln's pack. I think he wants to adopt her but is waiting for Vincent to return to discuss it. He spends most of his days there with the kids, but her especially. Your mom and dad have been planning the grand event for your return. 
The reopening of your mom and dad's pack and official ceremony naming all of us alphas of our home pack. How are you and Vincent holding up? We're good. I'm kind glad I had him here with me or I would have died of boredom. The training and outdoor exercises are great but all the mental stimulation and education is draining. Yeah I remember. I laugh. So we'll meet you at the airport in two weeks. I say knowing she will have to get of the phone soon as they don't allow long calls or video chats believing it is too much of a distraction. Yes. She replies with a huge smile clearly excited to get of the island and come home. I love you Patrick. I love you Kennedy. I reply and the phone disconnects, so I throw it on my bed, and lay back counting the minutes until I see her again. Two weeks later, Oliver is driving us to the airport as we speak. Both Kennedy and Vincent arrive back today. Kennedy and I are taking a flight together to a remote beach where we spend the next two weeks alone, catching up, before going home to be with our entire family. She misses them but there are so many of us at this point we both wanted a little time along before taking over the pack and starting our lives as alphas. I'm so excited to see my mate I barely slept a wink last night and got a coffee with a few shots of espresso this morning to be up and ready for her. Now my leg is bouncing up and down as we drive to the airport and the closer we get the more excited I become. I can telephone Oliver is just as anxious to get to his mate and his lead foot pushes on the accelerator. Once at the airport we checking the times of arrivals and match their flight number to a gate. We both stand there patiently with our hands in their pocket watching out the window as the plane lands and docks. Then people start filtering out of the gate door slowly and it's agonizing watching every person come out that isn't her. Then about halfway through the crowd I spot Vincent and glance behind him spotting my mate. I wave eagerly so they both see us. I don't care how silly I look, a grown ass man giddily waving to the love of his life. It's been too long and as soon as she is clear of the gate I waste no time rushing towards her picking her up and spinning around in a circle with her tightly in my arms. I dip my head into the crook of her neck inhaling her sweet scent I've missed so much and place a gentle kiss on her mark. Hello to you to mate. She whispers. Kennedy's POV. The two years I was away for alpha training seemed to fly by and drag on at the same time. The two years I was away for alpha training seemed to fly by and drag on at the same time. Physical training I was used to, and the outdoor activities they had us participate in was intense, but I felt stronger after everything they put us through. The in-depth history of our kind, learning about every pack in existence, alpha and lunas throughout time was tedious and made our time there seem never-ending. I was happy Vincent went with me. There were many people on the island at the same time. Only a few people needed training at a time. There was one tower for Wi-Fi and cellular data, but they kept it of except for two days a week when we were allowed to call our loved ones and talk for a half an hour. I would always call my parents first and then Patrick with my remaining time. Being away from my mate Patrick was torturous, but I knew the time apart would only make our reunion that much better. Plus we want his two years here apart, and survived no doubt we would this time as well. I just kept telling myself that we get three weeks all alone on a private beach after I get back, and it would all be worth it. I was excited to be with my mate again, and spend the rest of our lives together. I have a special surprise for him when we get to the beach. He had already drawn up and started building our own house near the pack house. Vincent and Oliver would have their own floor and stay in the pack house while Patrick and I stayed close enough for emergencies but had privacy. Growing up in a large close family it was going to be hard finding time to ourselves so I want our home to be like our own little sanctuary. As the plane starts descending I feel excitement growing inside me threatening to spill out. And I try my hardest to control my lichen from pushing through all these people aggressively to get to my mate. Vincent must feel the same way because he grabs my hand and gives it a tight squeeze. We both sit there patiently as the gate connect to the door of the plane, and they finally let us start leaving the plane. With every step I feel lighter. After being away from him for so long my heart became heavy always worrying about him, how he was handling me being away. If he was as lonely and missed me as much, and if after all this time apart he'd possibly come to regret his decision, 
As soon as Patrick spots us, he starts waving like crazy, and I laugh to myself how cheesy my mate looks right now. Then when enough people have cleared the way in a sudden rush, he picks me up in his arms and swings me around in a circle. I'm happy to be back in his strong arms, and he lips meet my mark, and I shudder. I had definitely missed his kisses too. Hello to you to mate, I joke, and he puts me down, brushing some hair from my face, and looking me all over, which makes me blush a bit. I didn't think it was possible but you are even more gorgeous and sexy than before you left. I didn't think it was possible but you are even more gorgeous and sexy than before you left. He says with a smirk. Oh shut it. I reply with a light smack to his chest. Never. He says pulling me against him for a longer hug. I love you and missed you like crazy. I'm so glad you're finally home and we get a little vacation. Yay you could consider this our honeymoon phase. I say Riley. We say our goodbyes to Oliver and Vincent after grabbing a small bite to eat with them in one of the airport's restaurants. We board the plane we'll be taking, and thankfully it isn't as full as the last one I was on. About halfway through our flight I tap Patrick's forearm, gaining his attention, and point to the bathroom with my eyes. His eyes grow wide as he follow my line of sight, and a huge grin reaches across his face. I go in first, and a minute later Patrick slips into to join me. Finally reuniting physically with my mate is amazing, and that fact that it's thousands of miles up in the air makes it ever better. After returning to our seats and landing, I grab my carry-on, and we exit the plane. I start diffing through my bag, and pull out some tan khakis and a white relaxed button-up shirt, and hand them to Patrick telling him to change before we leave for the beach. I also go in the bathroom and changed in a white floral sundress with some strap sandals. I have my mother and father set everything up for us so there is a driver already waiting out front. It's perfect, the moon is rising high in the sky when we finally arrive. I ask the driver if he can take our stuff to our beach house and tip him a generous amount. We are going straight there. Patrick asks. No, I have a surprise for you. I respond, grab his hand, and start us on the path to the beach. There's a small wooden path before we hit the beach, and once it comes into view I can already see all the candles set up and smile. Patrick notices, and I can see the wonder in his eyes as he thinks of all the possibilities that my surprise could entail. I hook my arm with his as we walk and slow our pace a bit. I love you more than I ever thought I could, Pat. At first I was so confused by my feelings for you considering we were raised as cousins. I tried fighting my feeling for a long time and would constantly tell myself you would never reciprocate those feelings. Then after my first shift when I sensed you and you ran I was crushed even though I didn't know it was you at the time. We've been through so much for such a short time of being mates but I would change any of it. Our time apart helped me grow, and everything that happened with Oliver made me realize how lucky we are. Everything worked out in the end. Oh my. He gasps as we reach the beach, and he sees the trail of candles continue up close to the water, where a minister and witness stand waiting for us. I want us to be bound to each other in every way possible, not just by our goddess. I say slipping my shoes up at the edge of the sand, and he follows suit. So Patrick, would you do the honor of legally becoming my husband? I continue, pulling a simple gold band from my dress pocket. Kennedy. He whispers turning to face me. It would make me the happiest man alive to marry you. He rallied gleaming. Then, I say pulling him forward again. The ceremony is just us and the bare necessities, but it's perfect, and I chose to do it under the light of the moon, as a nod to our wolves. After the final I do Patrick kisses me until I can barely catch my breath. We thank the minister and witness, and he scoops me up bridal style, and carries me to the beach house where we spend three weeks celebrating our official union everywhere and anywhere we can. I realize I will never get enough of this man. Arriving back home after our trip Oliver and Vincent pick us up from the airport. Did you get it? I ask Oliver as we load our bags into the trunk. He nods and hands me a small bag. 
We all pile in the car and make our way to my mom and dad's pack. We're going to have a family dinner together in the pack house, which got a complete makeover. It will be the first night my parents and younger brother are going to be staying the night after everything ended with Rachel. They had all been staying with Aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Micah until everything was perfect and ready. The rest of the Pax families would be moving back in tomorrow, and there is going to be a celebration where we will also officially announce Vincent, Patrick, Oliver, and myself as the Quad Alphas. I knew some people may have an issue with that since it isn't how things are typically done, but we are all equals, and our titles should mirror that. Are you ready? I ask Patrick after we shower and leave the bathroom, ready to head downstairs. He grabs my hand. I can't but laugh at the large smile he has. I am also beyond excited for the announcement Olive and Vincent are going to make about, but even more so about our own. We all gather around the diner table, and after pouring drinks for everyone, Vincent and Oliver go first. So, we wanted you guys to know first. Oliver starts. We've decided to adopt Kayla. Vincent finishes. Everyone shares their excitement and congratulations. Before it can die down too much, Pat and I stand up. And we, I start, are expecting our first pup. Patrick practically yells, placing a hand on my tummy. The end. Severs POV. Growing up, I never really thought about who my mate could be. It wasn't a concern for me. I just enjoyed time with my family and friends and focus on school and training. It wasn't that I didn't notice girls, but they never really piqued and interest for me. I had few female friends, and that was all I needed. I didn't like the attention I got from she-wolves the older I got. A few tried to get close to me simply for the fact that I was going to be their future alpha, but I never paid them any attention. My mate was the only one I wanted that I was sure of. I would watch girls throw themselves at my cousins Vincent and Patrick all the time at pack events. No matter where we went they were hot commodities. They too never shared interest in desperate she-wolves. I felt bad for some of them watching the few future alphas without any morals taking advantage of them, but they basically threw themselves at them. Around the time of my first shift I started noticing Felicity more, but I just thought it was because she was a natural beauty and smart as hell. I even pretended to be bad at math my freshman year to get a few tutoring lessons from her. I had a small crush on her, but that's all I thought it was, a crush. Then Rachel took over our pack pretending to my sister and attacked her and I almost lost it. My wolf was being overly protective of her in that moment and I started thinking she could possibly buy my mate. She sought comfort from me afterwards and that further formed my suspicions. After fleeing and arriving at my aunt and uncle's pack, I vocalized my idea to Felicity. She admitted she had a crush on me as well. That very same day I asked her to be my girlfriend. We decided to keep it simple and PG until we turned 18 and confirmed we were mates. I turned 18 before her, but kept us being made a secret until her 18th birthday. I booked us the penthouse suite at a fancy hotel in the city. We went out to dinner, and I made sure to have some red roses on the table when we arrived. We ate, and they brought a special birthday cake I had delivered to the restaurant for her. She blew out her candles and opened the presents I got her. Then we took a nice stroll through the city before going back to the hotel she changed in a silky nightgown. And I put on some matching pyjama pants that she got me for Christmas. We climbed on the bed sitting with our legs crossed facing each other waiting for midnight. Felicity's POV Sitting across from the boy I fell in love with over the past couple years is surreal. I'm waiting for midnight to see if my wolf will confirm what we both believe, that the hot amazing guy across from me is destined just for me. When he saved me from what I thought was Kennedy, I felt safe and secure in his arms. Then he told me his theory about us being mates and I was ecstatic at first. Then I remembered he was our future alpha and I got nervous at the idea of being his mate. I grew up as an omega, nothing and no one special. I thought about the judgments people may pause, me not being good enough for him or my status in the pack not being high enough. I decided not to get my hopes too high and just enjoy whatever time Trevor wanted to spend with me. When we first started dating officially I definitely got some harsh stares from classmates and other pack members but I ignored them. His parents gave me a warm welcome and I never felt judged or belittled by them. We spent time together in school, lunch and a few classes together, 
and then we would spend a few days a week in the evening together. I didn't want to smother him or demand too much of his time. I knew he had a responsibility to the pack as the Alpha and Luna's child. Once it started getting closer to my birthday, he insisted I start spending more time with his mom to learn more about being a Luna since he seemed so sure we are mates. It was actually quite lovely spending time with Luna Ashley. She told me how she grew up not knowing she was a lichen and becoming Luna was all new to her as well. She eased a lot of my fears and trepidation. I couldn't deny that every once in a while my insecurities would bubble to the surface and I would think about the possibility of Trevor rejecting me but he proved over and over that he loved me and always chooses me. He never flirted with any other woman but me and even if they tried to flirt with him in front of me he would brush them up or not even acknowledge them. After a short time I grew a backbone and started standing up to those who tried to come between us. The close it got to my birthday the more I hoped he was right and we were mates. Then I could mark him and everyone would know he was mine. Yes, I know I sound a little possessive, but he's amazing, and I just want to claim and make him mine officially. After dinner and a short walk, we settled in the suite he got for us. Sitting across from each other, I can't believe how awesome it is that the man in front of me loves me and there's a real possibility we are mates. I never even gave a thought to who my mate would be until Trevor brought it up. Then we started hanging out and he became the ideal mate. He treated me like a queen encouraged me, and reassured me of his feelings anytime I needed it. He started counting down when it was 10 seconds to midnight, and I closed my eyes waiting for each second to pause. After he got down to one, I stalled a few more seconds and opened my eyes to find him staring deeply at me with the biggest smile ever, showcasing his darling dimples. And that's when I heard it in my head. Mate, my wolf said, Trevor wasted no time pushing me back on the bed and ridding us both of our clothes before showing me exactly how much he loves and adores me. After our first time together we finally mark each other and spend the rest of night cuddle close simply enjoying the fact that we are indeed mates and got to spend the past few years enjoying each other's company and learning everything there is to know about each other. We build a strong relationship together before finally realizing and completing our bond.